Battle Through the Heavens Chapter 251 to Chapter 300 Have fun reading as well as listening. Hey guys! Can I trouble all of you for a moment? Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you won't miss new audiobook updates. That's all. Thank you. Chapter 251, Hiring a Long-Time Fighter As first rays of the morning sun leaked through the patterned window, speckles of light could be seen illuminated on the floorboards, forming an image just like a blooming flower, warm and beautiful. In the room, Xiao Yan, who was seated in a cross-legged position on the green lotus, slowly opened his eyes. A faint green glow that was emitted from the pitch-black pupil suddenly flashed, and disappeared in seconds. Stretching his body, Xiao Yan took in a light breath of the cool morning air, a comfortable feeling surged in between his heart and lungs which gradually spread through his whole body. After a night's rest, the exhaustion on Xiao Yan's face has completely disappeared, he gently came down from the green lotus seat. With a wave of his palm, the green lotus seat turned into a blur of green light and was sucked back into the storage ring. Straightening his clothes, Xiao Yan opened the door and entered the living room. Sweeping his eyes, he discovered that Haibo Dong had already woken up and was standing at the window, quietly staring out the window at the noisy street with his arms held behind his back. Aware that Xiao Yan had come out, Haibo Dong turned around showing his teeth and smiled, saying, Seeing your current state, you seem to have adjusted well, haven't you? Nodding his head with a smile, Xiao Yan flicked out a wide black robe, and said while smiling, Come on, let's take advantage of the M.O. clan being busy today. We will first go in to look for Qin Ling, then we will give the old guy from the M.O. clan a good birthday celebration. Looking at the murderous expression on your face, it seems like the M.O. clan's happy occasion would quickly change into a funeral arrangement. Haibo Dong looked at the cold expression on Xiao Yan's face and raised an eyebrow as he joked. Since he can order people to obliterate the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, he naturally must have some preparations in case of revenge. Although I am not willing to exterminate his family at this moment, there is no reason to hesitate about killing the old man. Xiao Yan put both of his hands into his sleeves, smiled and said, In addition, with the M.O. clan losing their main support, I'm afraid that the position of their clan will rapidly decline. At that time, the three large clans of the eastern province would not give up trying to gobble up the territory of the M.O. clan. Aren't you afraid that the Misty Cloud sect would come to help him take revenge? Old man Hai, do you think that the Misty Cloud sect would come to kill two Do Wang practitioners just because of the death of a minor minister? Xiao Yan smiled. Two Do Huang practitioners. Hai Bo Dong blinked. After a long while, he rolled his eyes and said, I have already mentioned that I do not want you to drag me into it, this is a matter between you and them, and I am not related. Is the old man high scared of the Misty Cloud sect? Xiao Yan said while smiling. Sai, don't use such lowly methods to goad me and fight. Although I am wary of the Misty Cloud sect, it's a long way from me being scared. I just do not want to anger them with no reason but because of you. Once my debt to you is over, I will regain my freedom and leave to the high skies and wide land. Hai Bo Dong threw out words of withdrawal. Playing around with an exquisite wooden table cup, Xiao Yan hesitated for a moment before sweeping his eyes up and down Hai Bo Dong, smiling authentically, Old man Hai, what star Do Huang are you right now? Two stars. Why do you ask, when faced with this question, Hai Bo Dong's face turned stiff and bitterly replied. Oh, then could I ask how many stars did you have before you were sealed? Xiao Yan had a treacherous smile on his face, like a fox staring at a coveted rabbit. Five star. Hai Bo Dong said, while glancing at Xiao Yan. Five star Do Huang, so it seems, although the old man high seal had been broken, he still cannot return to his previous peak. Xiao Yan said with some regret. Pouting his mouth, Hai Bo Dong waved his sleeve at Xiao Yan and said, I have been sealed for decades, it is impossible for my strength to revert in an instant. I will only need, maybe four to five years before my strength will return to its peak. Haha, I am scared that old Mr. Hai himself isn't too sure about his words. As we all know that sometimes, recovering one's strength after losing it may take longer than the time needed for promotion. Who knows how long it will take. Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. Xiao Yan, what are you trying to say? Hai Bo Dong asked as he glanced and scowled at the strange smile on Xiao Yan's face. I just want to say, I might be able to let the old Mr. Hai recover his lost strength from the seal within a year's time and with no significant side effects. Xiao Yan fingers gently tapped the cup on the wood, chuckling. Hai Bo Dong's old face slightly changed as he heard what Xiao Yan had just said. His murky pupils showed a hint of surprise but rapidly returned to normal after a short moment. Prudently staring at green flames, he hesitated and asked, What way? Have you ever heard of the spiritual recovery purple pill? Xiao Yan asked as his slender fingers gently tapped. 
Looking at Haibo Dong's slightly dazed look, he couldn't help but laugh. This is a kind of tier 5 pill, although it isn't of a very high tier, the materials needed for concocting the pill is quite hard to find. Its role is to be able to cause seals, or recession of strength of the body caused by injuries to be completely repaired. This type of pill is very appropriate for old Mr. Hai. Spiritual Recovery Purple Pill Haibo Dong muttered several times with a special look of joy on his face. His eyes firmly fixed on Xiao Yan, licked his lips and said, well, what you need is payment. Haibo Dong could not believe that Xiao Yan, a person who wouldn't wake up early unless there was a profit to be made, would be so kind and help him with no reason. He he. After he heard this, Xiao Yan smiled just like a cunning fox, since the spiritual recovery purple pill herbs are quite difficult to put together, it takes a lot of time to collect these herbs. I will take care of the herbs needed for the pill, however, before I refine the spiritual recovery purple pill, old Minster Hai must stay by my side. What are you looking for is a long-term fighter, right? Haibo Dong said with his eyes twitching, immediately guessing the purpose of Xian Yan. Xiao Yan had a smile on his face and did not deny Haibo Dong's words. Looking at Xiao Yan's smiling face, Haibo Dong frowned, his face showing unhappiness. No matter what, Haibo Dong was a strong Dou Huang and he naturally did not feel very pleased when letting Xiao Yan use him as a fighter. Old Mr. Hai, you should know, rely on your own strength. If not for some special luck, I fear that it is extremely difficult for you to return to your peak within a decade. As long as you stay by my side as a guard for a small duration, you can save a decade. This deal looks really good, do you know the amount of things you can do in a decade? Xiao Yan teasingly said, continuing to hit the weak last defense in Hai Bo Dong's heart. Wearing a calm expression, Hai Bo Dong's heart continued to struggle. Xiao Yan did not bother to speak again, quietly sitting in a chair, waiting for Hai Bo Dong's reply. The spacious living room had a slightly dull and silent atmosphere. After a good long while, Hai Bo Dong reluctantly sighed and looked up staring at Xiao Yan. With a low voice, he said, I do not care exactly how rare those herbs are, I'll give you a year. Within this year, I will guard you and protect your safety. However, you have to bring those herbs together and then help me refine the spiritual recovery purple pill in this period of time. Otherwise, if you spend several years collecting herbs, doesn't that mean that I have to keep on staying on your side for several years? Oh, no problem. Hearing this, Xiao Yan slightly waved and replied. Smiling and nodding his head, he thought, a Dou Huang level bodyguard, this could be counted as a rare occurrence. In the future, he may offend the monstrous and tyrannical Misty Cloud sect and to have such a strong and experienced person by his side would save him a lot of strength. Although Yao Lao and Xiao Yan secretly put something into Hai Bo Dong's body, Xiao Yan didn't dare to say such things out loud. No matter what, Hai Bo Dong was still a Dou Huang practitioner with extremely high dignity. He could make transactions with others but absolutely would not tolerate threats. If Xiao Yan really insisted on using this thing within Hai Bo Dong's body to stress him and force him to become his guardian, the instant he hears it, the once reputed Jiama Empire Ice Emperor would disregard his own life and immediately attack in fury. From a fight with a Dou Huang gone mad, even with Yao Lao's protection, would definitely not end in a good outcome. Therefore, if it was possible to use mutually satisfactory conditions to solve this problem, it was naturally the best outcome. Looking at Hai Bo Dong's slightly helpless face, Xiao Yan's palm gently stroked the heavy Xian ruler that hid under his black robes, his face showing a proud smile. After thinking about the bitter tasks he would face in this year, Hai Bo Dong took out a piece of parchment from his spatial ring and threw onto the table, helplessly saying, this is the fruit of going out to the streets while you were practicing last night. This is a rough map of the MO clan, with this map you should have success in finding the little girl called Qing Ling. Hearing this, a touch of surprise surfaced on Xiao Yan's face. He grabbed the map and looked at it carefully. He could not help but shake his head and exclaim, it seems like hiring Mr. Hai as a bodyguard was an extremely wise decision. Faced with Xiao Yan's praise, Hai Bo Dong's mouth twitched a bit, not bothering too much. After sizing up the map, Xiao Yan carefully put the map away and stood up. The hood of his large black cloak was put down, which made Xiao Yan suddenly look like he was being shrouded in shadows. Let's go, towards the MO clan. With his body wrapped tightly, Xiao Yan smiled at Hai Bo Dong and turned to the door of the room to leave. Behind him, Hai Bo Dong also reluctantly put on the black robe, following Xiao Yan out of the room. Once out of the room, Xiao Yan closed the door behind him, then walked down the corridor, followed by the stairs. Near the door of the inn, a delicate woman dressed in a tight-fitting gown that had the color of the moon was quietly standing. Her exquisitely seductive figure, wrapped in the moon robe, had a unique charm. At this moment, she was smiling and was beside Ling Lin happily chatting. At the hall, several fiery gazes were quietly focused on that gracefully tender body. After the slow descent down the last flight of stairs, Xiao Yan suddenly raised his head slightly, looking casually down the front door at the moment. When his eyes swept across, he saw a faint trace of a woman with unattainable temperament in the moon robe. Suddenly, his moving feet became frozen. It was as if Xiao Yan had been struck by lightning and was stiff on the spot. Chapter 252, Nailin Yanran Xiao Yan's eyes stared intently at the moon-robed lady laughing sweetly and softly by the main door. His face which was covered under the dark shadow suddenly turned from a smiling one to a dark one. Although three years had passed and both of them had undergone great changes, he could still see the spoiled shadow of Nailin Yanran in that woman. 
His fist was tightly clenched and his nails pierced into his palms, emitting waves of throbbing pain. With unblinking eyes, Xiao Yan stared at the frowns and smiles of the moon-robed lady. A fury that was difficult to control abruptly swarmed out of his heart. She had likely spent these last three years at the Misty Cloud sect in comfort. What about him? He had narrowly climbed from the Blade of Death countless of times. Perhaps she did not know but each time when Xiao Ya was about to reach the limit of what he was able bear during his harsh training, he would forcefully clench his fist and cruelly endure it because of her. Xiao Yan's body trembled slightly. Almost immediately, a ferocious chi suddenly soared from within Xiao Yan's body. Xiao Yan. Hai Bo Dong, who was walking behind Xiao Yan could not help but feel at a loss when he sent Xiao Yan's unrestrained chi surging out. He immediately and hurriedly cried softly behind Xiao Yan. Hai Bo Dong's voice that carried some icy dough chi was transmitted into Xiao Yan's ear, causing the latter to gradually recover from the inexplicable emotion that had suddenly surged in his heart. Xiao Yan inhaled a deep mouthful of cool air and slowly closed his eyes. In his heart, he quietly muttered, how unexpected. Indeed, it was unexpected. During the three years, the beautiful woman not far in front of him was practically the motivation for him to forcefully bear the lonely tough training. Now that he had suddenly met her, the emotions he was feeling had almost caused him to act on impulse and forget everything else. It is indeed very unexpected. Yao Lao's pacifying laughter also slowly sounded in Xiao Yan's heart. Having been accompanying Xiao Yan during the tough training the entire time, Yao Lao naturally clearly understood just what kind of deep imprint the woman in front had in Xiao Yan's heart. Even though the imprint was left behind after a trampling of Xiao Yan's pride, regardless of how one said it, the position this woman held in Xiao Yan's heart may well be comparable to Sun Er whom Xiao Yan cared about immensely. Of course, Xiao Yan had totally different directions and emotions to the two. From a certain perspective, if a woman was able to cause a man to remember her fiercely at every moment, she seemed to have succeeded regardless of what was her intentions were. Extending his hand into the black robe, Xiao Yan used a great amount of strength to rub his face until treads of bright red surfaced on his delicate and handsome face. Only then did Xiao Yan stop. He inhaled deeply a couple of times. Finally, he gradually completed the adjustment of his mood. His gaze contained some coldness as it swept across Nailing Yanran and the old man beside her whom had also left Xiao Yan a poor impression. In his heart, he softly asked, Teacher, can you check what is her current strength? Hearing this, Yao Lao was quiet for a moment. A moment later, he replied, Cannot. Hearing these words, Xiao Yan's heart suddenly sank. He was stunned as he let out an involuntary cry in his heart, Cannot. How can that be? With teacher's strength, you are actually unable to find out her foundation. Don't tell me that in these three years she has actually soared to a Do Huang or higher. What nonsense are you saying? Seeing Xiao Yan losing himself to such an extent, Yao Lao didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. He continued, it is not because of her that results in me being unable to probe her true strength. Her body is covered by a layer of energy film. It is this layer of energy film that blocks my spiritual perception from probing. With my experience, she should be carrying some kind of item that could cut off people's probing. Therefore, you need not be overly worried. When you fight with her in the future, her true strength will naturally be found out. Yao Lao comforted. Who? Hearing this, Xiao Yan sighed in relief. He slowly suppressed the emotions in his heart, turned his head around and said softly to Hai Bo Dong at his side, I'm fine. What happened to you? Hai Bo Dong was somewhat surprised as he stared at the young man by his side who was covered under the black robe. During this period of time they had gotten to know each other, this was the first time Hai Bo Dong had seen Xiao Yan lose himself to the point that he could not control the qi in his body. It's nothing. Xiao Yan shook his head vaguely. He then raised it slightly and realized that numerous stunned gazes were thrown at him within the interior of the hall because of the qi that he had suddenly let erupt a moment ago. Within these gazes, Xiao Yan could clearly sense a cool gaze that carried a little curiosity. Lifting his head slightly, his gaze passed through the black cover and coincidentally exchanged gazes with the moon-robed lady standing by the main door. He stared intently at the beautiful and moving appearance. From within, he could even vaguely see the profile of the young lady back then. Slowly exhaling a breath, Xiao Yan's fist gently pounded on his chest and forcefully suppressed the tread of anger that had once again rose in his heart. He faced Hai Bo Dong beside him and softly said, Let's go. Seeing Xiao Yan's actions which had become inexplicable for a while, Hai Bo Dong was at a loss. Some time later, his gaze swept towards the moon-robed lady at the main door and his eyebrows were knit together. In his heart, he seemed to vaguely understand something. Hai Bo Dong helplessly shook his head and swiftly followed. With one in front and one in back, Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong walked toward the main door. Eyeing the two mysterious people whose entire bodies were wrapped under black robes, Nailin Yanran was somewhat interested as she blinked her long eyelashes. Her gaze paused on Xiao Yan's body for a moment. For some unknown reason, this black-robed person kept giving her an inexplicable feeling. Of course, this feeling was natural, not the type between a man and a woman. Instead, it was something like sensing an enemy. Nailin Yanran's white hand rubbed her forehead as she threw this somewhat ridiculous and inexplicable thought out of her head. She tilted her head to Ailing Lin by her side and softly laughed, I think that those two should be the ones that offended you yesterday, right? Ling Lin nodded her head in embarrassment. The corner of her eyes swept across the two black robes somewhat timidly. 
She knew that with even her status, she was actually no different from an ordinary person in the eyes of such strong people. If she really infuriated these people, it would be nothing amazing if they killed her in anger. Seeing that Ling Lin nodded her head, Nalan Yenron turned around and softly asked Gui, Uncle Go, can you see through these two people's strength? Miss, aren't you overestimating these old bones of mine? Hearing this, Gui bitterly laughed and shook his head. His turbid gaze was like an eagle as he stared at the two people slowly walking over. He sighed, I cannot see through the foundation of either one of these people. Clearly, their strengths far surpass mine. Hearing these words of Guyi, shock flashed past Nalan Yenron's pretty face. During these three years, Gui had already successfully broke through to having the strength of a two-star Do Ling from a seven-star Do Dosher back then. Although this involved the help of Elder Guyi's medicinal pill, his current strength could be considered that of a strong person. Someone who could obtain such an evaluation from Guyi would likely at least have the strength of a five-star or even a seven-star Do Ling and above. What teacher said is indeed true. There are really quite a number of strong people hiding in the Jiamai Empire. Nalan Yenron sighed softly in her heart. Although she had the intention of getting acquainted with such strong people, the dressing of the two people clearly indicated that they did not want others to know their identities. Since it was like this, Nalan Yenron would naturally not take the initiative to bring contempt to herself. Regardless of how one said it, her status did not allow her to lower herself in this manner. Junior Yenron, haha, I'm really sorry. There have been many things in the clan these few days that caused us to almost neglect our important guest. A clear laughter suddenly rang out from the main entrance. Soon after, a young man who was handsome walked in with a face that was full of smiles. He faced Nalan Yenron and intimately said with a smile. I'm the handsome young man who had entered the door, Xiao Yan's footsteps once again paused slightly. A strange feeling rose within his heart. This was because he realized that this young man was the young handsome fellow who had accompanied Nalan Yenron to the Xiao clan's home three years ago and causing the romantic females in the clan to adore him greatly. Ku, cool, looks like the atmosphere today is really positive. These three people have actually once again gathered together. Xiao Yan shook his head and said coldly in his heart. Senior Emoli, you are too polite. A smile surfaced on her pretty face as Nalan Yenron suddenly said to the young man. The smile was reserved and did not become any gentler because of the heat in the young man's eyes. Seeing Nalan Yenron's soft smile, a disappointment quickly flashed across the eyes of the young man called Emoli. After living together for a few years, the lady whom he viewed as the goddess in his heart appeared not to have any emotions toward him. This really caused him to feel somewhat dejected in his heart. The disappointment in M.O. Li's eyes was quickly hidden as he smiled and said, Junior Yenron, why don't you come with me to the M.O. clan later? It so happens that it's in the same direction. Hearing this, Nalan Yenron hesitated slightly before immediately nodding her head with a smile. Seeing Nalan Yenron nodding her head, M.O. Li was somewhat secretly pleased in his heart. Regardless of what happened, there were at least some results after having lived together for these few years. If it were someone else who asked this, Nalan Yenron might well reject this invitation in her reserved manner. Therefore, he believed that with his extraordinary training talent and great appearance, this future Misty Cloud sect leader should be unable to escape from his palm as long as he persisted on. As long as she really becomes my woman in the future, who in this Jiama empire would dare offend me? A wild ambition that no one knew silently rose in his heart. Mo Li's gaze suddenly swept to Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong who were slowly walking toward the door. He recalled the report today from his uncle in the clan and hurriedly took a few steps forward. He was full of smiles as he went forward to greet them. Seeing M.O. Li's action, Nalan Yenron also threw her gaze over with some interest. She was also somewhat interested in these two mysterious black-robed people. Hee hee, two sirs, I am M.O. Li of the M.O. clan. Yesterday, I heard that my sister had accidentally offended you two sirs. My father has dispatched me to apologize to you two sirs. The smile on M.O. Li's face looked quite sincere. Today is a joyous day for the M.O. clan. If the two of you do not mind, would you two give us some face and come to the gathering? It must be said that when this Emily spoke, he covered all angles and easily gave people a good impression. However, it undoubtedly did not have the slightest effect on Xiao Yan who already had negative feelings towards him. Pausing his footsteps, Xiao Yan's eyes looked at Emily in front of him with some mockery. He thought in his heart, if Emily was to know that the person whom he had respectfully addressed as Sir was the useless young master whom he could deal with with one hand back then, what kind of interesting expression would he show? Xiao Yan laughed in his heart. He lifted his head slightly and said indifferently, there is no need for your invitation. Our current aim is to hurry to the M.O. clan. I think that not long later, young Master M.O. should be able to see us at the M.O. clan's home. Having said that, Xiao Yan passed straight by M.O. Li and the two slowly walked out of the main door. Finally, they disappeared in the street where people come and go. Standing at the main door, Nalan Yenron slightly knit her eyebrows together. In a soft voice, she muttered, Why does that voice give me a familiar feeling? Chapter 253, Searching in the M.O. clan's Wild Ambition after passing through a few streets with turbulent human flow, Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong circled Yan City and walked for nearly halfway around before they gradually arrived at the M.O. clan's home located in the middle of the city. Standing at the end of the street, Xiao Yan eyed the M.O. clan's headquarters which was like a small-scale fortress. He could not help but shake his head. 
This MO clan was really worthy of being called the strongest clan in the eastern region of the Jiama Empire. Just this tightly secured fortress would have required an unknown amount of wealth to build. On the towering walls, there were guards defending every 10 meters. In some of the gaps, Xiao Yan was able to barely see sharp arrow blades flickering with a thick cold glow under the sunlight. Xiao Yan's spiritual perception vaguely swept across the top of the fortress. He could sense that in the air above the fortress, there were over 10 sight blockades placed without any blind spots. Anyone who wanted to enter from the sky would likely be immediately shot by the countless of arrows hidden in the dark areas until one became a prickling porcupine. TSK TSK, this defense is really tight. Looks like it would be somewhat troublesome to enter without anyone noticing. Haibo Dong's gaze swept across the fortress and said in a somewhat surprised manner. It is indeed a little troublesome. Xiao Yan nodded his head slightly. Perhaps it was because today was Mo Cheng's birthday, but the defensive strength of the fortress was definitely strengthened by a couple of times. With this kind of airtight defense, Xiao Yan and Haibo Dong would have some difficulty sneaking in without being noticed. Why don't I go and get hold of two invitation cards? Haibo Dong said with a frown. Kuku, with our clothes, one look and anyone would know we don't have any kind intentions. Before they have figured out our identities, they would definitely not let us in. Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. His gaze paused on the extremely lively and celebratory human flow at the main entrance of the MO clan's home. A moment later, he turned towards a small path, waved to Hai Bo Dong and said, follow me. The two of them walked on the small path, took half a circle along the outside of the MO clan's home and finally stopped at a quiet spot. This place had very few people walking about because of its remote location. Although there were still patrols placed on the fortress wall, the defense here was undoubtedly much weaker compared to the other side. Standing in the shade of a lush green tree, Xiao Yan lifted his head and quietly watched the cycle of the patrols alternating on the wall. After a long while, the tip of his feet suddenly stepped on the ground and his body turned into a black shadow which shot toward the top of the fortress wall in a lightning-like manner. His palm was swiftly waved and the green-colored flame shot out from his finger. It swiftly and accurately struck the guards who were crisscrossing each other during their patrol. The hot temperature of the green lotus core flame caused the few guards to be unable to even give a blood-curling scream before they were turned into lumps of black-colored ashes with a muffled sound. Xiao Yan indifferently glanced at the ashes on the ground. He waved his sleeves gently and a gentle breeze gushed out, sweeping the place until it was completely clean. After Xiao Yan had completed cleaning the site, Haibo Dong also quietly swept over. The two of them exchanged glances before they swiftly leaped down from the fortress wall and dodged the patrolling teams that appeared to have not the slightest gap between them. Their bodies turned into two shadows, shuttling through the dark shadows of the buildings. How do you intend to search? This Moa clan's home is so huge. If someone was to tell you that there isn't any hidden rooms, I think that you wouldn't believe them. If we continue to search one room after another, how many days would it take? Haibo Dong's body curled in a dark shadow. The chi all over his body was completely withdrawn at the moment. With the additional help of the cover from the black robe, he was still able to hide himself perfectly even though it was still a bright day out. Seeing this practiced manner, it was clear that he had also done such a thing before in the past. Haibo Dong said those words helplessly as he eyed the surrounding packed buildings. I was once with Qing Lin for a period of time, therefore I am quite familiar with her chi. Later, I will use my spiritual strength to skin the MO clan. As long as she isn't deep underground, I should be able to detect her. Xiao Yan voiced his thoughts. Spiritual strength. Although mine is also not weak, but it cannot be compared to you, an alchemist. Therefore, the matter of searching will have to be handled by you. Hai Bo Dong said. Okay. Help me pay attention to the surrounding situation. Xiao Yan nodded his head slightly. Xiao Yan's eyes were closed as Yao Lao's powerful spiritual strength swiftly broke through his body and turned into ripples which swiftly spread in all directions. After the spiritual strength spread out, many surrounding images swiftly flashed across Xiao Yan's heart. However, he did not discover any trace of Qing Lin. Following the increasingly wide region that the spiritual strength had spread to, Xiao Yan's eyebrows were pressed increasingly deep together. A long while later, he could only retrieve his spread out spiritual strength without having obtained any result. After which, he carefully scanned his surrounding environment. Due to the need for Xiao Yan to search precisely, the scope that Xiao Yan's spiritual strength could cover had to be narrowed. This caused him to have to move his body whenever it was necessary in order to allow his spiritual strength to continue scanning other places. After the search had continued for around half an hour, Xiao Yan finally opened his eyes with a gloomy face. You didn't find her. After seeing Xiao Yan's expression, Hai Bo Dong knew the answer. However, he still habitually inquired. This MO clan should have some hidden rooms that are difficult to discover. Otherwise, it would be impossible for this precise skin of mine to not detect even the slightest trace. Xiao Yan's eyes looked through the gap in the wall and eyed the fully armed guards patrolling past outside. He frowned and spoke in a soft voice. Haibo Dong touched his somewhat white beard and glanced at Xiao Yan's expression. He mentioned with some hesitation, could it be that those guys in the MO clan had obtained the thing they needed? That Qing Lin young lady could have been. The corner of Xiao Yan's mouth hurriedly twisted a few times. He inhaled a deep breath and the little girl's timid manner that caused people's hearts to ache in pity once again surfaced in his mind. 
He parted his mouth and said thickly, If it's like this, then I don't mind washing the M.O. clan with blood. Seeing the cold-filled face of Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong helplessly shook his head. He could only remain silent and not say anything to provoke him. Xiao Yan's face was gloomy as he leaned against the wall. Being unable to reconcile with the situation, he once again used Yao Lao's spiritual strength to search for one around only to obtain the same result which lacked any news. Eyeing Xiao Yan whose expression became increasingly dark following the deepening of the scan, Hai Bo Dong shook his head. He said, forget it. Let's just take direct action. After we capture that M.O. Cheng and beat him half to death, I think that he will tell us. Hearing this, Xiao Yan let out a gentle breath. The fists in his sleeves were tightly clenched. A long while later, he nodded his head slightly and said in a soft and cold voice, just as well. Let's attack directly. Once he said the words, Xiao Yan waved his sleeves gently. His toes stepped on the ground and his body was like a large eagle as he easily leaped onto the roof of the buildings. His gaze swept past his surroundings. After which, he nestled close to the roof of the buildings and quickly rushed towards the largest hall at the center of the fortress. Behind him, Hai Bo Dong's figure was like a fallen leaf floating in the breeze as he floated closely behind Xiao Yan. Exhibiting their speed to the maximum, Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong's figure transformed into two vague black lines. In an instant, they had rushed a distance of a hundred meters. The patrolling guards below the buildings could only sense a strange wind suddenly wildly surge over. By the time they raised their heads with vigilance, they did not even notice the figure of a ghost. A few human figures were seated in a dark, hidden room. M.O. Ling, how are the preparations of the matter? On the leader's seat, a white-haired old man dressed in pale gray clothes opened his mouth and softly asked. First Elder, I have already confirmed that the little girl does indeed possess the legendary, triple jade green snake flower pupils. A middle-aged man respectfully replied. That's good. Hearing this, the eyes of the old man brightened. An excitement involuntarily flashed across his face. He laughed sinisterly, it's unexpected that our M.O. clan would have such good luck this time around. We actually managed to meet a triple jade green snake flower pupils that has yet to mature. First elder. Is that triple jade green snake flower pupils really as amazing as what is said in the legend? The middle-aged man from before asked softly. Hee hee, it might well be greater. Didn't you see the huge two-headed snake protecting that little girl? That is a Doling class guarding beast. If it were not because of the triple jade green snake flower pupils, do you think that she could control it with her strength that is not even that of a doja? As long as we can obtain that pair of eyes and then train it until it reaches its maturity, who in this Jiama empire would dare contend with us? When that time comes, I would even be able to contend with even that Yunyun. Would we still need to rely on the Misty Cloud sect? If we could save the tribute that we give to them every year, the speed at which our MO clan could develop would far exceed what it is now. The old man's palm slammed the surface of the table heavily as he said with a face that was filled with unwillingness. When faced with the old man's furious words, the remaining people dared not interrupt and could only hurriedly nod their heads. That's right, is there any report from the people we had sent to the Rock Desert City? Has that Desert Metal Mercenary Company been completely cleared up? They had been living with the little girl for such a long time and may have discovered the secret of her eyes. This kind of thing must definitely not be spread around. Therefore, they must die. The old man suddenly said in a thick voice, seemingly having remembered something. Ah, not yet. But with M.O. Rance and the other's strength, I think it should happen soon. A person hesitated for a moment before replying. Relay the information and let them hurry up. After clearing up the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, it would be best if they also kill off all the Sand Mercenary Company, without anyone knowing. We cannot leave any loose ends behind, the old man coldly said. Yes, sir. Ah. The old man nodded his head slightly. His shriveled hand gently knocked on the table as he suddenly asked, Have you found out about the background of the two black-robed people whom Emily had reported yesterday? No, those two people seem to have suddenly appeared. We do not have even the slightest information about them. The middle-aged man from before smiled bitterly and answered. Try to send people to pay attention to them. I keep feeling that there's something wrong with these two people. After today's celebration is complete, we will begin transplanting that little girl's eyes. I'm afraid that something may happen if we wait too long. The old man frowned as he coldly spoke. Yes, sir. The middle-aged man respectfully said. He hesitated a little before saying, First elder, Nalan Yenron has also come to Yen City. Yes, I know. The old man nodded his head. A glow flashed across his meticulous old eyes and he said, Let Emily spend more effort on Nalan Yenron. If he could have a relationship with her, then with the help of the Nalan clan and the Misty Cloud sect, our MO clan's position will be able to rise swiftly. When that time comes, the three other large clans will no longer be able to contend with us in the eastern region. According to what MO Lee said, that Nalan Yenron seemed to be quite difficult to rein in. After staying with a woman like Yun for a long time, she is no longer the same sentimental girl that she was a few years ago. When dealing with this kind of haughty character in a woman, the warm methods of MO Lee would not have much effect. If there's no change, tell him to think of something else. As long as he can get the woman to become our M.O. clan's daughter-in-law, I do not object to him using any underhanded tactics. The old man said with a sinister smile. 
Hearing this, the few people in the room emitted an obscene, dry laughter. Clearly, as men, they were extremely clear on what, underhanded tactics, meant. All right. The outside still requires me to take control of the situation. Today, inform the subordinates to pay more attention. Additionally, send more people to thoroughly check the place where the little girl is being held. We must not let anything go wrong at this time. The old man's deep voice ordered. Yes, sir. The few people respectfully called out in response. They immediately stood up and slowly withdrew from the room. Humph, Misty Cloud sect, just you wait. Sooner or later, my M.O. clan will make you vomit up all the things that you have eaten. In the dark room, the old man's face twitched as a savageness faintly seeped out. Chapter 254, M.O. Alliance The spacious large hall was overcrowded with people and was extremely lively. A joyous atmosphere permeated within it. On the special seats that had been arranged in the hall, many leaders or representatives that came from the eastern regions of the Jiama Empire were seated. Although many people were anxious for the M.O. clan's downfall, they still needed to perform these surface actions properly when faced with the strongest strength in the Jiama Empire's eastern region. On the leader's seat in of the hall, a white-haired old man in finery was cupping his hands together and greeting the guests who were coming and going below him. He seemed to be greatly enjoying being the focus of countless envious gazes. The joy on the old man's face was accompanied by a proud smile that had never been interrupted. The old man was the M.O. clan's first elder, M.O. Cheng. At the same time, he was also a pillar of the M.O. clan. He took most of the credit for the M.O. clan being able to have its current status. The arrival of the Yen city governor, Lord Bo Air. A loud and clear notice from the main door was transmitted into the hall, causing the noisy hall to become slightly quiet. Numerous bizarre gazes were swept towards the main door. Usually, the officials from the empire would not take the initiative to join the celebration of the local strengths. However, this governor of the Yen city had come to congratulate in front of a large crowd. This action caused everyone to understand in their hearts that this M.O. clan had already opened up all the joints within the Yen city. T.L. opened up all the joints, established good relationships through bribery. Having obtained the support from the officials as well as possessing the backing of the Misty Cloud sect, it was little wonder why the M.O. clan's strength had soared during these last few years. They even faintly held the feeling of becoming the only head of all the strengths in the eastern region. Cuckoo, First Elder M.O. Cheng, congratulations. At the main door, a group of people were clustered around a middle-aged fat man who was dressed with splendor. With a face that was full of smiles, the latter said warmly to M.O. Cheng on the platform. Cuckoo, Lord Bo Air, I have troubled you to have come personally. Please come in. M.O. Cheng smiled at this fat person who had fished a large amount of wealth from the M.O. clan in these few years. An icy killing intent flashed in M.O. Cheng's heart. However, his face carried a smile as his humble hand pointed to a special seat on the platform beside him. After having a smiling conversation with this governor of Yen City, another loud and clear notice sounded from the main door. The arrival of the head of the Yi clan, Mr. Yi Tsong. Hearing this name, M.O. Cheng was momentarily stunned. Immediately, an expression that was between smiling and not smiling surfaced on his face. This Yi clan was one of the other three large clans in the northeastern region. Although its strength was slightly weaker than the flourishing M.O. clan, after many years of accumulation, the Yi clan's strength could not be underestimated. The reason for M.O. Cheng to display this kind of expression was naturally due to the head of the Yi clan personally coming to congratulate him. Under normal circumstances, the relationship between the four large clans of the northeastern region was like fire and water. A thing like celebrating for the other party was something they would definitely not do. However, the clan's current somewhat unexpected action obviously implied that they wanted to curry favor and to submit. Clearly, as the strength of the M.O. clan soared, this E clan's feeling of enmity had also been shaken significantly. Haha, <laughs> old Lord M.O. Cheng has really maintained his health and strength in old age. This northeastern territory will soon be completely eaten by old Lord. A middle-aged man who was skinny looking laughed loudly as he walked into the hall before facing M.O. Cheng on the platform and said. Cuckoo, it's really unexpected that clan head Yi Tsong had also hurried over. The old me is really honored. M.O. Cheng laughed as he conversed with Yi Tsong with a superficial smile before leading him to a higher seat. Following which, a large number of leaders with high statuses from different strengths in the northeastern region of the Jiama Empire came one after another. In only a short while, this noisy hall had actually gathered around 70 to 80 percent of the strengths in this northeastern region. This could be considered a rare grand event. Eyeing the hall that was filled with important guests, the smile on M.O. Cheng's face also became increasingly dense. In the northeastern region, other than their M.O. clan, there were no other clans which had this kind of gathering ability. The smile on M.O. Cheng's face finally became like a chrysanthemum blooming after hearing another notice. He personally descended from the platform and took hurried steps to the main door. Being the focal point of the entire place, M.O. Cheng's action was naturally noticed by everyone. When they saw that he actually personally went out to greet, everyone felt stunned. They could not help but whisper privately amongst themselves. In this eastern region, there were not many who could cause the first elder of the M.O. clan to provide such earnest treatment. At the main door, a group of people were clustered together. The leader of the group was a lady wearing a moon-colored dress, taking fine steps as she slowly entered the main door. Her beautiful and moving face carried a faint smile. 
The occasional people around who recognized her identity could not help but adopt a shock-filled face. Haha, niece Nalan, I did not expect that you would personally come. Your presence really brings light to all of our M.O. clan. Eyeing the moon-robed young lady, the smile on M.O. Chang's face flourished. He moved closer as his address was extremely affectionate. T.L., the niece here is an affectionate term, they are not blood-related. It actually is the personal disciple of the leader of the Misty Cloud sect, Nalan Yenron. Hey, no wonder this M.O. Chang is so excited. This old fellow would likely flaunt this event for God knows how long. Ugh, looks like the Misty Cloud sect view the M.O. clan with increasing importance. This time around, even the future leader of the Misty Cloud sect has hurried over. After recognizing the identity of the moon-robed beautiful lady, everyone in the large hall had envy-filled faces as they quietly sighed. The Misty Cloud sect, this enormous being that stood at the peak of the Jiama Empire, undoubtedly possessed a great pressurizing force, like a tall mountain peak that was too high to reach, in the hearts of these middle to lower level strengths. The ability of the M.O. clan to be tied to them had caused an unknown number of people's jealous eyes to redden. Elder M.O. Cheng is too polite, Yen Ran is only following teacher's orders. Nalan Yen Ran's gaze swept once around the interior of the hall. She saw that these people included the leaders of 70 to 80 percent of the strengths in the eastern regions. An unknown and surprised feeling flashed across the deep regions of her pretty eyes as she lowered her head and said with a reserved smile. Kuku, Nis Yenron, Elder Gu Yi, please come in. After laughing loudly toward Nalan Yenron and Gu Yi behind her, Emo Ching turned around and personally led the way. He led the two of them all the way to the leader's seat before sitting down beside the two. He laughed loudly as he continued to converse with the two of them. In the noisy large hall, numerous obscured gazes repeatedly swept over Nalan Yenron's pretty body. This lady who is said to be able to become the person in charge of the Misty Cloud sect in the future had undoubtedly become the focal point of a large hall. The head of the Yi clan, Yi Tsung, on the other side had a face filled with envy as he eyed Mo Cheng who was affectionately conversing and laughing with Nalan Yenron. A long while later, his heart helplessly sighed as his face was filled with bitterness. Although he wanted to thicken his skin and move closer to the future Misty Cloud sect leader to pull their relationship closer together, he could only smile bitterly and shake his head after weighing both of their statuses. He lifted the tea cup by his side and violently poured it into his mouth. In his heart, he was already calculating if he should collaborate with the M.O. clan as soon as possible to prevent being suddenly and totally finished off by the M.O. clan, whose strength will be soaring in the future. When everyone in the hall was having different thoughts in their hearts, two black-robed human figures arrived over everyone. They mysteriously appeared and their feet faintly stepped on the crossbeam. Their gazes swept through the hall, paused at Nalan Yenron for a moment before shifting to M.O. Cheng by the side. Is that person the first elder of the M.O. clan, M.O. Cheng, also called Executioner M.O. by people? Xiao Yan asked faintly as his gaze swept across the smiling-faced, skinny old man. Yes. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head slightly. He turned it to face Xiao Yan and said, What do you intend to do next? Smash the place apart. According to what you have said, we will first beat the old bastard until he is seriously wounded and then let them hand the person over. M.O. Cheng is almost like a pillar that cannot fall in the M.O. clan. Therefore, I think his life should have some value. Xiao Yan's palm was inserted in his sleeves as he coldly spoke. His gaze was like that of a poisonous snake as he stared intently at M.O. Cheng. What an unlucky guy. He actually met Xiao Yan, this fiend, on such a day. Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong nodded his head as he took a few minutes to silently pity M.O. Cheng below who was flushed with success. In the large hall, M.O. Cheng finally stopped his conversation and slowly stood up. His gaze looked around at the strengths from different places in the hall. He smiled and pressed his hands together. Instantly, the noisy atmosphere gradually began to quiet down. Numerous gazes were turned to him. Kuko, I am extremely thankful that all of you are able to attend the banquet of these old bones of mine. I think it is written clearly in the invitation cards that each of you have, the main purpose of the gathering this time around is to discuss an important thing with everyone. Seeing that the atmosphere had gradually calmed down, M.O. Cheng smiled and said. Hearing these words of M.O. Cheng, the ears of everyone in the hall immediately became vertical. Recently, after a discussion within our M.O. clan, we are preparing to form a M.O. alliance. This alliance is not any strict organization. It only intends to let some strengths with good relations gather together and then work together to obtain some extremely good benefits for everyone. After all, one person's strength could not be compared with the strength of a few clans. Moreover, I will promise everyone here that as long as you join the Mo Alliance, you will be an ally of the Mo Clan and would be able to enjoy the Mo Clan's information network and fighting assistance. What do all of you think? If you are interested in the Mo Alliance, we can all work together. Mo Cheng said with a smile. Hearing Mo Cheng's words, everyone in the hall had different expressions. Although M.O. Cheng may say that it was not a strict organization, it was clear that once they joined this so-called M.O. alliance, it would be like having the symbol of the M.O. clan stamped on them. They may be able to obtain the protection from the M.O. clan but this was not much different from being incorporated into the M.O. clan. The interior of the hall entered into a short silence. A long while later, there were finally some weak and small strengths who said they were willing to join the M.O. alliance one after another. There were many among them who had already made up their minds to depend on the M.O. clan before coming to this celebration. With someone taking the lead, some of the middle-sized strengths who feared the M.O. clan and were afraid that they would enter its blacklist chose to join after hesitating for a while. 
Seated on the leader's chair, Nalan Yenron eyed the strengths that were continuously pouring over to the M.O. clan and her eyebrows were knit together without anyone noticing. She tilted her head gently and exchanged glances with Guyi. An unknown meaning flashed in their eyes. With a smile-filled face, M.O. Ching eyed those strengths that had chosen to join. Although their current numbers were not very big, M.O. Ching did not feel anxious. This was only his initial plan. When the M.O. clan began to display its strength in the future, he believed that everyone seated here would know how to choose. Laughing somewhat proudly in his heart, M.O. Ching smiled and said, although the M.O. alliance is quite loose, it still needs a person in charge. Naturally, first elder M.O. Cheng is most suitable to be the one in charge. Before M.O. Cheng had completed what he wanted to say, there was a flattering voice that sounded in the hall. There were also a large number of people echoing the same thoughts. Cuckoo, thank you everyone for your kindness. The old me shall be a little disrespectful then. I will temporarily take charge of this M.O. alliance. Without caring if there was anyone who had an opposing view, M.O. Cheng waved his hand and decided it in this manner. Watching this M.O. Cheng who appeared to be directing and acting by himself, some people in the hall was speechless. Was this old person not too thick-skinned? I'm sorry, first elder M.O. I think that you will temporarily not have the time to manage being the M.O. Alliance's person in charge. In the quiet hall, a faint voice suddenly sounded inappropriately. A black robe strangely flashed into the middle of the hall. Under the black robe, a pair of dark and cold eyes glanced at M.O. Cheng who had a gloomy expression on the high platform. Chapter 255, Smashing the Scene The sudden appearance of the black-robed human figure abruptly attracted all the gazes over. After everyone felt somewhat stunned, they immediately eyed M.O. Cheng, whose expression had suddenly become dark. At the moment, everyone mourned for that black-robed person in their hearts. With M.O. Cheng who was extremely particular about his reputation, finding fault with him on such a place and occasion was undoubtedly touching a taboo. The black-robed person who had suddenly appeared also caused Nalan Yenran and Bui to be shocked as they exchanged glances. They had recognized this black-robed person to be the one they had met at the inn today. Their eyebrows were pressed together. Clearly, this mysterious black-robed person did not come with good intention. Who are you? M.O. Cheng's gaze coldly and darkly glanced at the black-robed person below before asking in a deep voice as he frowned. You should be M.O. Cheng, no. I have been looking for you to inquire about some things. The voice that was emitted under the black robe was young and smooth. It did not have any change because of the biting expression of M.O. Cheng. Today is a joyous day in our M.O. clan, could you please give us some respite? If you have anything, we can discuss after the banquet is over tomorrow. Is that fine? Hearing the young man's voice, M.O. Cheng's heart sighed in relief. His shriveled hand was slowly extended out of his sleeves and curled up slightly. A wild and stormy fire type Do Chi agglomerated around his palm, emitting a dark red glow, marking his palm strangely. Hearing M.O. Cheng's words which contained some thick cold killing intent, the black-robed person shook slightly. The person inside appeared to be shaking his head helplessly. A moment later some presumptuous words that caused everyone seated to be completely stunned were gently transmitted, give you face. What right do you have to say these words? Your M.O. clan may be quite as strong in the northeastern region, but ultimately, it is merely a dog of the Misty Cloud sect. Once these words were said, everyone in the hall was dull. Numerous startled gazes were thrown at the black-robed person who had said such presumptuous words. Did this person really intend to anger this butcher who had once massacred the black rotary bandit troop until their blood flowed like a river? On the high platform, Nalan Yenron pretty face changed slightly upon hearing the black-robed person's tone. Ever since she had become a disciple of the Misty Cloud sect, she had not seen anyone who could mention the Misty Cloud sect in such an indifferent manner. Mo Ching stared intently at the black-robed person below. His old face appeared a little savage. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly as he waved his palm. Immediately, the surrounding doors of the hall were kicked open. Tens of fully armed strong people of the M.O. clan streamed in with killing intent as they surrounded the black-robed person. Ever since the old me had become the first elder of the M.O. clan, you are the first person in so many years who has dared to come to the M.O. clan to find trouble. M.O. Ching tone was thick as he said. The black robe was lifted slightly and M.O. Ching seemed to be able to sense the mocking gaze under the black robe. After the words emitted from under the black robe, the rolling killing intent in his heart was finally beyond what he could endure and it rose boldly. Stop putting down those boring malicious words. You did not guess wrongly. Today, I am indeed here to smash the place. Old geezer of the M.O. clan. The black robed person's words carried a soft laughter as it once again startled the entire place. Good, good. Haha, <laughs> brat, you are bold. As he clenched his teeth and laughed loudly, a strong chi suddenly erupted from within M.O. Chang's body. His clothes bloated with a hoo hoo noise. Immediately, the chairs and tables around him burst with a bang under pressure from this chi. This old fellow's strength is growing increasingly strong. Feeling the pressuring chi that was slowly spreading through the entire hall, a surprise flashed across Guya's eyes. Uncle Gu, do we need to intervene? Nalan Yenron eyed that rattling chi, tilted her head and asked Guya softly. Let's wait and see. This black-robed person is not simple. The M.O. clan has recently been overly arrogant. Some of the elders in the sect had already begun to be dissatisfied with M.O. Cheng. 
Letting Mo Cheng face some hardship this time around will cause him to restrain himself a little. Otherwise, he would keep feeling that this Jiama Empire no longer has any strong people. Gu Yi shook his head and voiced his thoughts. Feeling the pressuring force that had spread out from Mo Cheng's body, the expression of the surrounding guests began to change. They had not seen Mo Cheng act in these few years. It was unexpected that his strength had grown by so much. It's likely that he has the strength of at least a five-star Do Ling, no. In only slightly more than two years, this old fellow actually managed to raise his strength by around three stars. He really is terrifying. Everyone faced each other and sighed quietly in their hearts. Eyeing the face of their own elder which was filled with killing intent, the surrounding strong people of the M.O. clan all held their weapons tightly. They stared at the black-robed person with faces filled with fierceness. Dochi began gushing out of their bodies as they prepared to swarm forward any time, cutting this person, who had an exaggerated opinion of his ability, into a pile of meat paste. The main reason that I have come to the M.O. clan is because of someone. Ignoring the inflating chi of M.O. Cheng, the black-robed person was quiet for a moment before speaking, hand over the little girl called Qing Lin that you have captured from the rock desert city. Once the words of the black-robed person was said, M.O. Cheng's face suddenly changed drastically. This time around, he did not say any other unnecessary words. With a face that was as cold as a pile of ice, he waved his hand and darkly ordered in a soft voice, kill him. Following M.O. Cheng's order, the surrounding strong people of the M.O. clan let out a vigorous cry. A few strong people of the Dosher class swiftly summoned their Dochi cloak and hacked the large blades in their hands violently at the black-robed person. The black-robed person stood on the spot and did not make any attempt to dodge. When those ten plus sharp large knives were about to hack at his body, a thick white flame suddenly surged out from within his body and covered him. Chi. In front of the numerous shocked gazes, the sharp large knives that were covered in Dochi were actually turned into a pool of hot metal liquid with a Chi Chi sound in an instant upon coming into contact with that layer of strange thick white flame. After that thick white flame incinerated those huge knives, a few wisps of flame seedlings leaped out. Immediately, the flame seedling pounced onto the bodies of few unlucky people who could not dodge in time. At that instant, only a soft muffled sound could be heard. These few strong people of the M.O. clan did not even let out a blood-curdling screech before they were turned into a cluster of black-colored ashes that sprinkled the floor. Hiss. The horrible sight of the few strong people of the M.O. clan immediately caused the sound of the inhalation of a breath of cold air to erupt contagiously. Numerous shocked gazes stared at the black-robed person who was standing still. As they recalled the terror of the thick white flame, the skin of everyone's head was numb. This is a heavenly flame. Gui cried out involuntarily as he eyed the black-robed person with a face filled with shock. The pretty face of Nalin Yinran was somewhat grave. She nodded her exquisite chin slowly as her pretty eyes stared intently at the black-robed person and said, This person is really strong. The M.O. clan has really provoked someone they should not have provoked this time around. On the other side, the head of the E clan, Yi Tsung, also jumped in shock at the terrifying thick white flame. Quickly following that, however, a gloating glint flashed across in the deep region of his eyes. Clearly, he felt extremely refreshed at the M.O. clan having offended such a strong person. Who are you? It does not appear that our M.O. clan has offended you, so why are you finding trouble with our M.O. clan? You ought to know that behind our M.O. clan. The thick white flame also caused M.O. Chang's heart to sink abruptly. An uneasiness gradually shrouded his heart as he opened his mouth to call out loudly. Hee hee, behind your M.O. clan is that misty cloud sect, right? However, even if Yunyun was here today, she would not be able to protect you, M.O. Cheng. The black-robed person's cold laughter interrupted M.O. Cheng's words. Although his current words were even more presumptuous than before, no one dared to think that he was raving with the thick white flame as a deterrent. Hand over Qin Lin. Otherwise today, I will wash your M.O. clan in blood. The black-robed person slowly took a step forward. His bland words suddenly had a stern killing intent. I don't know what you are talking about. Aren't you being too arrogant? You can humiliate my M.O. clan but it is intolerable for you to tarnish the Misty Cloud sect and sect leader Yunyun with your words. Sensing the killing intent in the black-robed person words, M.O. Ching trembled in his heart. However, he still stiffened his neck and righteously called out. You really know how to curry favor. However, I have already said that even if Yunyun was to come today, it would be useless. The black-robed person faintly laughed. His footsteps once again slowly stepped forward. Suddenly, his body trembled and an energy explosion was emitted from under his feet. The black-robed person was instantly transformed into a black-colored shadow and appeared behind M.O. Cheng as though he had teleported. If you don't hand her over, then die. Beside M.O. Cheng's ear rang a soft icy voice causing M.O. Cheng's eyes to suddenly shrink to the size of a pinhole. This monster-like speed had already resulted in a chill to surface in M.O. Cheng's heart. Although his heart was chilled, M.O. Cheng was considered a renowned strong person. The Do Qi in his body immediately flowed wildly. The deep red-colored Do Qi was like a bunch of red-colored flame, covering his body completely within it. At the same time, his palm was curled into a claw and his somewhat sharp fingernails were like an eagle claw as they violently grabbed at the black-robed person's heart. Eyeing the violently grabbing shriveled hand, the black-robed person laughed coldly. He tightened his fist and smashed on the palm while carrying an incomparably ferocious force. 
Immediately, following a clear ka-cha sound, Mo Chang's face abruptly became white and a mouthful of fresh blood was violently vomited, drenching his clothes. His body was also sent flying by that ferocious force and smashed heavily onto the ground. After which, he was dragged a long scar that was nearly 10 meters in length in the floor before he finally came to a slow stop. In only just one exchange, the strong person whose name shook the entire eastern region of the Jiama Empire was actually carelessly smacked aside by the black-robed person as though he was smacking a housefly. This dramatic scene caused everyone in the hall to be stunned. Although everyone had already felt that the black-robed person's strength was incredible after his attack earlier, but no one expected that this extraordinary individual was actually this powerful. A strong person of at least a five-star Dou Ling did not have even the slightest strength to retaliate. What kind of frightening strength was this? Dou Wang. Dou Wang. With pale faces, the attendants witness M.O. Cheng who had in just a few minutes transformed from the lofty first elder of the M.O. clan into an old man in dire straits. From under the black-robed, an indifferent voice was emitted, hand over that person. You are now provoking the M.O. clan and the Misty Cloud sect. Staggering as he climbed to his feet, M.O. Cheng kept his toughness as he said. At this moment, he was clearly using the Misty Cloud sect to cause fear in this mysterious person. I have given you a chance. Sighing somewhat disappointedly, the black-robed person lifted his leg gently forward. Once again, he weirdly flashed to the front of M.O. Cheng. He suddenly extended his palm and tightly held the neck of the ladder. Tilting his head slightly, he said in a dark and cold voice, Since you don't know how to treasure it, then you can die. Chapter 256, Vicious Means In the quiet hall, everyone were staring blankly at M.O. Cheng whose neck was easily grabbed by the black-robed person. Everyone involuntarily swallowed their saliva at that moment. Just ten minutes ago, the latter was planning the outline of a great plan to dominate the northeastern region of the Jiama Empire. However, ten minutes later, even his life was easily needed in someone else's palm. The way everything had changed so quickly caused everyone in the hall to have an extreme disbelief of the turn of events. However, regardless of how unrealistic the feeling was, the truth that appeared in their eyes told everyone in quite a brutal manner that this M.O. clan first elder, executioner M.O., who had quite a strong reputation in the northeastern region, was a toy in someone else's hand this time around. Hearing the thick chilling words emitted from under the black robe, everyone in the hall suddenly felt an inexplicable delight in their hearts. Regardless of what happened, if the M.O. clan was to really lose M.O. Cheng, the central pillar, then these small-scale strengths would be able to take the opportunity to extricate themselves from the M.O. clan's control in the future. Although the M.O. clan had quite a number of allies in the hall, but there was still not one person who came out to provide assistance. Sir, please have mercy. Just as the black-robed person was preparing to knead the M.O. Cheng in his hand to death with his palm, a cry suddenly sounded in the hall. Hearing this cry, everyone in the hall followed the sound and shifted their gazes, finally stopping on Guiyi who had stood up. Immediately, their expression began changing irregularly. Being the focus of everyone's attention, a bitter smile surfaced on Guya's old face. Honestly speaking, after witnessing M.O. Cheng's utterly helpless fate, he naturally did not want to stick his head out. However, regardless of how one said it, the Misty Cloud sect was the backing of the M.O. clan. This was something that everyone knew. If this mysterious black-robed person of unknown background only wanted to teach M.O. Cheng a lesson, Guya would not come out to stop him. However, looking at the situation now, the black-robed person was clearly intending to kill. Having come to this point, Gui could no longer simply sit down. After all, if he allowed M.O. Cheng to be killed in front of him, he would unlikely to be escape being reprimanded when he returned to the Misty Cloud sect in the future. Guye's cry did indeed cause the black-robed person's action to pause. The black-robed person turned its head around and glanced indifferently at Guye seated on the high platform. A pale thick white flame repeatedly leaped on his left hand. After staring at Guye for a long while, the black-robed person turned his head around again. Under the black robe a pair of thick cold eyes were fixed on the pale-faced M.O. Cheng as he said coldly, Han Ching Lin over. S, sir, I really don't know what you are saying. M.O. Cheng lips trembled as he said. His face felt a little painful as it was pierced by the icy cold gaze. Underneath the black robe, the human figure clearly sighed and shook his head. His hand was abruptly lifted vertically with the thick white flame shrouding it. After which, he suddenly cut down and went through the base of M.O. Cheng's right arm. After the palm passed through, a severed arm fell. The palm of the black-robed person was like a sharp blade. It did not face even the slightest resistance as it cut through the base of M.O. Cheng's arm. Instantly, his arm was detached and fell from M.O. Cheng's shoulder. Finally, it fell onto the bright red carpet in a manner that pierced the eye. There was no fresh blood flowing out of the arm that had been cut off. It only had traces of being completely charred black. Clearly, the instant when the black-robed person's palm cut past, the high temperature contained on it had already completely cauterized those blood vessels. The sudden pain from the missing arm caused M.O. Chen's face to suddenly twist in agony, appearing extremely savage and terrifying. A sharp shrill that carried a pain that was difficult to hide resounded loudly and clearly from his mouth, causing a cold to surface in the hearts of everyone in the hall. How vicious! The gazes of everyone shivered as they swept over the detached arm on the ground. They swallowed their saliva and their expressions were somewhat pale white. In just the blink of an eye, this strong person, M.O. Cheng, whose name shook the eastern region of the Jiama Empire had actually become a cripple. This kind of fall caused people to somewhat feel that they were in a dream. 
With his palm holding the region where his arm was broken, Mo Chang's body repeatedly shivered. A madness and perniciousness flashed through his lowered eyes and he softly roared, people from the M.O. clan, kill this bastard. Hearing M.O. Chang's soft roar, the surrounding members of the M.O. clan glanced at each other. They might have been terrified in their hearts, but under the remaining power of the past M.O. Cheng, they could only clench their teeth together and charge at Xiao Yan with fierce faces and angry roars. The black-robed person ignored the M.O. clan's members pouncing over and simply continued to eye M.O. Cheng indifferently. The M.O. clan's members charged into a region 5 meters from the black-robed person. However, when they lifted their legs again, a thick white-colored ice layer strangely spread out from the bottom of their feet and wrapped their bodies into ice rods with a shining pale white glow. In less than a minute, the interior of the hall had an additional 10-plus realistic ice sculptures that appeared out of nowhere. Immediately, the atmosphere in the hall had once again become much more quiet. An icy cool feeling shrouded the entire hall, causing everyone to be afraid to even exhale. Eyeing the 10-plus MO clan members who were frozen into ice carvings without any warning, Nalin Yenran and Guyi on the high platform inhaled a breath of cool air. The black-robed person's strange attacking methods and his viciousness caused them to feel somewhat shocked. After a wave of an attack had left behind nearly 10-plus ice sculptures, all the members of the MO clan hurriedly fell back. No matter how Mo Cheng continued to scream, they were so perturbed that they did not dare to enter Xiao Yan's attacking region again. Do you want to hand her over? Or not? Ignoring Mo Cheng's crazy screaming, the voice of the black-robed person was still that young and smooth one. That indifferent attitude was as though the massacre from before was not done by him. Who exactly are you? Mo Cheng panted intensely and coarsely. He lifted his face that was covered with a sinister look and his gaze stared intently into the black robe while speaking with a hoarse voice. You are wearing out the little patience I have left. M.O. Chang's untamed character did not cause any admiration to form from the black-robed person. His low voice seeped out an impatientness and coldness of a person whose patience was about to be completely worn out. His palm was lifted slowly until it was vertical, forming into a hand-shaped knife. It trembled slightly and the thick white flame was leaping and soaring on it. If you kill me, that little girl will definitely die with me immediately. Eyeing the hand that was slowly lifted with tightly shrunk eyes, M.O. Chang's face swiftly became distorted. A moment later, he finally could not bear it any longer as he cried out. Ching Lin is actually still alive. Hearing M.O. Cheng's cry, the black-robed person sighed gently in relief while he muttered softly in his heart. Someone from your M.O. clan who can speak for the clan, step out. Hand over the little girl that you have captured. Or else, today, I will wash the M.O. clan in blood. The black-robed person turned his head around and said softly toward the group of people from the M.O. clan. Although the black-robed person's words were extremely calm, the M.O. clan members who had witnessed the viciousness of his attacks did not dare doubt the truth of what he had said. Immediately, there was someone who leaped to the back and disappeared from the hall. It's no use, there is no one in this M.O. clan who dares disobey my orders. M.O. Cheng panted coarsely. He twisted his neck, wanting to escape the palm that was grabbing his neck tightly. However, his movement did not help the slightest bit. Say one more word and I will incinerate your tongue. A long hand moved back and forth in front of M.O. Cheng's eyes. The thick white flame that was covering it caused a cold glow to be reflected in M.O. Cheng's eyes. It resulted in him swallowing the following words that had reached his mouth. Not long after the member of the M.O. clan disappeared, a large group of people with alarmed faces swarmed into the hall. When they saw the dire state M.O. Cheng was in, their expressions became dull. Who among them could have guessed that the first elder who usually had the posture of a strong person would actually turn into this manner? This sir, I am the head of the M.O. clan, M.O. Lan. May I know in what way the first elder has offended you? A middle-aged man wearing fine clothings took two steps forward and said in a deep polite voice. In ten minutes, I want to see the little girl called Qing Lin that your M.O. clan has captured. Otherwise, there is no longer a need for the M.O. clan to exist. Under the black robe, the icy cold voice as well as the terrifying force that had suddenly surged caused the faces of everyone in the hall to be filled with horror. The black robed person stood on the same spot. Under the pressure from his majestic force, countless of tiny crack lines were spread out on ground under his feet while a ka-cha sounded. Do Huang. Eyeing the crack lines that had spread out, Nalin Yenran and Guyi who had experienced a force of such strength more than once cried out involuntarily as their expressions swiftly changed. The two people's voices were like angry thunder that violently struck on the top of the heads of everyone in the room. At the moment, even the pernicious-faced M.O. Cheng could not help but become dull. He did not expect that this mysterious black-robed person would actually be a Do Wang. Shivering repeatedly under the terrifying force with a soil-colored face, the corner of the mouth of the head of the M.O. clan who was called M.O. Lan twitched quickly for a few times. Little girl. Don't tell me it is the one whom the first elder had brought back. God. Who exactly did this old fellow offend? He actually caused a Do Wang to come here. Sir, please wait. I will immediately go and release this person. Under the pressure of a Do Huang, M.O. Lin acted in a straightforward manner. He understood clearly that he and the others did not possess even the slightest qualification to discuss conditions. Therefore, he immediately and hurriedly nodded his head. M.O. Lan, stand still. Who allowed you to release her? M.O. Cheng suddenly raised his head and angrily cried. 
First elder, why do you want to put our M.O. clan in such a dangerous position because of a little girl? Being stopped by M.O. Cheng, M.O. Lan's frowned deeply as he said with some fury. From his manner, it appeared he was not aware of the manner regarding Qing Lin possessing the triple jade green snake flower pupils. What do you know, that little girl is definitely. M.O. Cheng's face was savage. However, before his cry had completely fell, the black-robed person suddenly turned around. A foot that carried a terrifying force was accompanied by a sharp, explosive, sound as Xiao Yan violently kicked on M.O. Cheng's lower abdomen. Immediately, the words that reached M.O. Cheng's mouth were forcefully swallowed. With his left hand holding his lower abdomen, a mouthful of fresh blood was violently vomited. M.O. Cheng's legs kneeled on the ground and continued to rub on the ground while moving backward from momentum until he knocked heavily on a strong platform pillar. Only then was this terrifying force resolved. The black-robed person appeared to have reached the limit of his patience towards this M.O. Cheng who was as noisy as a housefly. After violently giving him a kick, the tip of the black-robed person's feet gently pressed on the ground. His figure was once again like a ghost as it shot towards the pale-faced M.O. Cheng. On his fist, the thick white flame swiftly agglomerated. Clearly, he intended to really deal the killing blow this time around. Sir, on the account of our misty cloud sex thin face, please let M.O. Cheng off. Sensing the suddenly killing intent of the black-robed person, Guya's expression changed drastically as he hurriedly called out. The black-robed person appeared to have not heard Guya's call. Seeing that the black-robed person did not show the slightest sign of stopping, the old face of Guyi became ugly. After musing for a moment, he clenched his teeth wildly. His body flashed past and shot towards the black-robed person. Get lost. Sensing Guyi shooting over, a cold cry was emitted from under the black robe. The robed person's body suddenly rotated strangely in the air. After which, he turned into a shadow that was like a ghost as he rubbed against Guyi's shoulders as he passed him. The moment that the two came into contact, the palm of the black-robed person was bluntly imprinted on the other party's chest. Instantly, a pale whiteness surfaced on Guya's face. His body was like a kite with its string cut as he shot backward. As the two intertwined with each other, a gentle breeze lifted the cloth covering the black-robed person's face. Half of a delicate and handsome face was exposed and a vague image was coincidentally captured in Guya's eyes. Immediately, his body stilled. His face was filled with shock. Chapter 257, Killing M.O. Cheng Guya's body was like a falling leaf in the autumn breeze as he quickly shot back in a haggard manner. The tables and chairs along the way were shattered by the hidden force contained in Guyi when they came into contact with him. Guyi's pair of legs were dragged over the ground as he was pushed back by half the distance of the hall before his body came to a slow stop. His somewhat pale white face was covered by disbelief and shock. You. Wiping off the trace of blood from the corner of his mouth, Guyi breathed a few heavy coarse breaths. His heart was like a stormy sea. That face, why does it appear a little familiar? In his mind, the tender face of the young master of the Xiao clan from three years ago, that was unyielding and stubborn, slowly surfaced from deep in his memories. When it overlapped with the face which he had just fleetingly glanced at, there was faintly quite a bit of likeness. Impossible. His heart suddenly trembled violently as Guya's chest swiftly rose and fell. He deeply inhaled a few mouthful of air and a moment later, shook his head. I must have seen wrongly. Even if that young man had abandoned the reputation of being a cripple, it is definitely impossible for him to reach this stage only a short three years. In three years, a person who did not have the strength of even a doja had raised his strength to the Dou Wan class. These kinds of words were something that Gui dared to pat his chest and guarantee that even in the entire Dou Qi continent, there would not be a single person who could achieve that. As his feelings slowly became calm, Gui also began to doubt the face that he had fleetingly glanced at a moment ago. After pondering a little, his heart was had come to firmly believe a fact. His vision had indeed and definitely been blurred. After believing this in his heart, the shock on Guya's face finally began to slowly recover. He held his chest and coughed a couple of times. A thread of blood once again flowed out of the corner of his mouth. The palm attack from the black-robed person earlier had indeed caused him to receive quite a serious injury. Uncle Go, are you alright? From the high platform, Nalan Yenron floated down to Guya's side. Concern surfaced on her pretty face as she urgently asked. Asterisk cough asterisk, I'm fine. Guya shook his head and smiled bitterly. Eyeing Guya's pale face, Nalan Yenron's eyebrows were lifted vertically. This was the first time that she had witnessed someone who dared to treat members of the Misty Cloud sect in such a manner. Immediately, her pretty face became cold as she threw her gaze toward that black-robed person. She coldly said, Sir, can your actions today be interpreted as a provocation toward the Misty Cloud sect? The black robe shook slightly. Nalan Yenron appeared to be able to sense the indifferent gaze that was shot from under the black robe. Immediately, she tightly held her hand, a fury was hidden in her heart. Other than bringing up the Misty Cloud sect, what can you do? I will definitely take M.O. Cheng's life today. If you want to stop me, you can take action. You don't need to use the Misty Cloud sect and Yunyun to scare me. Those won't work on me. The black-robed person patted his sleeves. His voice carried some ridicule and cold laughter. You, hearing the ridicule of the black-robed person, a fury swarmed onto Nalan Yenron's dark eyebrow. She coldly laughed, You are a Dou Huang, I think that you cannot be someone without any reputation in the Jiama Empire. 
Since you insist on killing M.O. Ching today, please tell me your name. In the future, my Misty Cloud sect will find Sir and reason with you. Reason with me. Kuko, it should be Union bringing a few hundred people to reason together, no. The black-robed person shook his head and laughed tauntingly. Since you dare to kill M.O. Cheng in front of so many strengths in the northeastern region, why do you hide your head and show only your tail? With your strength, I think that it is not that you are afraid of the revenge from the M.O. clan but rather you fear the misty cloud sect behind the M.O. clan, right? Nalin Yenron coldly said. It is not that I don't dare, but I don't want to. You need not be so anxious. I will sooner or later head to the misty cloud sect. When that time comes, you will naturally be clear of my identity. The black-robed person said indifferently. Hearing that the black-robed person looked down on the Misty Cloud sect in such a manner, Nalin Yenron bit her silver teeth gently and viciously said, Good. Since you have this kind of courage, I will want to see if you really have the boldness to charge into the Misty Cloud sect. Are you done? The black robe shook slightly. The person inside seemed to be shrugging his shoulders, If you have said all that you want to, then please stop making noise. I am about to strike. If you want to block me, then please do. However, I would like to remind you that I will not show any mercy because of your identity. If you don't want the Misty Cloud sect to lose a successor, then just stay quietly at the side. Hearing this, Nalin Yenron's red and sleek small mouth was tightly pressed together. Her bountiful chest rose and fell slightly, sweeping up an angle that was filled with temptation. Even though her heart was furious, she did not have any possible solutions. In this large hall, there was no one who could contend with this mysterious strong person. Moreover, the other party did not seem to fear the Misty Cloud sect. Therefore, other than watching M.O. Cheng becoming a spirit under his palm, she did not appear to have any other option. Ignoring Nalin Yenron's action behind him, the black-robed person slowly turned around. He coldly eyed M.O. Cheng who was relying on the platform pillar to stand up. On his palm, the thick white flame soared while carrying some iciness. This sir. Seeing that the black-robed person was about to deal the killing blow, the face of the head of the M.O. clan, M.O. Lan's face became pale. Although he wanted to go forward to stop him, he could only forcefully suppress this impulse after seeing Guyez and Nalin Yenron's fate a while ago. This black-robed person had clearly held back because of Guyez's status. However, if they were to charge forward, the interior of the hall may likely receive a couple more ice sculptures. Therefore, M.O. Lan could only stand at a somewhat safer distance away from the black-robed person and speak, Sir, nothing has happened to that little girl called Qin Lin. As long as you are willing to let the first elder off, our M.O. clan is willing to compensate you in the terms that you dictate. The black-robed person remained impassive at the words that M.O. Lan had said. Under the observation of all the leaders in the hall, he slowly walked towards M.O. Cheng. A faint dark and cold killing intent caused the interior of the hall to be shrouded in an icy atmosphere. Eyeing the black-robed person who did not even bother with him, M.O. Lan smiled awkwardly. Under the pressure of such absolute strength, he could only give up the thought of attempting a rescue. The him whose heart was dejected could only hope that this Doh Huang, whose actions were extremely vicious, would not begin cleaning up the M.O. clan after killing M.O. Cheng. Otherwise, the M.O. clan would really decline from a top strength to one which would not even be ranked. It seemed that M.O. Cheng also understood that the black-robed person was determined to kill him. Therefore, he did not let out any useless begging for mercy. He eyed the black-robed person walking over perniciously. H.I.'s remaining left hand suddenly wiggled slightly. If you want to kill me, I will also leave a few scars on you. With a sinister smile, M.O. Cheng curled his body, which abruptly trembled. A ferocious hidden force shattered his sleeves. On the hand that was naked in the air, the veins were like numerous small snakes as they repeatedly pulsed. That hand had also suddenly became strangely larger. The originally normal nails also expanded by half an inch and its color had also became incomparably and oddly black. Currently, M.O. Cheng's hand was completely detached from the normal shape of a human being. Looking at it, the hand appeared more like the limb of a magic beast. A pale red color gradually welled up within his arm. A moment later, his entire hand actually became completely red. When one looked at it, it was like a cluster of flames shaped into an arm. Breaking Mountain Arm The first elder actually transplanted the forearms of the rank 5 magic beast, fiery breaking mountain rhinoceros, that was in our clan's collection, onto his body. Eyeing M.O. Cheng whose hand had become extremely vast, all the upper echelons of the M.O. clan could not help but exclaim out involuntarily. M.O. Lan's expression changed drastically as he eyed M.O. Cheng's hand. The corner of his mouth could not help but twitch. This thing that was the most precious item of the clan and had actually become the private property of M.O. Cheng. As the head of the clan, his heart really had some fury. Go and die. Staring heavily at the black-robed person, M.O. Cheng's feet violently stepped off the platform pillar behind him. His knee bent slightly as his body became like a cannonball that shot directly at the black-robed person. As he charged forward, M.O. Cheng's somewhat large hand was dragged on the ground. The sharp fingers tore out five deep gullies on the hard ground. Eyeing M.O. Cheng, whose strength had suddenly become extremely terrifying, the expression of everyone in the room changed slightly. Although they had heard that the members of the M.O. clan could transplant the limbs of the magic beast to replace their original organs, they had never seen just how great of a change the transplantation could bring. Standing on the spot, the black-robed person eyed M.O. Cheng, whose eyes had become totally red and completely stressed with blood. 
He softly and coldly said with a smile, What a pitiful fellow, it appears that when you have obtained the magic beast's strength, your mental state was gradually eroded by the beast's nature. The most outstanding portion of your so-called transplantation seems to be transforming a person into a magic beast which only knows how to kill, right? Bastard, go and die. Muqing whitened his eyes furiously on his vicious face. His feet violently stomped on the ground and his body shot toward the top of the head of the black-robed person. His enormous palm was ruthlessly swung downwards. The moment that his hand was waved, the air was actually smashed until it created an ear-piercing explosion from this terrifying force. At the feet of this black-robed person, the tough ground began to crack inch by inch under the pressuring of this terrifying force in the air. Sensing the violent attack of the force above his head, the black-robed person slowly raised his head. He clearly revealed the delicate and handsome face under the black robe to the sight of M.O. Cheng, whose eyes were crimson. Even though his mind had already entered a wild state at the moment, a disbelieving shock that was difficult to hide involuntarily surfaced in M.O. Cheng's crimson eyes when he saw the young clear youth-like face of the black robed person. It's over. The delicate and handsome face was expressionless as he eyed the shocked M.O. Cheng. He slowly lifted his palm. On it, a flame seedling of the thick white fane was writhing slightly. An instant later, it suddenly shot out as though it was shot by a flamethrower. The ghastly thick white flame shot into midair and wrapped M.O. Cheng within it. Under the view of everyone, a thick white icy layer suddenly appeared on the surface of the body of M.O. Cheng who was being surrounded by the flame. In the blink of an eye, it completely wrapped him in a lifelike ice sculpture. The bone-chilling flame, a mixture of extreme heat and extreme cold. When it was extremely hot, it incinerates everything, when it was extremely cold, it freezes the land. From Adair, the ice sculpture weakly descended. On it, one could still see the shock and ferociousness on its face just before death. Kacha. The ice sculpture landed on the ground and under the observation of numerous people and burst apart. Within it, not even the corpse was left. As everyone eyed the white colored ice gradually melting on the bright carpet, the interior of the hall was as quiet as death. Chapter 258, The Mysterious Green Clothed Lady the black-robed person eyed the white-colored ice that was melting apart indifferently. He raised his head slowly and his gaze passed through the black-colored doping and slowly swept through the deadly quiet hall. TL, doping, a conical straw hat with a long cloth fixed on the tip. The cloth hides the person's face. Although his sight was isolated by the black-colored doping, everyone at any spot that his gaze faced would change their expression drastically and contract their neck. Many gazes were shifted away while being filled with horror as they roamed around without a target. They no longer dared to look at the black-robed person. Nalan Yenron tightly held her hand. Her pretty face was slightly pale as she stared at the gradually melting ice on the carpet. The lovely body of hers trembled slightly. This M.O. clan's first elder, who was still planning his ambitious plans just an hour ago, currently did not even have a corpse remaining right in front of her. These two vastly different scenes really caused people to have difficulty believing what had actually happened. Nalan Yenron took in a deep breath of icy air. She slowly calmed the undulations in her heart. No matter how one put it, she was far from being that sentimental young girl after three years of training. The pale whiteness on her pretty face was gradually withdrawn. Her pretty eyes stared at the black-robed person and said, regardless of who you are, a grudge between you and the Misty Cloud sect has been created. Mo Ching might not have had the qualification to cause the Misty Cloud sect to have a conflict with the Do Huang, but the Misty Cloud sect's reputation is worth the price. Today, you have killed Mo Ching in front of so many leaders of the Northeastern strengths as well as us. If we, the Misty Cloud sect, do not do anything about it, those other strengths that rely on the Misty Cloud sect would be very disappointed. The gaze under the black robe quietly observed Nalan Yenron who could actually dismiss the pressure of his force. A long while later, he shook his head slightly and softly said, Your Misty Cloud sect and I will sooner or later stand on opposing grounds. Even if today I hadn't killed Mo Cheng, I still would have headed to the Misty Cloud sect in the future. When that time comes, our grudge will likely become even more severe. Therefore, these words of yours have no impact on me. Who are you? Hearing the words of the black robed man, Nalan Yenron's eyebrows were gently pressed together as she cried out involuntarily. You will know in the future. The black-robed person indifferently responded. Immediately, he ignored Nalan Yenron, turned around and slowly walked toward the members of the M.O. clan who had grieving expressions. Hand the person over. The black-robed person stopped his footsteps two meters from M.O. Lan. His voice was as indifferent as ice. Within it contained some killing intent that had yet to disappear, causing M.O. Lan's heart to clearly understand the implications behind the words as it trembled slightly. If he and the others were to delay any longer, the next person who turned into ice would likely be themselves. Sir, the person will immediately be here. M.O. Lan's voice trembled slightly as he replied. His footsteps shivered as he took two steps back before he quietly felt at ease. Five minutes. The black-robed person ignored M.O. Lan's withdrawal. His voice was filled with iciness as he spat out the two words. After which, he was like a wooden pillar, standing in the hall quietly. Hearing these two words, the corner of M.O. Lan's mouth twisted a few times. After which, he hurriedly waved a member of the M.O. clan over and with an anxious face, asked him to quickly go and hasten the process. In the spacious large hall, there were red-colored calligraphy that represented festivity that still hung on the huge pillars. 
However, at this moment, these festive red color caused everyone in the hall looking at it to smile bitterly. It was likely that once the day was over, the M.O. clan who had just celebrated a happy event would have to prepare for a funeral. Numerous gazes swept around the large hall. When the gazes carelessly swept over the black-robed person standing in the middle of the hall, their hearts would violently tremble. The M.O. clan first elder who had suppressed them until they had no temper was much like a cluster of soft mud when he ended up in the hands of this even more terrifying existence. If the latter wanted to need, he needed. The first elder did not have any ability to resist. This kind of strong person was clearly not someone people of their class could come into contact with. Currently, they were all quietly guessing in their hearts just how much dog poo this M.O. Ching must have stepped on in order to attract this strong person who stood at the peak of the Jiama Empire and get killed by him. T.L. Bad luck. In the hall, the human heads were all stirred up, but there was not the slightest sound. The strange scene caused the large hall to be filled with an extremely intimidating atmosphere. Standing on the spot, the head of the black-robed person was twisted slightly. The remnant light from the corner of his eye passed through the doping and finally swept toward the vague black shadow standing on the roof beam. He nodded toward the ladder, indicating that all was proceeding smoothly. Haibo Dong stood at the roof beam and sensed the veiled gaze of the black-robed person from below. He hesitated for a moment and also nodded. However, when he nodded, the old face under the black robe was ignorant and uncertain. This was because, a moment ago, he appeared to have faintly sensed an extremely obscured chi hidden in the hall below. However, this feeling was an extremely vague sense. The extent of the vagueness was such that even Haibo Dong himself could not draw a conclusion. The black robed person did not discover the uncertain expression of Haibo Dong under the other black robe. As he was quietly waiting for a few minutes, the dark black ring on his hand suddenly trembled slightly. The ring's vibration may be very slight but it did not escape the black robed person's notice. He immediately questioned in a stunned and soft voice, Teacher, what is it? Be careful. For some unknown reason, I seem to faintly sense a somewhat familiar scent. Yao Lao's old voice was somewhat grave and uncertain as it sounded in Xiao Yan's heart. Ah? Uh? What do you mean? Hearing this, Xiao Yan was momentarily blank. He said in a stunned manner, a familiar scent. At the moment when you had borrowed my spiritual strength and erupted, that scent which was originally perfectly hidden had some movement. Otherwise, I'm afraid that even I could not discover it. Yao Lao's deep voice said, Moreover, this scent gives me a familiar feeling, it may be that whoever it was may have made contact with the me in the past. Hearing Yao Lao's words, Xiao Yan's heart suddenly trembled. Some shock surfaced on the face under the black robe. Xiao Yan was not certain about the strength Yao Lao had in the past. However, he was at least certain that the Yao Lao back then was a strong person at the peak of the pyramid of the Dochi continent. In order to be in contact with the Yao Lao back then, the person's strength was definitely not something that could be underestimated. Back then, I seldom came into contact with the strong people of the Jiama Empire. Therefore, I think that this person of unknown background should belong to a strong person who wanders the Dochi continent. But for some unknown reason, he had actually come to this Jiama Empire and concealed himself in this M.O. clan. What exactly is he after? Yao Lao mused. What is his strength like? Xiao Yan pressed his eyebrows tightly together as he asked the most important question in his heart. I'm not certain. Now, I can only vaguely sense him. I am not even able to identify who exactly he is. Yao Lao had a slight headache as he replied. No matter what happens, be careful. Wait for Qing Lin to appear and quickly bring her away. Okay. Xiao Yan nodded his head slightly. Some seriousness surfaced on his face. The remnant glint from the corner of his eyes, with the help from the cover of the black robe, indistinctly swept across the hall that was filled with people. However, he did not gain anything from it. Instantly, the alertness in his heart gradually rose. The five minutes swiftly passed by. At the last moment, the anxious-faced M.O. Lan eyed the human figure that had appeared at the edge of his sight and heaved a sigh of relief. The few human figures quickly dashed into the hall. On the back of the three M.O. clan's members, a little girl wearing a green colored clothes was opening her shocked watery eyes as she timidly sized up this foreign environment. In the large hall, everyone's gaze were staring at this pitiful green clothed little girl. Their hearts were somewhat stunned. They did not expect that the reason for this Do Huang to start a fight was actually this little girl whose appearance was quite pretty. Ying Qin Lin who was a little thin and pallid but otherwise had no serious problems, Xiao Yan let out a long sigh of relief. His tightly clenched fists under his sleeves had become much more relaxed. Sir, this is the little girl that the first elder had captured from the rock desert city. During this period of time, we did not harm her. M.O. Ren carefully carried Qing Lin down and walked to Xiao Yan uneasily as he said. The current Qing Lin did not recognize Xiao Yan. Therefore, when she saw M.O. Ren carrying her to the black-robed person, an anxiousness immediately surfaced on her small face. She struggled for a moment, but failed to even slightly shake M.O. Ren's hand. Ying Qing Lin who was being carried over, Xiao Yan heaved a sigh of relief. He extended his hand and wanted to receive Qing Lin when a change soared in the calm hall. Bang. When Xiao Yan extended his hand, a clear voice suddenly sounded by his side. Immediately, the hard ground abruptly burst apart. Countless spacious green-colored tree branches soared out from below the ground. After which, they twined together in a lightning-like manner. In the blink of an eye, they formed a wooden cage, tightly locking Xiao Yan within it. 
The sudden change caused everyone in the large hall including Nail and Yenron to all be at a loss. They did not expect that there was someone who would take the initiative to attack this Dou Wang. During the time when everyone was at a loss, a pale green colored human figure who was standing by a pillar like a servant in the hall, where everyone heads were moving, suddenly shot out. The green colored human figure's speed was so fast to the point of terrifying. In the blink of an eye, she flashed to the front of the startled M.O. Ran, extended her hands and pulled it back, scooping Qing Lin into his chest. You want to flee? The green colored human figure grabbed Qing Lin. The tip of her foot pressed on the ground and swiftly left this place. However, a thick white flame raged out from within the wooden cage. In an instant, it completely incinerated the cage. With a soft cry, Xiao Yan's feet that contained the ferocious force violently kicked at the green-colored human figure's head. Sensing Xiao Yan's ferocious attack, the green-colored human figure waved his hand. An enormous wooden pillar suddenly soared from the ground. As sawdust flew everywhere, it successfully blocked Xiao Yan's attack. After blocking Xiao Yan, the body of the green-colored figure twisted strangely in midair and shot toward the exterior of the hall. Old High, stop him. Hey, there really was someone. Just as the green-colored human figure was about to exit the door, cold air swelled at the main entrance. In an instant, it agglomerated into a thick ice shield that completely blocked the main door. The toe of the green-colored human figure gently pressed on the ice shield before she pulled back somewhat helplessly. Her body leaped onto the top of a pillar and her gaze drifted toward Hai Bo Dong on a roof beam above. He laughed in a tender voice, good GE, giggle, two Do Wangs. I really did not expect that this Jiama Empire had so many hidden strong people. However, I am extremely interested in this little girl and will not casually let go. In the large hall, Xiao Yan leaped onto the top of another pillar in a lightning-like manner. He coldly eyed the green-clothed lady that was hiding her appearance. Between both his palms, thick white flames were swiftly rising. Within the spacious hall, three majestic forces surged violently. As everyone in the hall lifted their heads to watch the three people on the roof beams, their faces were stunned. Chapter 259 The Fight Between Three Do Huangs On the top of the enormous pillars, there were three human figures standing. Their majestic and imposing manner exerted so much pressure that everyone had trouble breathing. In the large hall, Nalin Yenron and Gui eyed the three human figures on the pillar with shocked faces. Looking at the imposing manner of the three people, it was clear that all of them were of the Do Huang class. These extremely strong people of such a class were something that Nalin Yenron rarely usually saw despite her status. Currently, however, three of them had suddenly appeared in the hall of the Mo clan. The shock that they brought directly shattered even Nalin Yenron's mental strength, which was quite strong. I must report this matter to teacher as soon as possible. This thought flashed in Nalin Yenron's heart. She exchanged a glance with Guyi. Both of them saw a seriousness that had never existed before in each other's eyes. Three Do Huangs were sufficient to turn the Jiama Empire upside down. Standing on top of a pillar, Xiao Yan watched the green-clothed lady intently. Although her face was covered by green yarn, which covered her appearance, her exquisite and lovely body under the green clothes gave everyone an understanding in their hearts that the lady's appearance would not be too terrible. At this moment, this mysterious green-clothed lady gently flicked her hand on the repeatedly struggling Qing Lin whom she was hugging to her chest. Immediately, the struggling Qing Lin fainted. Hee hee, little fellow, you can relax. I cannot bear to hurt you. The green-clothed lady smiled softly as she gently rubbed Qing Lin's small face. Her left hand gently hugged the ladder to her chest before lifting her head up and watching Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong who had surrounded her from both sides. She smiled and said, Had I known that two Do Huangs would be attracted, I would have taken action much earlier. The transplanting technique of the M.O. clan isn't as mystical as I had thought, I even secretly learned a little. It really is a losing deal. Hearing the green-clothed lady's words, the expressions on M.O. Ran and the others below changed drastically. The secret technique that the M.O. clan was so proud of had actually been secretly learned by this mysterious woman without anyone knowing. This was like the thief stealing a chicken and eating it. However, the thief later blamed the owner for rearing chicken that did not taste good. This bandit logic of the green-clothed lady really caused many M.O. clan's members to be so furious that they rolled their eyes. However, regardless of how they rolled their eyes, they did not dare step forward and reason with the other party. After all, a strong person whom even a Do Huang had to treat seriously was someone that their MO clan did not have the ability or qualification to reason with. Therefore, their faces could only darken and swallow this bitter fruit without making any noise. Who are you? Why are you trying to abduct Qing Lin? Xiao Yan stared at the green-clothed woman and the eyes under his cloak winced. Is this little fellow named Qing Lin? Haha, <laughs> it's quite a good name. The green-clothed lady laughed. Her delicate fingers carefully pulled apart Qing Lin's eyelids and stared intently at the faint three little black dots around the pupil. She then nodded her head with satisfaction and softly muttered, it really is the triple jade green snake flower pupils. Looks like Baya's senses did not go wrong. TL, Baya also means white teeth. The green clothed lady's act of pulling open Qing Lin's eyelid caused the corner of Xiao Yan's mouth to tremble a few times. Now, he had also understood that this mysterious lady had also come targeting Qing Lin's triple jade green snake flower pupils. After the green-clothed lady revealed herself, Yao Lao continued to remain quiet. 
It appeared that he was worried that if he continued to communicate with Xiao Yan, his existence would be discovered. Xiao Yan clearly understood this. Therefore, he did not inquire about the other person's identity in his heart. When your chi erupted earlier, why did I sense a familiar feeling? Don't tell me that we have come into contact in the past. The green-clothed lady suddenly lifted her head and stared at Xiao Yan. Her eyebrows were slightly vertical as she asked in a doubtful manner. Is that so? A noncommittal careless reply was given. Xiao Yan's cold voice said, Regardless of who you are, please return Qing Lin to me. Otherwise, my friend and I will have to snatch her by force. Haha, this little girl is far too important to me. It is impossible for me to hand her to you. The green-clothed lady laughed and shook her head. Her gaze floated past Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong as she softly laughed, although the two of you are also Do Wang, it is somewhat impossible for you to stop me. Do it. Hearing the previous words of the green-clothed lady, Xiao Yan did not hesitate by even the slightest bit. A low cry sounded and the turbulent thick white flame suddenly surged from within his body. Immediately, the temperature of the hall was suddenly rose. Xiao Yan's toe suddenly stomped on the top of the pillar. Instantly, numerous cracked lines began swiftly spreading from his toes. Finally, it actually spread all the way to the ground. The huge pillar had become unstable in an instant. Borrowing the launching force, Xiao Yan's body shot toward the green-clothed lady like a bullet leaving its shell. The moment Xiao Yan's soft cry fell, Hai Bo Dong also acted in a lightning-like manner. His palm swiftly formed hand seals to transfer energy. Immediately, the cold air in front of him agglomerated. Ten plus sharp icicles that were as thick as a person's thigh formed in the empty space. On the tip position of the ice pricks, there was a spiraling glyph, causing it to appear to have an even greater killing strength. Hai Bo Dong waved his hand gently. Ten plus huge icicles shot out in different directions. It was spread all over the area and completely covered all the space that the green-colored lady could dodge to. As his body rushed into midair, Xiao Yan's fist that contained the thick white flame was accompanied by a sonic boom and heat as he violently smashed it at the green-clothed lady. With Xiao Yan at the front and Hai Bo Dong at the back, the green-clothed lady, who was attacked from both directions, mused for a moment. She then stamped her foot on the ground. Following a rattling sound, a huge wooden wall suddenly shot out from the wooden pillar under her feet. At the same time, the green-clothed lady's right hand expanded outward. Five emerald-colored thorny energy whips shot out from her fingertips. As the long whips danced, it shielded her entire body within it. Those icicles that were swiftly piercing over were knocked aside. Xiao Yan shattered the wooden wall with a punch. His knee bent slightly and his body turned into the shape of a bow. An instant later, he was suddenly lifted higher. In a lightning-like manner, he was above the head of the green-clothed lady who intended to break through the roof and escape. Xiao Yan's body rolled in the air. His foot used the force from rotating violently and accompanied by a howling breaking wind sound, heavily smashed onto the shoulders of the green-clothed lady. Bang. Xiao Yan hit the target on the first blow. However, the expression of his face under the black robe did not have the slightest joy. This was because he sensed that the thing that he struck was not a human body. Instead it was like a section of soft rotten wood. Moreover, the rotten wood actually reflected some of the force erupted from him, causing Xiao Yan's body to become a little unstable. The people in the Jiama Empire really don't seem to like to be reasonable. Such tendency toward violence. No wonder the strong people on the continent all say that you people are rough. The green-clothed lady was somewhat dissatisfied at being struck by Xiao Yan as she spoke. Her right fist was curled up and a majestic green-colored energy targeted Xiao Yan's chest and shot forward. Both of Xiao Yan's hands crossed in front of his chest as the thick white flame rose, withstanding most of the energy pillar. Although the other party's attack did not cause Xiao Yan any injury, the force contained in the energy pillar still managed to push Xiao Yan away. This is within the boundaries of the Jiama Empire, so I don't wish to fight with the both of you. Although it is impossible for me to kill the both of you in this short amount of time, you aren't good enough if you want to block me. The green-clothed lady laughed in a spoiled manner as she eyed Xiao Yan who was pushed aside. She lifted her head slightly and a force that was even stronger than Hai Bo Dong suddenly swarmed out of her body. Immediately, the thick ceiling of the hall burst open. Wood fragments and tiles were scattered, revealing the blue sky outside. Haha, <laughs> goodbye. The two of you can be rest assured that I will not hurt this little girl. I will also not be using anything similar to the disgusting transplantation technique of the M.O. clan. The green-clothed lady laughed. Emerald-colored Do Chi wings swiftly formed behind her and after which, she shot toward the sky. Mysterious Ice Shield Form Eyeing the green-clothed lady who wanted to flee from the hall, Hai Bo Dong cried out softly. Immediately, the energy around the ceiling swiftly fluctuated. The cold air began agglomerating in a lightning-like manner that frightened people. Finally, it actually agglomerated into an ice shield that was at least tens of meters wide. In front of the shocked gazes below, it precisely covered the ceiling. Ku, what a powerful ice Dou Qi. However, with just your two-star Dou Huang strength, it is insufficient to stop me. The green-clothed lady laughed faintly when faced with the ice shield that was vast to the extent of being somewhat frightening. Her right hand formed hand seals in a lightning-like manner. As she displayed the seals, the space around her swiftly fluctuated and in the blink of an eye, over a hundred green-colored sharp wooden pillars appeared in the air. After which, they carried an incomparably ferocious force and crashed violently onto the ice shield. Kacha! 
Under unceasing waves of green-colored wooden pillars colliding with it, cracked lines gradually spread on the tough ice shield. Finally, it burst apart with a bang. Goodbye. The moment when the ice shield was broken, the green-clothed lady tilted her head to face Xiao Yin who was charging over and laughed in a pampered manner. She flapped her pair of wings and rushed out. With a dark face, Xiao Yin stared at the woman who was swiftly rising into the sky. His pair of large purple cloud wings were extended. He turned around, faced Hai Bo Dong who had rushed up onto a pillar and softly cried, Chase. Once he said that, Xiao Yan took the lead in flapping his wings. Like a huge bird, he shot to the skyline and chased after the green-colored human figure. Ah. Uh. Standing on the top of a wooden pillar, Hai Bo Dong eyed Xiao Yan who had quickly given chase and could not resist shaking his head helplessly. He hesitated briefly in his heart. Although the green-clothed lady was a little haggard when handling their pincer attack just now, Hai Bo Dong clearly understood that the strength of the lady was stronger than either of the two of them. If it was in the past, given Hai Bo Dong's character, he would definitely not help Xiao Yan go against a mysterious strong person with extremely great strength. However today, Xiao Yan had took out a spiritual recovery purple pill, and completely placed him, who was once the Ice Emperor, completely by the former side and had become Xiao Yan's private fighter. Therefore, if Hai Bo Dong wanted to quickly recover his peak strength, Hai Bo Dong had no choice but to closely follow Xiao Yan. Therefore, after hesitating slightly in his heart, Hai Bo Dong could only smile bitterly and summon out his pair of ice wings before following. As Hai Bo Dong shot to the air, the majestic force that had spread throughout the hall finally began to gradually disappear. In the hall, everyone had numb faces as they eyed the solid hall that was destroyed until it was a complete mess. Their faces twitched involuntarily. Was this the damaging force from a battle between Do Huangs? Was this, not far too terrifying? Everyone in the messy hall exchanged glances. A fervent heat gradually rose in their hearts. After today, the matter of these three mysterious Do Huangs fighting would likely be spread throughout the entire Jiama Empire in an instant. As for them, they were the first group who personally witnessed the fight between the Do Huangs. No matter what happened, they would have the capital to boast to others in the future. Nailin Yenron lifted her pretty face. Her expression was repeatedly changing as she eyed the blue sky. A long while later, she waved her sleeves gently, turned around and walked out of the hall. Let's go, Uncle Go. There is no longer a need for us to remain here. We should immediately go and report this to teacher and get her to investigate the identities of these three mysterious strong people. Eyeing Nailin Yenron's tall back, V hesitated for a moment. He lifted his head to look at the broken ceiling. The fleeting glance under the black robe from before once again flashed in his mind. It definitely, definitely cannot be the brat from the Xiao clan. Gui clenched his teeth violently as he inhaled a deep breath. He tightly suppressed the somewhat ridiculous thought that was in the deep region of his heart. After which, he turned around and walked out of the hall. Chapter 260, Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor High in the blue sky, three majestic and imposing beings flew past. Under this terrifying and imposing manner, a commotion was immediately stirred within Yen City below. Numerous people who were of the Dosher class or higher lifted their heads with dull faces and eyed the human figures flying past in the sky like falling stars. Their feet could not help but tremble. The imposing manner from these three Do Huangs was very rarely seen in the Jiama Empire. Very few people who had yet to reach a certain level had the qualification to feel the pressure from such force. Under the pressure of these three imposing force, an unrest swiftly began spreading within the city. On top of the unrest, an even greater number of people who were quite strong shot up to the roofs with frenzy and excitement after they were stunned for a moment. After which, they were as excited as fleas, shuttling on the roofs of the city as they followed the three majestic and imposing presences from far behind. Many people felt great respect in their hearts towards extremely strong people of such class. A fight between people of such high level undoubtedly possessed a great attraction toward people of the Dosher or the Dosher class. Within the spacious city, a few hundred black shadows chose to move quickly. That momentum was somewhat frightening and spectacular. In the sky above, Xiao Yan's face was dark as he was locked onto the green-colored human figure in front of him. The pair of wings on his back flapped quickly and a wild wind blew from his front, cutting like blades onto his body and causing him to feel a little pain. Not far behind Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong was following closely. Currently, an icy cold white-colored Dou Qi was shrouding his body. On his shriveled hand, white shining sharp icicles covered the tips of his fingers. As it curled slightly, waves of thick cold force was emitted. He lifted his head and frowned as he eyed the green-clothed lady whose flying speed was very quick. After musing for a moment, his palms suddenly began forming seals. The ice-cold Dou Qi in his body swiftly flowed, surged out of his body and began to control the ice-type energy that were in the air a hundred meters away in the distance. When one reached the Dou Huang class, one could already use the Dou Qi in one's body to resonate with natural energy during battle. After that, one could control these energies and unleash an incomparably terrifying force. This was also the reason why only Dou Huang possessed a destructive force that horrified people. The training of a Doja started off with training the body first. After the body was trained until it reached the pinnacle, the Dou Qi in one's body would be able to resonate with the natural energy of the same affinity and finally achieve the aim of controlling it. All Doja, nearly without exception, felt both respect and yearning in their hearts toward this realm. 
Before entering this realm, one person may be able to block 10, block 100, block 1000, but the strength of a person would always reach a point when it was exhausted. Only by reaching the realm of controlling the natural energy could the idea of one person taking on 10,000 not be an illusion like the moon in the water of the flower in the mirror. According to legend, when one's strength reached the Dojong or Doshin class, one could cause the sky to collapse, the land to crack, the mountains to topple and the sea to flip by just raising one's hand. This did not appear to be just an illusion. When one reached that realm, one could summon the lightning and raise magma with a single thought. Ending as it began, tens of thousands of soldiers would all turn to ashes. Of course, nothing was ever absolute. There were also some strong people who gave up the opportunity to resonate with the natural energy. They chose to repeatedly strengthen their own flesh. Once they had trained their physical flesh until it transformed, their punches and kicks could break the land and shatter space. Their destruction strength would not be smaller than controlling the natural energy. Instead, it could be even greater. However, just by strengthening one's flesh, the extent of difficulty of the training would be even greater than that of the former. Moreover, the intense pain that training one's flesh created made it really difficult for people whose mind was not firm to persist on. Mysterious Crystal Thorn Wall The low cry sounded in midair. Quickly following it, the space tens of meters in front of the green-clothed lady began to become somewhat distorted. Immediately, a white-colored fog swiftly appeared and in a lightning-like manner, agglomerated in the air into a thick ice layer that was around 70 to 80 feet wide. Moreover, icicles that were a few meters long were densely packed on the surface of the thick ice layer. One could imagine that if one were to smash into it, one would likely not feel good about one's fate. The sudden appearance of the huge ice layer in the sky also caused the numerous people who had continued to follow below to voice waves of shocked gasps. Their faces immediately became even more frantic. This was the respect and the yearning every doja had toward strength. Humph. Eyeing the ice layer that had suddenly appeared, the green-clothed lady was somewhat angry as she snorted. Clearly, the two people closely chasing behind her caused her to be a little impatient. Break for me. With her left hand hugging the unconscious Ching Lin, the green-clothed lady suddenly used her right hand to violently push at the empty space in front of her. An emerald glow soared suddenly to the skyline. Green-colored vines strangely surfaced all over the place. After the vines appeared, they began to twist and twine around each other. In just 10 plus seconds, countless vines actually twined into a green-colored fist that was around 40 to 50 feet in size. The enormous fist was covered by an energy glow. After which, it carried a howling sound as it abruptly smashed at the thick ice layer. Any place that it passed, the sharp icicles broke with a bang. Bang. High in the sky, an explosion sounded. The huge ice layer was smashed by the emerald-colored huge fist until an enormous hole appeared. Hearing the explosion that sounded high in the air and the falling cold fragments of ice, the people's heart below trembled a couple of times. Each of them vaguely estimated in their hearts. Immediately, they were shocked to realize that the energy contained within the huge fist could likely directly break the city's gate of Yen City with just a punch. What terrifying strength! The group of people below as well as Xiao Yen and Hai Bo Dong Hai in the sky groaned in surprise in the hearts as they eyed the shattered ice layer. The body of the green-clothed lady shot out from the empty hole in a lightning-like manner. At the same time, her hand abruptly waved backwards. Instantly, an enormous green-colored energy fist shot out from the hole and violently smashed towards Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan's expression changed slightly as he personally experienced that intense pressuring force. His right fist abruptly pushed forward. Nothing happened for a short while as he aimed at the fist smashing towards him before an enormous thick white flame pillar shot out. The thick white flame pillar heavily collided with the energy fist. When the huge energy fist closed to be within 10 meters to Xiao Yan, a thick white ice layer swiftly spread and wrapped the fist within it. Xiao Yan's flying body shot past. His feet gently pressed against the huge fist that had turned into ice and a hidden force was transferred over. Immediately, the huge energy fist burst with a bang. While the cold ice shot in all directions, Xiao Yan's body charged out of the ice layer hole in a lightning-like manner. Immediately, he came to an abrupt stop as he quietly eyed the green-clothed lady who had suddenly stopped flying. After Xiao Yan came to a stop, Hai Bo Dong behind him also caught up. He came to a stop beside Xiao Yan's shoulders and watched the woman in front. The cold air was being swallowed and spit out between his palms. Staring at the green-clothed lady, Hai Bo Dong tilted his head and eyed Xiao Yan. He asked in a soft voice, why has she stopped fleeing? I don't know. Xiao Yan shook his head. His gaze had never shifted from the green-clothed lady. After he was silent for a moment, he opened his mouth and said, your strength is indeed very great. With just any one of the two of us, it may be difficult to hold you back. Unfortunately, however, there are two of us. Han Qing Lin over. We also don't wish to come into conflict with you. Xiao Yan said deeply. That won't do. In order to find the triple jade green snake flower pupils, I have searched for decades. Now that I have luckily met one, forget about the two of you being Do Huang, even if there were a couple more, I would definitely not let go. The green clothed lady shook her head. Her tone did not suggest that there was any room for discussion. Get her. As he eyed the green clothed lady gloomily, Xiao Yan's patience was also gradually worn out. At that moment, he did not procrastinate. With a low cry, the two of them prepared to once again launch ferocious attacks. 
Were it not for me being worried that staying here for any longer would attract the strong people of the Jiama Empire, with just the two of you, you might not be able to beat me even if we face each other head-on. The green-clothed lady was somewhat haughty as she laughed. Unfortunately, we are indeed in the Jiama Empire. Xiao Yan coldly smiled as he retorted. In his palm, the thick white flame was writhing with increasing ferocity. His body leaned forward and was already preparing the force to attack. That's right, now we are in the Jiama Empire, therefore, I also won't be conceited and fight with the two of you alone. The green-clothed lady shook her head regretfully and placed her delicate finger into the green yarn in her mouth. Immediately a somewhat sharp whistle which carried a strange sound wave spread out in the sky. Hong. Not long after the whistle sounded, a roar suddenly replied from a distant forest. Immediately, an enormous huge beast that was nearly a hundred feet long suddenly soared into the sky and flew over to their area of the skyline. Its enormous dark shadow covered a large portion of the ground. The huge beast's body was extremely long. At one glance, it seemed to be similar to a snake-shaped magic beast. The flying speed of this magic beast was so fast that it shocked people. As its enormous tail twisted and swung, the beast appeared to be teleporting. In just a few movements, it was quite close to the green-clothed lady. As the huge beast moved nearer, its entire appearance was finally absorbed into Xiao Yan's and the other's eyes. Immediately, they involuntarily and gently inhaled a breath of cold air. The huge beast should perhaps be called a huge serpent to be more accurate. Its body was extremely huge and completely dark black. Amidst the dark black, there were numerous bright lines with a strange appearances. On the two sides of the huge serpent's body there were actually eight black wings that carried traces of purple. On its head there was a dark black spiral patterned horn as a faint purple glow flashed on the tip of the horn. Clearly, it concealed a lethal poison. Faint bright colored lines on its head vaguely formed a crown shape. Within the triangular shaped eyes, it did not have a beast-like character. Instead, it was filled with the shrewdness and cunningness, like a human's. Eight-winged black serpent emperor. Eyeing the enormous black serpent appearance, Haibo Dong's face changed as he cried out involuntarily. Hearing Haibo Dong's somewhat shocked cry, Xiao Yan's heart trembled slightly. Information rose from within his heart. Eight-winged black serpent emperor, a type of extremely gifted unique beast. It is the evolution of the rank 3 magic beast, two-winged black serpent. Starting from the third rank, each time it rose a rank, it would have an additional pair of wings. When it achieved eight wings, it would be the eight-winged black serpent emperor, whose fierce name is renowned throughout the Dochi continent. Damn it. A rank 6 magic beast. I didn't expect that this woman would actually have a companion. Xiao Yan heart suddenly sank as he eyed the enormous black serpent with a gloomy face. He did not think that this Dou Huang class, eight-winged black serpent emperor, was the steed of the green-clothed lady. Once it reached a certain class, the eight-winged black serpent emperor already possessed an intellect that was not below that of a human. Its emperor-like haughtiness naturally would not allow it to yield to a human who was merely the same class as it. In the distant sky, the green-clothed lady and the enormous eight-winged black serpent emperor gradually came closer together. Immediately, two frightening forces shot to the skyline, causing the lazy clouds to be shattered into pieces at this moment. This time, it's going to be troublesome. Sensing these two frightening forces, the expressions of Xiao Yan and Haibo Dong suddenly became extremely downcast. Chapter 261, The Huge Fight in the Sky In the distant skyline, four imposing presences of the Dou Huang class spread across the sky. The surrounding space seemed to tremble slightly at this moment. The lazy white clouds in the blue sky were torn into pieces by the domineering forces in the sky. In Yan City, everyone repeatedly trembled under these four interacting vast and mighty forces. That terrifying pressure caused people to feel as though they were each carrying a 500 kilograms heavy stone. Their breathing became somewhat deep and heavy. Lu Man, haha, it's unexpected that you would actually be forced into scurrying around randomly. If this was to be conveyed back, you would likely be ridiculed to death by them. The enormous triangular shaped eye stared at Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong opposite him. The huge mouth of the eight-winged black serpent emperor opened and closed, emitting a deafeningly loud laughter. You bastard Baiya. I am carrying someone with me and also don't wish to wind up fighting them. If I don't run, should I just foolishly stand there and wait for them to attack? When the green-clothed lady whose body was suspended beside the head of the eight-winged black serpent emperor heard his mocking laughter, she could not help but yell furiously. Hee hee. The eight-winged black serpent emperor smiled and shook his huge tail. His triangle-shaped eyes moved. When he glanced at Qing Lin in the chest of the lady whom he addressed as Lu Man, his thunder-like voice became much more serious. Is it really the triple jade green snake flower pupils? Yes, there is nothing wrong with your senses. It really is that. As she mentioned this, a joy was spread over the forehead of this green-clothed lady while she smiled, nodded, and replied. That's good. Hearing this, the eight-winged black serpent emperor clearly sighed in relief. He once again shifted his gaze toward Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong opposite him. After scanning slightly, he exclaimed in shock. He paused on Xiao Yan's body which was emitting a thick white flame and said with shock, how unusual. Why do I feel that the chi on this person seems faintly familiar? You also had this kind of feeling. The green-clothed lady blinked her eyes in surprise. She sized up Xiao Yan and said, Just now, I exposed my cover because of the somewhat familiar qi on his body. 
However, there are far too many strong people that I have come into contact with. Therefore, I cannot remember just who this chi is similar to. The white colored flame on his body should be a heavenly flame, right? It is just that I am unsure which kind it is. TSK TSK, what a lucky fellow. The eight-winged black serpent emperor said in surprise. Yes, it indeed is a type of heavenly flame. His strength is extremely terrifying. My 10,000 wooden prison does not have any effect on him. The green-clothed lady nodded her head and said deeply. Hee hee, it has been many years since I came to the Jiama Empire. I did not expect that such a strong person had actually appeared. The eight-winged black serpent emperor was somewhat surprised as he said with a smile. All right, enough of this nonsense. After creating such a huge commotion here, I'm afraid that the people from the Misty Cloud sect and that old demon from the Jiama Empire royalty have already sent something. If we were to drag on, it would be troublesome once they were to hurry over. The green-clothed lady said deeply. Okay, I know. What a long-winded woman. The eight-winged black serpent emperor swung his enormous tail slightly and immediately said somewhat regretfully, but how unfortunate. Originally, I wanted to find Queen Medusa to have a competition. Who would have thought that her evolution actually failed? Ah, such a beautiful woman. It was clear that she appeared just for this emperor. Baya, stop having such romantic thoughts. Have you forgotten the terrible state that she beat you into the last time? The green-clothed lady rolled her eyes and helplessly said. Hey, I love her violence. The eight-winged black serpent emperor shook his huge head and laughed loudly, all right. You should bring the girl and leave first. I will block them. Ten minutes later, we will meet at the old place. Ah, be careful. Those two are not simple people. The green-clothed lady nodded her head and reminded. The pair of wings on her back flapped gently and she shot to the distant skyline. Rest assured. If we were to compare flying speed, there is no one in the Do Huang class who can be compared with me. The eight-winged black serpent emperor waved his tail toward the green-clothed lady in the distant and proudly laughed. You want to go? Leaving her behind. Seeing the green-clothed lady quickly fleeing, Xiao Yan's expression sank. He flapped his purple cloud wings gently and his body shot forward. Hee hee, your opponent is me. Seeing Xiao Yan who wanted to fly past him from above, the eight-winged black serpent emperor laughed. His eight wings flapped together and his huge body instantly appeared on the path that Xiao Yan was flying on. His huge serpent tail was suddenly swung. The terrifying force that it contained actually caused the space to have a sort of distorted feeling. Sensing the terrifying strength of the serpent tail, Xiao Yan's expression changed. He did not dare to met it head on. His body swiftly twisted and dodged it. Although he dodged the attack, his aim of giving chase was stopped. Damn it. Old high, attack. Xiao Yan cursed softly. As his body avoided the repeated attacks of the eight-winged black serpent emperor, he turned his head around and shouted toward Haibo Dong. Help me block him for a moment. Haibo Dong's expression was serious as he cried out softly. His hand formed some seals. As his sleeves trembled slightly, cold air suddenly surged out of his body. In an instant, the entire place was completely shrouded by cold air. Due to the increased intensity of the cold air, threads of snow began to descend from the sky. A moment later, wild winds howled. The snow swiftly agglomerated into snow-white ice blades. The threads of wild wind gradually turned into a vortex which suddenly expanded. A moment later, the vortex actually expanded until it was over 10 meters wide. As the wild wind howled, numerous sharp ice blades were shot into the vortex. In an instant, a white-colored tornado whose exterior was covered by sharp ice blades appeared out of thin air in the sky. By using his own strength to build such a ferocious ice blade storm, a lot of cold sweat began to accumulate on Haibo Dong's forehead despite his strength. Xiao Yan, move aside. Haibo Dong shouted in a low voice. When he saw Xiao Yan swiftly withdrawing to one side, Haibo Dong waved his sleeves. An enormous ice blade storm that carried a sharp breaking wind sound, hauled as it swept toward the eight-winged black serpent emperor. Hey, the momentum is quite good. However, I am a six-star Do Huang. How can this two-star Do Huang strength of yours compete with me? Ha ha. Eyeing the ice blade storm that was being swept over, the eight-winged black serpent emperor laughed loudly. He swung his huge head and a black-colored flame suddenly surged out of his body. After which, it was unceasingly being supplied out before finally agglomerating into an equally large black-colored energy, eight-winged black serpent emperor, on top of his head. Swinging his huge tail abruptly, the eight-winged black serpent emperor that was completely agglomerated from the strange black-colored flame violently shot out from the eight-winged black serpent emperor. It carried a force that was quite terrifying and violently collided with the white-colored ice blade tornado. At the moment of collision, the space when the two came into contact appeared to have shattered and opened tiny black-colored crack lines. Bang. Two different kinds of terrifying energy, with one being white and the other being black, stood off against each other for a moment before suddenly exploding in the sky. The intense energy explosion sound could still be faintly heard even a kilometer away. At the instance when the explosion occurred, a circle of energy ripples spread out from the point of explosion and shook both Haibo Dong and the eight-winged black serpent emperor, at the same time, forcing them to pull back swiftly. 
Haha, with the way you squander, even if you are a Dou Huang, you could likely only display it a couple of times, no. Ying Hai Bo Dong, whose face had some cold sweat surfacing, the eight-winged black serpent emperor, laughed loudly. Octane Blast Before his laughter completely fell, his huge triangular eyes abruptly shrunk. The dark black scales on his body abruptly and strangely tightened. A layer of faint black-colored strange grease seeped out from below the scales and swiftly wrapped the eight-winged black serpent emperor's body within it. At the waist of the huge body of the eight-winged black serpent emperor, Xiao Yan's body suddenly appeared in a flash. His fist that was covered by a thick white flame that abruptly tightened and carried a terrifying force like a burst of lightning when it violently smashed downward. At this moment, that spacious black-colored robe on Xiao Yan seemed to have become as tough as steel. Bang. Xiao Yan's fist smashed heavily onto the body of the eight-winged black serpent emperor. However, Xiao Yan's expression became extremely ugly. This was because he had sensed that the body of the eight-winged black serpent emperor had suddenly become as greasy as a loach. Even though Xiao Yan's fist smashed onto the serpent, it moved along the layer of greasy film on the beast body and drifted away. Although most of the attack from this blow missed, there was still a small portion that was solidly smashed onto the body of the eight-winged black serpent emperor. The high temperature contained in the thick white flame immediately caused the small section of serpent scale where the fist had landed to, to curl up. Hiss, it's painful. The intense pain that was transmitted from his body caused the huge body of the eight-winged black serpent emperor to abruptly curl up. The huge tail suddenly swung back and violently smashed on Xiao Yan's back. Immediately, Xiao Yan became like a rubber ball as he was sent flying. Glug. The enormous force transmitted from his back caused Xiao Yan to spit out a mouthful of blood. His pair of wings flapped rapidly in order to stabilize his staggering body. Ah, it is after all not a strength that belongs to me. It is extremely awkward controlling it. Xiao Yan wiped off the blood stain from the corner of his mouth and laughed bitterly in his heart. Are you alright? Hai Bo Dong flew to Xiao Yan's side and inquired. I'm fine. Xiao Yan shook his head. His gaze was somewhat anxious as he eyed the distant horizon. During this period of them that the eight-winged black serpent emperor held them off, that green-clothed lady had fled until one could not see her shadow. What do we do? Although he cannot kill us, with his strength it does not seem difficult to hold us off. Hai Bo Dong laughed bitterly, the affinity of this fellow coincidentally restrains mine. The scales all over him have a defense that is frightening. Was it not for you relying on the heavenly flame, just now, that punch would likely have little effect on him. Xiao Yan clenched his teeth tightly, his breathing was a little hurried. The both of us don't possess those terrifying Dou techniques with great destructive power. If we want to defeat him, it would seem a little difficult. Hai Bo Dong sighed. Xiao Yan remained quiet. The bone-chilling flame was something that belonged to Yao Lao. Therefore, the extent at which Xiao Yan could control it was far from being as flexible as Yao Lao. Moreover, the spiritual strength that had enabled him to be able to fight with the Dou Huang also completely belonged to Yao Lao. All of these were not of related to Xiao Yan. He had only played the part of a transferring point. Even the Octane Blast did not have much effect on the Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor. Then the only hidden card that Xiao Yan was left with was the D-Class Dou Technique, Flame Splitting Tsunami. Placing his palm gently on his shoulder, Xiao Yan's finger touched the icy cold black colored huge ruler on his back. However, just as he was preparing to use this last hidden card, the corner of his eye abruptly stopped on the bone-chilling flame on his left hand. His mind was blank for a moment. After being quiet for a moment, a thought that was somewhat insane quietly began to excitedly rise from the deep regions of his heart without any restraint. Perhaps, this will be even more terrifying. Chapter 262, Merging the Heavenly Flames, Angry Buddha Lotus Flame When this nearly crazy thought appeared, it caused Xiao Yan to shudder involuntarily. However, no matter how he suppressed it, this thought continued to climb and surround his heart. No matter what happened, he could not disperse it, like a demon pestering him. Under this futile attempt at expelling it, Xiao Yan unconsciously and gradually became obsessed by this thought. He muttered in his heart, if it were possible for this to be successful, its terrifying destructive force would likely not be weaker than the flame-splitting tsunami, would it? During the time that Xiao Yan was struggling, Hai Bo Dong eyed him quietly. He assumed that the latter had given up. At that moment, he quietly sighed in relief. No matter what happened, this eight-winged black serpent emperor was definitely a formidable opponent. Hai Bo Dong may have indeed held something back, but he and Qin Lin were not close. Therefore, he need not take such a risk because of a little girl. Xiao Yan being able to take the initiative to give up coincided with his desire. On the opposite side, the eight-winged black serpent emperor slightly swung its huge tail. Each time the huge tail swung, it would create quite a strong wild wind in the sky. It could be imagined just what kind of terrifying force was contained within that huge tail. Hee hee, why? Are you finally giving up? The triangle-shaped huge eyes glanced at the two people opposite who did not make any move. The laughter of the eight-winged black serpent emperor was like rolling thunder that billowed throughout the sky without resting. It is just as well that you give up. It saves me from wasting my strength. With a smile, the eight-winged black serpent emperor turned his head around and eyed the distant horizon. He softly muttered that Lu Men woman should have reached a safe place already. My task to block them should have ended. 
Turning around, the eight-winged black serpent emperor, Ai Xiaoyan. His loud laugh held a ridicule, you too, if you take it too hard in the future, you can come and find me. I will wait for you anytime. Today, I will not play with the both of you. Otherwise when that woman from the Misty Cloud sect and that old demon were to come together, I would really have a problem leaving. After saying this, that eight-winged black serpent emperor's huge tail swings slightly. His gaze stared intently at every action the two made as his body slowly moved backward. Clearly, the cautious him was unwilling to expose his back to two Dou Huangs. Although he might be able to block two Dou Huangs, he could not really defeat both Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong. Under the black robe, Xiao Yan's eyes stared intently at the gradually retreating, eight-winged black serpent emperor. The thought that Xiao Yan was struggling with in his heart was suddenly set down. His hand slowly extended out of the black robe. The long white hands of his were like that of a lady's and appeared to not possess any strength. Seeing Xiao Yan's action, Hai Bo Dong at the side was at a loss. Immediately his face was uncertain. Hee hee, why, are you still not willing to give up? You may possess one type of, heavenly flame, but looking at your manner it appears that you are unable to unleash its true strength. Similarly sensing Xiao Yan's action, the eight-winged black serpent emperor immediately stopped his moving body. His triangle-shaped eyes stared intently at Xiao Yan and was somewhat irritated as he laughed coldly. Ignoring the eight-winged black serpent emperor, mocking words, Xiao Yan's hands were placed in front of him facing the sky. He was slightly quiet. A thick white flame rose on his left hand. Its hot temperature burnt the air until it became somewhat distorted and illusory. As his left hand slightly tightened, the ghastly white-colored flame quietly writhed, emitting a ferocious energy. As his enormous triangular shape I stared at Xiao Yan while carrying some ridicule. The eight-winged black serpent emperor was not the slightest bit anxious. Although he was a little fearful of, heavenly flame, the black-robed person, for some unknown reason, seemed to be unable to freely unleash the strength that belonged to it. Therefore, the eight-winged black serpent emperor was totally not very afraid. The cynical feeling in the triangular-shaped eyes existed for a moment. However, when a cluster of green-colored flame suddenly rose on Xiao Yan's right hand, its enormous eyes abruptly shrunk. An unknown and extremely horrified emotion appeared in the serpent's eyes in a human-like manner. This is also a heavenly flame. Damn it, damn it. How can this be possible? How can you possess two types of heavenly flame in your body? Sensing the terrifying temperature that the green-colored flame emitted, the eight-winged black serpent emperor was momentarily stunned. Immediately, his huge body curled up as though someone had stepped on his tail. His sharp voice was corrupted as he gasped in the sky. Standing by Xiao Yan's side, Hai Bo Dong eyed the white and green-colored flame writhing in Xiao Yan's palms with a stunned face. Being in such close proximity, he was naturally able to sense the terrifying temperature contained within the two clusters of flames much more clearly. At that moment, his footsteps involuntarily moved a distance away before he felt reassured and stopped his body. It is really unbelievable. This guy actually possesses two types of heavenly flame. Hai Bo Dong inhaled a deep breath of cold air as he stared at Xiao Yan's hands. His heart was in total chaos. In his rich experience, he had never heard of anyone who could possess two types of heavenly flame at the same time. One should know that the nature of a heavenly flame was overbearing and they possessed a great destructive ability. Two heavenly flames were basically like enemies and they were usually extremely incompatible. If two types of heavenly flame were to exist in one person's body, Hai Bo Dong could only think of one type of ending. That would be an ending where the two extremely unstable bombs collided with each other. The final result was to be completely destroyed in a brilliant explosion. Hai Bo Dong was uncertain why Xiao Yan could possess two types of heavenly flame at the same time. However, he could clearly sense that at the moment the two types of heavenly flame appeared, the originally docile energy seeds in their bodies suddenly became much more irritable. What is this guy thinking of doing by summoning two kinds of heavenly flame? Hai Bo Dong was at a loss as he thought in his heart. He eyed the slightly lifted black robe. The delicate and handsome face that was revealed there appeared to be faintly holding a somewhat insane smile. As he watched the smile on Xiao Yan's face, Hai Bo Dong trembled coldly. An uneasy feeling involuntarily surfaced in his heart. As his pair of wings flapped slightly, icy cold Dou Qi formed a round-shaped ice cover that wrapped around himself. Opposite Xiao Yan, the eight-winged black serpent emperor continued to swear as he gasped rapidly. Clearly, he had received quite a blow from the reality that Xiao Yan could possess two kinds of heavenly flame. Ignoring the eight-winged black serpent emperor that was leaping randomly like a loach, Xiao Yan's gaze stared intently at the two cluster of different colored heavenly flame. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly. A moment later, he clenched his teeth. His hands carried the two kinds of the heavenly flames and slowly drew them together towards the center. Damn. Lunatic, lunatic. This person is definitely crazy. Watching this action of Xiao Yan with shocked gazes, Hai Bo Dong and the eight-winged black serpent emperor appeared to strangely scold together. After they scolded, the two of them pulled back a large distance in harmony. After which, they eyed Xiao Yan from a distance. Bastard, if you were to die, who is going to refine the spiritual recovery purple pill for me? As Hai Bo Dong was pulling back, he scolded helplessly in his heart. 
In his opinion, even though Xiao Yan was able to simultaneously possess two different kind of heavenly flame in his body, it would be impossible that he could allow the two kinds of violent heavenly flame to come into contact with each other and remain safe. The cursing from the two of them did not cause Xiao Yan to have any hesitation. In his insane thought, he thought that since the flame mantra could swallow many different heavenly flame, it should not be too difficult to merge these heavenly flame together. The strength of one heavenly flame could cause a Dou Huang to fear. If two different kinds of heavenly flames were to blend together, the energy that would be erupted when they came into contact would definitely be inflated by several fold. This was a crazy experiment. Of course, despite possessing great danger, if Xiao Yan could really succeed, he would really possess a terrifying killing skill that even a Dou Huang would greatly fear. Damn it, if this thing were to really succeed, this could be considered a unique Dou technique that I have created myself, right? Xiao Yan muttered somewhat nervously in his heart. His hands were trembling as the green colored flame and the thick white flame slowly began to make contact. Bang. The instant when the flame seedlings made contact, a muffled thunder-like roar was erupted from within Xiao Yan's palm. Immediately, his hands were horrifically hurt. Fresh blood flowed uncontrollably. Looking at his posture, if it was not for the Dou Qi protecting his hands, they would likely be blown apart on the spot. Xiao Yan forcefully withstood the intense pain that was being transmitted from his hands. A white-colored flame shrouded his left dark black eye while the other side was shrouded by a green-colored flame. The green and white alternated with each other, appearing extremely strange and ghastly. Clenching his teeth together, Xiao Yan ignored the terrifying energy released from the collision between the two kinds of heavenly flame which had caused the air to begin to become distorted. His hands were entirely focused on moving together toward the center. The distance between the two palms was but half a centimeter. However, this half a centimeter caused Xiao Yan to completely call upon every thread of energy within the cells of his body in order to maintain the slow progress. The eight-winged black serpent emperor stared intently at Xiao Yan who was like a mad person. Although he knew that under such a situation, it was somewhat inappropriate for him to remain, his jealousy that Xiao Yan was able to possess two kinds of heavenly flames at the same time, insisted on staying behind. He wanted to see for himself just how this arrogant fellow would play with himself until he would not be able to leave a corpse behind. In this Dochi continent, he had never heard of anyone who could use the heavenly flame in such a manner. Fresh blood repeatedly flowed out from Xiao Yan's palm. The green and white colored flame began to be gradually compressed. However, it was clear that at the same time they were being compressed, Xiao Yan was withstanding the backlash from the two heavenly flames. At one instant, Xiao Yan finally let out a muffled groan in his heart. A mouthful of blood was shot out and fell into the flame. It was instantly incinerated into nothingness. Xiao Yan clenched his teeth and stubbornly eyed the two heavenly flame that were wrapped around each other. He understood clearly in his heart that this action of him was undoubtedly extremely foolish. However, after musing for an instant, he still continued to go about in his own way and continued. His heart possessed an obsession that belonged to him. Since he began having contact with Yao Lao, Xiao Yan would always rely on Yao Lao's strength whenever he met an opponent he could not defeat and finally escape from death. From Xiao Yan's point of view, he did not like this kind of feeling. Perhaps Yao Lao did not say anything with his mouth, but Xiao Yan vaguely knew that Yao Lao seemed to also be unwilling to see Xiao Yan relying on his strength to flee or fight whenever the latter met a strong opponent. Xiao Yan was a persistent person. Sometimes, this persistence could also be considered an extreme stubbornness. Currently, Xiao Yan who appeared at a dead end had descended into this extreme stubbornness. Under this condition, Xiao Yan really wanted to try whether he, with his own strength, could create something of a terrifying strength that even Yao Lao would be startled. In Xiao Yan's body, other than the flame mantra and the green lotus core flame, there was nothing else which possessed such a qualification or potential. Each time both the green and white colored flame made contact until a critical point, they would refuse to continue to merge regardless of how Xiao Yan compressed them. Instead, following Xiao Yan violent pushes that stemmed his unwillingness to accept the situation, the energy within the two clusters of flame would gradually become violent. Bang. Another muffled explosion sounded. The part of Xiao Yan's hand between his thumb and index finger jumped and split open. Lowering his head to eye that electric sphere-like cluster of flame that repeatedly flickered green and white colored light, Xiao Yan's eyes shrunk slightly. He knew that this was the omen just before the violent energy was about to explode. Xiao Yan, damn it, quickly dissipate them. If you continue like this, it will explode. Sensing the violent natural energy around Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong hurriedly called out. Haha, a fellow who overestimates his own abilities. Sensing the violent energy seeds, the eight-winged black serpent emperor laughed loudly in an extremely gloating manner. Xiao Yan did not listen to Hai Bo Dong's opinion. His eyes stared intently at the violent green-white flame cluster. His attention was completely gathered within it. At one instant, the heaven and earth seemed to suddenly become quiet. Even the sound of the wind had disappeared. At this instant, a loss suddenly swarmed into Xiao Yan's eyes. However, his fingers had become become agile, seemingly able to bypass the leaves and pick a flower. His ten fingers swiftly moved around the flame cluster. Threads of Dochi that were circulated from the flame mantra poured into it. TL, bypass the leaves and pick a flower, Chinese idiom. 
Following the pouring in of the Dou Qi from the flame mantra, the violent cluster of flame actually became gradually quiet. The two colored flame wiggled slightly. Finally, it slowly merged into a green white lotus seat the size of Xiao Yan's palm in front of the shocked gazes of both Hai Bo Dong and the eight winged black serpent emperor. The instant when the lotus seat was formed, the whole of Xiao Yan's body trembled. He lowered his head and stared at the green white lotus seat in his hand. In a soft voice, he muttered, Have I succeeded? Angry Buddha Lotus Flame. As his voice fell, Xiao Yan's face swiftly became pale. The loss on his face suddenly disappeared. At the same time, he violently and instinctively threw the green white lotus seat in his hand toward the eight winged black serpent emperor, who was still in shock. The green white colored flame lotus seat quietly shot through the empty air. Along the way, it did not even pick up a wind as it floated. However, this floating manner caused all the scales on the eight winged black serpent emperor to stand inverted. The green white two colored lotus seat swiftly shot toward the eight winged black serpent emperor. However, when it was about to reach a 20 meter radius from the ladder, the quiet lotus seat abruptly began to riot. The lotus seat slowed and shrank. Immediately afterwards, it swelled up and closely following this. An uncontrollable, world-shaking explosion reverberated through the empty air. Bang. A destructive-like energy spread out from the spot where the cluster had been. At this moment, waves of ripples surfaced in the empty air. The ripples spread and passed through the towering peak of a mountain in the clouds not far away. The peak of the mountain suddenly burst apart and the part where it cracked off from the main mountain was as smooth as a mirror. In an opposing direction around 500 kilometers from Yen City, two flashing figures abruptly stopped in the sky. They suddenly raised their heads and eyed the place where their sight could not reach. An old face that was like tree bark and a graceful and noble-looking beautiful face were covered with shock and disbelief. Chapter 263, Terrifying Destructive Force The brilliant green-white flame exploded in the blue sky. Like a wave of flames, it engulfed the sky. Instantly, the temperature of this entire area rose significantly. Within Yen City, a countless number of people lifted their heads foolishly and eyed the terrifying wave of flames that had engulfed the sky. Even though it was thousands of meters away, the hot flame wave still caused people to perspire profusely. The huge city was completely silent. Everyone swallowed their saliva in their dry mouths. A panic spread from deep within their hearts. If this flame wave was a little lower above Yen City, this place might have been annihilated into a flat plain. Is this the destructive strength of a Do Wong? How terrifying! Everyone shivered and groaned weakly in their hearts. In the blue sky, the flame wave turned into an energy ripple as it violently surged outward. With the explosion at the center, the surrounding living creatures within a certain boundary all received a destructive blow. The green-white flame waves leisurely spread out to a radius of a couple of hundred meters before they gradually began to disappear. In the sky, two humans and a beast had gone into a dire state. The blow received by the eight-winged black serpent emperors, which had a huge body, was undoubtedly the most severe among the three due to its size and its position being closest to the point of the explosion. Because of the destructive flame wave that swept out, over half of the tough scales on the eight-winged black serpent emperor's body had been completely broken. Its black body had bright red blood that repeatedly seeped and dripped down as though it was raining. Under the broken scales, a couple of horrifying wounds that were visible to the naked eye extended outward and almost covered his entire back. At one glance, one appeared to be able to faintly see the dense white bones. Of its eight wings, three of them were destroyed from the rough explosion and another wing had only half of it left with fresh blood flowing wildly. The ridicule in the enormous triangular-shaped eyes could no longer be seen. Replacing it was an utter horror. His miserable and dire-looking manner no longer possessed the slightest bit of pride and arrogance. In a place far away from the eight-winged black serpent emperor, a completely snow-white ice cover slowly cracked open. The ice fragments fell, finally exposing an old figure in an almost completely incinerated black robe. Currently, Haibo Dong's face was totally pale. The corner of his mouth still faintly possessed a few blood stains. He randomly wiped off the blood stains with his hand, which was trembling without him noticing. In the terrifying explosion a moment ago, Haibo Dong had used all of the strength he possessed in order to coagulate over 40 layers of tough Dou Qi ice layer in an extremely short period of time. However, this defense which appeared tough and indestructible, appeared to be easily smashed apart under the green-white flame wave that possessed an extremely destructive strength. After the flame wave shuttled past, only the last layer of the over 40 Dou Qi ice layers, that had incredible defensive strength, remained. This lunatic, lunatic. He actually dared to act so recklessly. Thinking about the terrible fate he would be in if his defense was completely broken, Haibo Dong's face turned green. His lips shivered as his hoarse voice scolded. Although he was cursing from his mouth, even Haibo Dong himself did not realize that some fear for this young man who was not even twenty was produced deep within his heart. After a round of scolding, Haibo Dong's gaze swept through Midair and finally stopped on Xiao Yan's body which was suspended in Midair with no one knowing if he was dead or alive. Currently, over half of the black robe on Xiao Yan's body was destroyed. The C's core vest that Yunji had given to him had actually burst apart at this moment. A huge piece of pale blue-colored tough vest slowly descended, revealing Xiao Yan's body, which was grilled till it was somewhat fiery red, underneath. Flapping the pair of wings on his back gently, Haibo Dong quickly appeared beside Xiao Yan. 
He eyed Xiao Yan's unconscious miserable manner and immediately glanced at the pale blue colored inner vest. Surprise flashed across his eyes. The defensive strength of this thing caused him to be somewhat surprised. Clearly, if Xiao Yan did not have the protection of this inner vest, he may have been killed on the spot by the terrifying explosion a moment ago. This lunatic. You actually dared to merge two heavenly flames together. Now, things are just good. The thing that you have created is something that won't even recognize you as the owner. Ugh, if you were to die from your own hands, it would be a great fascinating story. Eyeing Xiao Yan who was in a condition where his fate was unknown, Hai Bo Dong laughed bitterly and shook his head. His palm grabbed Xiao Yan's hand and roughly probed. He shook his head slightly and sighed. There was a price to pay for creating such a terrifying destruction. The current body of Xiao Yan was on the verge of being completely broken. This was the first time that Hai Bo Dong had saw this person who had such strong mantis-like life turn into such a frail state. For my spiritual recovery purple pill, you cannot just carelessly die like this. With a hand supporting Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong muttered. Damn it, you deserve to die. You crazy fellow. I hate fighting with lunatics like you the most. A group of bastards, jerks. In the far distant, the eight-winged black serpent emperor had finally recovered his consciousness. He scolded while he sensed the serious injury condition that his body was in. His large body trembled. The eight-winged black serpent emperor clearly knew in his heart that had it not been for Xiao Yan's first time using that strange green-white flame lotus resulting in his accuracy and control being imprecise, the current him would undoubtedly directly enter deep into the level of serious injury. Should that time come, he would at best see a great drop in his strength, at worst, die on the spot. Eyeing the eight-winged black serpent emperor, who still possessed some energy despite being seriously injured, Hai Bo Dong's expression sank. He placed Xiao Yan protectively behind him. The remaining ice affinity Dou Qi in his body slowly flowed, preparing to deal with this infuriated, eight-winged black serpent emperor, at any moment. However, just as Hai Bo Dong was preparing to fight, the eight-winged black serpent emperor simply cursed extremely angrily before shrinking his body, not daring to move closer to Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong. After facing off in this manner for a few minutes, the remaining wings of the eight-winged black serpent emperor suddenly flapped. Immediately, he turned around and fled in front of Hai Bo Dong's stunned gaze. Damn it. This lunatic. Consider me to be afraid of you. In the future, any place that this lunatic is in, I will not go and join the fun. Lunatic, really a lunatic. This time I have really made a big loss. If that woman, Lu Man, doesn't increase the reward, I will flip her territory around. The eight-winged black serpent emperor's huge body faced the horizon and swiftly flew over. A cussing voice that was filled with fear continued reverberating in the sky. Hai Bo Dong was stunned as he eyed the eight-winged black serpent emperor, who had actually chose to flee. He was momentarily lost before he immediately shook his head, unsure if he should laugh or cry. If he was to fight with this unique beast, which had the strength of a six-star Dou Huang, in his current condition, he would likely be unable to gain an advantage. Moreover, he still needed to protect the unconscious Xiao Yan. Therefore, when he saw that the eight-winged black serpent emperor chose to retreat, Hai Bo Dong heaved a sigh of relief. Ah, after today's events are spread around, this little fellow will likely have some reputation even on the Dou Qi continent. With one strike, you frightened off the eight-winged black serpent emperor, whose fierceness is renowned. This involves a boldness that even that old demon from the imperial family does not have. Hai Bo Dong turned his head around, at the pale-faced Xiao Yan in an unconscious state and sighed with envy. Ah, what a terrifying, heavenly flame, and crazy little fellow. After exclaiming once again for that destructive energy from before, Hai Bo Dong suddenly pressed his eyebrows tightly together. He lifted his head and his gaze swept both to the east and west. From both places, two powerful cheese were swiftly flying over. Are those two fellows finally coming over? Hearing Xiao Yan's attitude from before, it appeared that he and the Misty Cloud sect had some grudge. In which case, it would be better to take him along and leave this place. Hai Bo Dong mused slightly. His gaze swept around and then below him. Carrying Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong flapped the cold ice wings on his back, turning his body into a flowing light and swiftly shot toward the horizon. Following the disappearance of Hai Bo Dong, the sky which had undergone a soul-stirring big battle finally calmed down. However, the tranquility continued for only 10 plus minutes when two flowing lights swiftly shot over from both the east and west directions. Finally, they stopped at the location where the big battle had occurred. The flowing lights disappeared. An old person's human figure and a lady's human figure both appeared. The old person was wearing an ordinary yellow robe, his good complexation and energetic manner had a somewhat distinctive and aloof feeling. As his eyes scanned around, they were filled with dignity. The woman was wearing a tight golden colored robe that was complemented with a purple color. Her long black hair was drawn into a phoenix-like shape. A nobility that was difficult to hide faintly seeped out from her. Her appearance was tranquil and beautiful, much like a clear spring in a secluded mountain. At the same time, she caused people to feel respect for her because of her inborn high status while a fluttering thought would involuntarily appear in those same people's heart. Kuku, sect leader Yun Yun, in the few years we have not met, your wind affinity Dou Qi is becoming increasingly polished. This speed is something that the old me cannot catch up with. Eyeing that graceful, noble, and all-around gorgeous robed lady, the old man laughed. Jia Lao's breaking mountain Dou Qi is also becoming more and more potent. 
From a far distance, Yunyun had already sensed that overbearing chi. The gorgeous robed lady laughed. Ah, I'm slightly old and cannot compare with you young people. The old man who was addressed as Jiao Lao waved his hand with a smile. His gaze looked around at his surroundings. When his gaze swept over the huge mountain peak that was crushed, his eyes shrunk and he gently smiled, looks like both of us have missed a great event. Just before, didn't four different Do Huang's chis appear here? The gorgeous robed lady frowned and asked. Ah, there were two chis who did not appear to be that of a strong person from the Jiama Empire. As for the other two who fought with them, I cannot be certain if they are citizens of the Jiama Empire or not. After all, with a territory that is so big, some old fellows prefers to hide themselves and would not appear until they die. The old man laughed. His face gradually became slightly overcast as he said, but the energy explosion from before is somewhat appalling. I think that even if it was me who faced this kind of energy explosion, I could only end up with a seriously wounded fate. I wonder when this kind of strong person will once again appear in the Jiama Empire. If I have the chance, I would like to become acquainted with him or her. The old man said somewhat regretfully. The gorgeous robed lady smiled and nodded. Her pretty eyes randomly swept across the ground. A moment later, she suddenly exclaimed softly. She beckoned at the ground with her hand. Immediately, a pale blue colored metal piece swiftly shot toward the sky and she caught it firmly in her hands. This is. Flipping and looking at this somewhat familiar looking pale blue metal piece. A moment later, the pretty face of the gorgeous robed lady changed abruptly. She involuntarily muttered, seize core vest. Chapter 264, Yao Lao falling into a deep slumber. Staring at the pale blue metal pieces with changing expression, an anxiety flashed across the tranquil and indifferent face of this person, who was the leader of the Misty Cloud sect. Her hand clenched silently and her heart flipped repeatedly. Why are there fragments of the Seas Core Vest around here? Don't tell me that little fellow was also here just now. Since the Seas Core Vest has already been broken, he should have also received an extremely serious injury. This guy, why is it that he always appears wherever there is trouble? The gorgeous robed lady's gaze that carried some anxiety swept across the ground. However, she did not find even the slightest bit of a suspicious trace. Her eyebrows became slightly vertical with some anger hidden in them. Sect leader Yun Yun, what's this? On one side, the old man could not help but become stunned when he saw the gorgeous robed lady actually show such an emotion. His voice was surprised as he asked, this was the first time that he had seen this person, who was in control of the Misty Cloud sect, reveal so many unusual emotions at once. Haha, <laughs> nothing. Being shocked awake by the old man's voice, the pretty face of the gorgeous robed lady quickly buried its expression. An instant later, she recovered the indifference from before. She smiled, stored the C's core vest fragment into her storage ring in front of that old man and softly voiced her opinion, Jia Lao, I think that we should investigate the actual identities of the four Do Huangs. After all, it is unlikely that two Do Huangs from other empires have entered Jia Ma Empire simply to tour. Hearing this, the old man immediately eyed the gorgeous robed lady somewhat strangely. Her character did not appear to be someone who seemed to be interested in such things. What exactly are those metal fragments from before? Doubt flashed across the old man's heart. As the guardian of the empire's imperial family, the investigation of these strong people from outside the empire was part of his duty. He had originally wanted to open his mouth and request for the Misty Cloud sect to also help at the same time. He did not expect that she would actually open her mouth first. Therefore, the old man simply smiled and nodded his head. He helped move things along as he laughed, just as well. Below us is Yen City. The headquarters of the M.O. clan is coincidentally here. Let's go and gather some information first. The gorgeous robed lady's pretty eyes shifted toward the city below and she smiled. Immediately, she chose to descend outside of Yen City. Behind her, the old man followed at a steady pace. Three days later, in the Rock Desert City, Desert Metal Mercenary Company, Headquarters. A faint sandalwood scent shrouded the quiet room, causing people's spirit to feel somewhat comfortable and intoxicated. On the bed in the corner of the room, lay a young man whose eyes were tightly closed. The interval between each weak breath was very long, resulting in others involuntarily feeling that the breath of his would suddenly cease, creating the most tragic ending. As the young man laid unconscious on the bed, he could vaguely sense that there were people pacing up and down around him. A long time later, a few soft sighs sounded and then slowly disappeared. After an unknown number of times in which the door had been slammed shut, the finger of the young man on the bed, who was like a dead person, suddenly shook gently. A while later, his weak breath finally became a little stronger. Another while later, his eyelashes gently trembled. His eyelids struggled as they opened slightly. A faint gentle lamp light seeped through his eyes. Xiao Yan's hand abruptly tightened as he did his best to shift his gaze. After completely sizing up this somewhat familiar looking room, he finally heaved a heavy sigh of relief. His entire body was weak and exhausted as he lay on the soft bed without having even the slightest strength to move. Xiao Yan inhaled and exhaled slightly. When his mind was completely awake as waves of memory swiftly swarmed out from the deep regions of his mind, causing Xiao Yan to recall the proceedings of the entire matter. I guess that I was injured. Remembering the intense pain he felt when the destructive flame swept over, Xiao Yan laughed bitterly. He gently inhaled a mouthful of air that carried a slight sandalwood scent. When his head was a little clearer, he slowly closed his eyes and let his mind gradually descend into his inner body. 
As his mind descended into his body, a dilapidated inner body condition that caused Xiao Yan to be stunned, immediately appeared in his mind's eye. Eyeing his inner body, which was destroyed forcefully by the terrifying energy, Xiao Yan's heart suddenly sank greatly. Although he was able to guess that his injury was serious, he did not expect that the seriousness of it had actually reached such an extent. If it was someone else who possessed the current miserable condition that his body was in, there was only one fate for him or her. That was to completely become a cripple. This is going to be a lot of trouble. Xiao Yan muttered bitterly in his heart. His mind followed the shattered chi paths and slowly flowed along. Finally, it arrived at the vortex at his lower abdomen. Eyeing the inside of the vortex which only had a few droplets of green-colored liquid energy remaining, he sighed in his heart. This was simply making matters worse. At the middle of the vortex, a tiny glow wiggled slightly. Within that glow hid Xiao Yan's greatest trump card, the Green Lotus Core Flame. However, the current Xiao Yan did not dare to withdraw and deploy a wisp of green flame. Currently, the chi paths in his body had already reached a critical point. He did not doubt that if anyone was to give his body a violent smack, he would really be utterly finished. With heavy feelings, Xiao Yan withdrew his mind from his body and slowly opened his eyes. He smiled bitterly, shook his head and sighed. Xiao Yan stared blankly at the ceiling for a while before his heart suddenly trembled slightly. Since he had woken up until now, he had felt as though something was missing. Now, he had finally remembered. There was actually no activity from Yao Lao. Recalling this matter, Xiao Yan's expression immediately became extremely ugly. His heart hurriedly called out, Teacher! Teacher! The shouting persisted for a few minutes but he did not receive the slightest response. It was as though his voice was a rock sinking in the vast ocean. Xiao Yan's heart began to sink further as the time taken for Yao Lao to respond lengthened. Did something happen? The corner of Xiao Yan's mouth twitched. He suddenly felt his mouth totally dry. A panicked feeling quietly spread out from deep within his heart. This kind of panic was similar to the panic created when the genius him back then turned into a useless being overnight. Ever since he and Yao Lao became acquainted with each other, Xiao Yan's heart would feel incomparably steady and certain as long as the former was around. This was because regardless of what happened, Xiao Yan was clear that as long as Yao Lao was around, the latter would definitely not allow him to really die. Currently, however, there was suddenly no news of Yao Lao. This caused Xiao Yan, who had always been relying on him to really feel a panic, which he had difficulty hiding. Xiao Yan bit his lips tightly as he used all the strength in his body to lift his palm. When he saw the perfectly safe, black-colored, old ring on his finger, he finally gave a gentle sigh of relief. He did his best to suppress the panic in his heart and once again closed his eyes. The spiritual strength entangled together in front of his body to form a thread. After which, it touched the black-colored ring. When his spiritual strength had just touched the black-colored ring, an enormous suction force erupted from within it. At that moment, Xiao Yan had no time to defend against it and it sucked him into the black-colored ring. The feeling from his spiritual strength was at first completely dark. Quickly following this, it appeared within a circle cover that was filled with a white glow. Within the cover, Yao Lao's blurry figure was suspended in midair, smiling as he stared at this wisp of weak little spiritual strength of Xiao Yan. Little fellow, you are finally awake. Yao Lao floated closer to Xiao Yan as he said with a smile. Teacher, are you alright? Seeing Yao Lao's figure, the heavy burden within Xiao Yan's heart was eased. However, even though his heart had become a little lighter, Xiao Yan was not stupid. In the past, when Yao Lao spoke to him, he could directly speak in his heart. Currently, on the other hand, he needed to enter the black-colored ring in order to converse. From this, he was able to tell that Yao Lao's situation would not be very good. I will tell you some good news and some bad news. Yao Lao smiled. His palm patted on the illusionary human figure that Xiao Yan had used his spiritual strength to create. With a pleased smile, Yao Lao said, The good news is that I admire you greatly. The angry Buddha lotus flame that you have created possesses a destructive strength that even amazed myself. In the future, if you are able to perfectly create it, I think you should have no opponents of similar class as you who can beat you. Xiao Yan's face did not have any joy. The angry Buddha lotus flame did indeed have a great strength but the price of using it was similarly terrifying and was difficult to accept. As for the bad news, perhaps you have already discovered that inner body of yours which was damaged until a complete mess. Yao Lao smiled and asked. Yes, it's very serious. Xiao Yan nodded his head and sighed, basically, it's about to fall apart. Haha, <laughs> the injury may be serious, but as long as you recuperate properly, it will gradually recover. I have already fixed up a recuperation program. Later, I will pass it on to you. As long as you do according to what I say, you will return back to your peak state. Yao Lao said with a smile. What about you teacher? The sensitive Xiao Yan heard the slightly out of tune tone of Yao Lao and he hurriedly asked. Me. This perhaps is the greatest bad news. Although you have successfully created an explosive feast that could be called perfect, it had extracted nearly 70% of my spiritual strength. Adding this to the need to protect you in the final flame wave, my spiritual strength is nearly completely exhausted. Yao Lao bitterly smiled and replied. Hearing this, Xiao Yan's expression changed drastically. The illusionary human figure that was formed form from the agglomeration of his spiritual strength suddenly fluctuated. Don't worry. 
Although my spiritual strength is completely exhausted, it does not mean that it cannot be recovered. I only need to fall into a deep slumber for a period of time like I did in the past. Yao Lao gently looked at Xiao Yin who was biting his lips tightly and said with a smile, During a period of time in the future, teacher may no longer be able to continue protecting you. You have to rely on yourself for everything. Eyeing the peacefully smiling Yao Lao, Xiao Yan's eyes suddenly became much redder. He held his fist tightly and said in a soft hoarse voice, I'm sorry, teacher. Xiao Yan knew clearly in his heart that if he had not been so bent on having his own way and merging the heavenly flame, Yao Lao's spiritual strength would definitely not have been completely absorbed. He also would not need to fall into a slumber now in order to recover his strength. Haha, you need not feel remorseful. I am only going to enter a slumber for a period of time and not completely vanish. I am extremely satisfied with the angry Buddha lotus flame that you have created. My student is indeed different from ordinary people. Yao Lao patted Xiao Yan's shoulder and laughed. All right, the remaining spiritual strength is about to be completely consumed. You should leave. As for the matter regarding Qing Lin, you need not be too worried. That Lu Man will not treat her like the M.O. clan. You can be rest assured. Yao Lao's body suddenly became much more obscured as he waved at Xiao Yan and said. Teacher, take care. Xiao Yan's knees slowly knelt in the empty space. His eyes were red as his head faced Yao Lao and heavily knocked downward. TL, the action of kneeling and bowing one's head onto the ground is the highest form of respect one can give. Yao Lao was pleased as he eyed Xiao Yan, who had experienced this turn of events and completely broken free from the tender youthful self he had been in the past. He smiled and nodded his head. The illusionary body of his finally and gradually disappeared from the light circle. Little fellow, I hope that when I finally wake up, I will be able to see a disciple who has completely become a strong person. I have stored some bone-chilling flame in the ring. During a crisis, you can use it. Additionally, since I have known you until now, I have been extremely satisfied with you. The faint laughter that contained some expectation slowly sounded within the light circle and did not disappear for a long time. Xiao Yan slowly stood up. He eyed the empty light circle and sighed with grief. From now on, he had to face this entire word alone. Chapter 265, Relying on Oneself In the clean room, the young man on the bed slowly opened his eyes. A bitterness and sadness surfaced on his face. After a long time, he let out a gentle sigh. While Xiao Yan was staring at the ceiling in a daze, information suddenly swarmed into his mind. However, he did not feel any panic because of this. Lying on the bed, Xiao Yan allowed the information to pour into his mind as it pleased. It was a long while later before he began reading this last bit of help Yao Lao had prepared for him before Yao Lao's fall into slumber. Xiao Yan slowly finished looking through the recuperation program in detail. At the end of the information, there was a medicinal formula for a tier 5 medicinal pill named Spiritual Recovery Purple Pill. Clearly, Yao Lao was worried that once he had fallen into a slumber, Xiao Yan would not be able to suppress Hai Bo Dong with his own strength. Therefore, he had specially transferred the medicinal formula, allowing Xiao Yan to do his best to search for the necessary medicinal ingredients within a year in order to reassure Hai Bo Dong. Teacher, rest assured that I will think of ways to allow you to quickly recover your spiritual strength. This information that was filled with Yao Lao's effort and concern had caused Xiao Yan's nose to feel sore. His fist tightened as he softly mumbled the words. Inhaling a deep breath of air that contained the scent of sandalwood, Xiao Yan's feelings gradually calmed down. His head rolled as he thought deeply. Now that Yao Lao had fallen into a slumber, he would have to rely on himself for everything. Having lost Yao Lao as his trump card, Xiao Yan had also lost the ability to suppress Hai Bo Dong. Although Hai Bo Dong's body contained the hidden flame poison that Yao Lao had left behind, that thing was something that only Yao Lao could activate. Now that Yao Lao had fallen into a deep slumber, it had become totally useless. As for that spiritual recovery purple pill, it was a tier 5 medicinal pill. Xiao Yan's ability was insufficient to refine it. Therefore, even this last condition that could keep Hai Bo Dong in check had also lost its effectiveness. If the knowledge of him having lost these few restraints was to be obtained by Hai Bo Dong, it was likely that the one-year agreement would be forcefully written off. There was also the possibility that Hai Bo Dong would also forcefully snatch back the map fragment from his hands. Although his conjecture was a little rough, Xiao Yan was clear that their cooperation had always been built upon the precondition that both parties' strengths were not far apart. Regardless of what happened, Xiao Yan without Yao Lao acting as a protector would have to plan for the worst-case scenario. Currently, with his own strength, Xiao Yan could only take out the Green Lotus Core Flame. Although Yao Lao had said that he had left some bone-chilling flame in the storage ring for Xiao Yan to use, Xiao Yan did not have the courage to use the Angry Buddha Lotus Flame that required two kinds of Heavenly Flame for a second time after having tried it once. After all, that was far too terrifying. During the first time, Xiao Yan was able to have the protection of Yao Lao, but what about the second time? If something bad were to happen, he might really be burned to death by the very technique that he had created. Thinking about all the numerous troubles Yao Lao's slumber had brought, Xiao Yan felt a headache as he shook his head. However, after thinking deeply into this manner, he had firmly remembered the few things that he needed to do. The first was that no matter what happened, he must not let Hai Bo Dong know that he could no longer possess the strength of a Dou Wang. At the same time, he also must not let Hai Bo Dong know that he no longer had the ability to refine the spiritual recovery purple pill. 
Second, he must think of everything to search for natural and unique things that could swiftly recover spiritual strength. As long as Yao Lao could once again awaken, then these latent problems would not be able to erupt. After firmly remembering these two most important things that must be done in his heart, Xiao Yan sighed in relief. He struggled to sit up and leaned gently on the bedrest. His palm opened and an icy cold smooth thing suddenly coiled around his hand. Being twined around by this icy cold smooth thing, Xiao Yan's heart trembled as he was caught off guard. His left hand roughly pulled aside the blanket. Once the blanket was pulled open, a small cute looking seven colored snake was seen twining around his arm. Seeming to sense the light being shined upon it, it lifted its long neck. Its pale purple snake eyes stared blankly at Xiao Yan. A moment later, an affection surfaced within the snake's eyes and it could not help but use its head to rub against Xiao Yan's arm. Xiao Yan's eyes watched this, heavenly swallowing python. Due to its evolution, its seven colored body which he noticed had become a much deeper color compared to before. When he saw the extremely human-like affection in its eyes, Xiao Yan's heart, which had become much heavier after Yao Lao fell into a deep slumber, suddenly became much more relaxed. A brilliant and unrestrained joy swarmed onto his face. He carefully carried the seven-colored small snake with both hands. He parted his mouth, let out a smile and gave it a big kiss. In a soft voice, he said, Good darling, you have woken up at the most appropriate time. Yao Lao had told him before that the seven-colored heaven-swallowing python would have the strength to contend with a Dou Wang after this evolution. Although this may still have some distance to a Dou Wang, Xiao Yan did not forget that within the heaven-swallowing python, there was an even more terrifying spirit, Queen Medusa. Although currently Queen Medusa could not appear because she was suppressed by the heaven-swallowing python's consciousness, Xiao Yan clearly understood that once the heaven-swallowing python's life was threatened, the terrifying woman who had once sealed Hai Bo Dong for decades would once again break through the suppression of the heaven-swallowing python and forcefully control its body. Therefore, as long as Xiao Yan was able to groom his relationship with the heaven-swallowing python to an extremely intimate one, the Queen Medusa in the body of the heaven-swallowing python would be his lifesaver if Hai Bo Dong was to really turn on him abruptly in the future or if he was to be in a juncture where death was imminent. Thinking of the importance that heaven-swallowing python was to him in the future, the eyes that Xiao Yan used to look at it obviously became even warmer. His palm gently rubbed its smooth scales as he took out a bottle of amethyst-winged lion birth essence. Seeing the appearance of the amethyst-winged lion birth essence, the pale purple eyes of the seven-colored heaven-swallowing python immediately became bright. Its tail repeatedly rubbed against Xiao Yan as its mouth emitted urgent hissing and treating sounds. Seeing that the temptation of the amethyst-winged lion birth essence had grown instead of weakened, Xiao Yan sighed in complete relief. At the same time, his heart somewhat rejoiced. If it were not for the lucky fact that he possessed the food that this kind of heaven-swallowing python liked the most, it was likely that it would be much more difficult for him to have such an intimate relationship with it. Xiao Yan carefully used a small jade rod which was hollow at its center to suck up a few drops of amethyst essence. After which, he poured it into the heaven-swallowing python's mouth. He eyed the cute manner in which the python sucked the essence with its eyes closed and could not help but smile. He then returned the amethyst essence properly and placed the satisfied heaven-swallowing python by the side of his pillow. After musing for a moment, he took out a low-grade healing medicine which had very gentle medicinal properties and slowly swallowed it. He then closed his eyes and felt the gentle energy that was being spread throughout his body. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly. Although this pure energy was extremely gentle, when it was repairing his nearly dilapidated cheat paths, waves of twitching pain were still emitted. Xiao Yan could only bitterly smile and shake his head at the extent of fragility that his cheat paths were currently in. He allowed the gentle energy to completely exhaust itself and a little more energy slowly appeared in his body. When Xiao Yan had his eyes closed, the ka cha sound from the opening of the room door suddenly sounded in the room. A few human figures who were conversing something in soft voices walked in softly. Upon seeing Xiao Yan who had sat up on the bed, they were momentarily lost. Immediately, they pounced over with wild joy visible on their faces. Xiao Yan Zi, you have finally woken up. You were already unconscious for five days. Xiao Li who was the fastest to rush over let out a loud and happy laughter. Has it really been five days? Hearing this, Xiao Yan stilled. Immediately, he laughed bitterly and shook his head. Are you alright? Xiao Ding smiled and walked forward. His gaze was filled with joy as he inquired. For the time being, I won't die. Xiao Yan pulled the corner of his mouth and replied with a smile. This little fellow really hides his true skill. I didn't expect that you would actually kill the first elder of the MO clan. Xiao Li patted Xiao Yan's thigh and laughed. Haha, it was old Sir Hai who told us. But only us two brothers know about this. We did not spread what we heard to anyone else. When Xiao Ding who was standing to the side saw Xiao Yan's surprise, he pointed at the smiling but silent Hai Bo Dong and explained. Old Hai, thank you very much. If you had not rescued me this time around, I might really have died. Xiao Yan stared deeply at the old man behind Xiao Ding. Without Yao Lao as his trump card, Xiao Yan had for the first time, realized that a Dou Huang was actually able to give others such a strong pressure. Hee hee, it's something that required only little effort. But brother Xiao Yan really caused me to feel some admiration. The explosion that you created that day, TSK TSK, is far too terrifying. Hai Bo Dong simply smiled and waved his hands when faced with Xiao Yan's thanks. He then raised his thumb towards Xiao Yan. 
The admiration in his laughter was not an act. It is just that my head suddenly became heated. Xiao Yan bitterly smiled and shook his head. I know that at that time, your mind was heated. A normal person would definitely not do something like that. Hai Bo Dong joked. His gaze swept on Xiao Yan's body and said with a frown, Your injuries appear to be quite serious, no. Haha, as long as I still have a breath remaining, I will be able to let myself become even more tenacious than a cockroach. Xiao Yan laughed faintly. You are even able to possess two of those kinds of things. I do not doubt you when you say this. Seeing Xiao Yan's unconcerned manner with regards to his injuries, Hai Bo Dong nodded his head. This guy really had too many hidden cards. After saying some polite words to Hai Bong Dong, Xiao Yan turned his head around and recited 10 plus medicinal ingredients to Xiao Li and Xiao Ding. He then told them to quickly help him gather them. Once he sent off the both of them with his eyes, Xiao Yan once again turned his gaze to Hai Bo Dong. He smiled slightly and took out a pen and paper from his storage ring. Under Hai Bo Dong's uncertain gaze, he wrote a few names which at a glance, one would know that they were rare medicinal ingredients. Old Hai, with this favor for saving me, I no longer need to be so formal with you. These few medicinal ingredients are the main medicinal ingredients needed to refine spiritual recovery purple pill. I will hand them to you. Anytime that you manage to luckily find any of them, think of every way to get your hands on them. Once you have found all of the medicinal ingredients, I will start helping you refine them. Xiao Yan handed the paper to Hai Bo Dong as he smiled and said. Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong was momentarily at a loss. Quickly following was an unrestrained joy that surfaced on his old face. His hands trembled slightly as he received the piece of paper. He carefully remembered all the medicinal ingredients written on it before seriously keeping the piece of paper. He cupped his hands, shook them at Xiao Yan and sincerely said, Brother Xiao Yan, having you treat me with such honesty, the old me is extremely gratefully. Since I, Hai Bo Dong, have said that I will protect you for a year, I will definitely keep my promise. You can recuperate at ease. During this period of time, even if the sect leader of the Misty Cloud sect comes, the old me will continue to defend you. Eyeing Hai Bo Dong whose pride was soaring, Xiao Yan nodded his head. His decision to give several of the medicinal ingredients names from the medicinal formula to Hai Bo Dong was indeed quite a good choice. He was able to appease Hai Bo Dong and was also able to obtain some trust from him. Next, I will need to use all my strength to recuperate. It won't be long until the trip to the Misty Cloud sect which is only two months away. Xiao Yan softly muttered in his heart as he leaned gently on the bedrest. Chapter 266, Recuperating and Flame Manipulation Ability in the spacious and clean room, a faint fog was emanated and rose into the air, covering the entire room until it was somewhat distorted. A large wooden basin was placed in the middle of the room, the basin was filled with an emerald green colored liquid. Within it, a young man's naked body was seated cross-legged. His eyes were closed and his hands displayed the seal for training. He allowed the gentle energy within the emerald colored medicinal liquid to slowly enter the interior of his body a little bit at a time to repair those nearly dilapidated chi paths in his body. As the training dragged on, the emerald colored liquid in the wooden basin slowly became more clear. Finally, the emerald color completely disappeared and was replaced by clean water where one could see the bottom of the basin through it. Plop. A small snake's head suddenly rose up from under the water. Its tail repeatedly splashed the water's surface. Joy filled its pale purple snake eyes. Sensing that the energy in the liquid which he was soaking in had been exhausted, Xiao Yin slowly opened his eyes. He eyed the happy, heaven-swallowing python beside his body and smiled. In a careful manner, he twisted his body before slowly letting out a mouthful of coarse air a moment later. In a soft voice, he muttered, the healing liquid that teacher formulated does have a very nice effect. In only three days, my dilapidated chi paths have become more flexible. Now, my chi paths should be able to support the circulation of Dou Qi. In the three days since he had awoken, Xiao Yan requested Xiao Ding to help him purchase the large amount of medicinal ingredients that he needed. After which, he clenched his teeth and endured the pain created when Dou Qi passed through his chi paths, directing the last remaining liquid energies within the vortex to transform into a Dou Qi flame. In this manner, he refined a couple medicinal liquids with some difficulty. Once he had finished the first batch of medicinal liquid, Xiao Yan's recovery obviously sped up by quite a bit. After three days of soaking within the medicinal liquid in this manner, the dilapidated chi paths in his body had already gradually repaired themselves to a much better state than the tragic situation they were in a few days ago. Xiao Yan stood up from the wooden basin and wiped his body clean. He randomly put on a set of clothes. After which, he raised his hand and a pale green glow drifted out from within the storage ring. Finally, it transformed into a green lotus that was suspended in front of Xiao Yan and emitting a faint glow. Pressing his toes gently on the edge of the wooden basin, Xiao Yan floated and landed on the green lotus. He seated himself cross-legged and his hands once again formed the training seal. Immediately, he began slowly closing his eyes. Not long after Xiao Yan entered his training mode, the surrounding space began to fluctuate slightly. Threads of mottled energy passed through the green lotus light cover and unceasingly poured into Xiao Yan's body. At first, each time the energy entered Xiao Yan's body, it would result in his face twitching slightly. However, as the energy was unceasingly poured into his body, Xiao Yan, who had become used to the pain, was able to ignore this feeling. 
He gently clenched his teeth, refined this somewhat mottled energy and merged it into his chi paths and muscles. After which, he lowered his mind into his body and felt the slowly recovering strength. During the time that ensued, Xiao Yin followed the instructions step by step according to the recuperation plan that Yao Lao had told him about. The horrifying injuries in his body gradually began to recover at a gratifying pace. According to the speed, he should be able to return to his condition from before within a month's time. During this period of quiet recovery, Xiao Yan, who had a lot of free time, restored his alchemist identity. Every day, he requested Xiao Ding to purchase a large amount of medicinal ingredients. He would then refine some healing medicine which were of quite good quality in large batches. During the period that he was refining medicine, Xiao Yan made a somewhat surprising discovery. Originally, the control he had for flames was insufficient for him to refine the medicinal pills like the energy recovery pill, which could be considered a tier 3 medicinal pill. However, this time around, he was stunned to realize that for some unknown reason, his ability to control flames appeared to have grown by exponentially. Even the energy recovery pill was able to be refined by him. Although the failure rate was quite high, he still managed to succeed. After being stunned for a while, comprehension appeared in Xiao Yan's heart. This likely had some connection with him creating the angry Buddha Lotus Flame. In the past, the extent of Xiao Yan's control over the Green Lotus Core Flame could almost be said to be a complete mess. The only things that he was able to do was to wrap the flame around his fist and use it to increase his attack strength or to use the flame in a rudimentary method and shoot it out. However, after he shot it out, Xiao Yan did not have the ability to continue controlling its attacking direction. Therefore, if the flame that was shot out did not hit the target, that very attack would have simply wasted a large amount of energy. Each time Xiao Yan recalled the exceedingly comfortable manner of how Yao Lao controlled the bone-chilling flame, his heart was filled with envy. If Yao Lao was the one who was in control back then in the fight against the Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor, Xiao Yan dared to say for certain that the Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor would be in an extremely dire state. Yao Lao would not even be like Xiao Yan, who was actually ridiculed by his opponent when he controlled the bone-chilling flame. With Yao Lao's controlling ability, he was able to release wisps of tiny, bone-chilling flame, which would then move along the ground and quietly shuttle closer toward their target before suddenly attacking. In that way, even if he was a decent distance from the target, he would be able to turn the opponent into a cluster of ice carvings or ashes without anyone knowing. This strange kind of method of controlling the flame was something that Xiao Yan had secretly coveted for. However, it was a mere fantasy with his strength in the past. Even with the sudden and massive increase in his flame controlling ability, which he accidentally obtained by creating the angry Buddha Lotus Flame, something so horrifying that even a Dou Huan would be shocked at, he still had a great distance before he could achieve Yao Lao's level of control. After the fight with the Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor, Xiao Yan's heart finally began to pay greater attention to the degree of control he had for the Heavenly Flame. He was clear in his heart that when he was able to train the degree of familiarity of his control to that of Yao Lao, his fighting strength would definitely soar abruptly. Once Xiao Yan had this determination and thought, the refining requirement that he had for himself during this period of refining medicine had almost reached the extent of it being harshly stringent. Although Xiao Yan currently had a lack of Dou Qi in his body, the main energy required for the controlling the heavenly flame was the unceasing spiritual strength. This was also something that the current Xiao Yan had an abundance of and was most outstanding at. Therefore, at the corner of the courtyard which was snuffed with some hot air, the desert metal mercenaries repeatedly began to carry in many different kinds of medicinal ingredients. When they came out, their faces were filled with awe as they carried huge piles of jade bottles. Within these jade bottles were high-quality healing medicines that were rarely seen in the rock desert city, as well as some energy recovery pill that one could not purchase here, even if one had the money. These medicinal pills, which were extremely rare in marketplaces, appeared to be rubbish that was thrown from the hands of the black-clothed young man within the courtyard and were randomly piled in a corner. This huge wealth caused everyone to feel stunned. Was this the greatness of an alchemist? As the days passed by one after another, those desert metal mercenaries that had delivered the medicinal ingredients and retrieved the medicinal pills from the courtyard also gradually became numb. After all, anyone who had stayed for a long time in such an environment would not act like they did initially, standing in front of a bottle of medicinal pill and foolishly staring without thought at it for a long time. Xiao Yan, who was in the courtyard, gave up quietly recuperating. Every day, after he had completed the necessary steps for recuperating, he would sit in front of his medicinal cauldron and repeatedly practice his control of the heavenly flame until his spirit could no longer support him. Only then did he begin to rest. Under this kind of tough training where he forgot to sleep and eat, Xiao Yan could clearly sense that his ability to control the heavenly flame had gradually become greater. In the courtyard, Xiao Yan was seated cross-legged on a stone bench. In the dark red-colored cauldron in front of him, a pale green flame was writhing turbulently. Sections of the hot flame's waves could be felt even from a far distance. Xiao Yan's ten long fingers were flat and probed in front of him. The ten fingers flashed in the green-colored flame and the cauldron began to dance along with them. The flexible appearance was like an obedient flame spirit. Xiao Ding and Xiao Li quietly stood at the door to the courtyard, eyeing Xiao Yan's unceasing movement of his hand gestures. Their faces could not help but be filled with amazement. Being able to control the flame to such an extent was already somewhat unbelievable in their eyes, but from the slight frown on Xiao Yan's face, it appeared that he was still a little dissatisfied. The flame in the cauldron rose for a moment. Xiao Yan lifted his eyes gently, flicked his finger and a gentle breeze knocked against the cauldron cover, sending it flying. 
With the beckoning of his hand, a few round medicinal pills soared out. After which, they steadily landed into a jade bottle. Holding a jade bottle, Xiao Yin carelessly took a glance at it before throwing it towards Xiao Ding and Xiao Li at the door. He immediately stretched his lazy waist and closed his eyes to sense the injury in his body. Surprise surfaced on his face immediately. Ku, looks like I am recovering quite quickly. After over half a month of nursing, the chi paths in his body had already recovered by more than half. This caused Xiao Yan, who was in a training stance to feel surprised. At the door, Xiao Ding caught the jade bottle that flew over before slowly walking into the courtyard with Xiao Li. He faced Xiao Yan and asked with a smile, How is your injury? Not bad. Xiao Yan smiled and answered, Next will be the last part of the recuperation. It should not be a problem for me to be completely healed in five days. TSK TSK, you really are an abnormal fellow. With those kinds of horrifying injuries, you only needed a mere 20 days to recover to such an extent. Your constitution is really a cause of envy. Xiao Ding and Xiao Li had amazed faces as they laughed. Xiao Yan waved his hand. In his heart, he clearly knew the reason he was able to recover at this speed. 30% of it was because of his constitution which was strengthened by the Green Lotus Core Flame, and 70% was because of the recuperation plan that Yao Lao had painstakingly designed. Only with the two of them working together did he manage to achieve such a speed. Where's Old High? Xiao Yan leaped down from the stone bench and randomly asked. Ah, uh, ever since the day you gave him some medicinal ingredients name, it seems that he ran to every single medicinal shop in the Rock Desert City during these few days. I think that if it were not for the fact that he needed to stay here to protect you, he might have run to the other cities. Xiao Li laughed. Xiao Yan laughed and nodded his head. These medicinal ingredients were all extremely rare items. Unless Hai Bo Dong had the luck of having a pie drop from the sky, it was almost impossible for him to find these medicinal ingredients in the medicinal shops within the Rock Desert City. It looked like Hai Bo Dong really wanted to swiftly recover his peak strength. I should start the final healing portion tomorrow. Only by recovering my strength as soon as possible can I help Yao Lao find some natural unique things that can help him swiftly recover his spiritual strength. Xiao Yan's hand gently rubbed on the black colored ring as he softly muttered. Moreover, the time to the three-year agreement is also drawing closer. Chapter 267, Queen Medusa appearing again. In the spacious room, Xiao Yan, who was seated cross-legged on the bed suddenly and gradually opened his eyes. He clenched his fist tightly and softly said, it is time to proceed with the final step. Xiao Yan gently rubbed the black-colored ring on his finger. After which, he immediately gently used both of his hands to lift the heaven-swallowing python, relaxing from his thighs and placed it onto the bed. His finger pressed on its small head as he said with a smile, Little fellow, wait here quietly. Don't create any trouble for me. If it is possible, you can help guard me. Don't let anyone interrupt me, do you understand? After undergoing the first evolution, the current, heaven-swallowing python, had undoubtedly began possessing some intellect. Therefore, it was able to understand some of Xiao Yan's words. It immediately blinked its pale purple snake eyes and repeatedly nodded its little head. As it let out its snake tongue, it emitted a soft hiss. Xiao Yan smiled and rubbed the heaven-swallowing python's ice-cold body. He then moved his hand and a green-colored lotus seat slowly appeared from within the storage ring. Finally, it was suspended in midair and emitted a faint green glow. Xiao Yan lifted his body and leaped onto the lotus in a supple manner. He sat cross-legged, inhaled a deep breath and once again recalled the information that Yao Lao had left behind. His finger gently tapped on the storage ring and an item that was covered in a dense green light appeared on his palm. When one looked at it carefully, it was actually a small lotus seed. I wonder if this fire lotus seed, known as the perfect fire spirit, is as mystical as what teacher had said. Eyeing the emerald lotus seed in his palm, Xiao Yan whispered somewhat doubtfully. He had clearly remembered that Yao Lao's evaluation of it under the magma was extremely high. This fire lotus seed was a unique treasure that Xiao Yan had found while searching for the green lotus core flame back then. It was really unexpected that the final treatment that Yao Lao had spoke of actually required it. Xiao Yan gently held the somewhat soft lotus seed between his fingers. It was difficult for Xiao Yan to imagine that this small thing, that was not eye-catching, would actually require a hundred years in order to agglomerate and form. What kind of huge amount of energy would actually be hidden within it? Shaking his head in amazement, Xiao Yan swiftly formed the training seal with his hands. He closed his eyes and a moment later, gradually entered into the training mode. His mind also slowly descended into his body. The moment he entered the training mode, Xiao Yan flicked his finger. The fire lotus seed at the tip of his finger was accurately shot into his wide open mouth. Once the fire lotus seed entered his body, the pale face of Xiao Yan suddenly became as red as a volcano. From the tip of his head, a white fog began curling upward, giving him a frightening appearance. At this moment, Xiao Yan had no time to bother about whether his outer appearance was appropriate. The moment the fire lotus seed had entered his mouth, it swiftly turned into a hot energy. After which, it moved along his throat and with an arrogant manner, violently knocked downward. The hot energy that was transformed from the fire lotus seed swiftly flowed into Xiao Yan's chi paths immediately, the chi paths that Xiao Yan had toiled for over half a month to nurse back to health shrunk violently like a small snake which had been stepped on by someone. 
An intense pain caused treads of cold air to seep out between the gaps of Xiao Yan's tensely clenched teeth. Xiao Yan kept his teeth glued to one another. His body which was seated cross-legged on the green lotus seat repeatedly trembled. All the pores in his body abruptly shrunk under this intense pain. As Xiao Yan clenched his teeth and endured, that initial intense pain from his qi paths persisted for a moment before it gradually weakened. At this time, Xiao Yan, whose forehead was filled with cold sweat, finally sighed in relief. He continued to stabilize his mind as he observed the situation in his body. The hot energy that was transformed from the fire lotus seed was overbearing to a somewhat terrifying extent. Anywhere that it passed through, the surface film layer on the qi path seemed to have been incinerated by the hot temperature. It should be known that this film was the fruit of Xiao Yan's hard work, which was created from the careful consumption of over a hundred of the medicinal liquids made during a period of half a month. The film was incinerated, however, the action of the fire lotus seed that followed caused the bitterness on Xiao Yan's face to disappear. Everywhere that the hot energy passed through, droplets of emerald-like, tiny liquid that were smaller than the size of a thumb were actually left behind. The liquid drops adhered to the walls of the qi path and squirmed like a living creature. After which, they began to melt into the qi path walls at a pace that was visible to the naked eye. Following the merging of the emerald liquid filled with large energies, the naked qi path walls that had been burnt by the high temperature until they were completely red, began to swiftly dissolve into a layer of pale green colored unknown liquid. These liquids covered the walls of the qi paths and an instant later, it was actually solidified into a green colored cuticle after being grilled by the energy of the fire lotus seed. These cuticles firmly covered the walls of Xiao Yan's qi paths. The defensive strength of it was many times stronger than the film layer of Xiao Yan's from before. Following the appearance of the green-colored cuticle, the feeling of intense pain that Xiao Yan's qi paths emitted finally completely disappeared. Clearly, after the strengthening of the fire lotus seed, the degree of toughness in Xiao Yan's qi paths had even exceeded what it was before he was injured. After completely covering most of the important qi paths with a layer of green-colored cuticles, the hot energy released by the fire lotus seed had also been somewhat reduced. It looked like the emerald-colored liquid, which had a simple appearance, was actually the essence of the fire lotus seed. Once the fire lotus seed had covered the qi paths with a defensive layer, it remained like a wild bull whose eyes were covered as it went on a rampage. Although Xiao Yan's mind had tried to direct it to move, he remained helpless. This energy was far too large. His hopes to drag it and control it undoubtedly appeared somewhat difficult. The hot energy circulated tirelessly within Xiao Yan's qi paths. As the circulation increased in intensity, threads of pale green gas were slowly released. Some slightly moist gas strangely passed through the obstruction of the cuticle layer and successfully entered the weakest qi paths within. After which, it slowly repaired the injuries that the qi paths had received. As these gas bodies grew increasingly numerous, some moist gas bodies even passed through the qi paths and randomly floated within Xiao Yan's body without any destination. Seemingly having sensed the bodies of gases floating around was a great tonic, the interior of Xiao Yan's body, his muscles, cells, bones, etc., all the organs that had been injured seemed to have been suddenly resurrected. They wiggled slightly and greedily swallowed the moist gas. At this moment, the exterior and interior of Xiao Yan's body was like a bottomless pit as it greedily absorbed the green-colored fog that was unceasing in its effort to be released from within the fire lotus seed. Following this insane swallowing, Xiao Yan could clearly sense that his body was continuously moving toward his peak condition from before at a somewhat frightening speed. According to the speed, recovering to this point of being in the condition he was in before he was injured appeared to be only a matter of time. Within the qi paths, the hot energy circulated an unknown number of times before Xiao Yan tried to control the fire lotus seed energy with his mind. After over a hundred attempts ending in failure, he finally successfully dragged the energy from the fire lotus seed into the flame mantra root. The energy circulated along the root for the flame mantra, Qi Mayad, each time this huge hot energy completed a cycle, some portion that was filled with green colored fog would be poured into that somewhat shriveled vortex. The huge amount of energy tirelessly followed the Qi method root and circulated. With the pouring of energy one after another, droplets of green colored energy liquid in the vortex finally began to form again. After which, it began dripping into the vortex. In the blink of an eye, the shriveled vortex's interior had once again become plentiful. The training did not have a provision or a restriction of the time taken. While Xiao Yan's mind was circling in his inner body, he did not know how long had passed in the outside world. He only knew that his body which had suffered a terrible injury was already completely healed by the fire lotus seed. Although the repairs had been completed, the thing that caused Xiao Yan to feel somewhat stunned was the hot energy that was still repeatedly circulating within his qi paths. A large amount of its energy may have been consumed, but the remaining energy that the fire lotus seed still caused Xiao Yan to be somewhat stunned. According to his guesses, the repairing of his nearly dilapidated body had likely only used one third of its energy. Simply terrifying. Within his qi paths, that hot energy appeared to be inexhaustible as it repeatedly released portions of green energy and allowed the cells and muscles to greedily absorb it. Despite Xiao Yan's body gradually returning to its peak level from before, his muscles, bones, and cells still did not stop. Instead, in Xiao Yan's stunned senses, it continued to greedily swallow without shame. Clearly, it was like an unreasonable troublemaker which seemed intent on not ceasing until it had absorbed all of the energy. 
Xiao Yan could neither laugh nor cry as he sensed the feeling of his body becoming increasingly filled with energy. He could only sigh quietly in his heart that it was really a blessing in disguise. If he had not received such a serious injury some time before, with Xiao Yan's condition, it was definitely difficult for him to break through the peak level from before in such a short time. The serious injury this time around had instead given him this opportunity to break through his previous peak condition. The vortex was also becoming increasingly filled with liquid energy. The pure energy that was emitted from the fire lotus seed did not have any misgivings as it was all stuffed inside it at once. No matter what, everything had its limit. A human body was no different. Therefore, when this unbridled absorption persisted for a period of time, Xiao Yan finally began to feel some panic as he realized that his muscles and other organs in his body had ceased absorbing. The vortex was also faintly emitting a swelling pain and no longer turned the gaseous energy into liquid energy. Clearly, his body has currently reached a saturated condition. Although his absorption had already reached its limit, the fire lotus seed continued to proceed as it pleased and emitted large amounts of energy without caring if Xiao Yan was able to completely endure it. Sensing the change in his body, Xiao Yan's expression also became slightly ugly. He wanted to forcefully stop the hot energy from circulating but it was like a mayfly trying to shake a huge tree. It was totally futile. A panic gradually surfaced in his heart. Xiao Yan immediately clenched his teeth and slowly suppressed it. He knew that the current him did not have the guidance from Yao Lao. Therefore, during such a time, he must not panic. Once he panicked, it would be completely over. Xiao Yan opened his eyes. His palms were being tightly held together. A moment later, he clapped his hands suddenly and said softly, Since I cannot continue to absorb, then I need to convey these remaining energy out. Converting it out. Who do I send it to? This energy was not something that not just anyone could endure. Xiao Yan panic eyes swept one round around the interior of the room. Immediately, he stopped abruptly at the heaven-swallowing python on the bed that was staring at him with its purple-colored snake eyes. Little fellow, it will be you. Seeing the heaven-swallowing python, a joy swiftly flashed across Xiao Yan's eyes. His heart sighed in relief. With its strength, it should be able to consume the remaining energy. As he thought in this manner within his heart, Xiao Yan's palms gently pressed on the lotus platform. His body volleyed and rolled down from the lotus platform. After which, he hurriedly rushed to the bed and grabbed the heaven-swallowing python, which was at a loss in his hand. After which, he used all of his mental energy to drag the huge energy of the fire lotus seed toward the chi paths on his hand. Following the pouring of the energy from the fire lotus seed, Xiao Yan's arm was swiftly covered by a green glow. His middle finger was lifted vertically and a portion of the lush fire type energy rendered his finger into something like a green jade. Being suddenly grabbed by Xiao Yan, the heaven-swallowing python was initially at a loss. When it saw the energy within the former's finger which was strong to the point of being somewhat terrifying, it suddenly struggled intensely. Clearly, it had become a little uneasy being in such close proximity with this kind of strong energy. Be obedient. Don't struggle. I will not harm you. Xiao Yan smiled gently at the heaven-swallowing python. He then forcefully opened its mouth and extended his finger into it. At the moment that Xiao Yan had reached his finger into the heaven-swallowing python's mouth, it suddenly ceased struggling. An intense glow suddenly surged out from its body. After which, the stunned Xiao Yan instinctively narrowed his eyes. The glow flashed and disappeared. However, the instant after the glow appeared, Xiao Yan's face suddenly changed drastically. This was because he could clearly sense that the body of the heaven-swallowing python that he grabbed in his hands was suddenly becoming bigger. At the same time, it appeared to become softer. The empty feeling of his right hand was embracing had already disappeared. Replacing it was a softness that was filled with flexibility. After his palm touched the soft thing that was like a lady's delicate body, Xiao Yan appeared to have remembered something. Immediately, his expression became extremely ugly. His neck was somewhat stiff as he slowly lowered his head. He saw a pair of bright pretty eyes filled with anger and watching him somewhat icily. Eyeing that perfect pretty face that was rated at a bewitching level, all the hairs on Xiao Yan's body stood up as though he had been struck by lightning. His throat rolled slightly as he swallowed his saliva. His voice was hoarse and dry. Queen. Queen Medusa. Chapter 268, Contest. At the moment, Xiao Yan and Queen Medusa below him, who was rumored to have an extremely fierce reputation, had an extremely enchanting posture. Not only was her body completely pressed down by Xiao Yan but her red sleek small mouth also had a finger of Xiao Yan's in it. Xiao Yan's eyes watched the face in his immediate vicinity dully. This appearance that was called bewitching was like the masterpiece of the heavens. Even though this pair of bright eyes contained an evilness, it was still difficult for them to hide her enchanting charm. This woman was a stunning creature straight from almost every man's dream. Although the soft and lovely body under him gave Xiao Yan an incomparable pleasure, his face did not dare to express even the slightest bit of it at this moment. His gaze contained some horror as he stared blankly at Queen Medusa. A moment later, the corner of his mouth twitched once and revealed an extremely ugly smile, Hell. Hello. As he said the words, the finger of Xiao Yan's which was extended into Queen Medusa's mouth involuntarily stretched out a little. Immediately, he touched the delicate and moist little tongue. At that moment, Xiao Yan's body abruptly trembled. A numb feeling spread out from his heart, almost giving him the impulse to violently suck that small tasty tongue. 
Of course, Xiao Yan may have had such an impulse in his heart but he was certain that if he did that, he would be blasted and killed until he turned into dregs by Queen Medusa who even Haibo Dong would turn around and flee on sight. The bright eyes which were still filled with anger stared at Xiao Yan coldly. When Xiao Yan's finger had touched her tongue a moment ago, a shallow crimson color flew onto Queen Medusa's pretty face. However, a thick killing aura was also emitted by her. Queen Medusa's pretty eyes moved slightly and glanced at Xiao Yan's hand which was glowing with a rich green light. She then glanced at the green-colored jade-like finger that reached into her mouth. Immediately, her long eyes narrowed slightly. An instant later, she violently bit down with her silver teeth. Hiss. With his hand being violently bitten, Xiao Yan's eyes widened. He painfully inhaled a deep breath of cool air and was thinking of struggling to shake her off when a long hand that was like white jade quickly and unexpectedly shot out, firmly grabbing Xiao Yan's neck. The threatening glare from that pair of beautiful eyes was extremely fierce. Being grabbed by Queen Medusa, Xiao Yan became helpless. He could only submit and lower his body. Immediately, two round softness pressed onto him at his chest. A nefarious flame instantly rose from his lower abdomen causing Xiao Yan's breathing to be somewhat hurried. Xiao Yan forcefully endured the nefarious flame in his body. At this moment, he dared not touch this fiend with his hands or legs. His body was straight as he pressed on Queen Medusa's soft lovely body. Their faces faced each other and their breathing could be clearly heard. As Queen Medusa bit Xiao Yan's finger, bright red blood slowly colored the red sleek lips. Blood added to the redness and the vivid color caused the bewitching Queen Medusa to have a little more of a bloody rose like allure. As the blood slowly seeped out, Xiao Yan's expression changed slightly. He could sense that the enormous energy of the fire lotus seed that was moving back and forth in his right arm was swiftly being swallowed by Queen Medusa. There's no need to worry, giving to the heaven-swallowing python is the same as giving to her. As long as the excess energy of the fire lotus seed can leave my body, it is just the same. Xiao Yan comforted himself and did his best to calm himself down. His gaze remained on her perfect and nearly flawless yet bewitching face. Although both parties were on opposing sides, his heart could not resist quietly praising. Following Queen Medusa's nearly greedy swallowing, the green-colored glow on Xiao Yan's right hand slowly dimmed at a clearly noticeable rate. The green glow finally completely disappeared after another few seconds. That finger which was like a green-colored jade had also gradually recovered to normal. Just as Xiao Yan had sighed in relief within his heart when the excess energy was successfully sucked out of his body, his expression immediately changed drastically. This was because after she had completely absorbed the energy, Queen Medusa actually had no intention of opening her mouth. Her long pretty eyes carried a cold laughter as she glanced at him. She gently sucked in the dou qi within Xiao Yan's vortex was immediately hoisted into a wave. It actually steadily moved along his qi paths and had the posture of being sucked away. Open your mouth. Sensing the change in his vortex, Xiao Yan's expression changed wildly and he hurriedly said. Queen Medusa did not have the spare time to bother about Xiao Yan. Her eyes carried a cold laughter as the delicate hand she used to grab Xiao Yan's neck tightened slightly. Immediately, Xiao Yan's face became a little flush. Damn it. Sensing the dou qi within his body that was about to move along his finger and surge out, Xiao Yan's eyes immediately became red. During these 20 plus days, he had spent an unknowingly large amount of effort in order to recover his strength. If it was absorbed by this damn woman, when the time came to go to the Misty Cloud sect, would he end up having to pick up tiles to throw? TL, without weapons to fight with. With crimson eyes, Xiao Yan's left hand was slowly raised. The green-colored flame suddenly soared. Immediately, the temperature of the interior of the room rose. Eyeing the green-colored flame on Xiao Yan's left hand, Queen Medusa's expression involuntarily changed slightly. Clearly, she had also recognized the cluster of flame as the green lotus core flame that had caused her great suffering. Open your mouth. I know that with your strength, it would be very easy to kill me. However, you did not do this just now. This does not match your fierce reputation. I think that you have not recovered your strength, right? Xiao Yan's face was dark as he slightly weakened the green-colored flame covering his palm. He said softly, you should be able to recognize this. Open your mouth immediately or I will ensure you are seriously injured even if I have to stake my life. Hearing Xiao Yan's threat, the coldness in Queen Medusa's bright eyes became even richer. With her status, there was no one who had ever threatened her in this manner. Immediately, a pair of pretty eyes stared intently at Xiao Yan. There was a stern killing intent in them. Being stared at by Queen Medusa in such a manner, the skin of Xiao Yan's head became somewhat numb. However, he also clearly knew that at such a time, even if he knew that his future fate may not be very good, he could only stiffen his neck and pretend to be a determined person. After all, if he was feeble, this beautiful snake renowned for her fierce reputation would swallow his person along with his bones. Within the quiet room, the gazes of the two people stared intently at each other. Neither one was willing to relax first. As the time they stared at each other dragged on, a drop of cold sweat slowly dripped down from Xiao Yan's forehead. Keeping his imposing composure with this beautiful female snake whose fierce name shook the entire Jiama Empire was not an easy job. The stalemate continued. Just as the hint of cowering could not help but be born in Xiao Yan's heart, Queen Medusa finally could not endure the increasingly close green-colored flame. She ferociously cut Xiao Yan with her eyes before releasing her mouth with extreme unwillingness. 
Seeing that Queen Medusa opened her mouth, Xiao Yan withdrew his finger in a lightning-like manner. His body gently stepped off the bed and his body abruptly shot back. While his body was in midair, he placed his hands together and immediately pulled them apart. The green-colored flame was actually pulled into a long whip. The whip circled around Xiao Yan's body and was ready to block all attacks coming at him. Once he completed his defense, Xiao Yan raised his head to eye the bed. Immediately, his eyes straightened. On the bed he could see the hot figure of the beautiful female snake seated nakedly on it. Sensing Xiao Yan's gaze, Queen Medusa's pretty face became slightly cold. Her delicate hand pulled the blanket by the side and swiftly covered her body. Even though her mesmerizing curve was covered by the blanket, it still appeared extremely enchanting. On the side of the bed, a pale purple-colored snake tail was gently lowered. It swayed slightly and emitted a wild allure. Xiao Yan eyed Queen Medusa who was coldly staring at him. The corner of his mouth twitched as he wiped his hand clean. With the Dou Qi in his body hurriedly flowing, Xiao Yan stared cautiously at Queen Medusa, guarding against any sudden attack. You are the first person who has dared threaten me. After staring at the delicate and handsome face for a while, Queen Medusa finally opened her mouth slowly. Her voice was numb and lazy, possessing a temptation that caused a man's bone to become numb. You are also the first woman to bite me. Xiao Yan stiffened his neck and said dryly. Queen Medusa extended her delicate and bright red tongue and gently licked her red sleek lips. Her casual action had a captivation that caused men's hearts to feel impulsive. The energy from before should be coagulated from the lotus seed from within the lotus seed of the green lotus core flame, right? Back then, if I had not been seriously injured when I was obtaining the green lotus core flame, I would definitely not have left even a little of such a treasure. Xiao Yan laughed dryly but did not reply. The green colored flame in his palm was still dancing. Staring deeply at the green colored flame in Xiao Yan's hand, Queen Medusa shook her head and softly said, How unexpected. At the end of it all, the greatest benefit was actually all taken by you. That Guhi must have been quite furious. Hee hee, didn't your majesty also use it to successfully evolve? The benefits that you have obtained are also quite significant. Xiao Yan laughed. In order to evolve, the misery that I had to bear is something that you witnessed. Queen Medusa said faintly, if it were not such a crucial moment back then, I would have personally killed you. Hee hee. Hearing the Xiao Yan laughed awkwardly. Back then, she had actually long discovered him hiding by the side. However, human, it must be said that you are really very bold. Queen Medusa's delicate finger gently pointed at Xiao Yan. A feminine aura surfaced on Queen Medusa's face, her numbing voice faintly carried a stern killing intent. Not only did you dare to break into the deep regions of the desert by yourself but you even dared to treat the body of my evolution form as a pet and raise it. This courage is something that I haven't seen in so many years. Sensing the killing intent in Queen Medusa's words, Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and helplessly said, I have never treated you as a pet to be raised. It is just that you like to follow me, that's all there is. Then do I need to, to call you? Master. The long eyes of Queen Medusa were bent into a dangerous angle. The last part of her voice was dragged into a somewhat elongated manner. Her numbing tone caused the face of Xiao Yan, who had quite a strong mental strength, to redden. He bowed his body slightly and his pants between his legs appeared to have jacked up by quite a bit. The words said with this type of voice were really too terrifying. What you have said before is correct. The current me really doesn't have the strength to kill you. However, during the next time that I awaken, trust me, I will, take, your, life. Her delicate hands shakingly pointed at Xiao Yan as Queen Medusa slightly lifted her proud forehead. Her voice that spoke those words in that pause, contained a stern killing intent. Little human fellow, just wait. In this world, a person who has the right to be my master has not been born. At the very least, the current you is still far from having that privilege. Queen Medusa's lovely body slowly creeped down. Immediately, the blanket that was wrapped around her body was compressed to reveal an attractive arc. An intense glow shot out. Queen Medusa's body slowly shrunk, finally transforming into a small seven-colored snake. Eyeing the small snake that had been transformed into the heaven-swallowing serpent, Xiao Yan's entire body suddenly became weak. He sat down on the floor. Only at this moment did he realize that he was actually already drenched in perspiration. Chapter 269, Sharp Rise in the Degree of Compatibility Sitting on the ground with perspiration covering his body, Xiao Yan intensely and roughly gasped for air. His sleeves rubbed the perspiration on his forehead and he shook his head with a bitter smile. These few minutes of facing off in such a manner actually caused more fatigue than his fight with a Dadosher. Luckily for him, Queen Medusa's strength was much weaker for some unknown reason. Otherwise, he may really have been killed by her today. Xiao Yan still had some palpitations remaining in his heart as he sighed. He slowly stood up, shifted his gaze and suddenly stopped at the green-colored flame which was like a flame snake, moving up and down his body as it danced. Immediately, he was at a loss and his mouth opened slightly. This green-colored flame shaped like a long whip was the one randomly pulled together by Xiao Yan when he had quickly jumped back from the bed. His relaxed manner in pulling it out appeared to have not caused him to use much effort. After the long flame whip was pulled out, it separated from Xiao Yan's palm. After which, it automatically moved along Xiao Yan's body and rotated. That posture of it was as though it was a divine artifact, which possessed a spirit, protecting its owner. 
Xiao Yan's eyes stared at the green-colored flame long whip that was spiraling around his body. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly. Although after 20 plus days of training, his control over the underground green lotus flame was much more skilled, he knew in his heart that with the little flame controlling ability of his it was definitely impossible for him, at the moment, to control the flame until it was as nimble as his own hand. However, the reality that appeared in front of him caused him to have his head filled with fog on top of being wildly happy. After being at a loss for a while, Xiao Yin slowly recovered. He extended his palm and gently touched the green-colored long flame whip that was spiraling around him. The moment his palm made contact with the green-colored flame, it extremely obediently turned into a cluster of green flame that adhered above Xiao Yan's finger, writhing slightly. Xiao Yan's ten fingers moved together and gradually pulled apart. Instantly, ten tiny green-colored flame lines was being stretched out. His palm danced and the green lotus core flame on it rose up and shrunk back occasionally. The agile manner was much greater when compared to what it had been when Xiao Yan was refining the medicinal pills a few days before. What exactly happened? Eyeing the green lotus core flame that was following the change in his thoughts and repeatedly transforming into different shapes, the shock on Xiao Yan's face grew increasingly apparent. When he was controlling the flame, he could clearly sense that the intimacy of the green lotus core flame with himself had obviously and suddenly rose by a few times compared to the past. The feeling of resistance that faintly existed in the past had also quietly become much weaker. Xiao Yan frowned as he mused for a long time. Suddenly, a thought struck him. He softly muttered, don't tell me, it is because of the fire lotus seed. As this thought flashed through his heart, it caused Xiao Yan to somewhat comprehend things clearly. The fire lotus seed and the green lotus core flame were born from one body. Now that he had absorbed the fire lotus seed's energy essence into his body, he had accidentally caused the degree of compatibility between his body and the green lotus core flame to become more perfect. Following his analysis, the tight frown of Xiao Yan's was slowly released. A joy surfaced on his face. He did not expect that consuming the fire lotus seed would actually have such an unexpected and unique effect. This sudden increase in compatibility was something that caused Xiao Yan to get much more excited than he had been when his injuries were completely healed. After all, his injuries would be completely healed sooner or later, but the compatibility between his body and the green lotus core flame could only rely on time adapt to each other in order to slowly raise it. Therefore, with such a comparison, the rarer and more practical one of the two would be known at a glance. Carrying some joy on his face, Xiao Yan's gaze stared intently at the green-colored flames on his ten fingers. The flames wiggled slightly. A moment later, they actually agglomerated at the peak of the his ten fingers, forming extremely sharp flame pricks. Due to the result of being compressed, the destructive force contained on the ten flame pricks was undoubtedly quite strong. Xiao Yan gently flicked his fingers and the ten sharp flame pricks were abruptly shot out forcefully. The hot force formed a circle of tiny green-colored light film around their bodies. As these flame pricks were about to strike the wall, Xiao Yan bent his finger slightly. Immediately, the flame pricks that had shot out forcefully appeared to have received a drag force and suddenly turned around and returned using the same path that they had used earlier, shooting back at Xiao Yan. Smiling as he eyed those green-colored flame pricks that were flying back, Xiao Yan extended his finger and the ten pricks shot directly into Xiao Yan's finger. The green-colored flame on his hand slowly disappeared. Xiao Yan watched his hand, which did not contain the slightest injury. He nodded in amazement. In the past, his control of the green lotus core flame was obviously unable to reach the point of being able to release and recover it. Now, however, after he had absorbed the fire lotus seed, his degree of control over the heavenly flame was already able to allow him to complete this flame controlling action which was very difficult. Each cluster of green lotus core flame required Xiao Yan to use quite a big amount of Dou Qi in order to mobilize it from the acceptance spirit from within the vortex. If these heavenly flames did not return after he shot them out, it would undoubtedly be an extremely wasteful and luxurious action. If he were to use it in a fight, such squandering would be irresponsible to his own life. Therefore, being currently able to retrieve the heavenly flame that he had shot out, Xiao Yan felt extremely satisfied in his heart. Xiao Yan once again played with the green lotus core flame that had become obedient before he slowly returned it completely into his body. His palm faced the green lotus seat suspended in midair and beckoned it. Immediately, the latter turned into a green glow that floated into his storage ring. Once he had stored it properly, Xiao Yan stretched his lazy waist. The bones all over his body pressed against each other, emitting a wave of cracking sounds. The relaxed and energy-filled feeling caused Xiao Yan to comfortably exhale. He clenched his fists tightly and violently threw them forward. As he flipped between his fist and palm, vigorous winds were created, giving him an impressive posture. Sensing the terrifying force being erupted from the tightening of his muscles, Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head. Although he had endured great hardships because of the serious injuries this time around, the fighting ability that his current body could unleash was definitely greater than in the past. Looking at it in this manner, he did not lose out by being seriously injured this time around. Standing in the same spot, Xiao Yan closed his eyes slightly. His mind descended into his body and swiftly inspected it for one round. After which, he opened his eyes, tightened his fist and softly laughed, after the infusion of the fire lotus seed, I think that I should already possess the strength of a six-star doshi. Xiao Yan gave a gratified smile and slowly walked toward the side of the bed. He eyed the heaven-swallowing python that was on the blanket and laughed. 
The heaven-swallowing python watched Xiao Yin slowly walking over. Its pale purple snake eyes glanced at the smiling face once and immediately ignored him. Turning its head around, it lay its body feebly onto the soft bed. Clearly, the earlier sudden action of Xiao Yin to pour in energy had caused the heaven-swallowing python, which possessed an initial intelligence to feel somewhat angry in its heart. Seeing the heaven-swallowing python, which was acting like a young child feeling upset, Xiao Yin helplessly shook his head. He extended his hand and gently rubbed its body. When he saw that it still did not have a reaction, he could only smile bitterly and extract a bottle of amethyst essence from within his storage ring. After which, he opened the bottle cap. A hot breath that contained a faint fragrance slowly rose. Almost immediately after the amethyst essence was removed from the storage ring, the heaven-swallowing python that was lying feebly on the bed suddenly stood up. It turned its head over, eyed Xiao Yan's smiling face and then glanced at the amethyst essence that was emitting a pale purple fog. A craving flashed across the snake's eyes. After hesitating for a moment, it could no longer resist the greed in its heart. It swayed its tail and swiftly slithered in front of Xiao Yan, letting out its snake tongue and emitting a hissing sound. Xiao Yan lowered the bottle with a smile. The heaven-swallowing python swayed its tail and turned its body into light and appeared in front of the bottle in a lightning-like manner. It extended its head and reached its snake tongue into the bottle, greedily drinking. As Xiao Yan had the intention to remove the resentment in the little fellow's heart this time around, Xiao Yan did not stop it from greedily drinking in this manner. He only eyed the slowly falling amethyst essence within the bottle and pain flashed across his face. After around one-tenth of the amethyst essence in the bottle was swallowed by the heaven-swallowing python, it finally ceased to continue drinking. Its head was slightly confused as it pulled out from the bottle. A tipsy appearance actually flashed across its pale purple snake eyes. Eyeing the heaven-swallowing python that was shaking its head, Xiao Yan laughed bitterly and did the same. He carefully stored the amethyst essence and his palm rubbed its somewhat warm body. In a helpless voice, he said, Little fellow, are you satisfied now? The mouth is shorter when one eats something of others. This time around, the heaven-swallowing python did not avoid Xiao Yan again. It shook its long neck and a purple glow suddenly swarmed into its snake eyes. Widening its snake's mouth, it let out a muffled bang, and a purple-colored flame was suddenly spit out from its mouth. In an instant, the turbulent flame incinerated the wooden beam on the ceiling of the room into a pile of dark black wooden ashes. TL, the mouth is shorter when one eats something of others, Chinese idiom, meaning when you take something that belongs to others it is difficult to reject the person's request. Xiao Yin slowly raised his head and eyed the dark black charcoal pillar that emitted a cracking sound. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly. A moment later, he lowered his head and looked at the heaven-swallowing python, which was repeatedly spurting clusters of fire seedling as though it was having a hiccup. Xiao Yan did not know if he should cry or smile as he shook his head. Did this fellow think that the amethyst essence could be randomly eaten? The richness of the purple flame energy in it could cause people's hair to stand on end. It could easily agglomerate into purple flame which possessed quite a strong damaging power. That flame was something that even Yunji was afraid of back then. Helplessly watching the heaven-swallowing python, which occasionally spat out clusters of flame seedling as though it was playing, Xiao Yan sighed. He was just about to get up to pack up the messy room when his body abruptly paused. His gaze stared intently at those purple-colored flame. A thought quietly rose from deep within his heart. If I were to use the purple flame created by these amethyst essence to merge with the green lotus flame, the strength of the angry Buddha lotus flame that would be created would definitely not be comparable to the original but it should also not be too weak, shouldn't it? Moreover, with my current strength, I think I should be able to control it. Xiao Yan's palm slowly fondled his chin as he softly muttered. Chapter 270, Purple Flame Pill Within the room, Xiao Yan slowly rubbed his chin, his face was filled with an expression of contemplation. A long while later, he flipped his hand and a transparent bottle appeared in his palm. A bottle full of amethyst essence was contained within the bottle. Xiao Yan opened the bottle cap and extended his finger into it. As he carefully dipped a little of it, a stinging pain was immediately transmitted from his finger. After withdrawing his hand, Xiao Yan's eyes stared intently at the drop of amethyst essence on the tip of his finger. The Dou Qi in his body flowed, seeped through his finger and gently touched the drop of purple-colored amethyst essence. Immediately, a soft muffled bang sounded. A thread of tiny purple-colored flame rose from his finger. The hot temperature caused Xiao Yan's eyes to narrow. The temperature is not bad, but unfortunately, the purple flame that a drop of amethyst essence can create is really too little. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head before he immediately said somewhat regretfully. I don't have much amethyst essence stored. If a drop of it can only create this small bit of a purple flame, my losses would be far greater than my gain. Xiao Yan stared at the bottle of amethyst essence and said with his eyebrows knit together. But this little fellow also did not absorb much of it. How did it spit out fire like a flamethrower? Xiao Yan slowly tilted his head and eyed the heaven-swallowing python, who was enjoying itself greatly spitting out flames as he asked himself with uncertainty in his voice. Xiao Yan's gaze was intently staring at the heaven-swallowing python. A long while later, he gently lifted his eyebrow. After some observation, he realized that at the moment when the heaven-swallowing python was about to spit out the purple flame, some saliva seemed to seep out between its fangs and its mouth. When the tiny purple-colored flame seedlings came into contact with the saliva, its size suddenly expanded by over ten times. 
Is it because of the saliva? Xiao Yin muttered softly in his mouth. He smiled slightly and as he flipped his palm, an empty bottle appeared in it. Immediately, he walked slowly over to the heaven-swallowing python with a smile on his lips. After a frustrating toss and turn that caused him to be covered in perspiration, Xiao Yin finally obtained slightly less than half a bottle of pale green-colored saliva from the heaven-swallowing python's fangs under its resentful gaze. He placed it under his nose and sniffed the saliva which had a faint fragrance. Xiao Yan's face was strange as he shook his head. Glancing at the heaven-swallowing python on the bed, Xiao Yan muttered in his heart, This fellow, don't tell me it is also a female. Xiao Yan gently set the two bottles in his hand down as he mused for a moment. Suddenly, he beckoned with his palm and pulled out a dark red-colored cauldron from his storage ring, which he then placed on the table. His finger flicked gently. A few wisps of a green-colored flame shot out and a hot flame immediately rose within the medicinal cauldron. Watching the writhing flame within the medicinal cauldron, Xiao Yan gently rubbed his storage ring and obtained a few completely red plants which with one glance, one would be able to tell that they contained fire-type energy. Waving his palm, he threw them all into the medicinal cauldron. He then controlled the green-colored flame and repeatedly refined them, turning them into a large pile of red-colored powder. Once the red-colored powder appeared, Xiao Yan used two needle tubes that had hollow centers to suck a drop of amethyst essence and the saliva of the heaven-swallowing python, respectively. After which, he cast them into the medicinal cauldron. Eyeing the flame that was soaring within the medicinal cauldron, Xiao Yan smiled slightly. His ten fingers nimbly leaped about and the temperature of the green-colored flame repeatedly rose and fell, changing with his thoughts. Although this kind of swift changing of the flame temperature was extremely testing on the flame-controlling ability of an alchemist, the current Xiao Yan after he consumed the fire lotus seed, already possessed the ability to easily overcome these kinds of troublesome steps. Within the medicinal cauldron, the green-colored flame danced enchantingly. A long while later, the hot temperature gradually faded away. The turbulent flame also slowly disappeared. Finally it passed through the flame outlet, turned into a tiny wisp of flame and entered into Xiao Yan's finger. Although a large amount of it was depleted during the refining of medicine, being able to retrieve a little is somewhat nice. Xiao Yan smiled as he eyed the wisp of green-colored flame that had entered his body. He flicked his finger and a gentle breeze shot down the cover of the cauldron. He then beckoned with his hand and three red-colored pills flew out before steadily landing in Xiao Yan's palm. Xiao Yan played with these three Danwen and a smile involuntarily surfaced on the corner of his mouth. This kind of Danwen could not be called a medicinal pill. This was because they did not possess any unique properties like a medicinal pill. Anyone who swallowed this thing into their stomach would not only not receive the slightest benefit, but instead sink into a miserable state. L. Danwin is like a pill but it does not help any human who consumes it. After twisting a red-colored Danwin between his fingers, Xiao Yan threw it into his mouth. He chewed it slightly and waited until he sensed the hot energy swiftly spreading in his mouth. At that moment, the Dou Qi in his body quickly swarmed up and collided with the hot energy. At the moment of collision, Xiao Yan opened his mouth slightly. A cluster of hot purple-colored flame was suddenly spit out. After which, it steadily landed on his palm that was wrapped with Dou Qi. It burnt with a rage and still had considerable might. Xiao Yan gently breathed out a mouthful of hot air before lowering his head to eye the purple-colored flame rising in his palm. The amount of purple flame this time around was about enough needed to merge with the green lotus core flame. At that moment, Xiao Yan heaved a sigh of relief. A drop of amethyst essence, a drop of the heaven-swallowing python saliva and some fire-type medicinal ingredients. The ability of these few things to achieve such an effect had satisfied Xiao Yan. Let's call this thing, purple flame pill. Tossing the two red-colored Danwen in his hand, Xiao Yan opened his mouth and laughed. The current him really wanted to try and see just how great the strength of the angry Buddha lotus flame, created from the merger of the green lotus core flame, and the purple flame would be. It looks like I need to find a flesh target. A smile surfaced on Xiao Yan's face as he eyed the purple flame pill. He turned around and placed the heaven-swallowing python, which had fallen asleep after becoming tired from spitting out flames. After which, he smiled and walked out of the shaking room, which appeared about to fall, to find a live target to test just how strong this imitated version of the angry Buddha lotus flame was. Currently, it was the time of daily training at the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, training ground. Therefore, many mercenaries were gathered on the training ground. They withstood the hot sun and were covered in perspiration as they sparred and compared their skills. On a shaded area on the open ground stood Xiao Ding and a few others. Their gaze occasionally swept across the training ground and nodded slightly. Mr. Luo Bu, looks like the brothers from the San Mercenary Company, are getting along quite well with the others. You have worked hard during this period of time. Xiao Ding turned his head around and said with a smile to Luo Bu beside him as he eyed the mercenaries from both troops whose entanglement had clearly been significantly eliminated because of this period of adapting with one another. These are all methods that company leader Xiao Ding thought of. I have only executed them out. Luo Bu shook his head, the corner of his eye carried great respect as he glanced at Hai Bo Dong by the side. On one occasion, he had seen this old man fight. Therefore, he clearly knew just what kind of strength this inconspicuous old man had. Luo Bu's heart also became a little more afraid of Xiao Yin who was able to invite Hai Bo Dong to live in this mercenary company. When he noticed Xiao Ding asked this question, he hurriedly gave a polite reply. Xiao Ding
Naturally knew the fear in Luobu, immediately. He smiled and conversed a little with him before he turned around and glanced at Haibo Dong who was leaning against a tree trunk and pulling a long face. He said with a smile, Kuku, old Mr. Hai, does the medicinal shop not have the medicinal ingredients that you need? Relax, I have already sent people to help you search in the neighboring cities. If they obtain any news, they will report back very soon. At least you, little fellow, have put in some effort. That guy Xiao Yan has withdrawn into the courtyard ever since he told me about these medicinal ingredients and has not come out again. Hearing this, a weak smile appeared on Haibo Dong's face as he replied to Xiao Ding. Bad-mouthing people behind their backs is not a good thing. A faint laugh was suddenly emitted from behind everyone. The familiar voice caused the few people to hurriedly turn their heads around and eye the smiling Xiao Yan who was walking over. Is your injury completely healed? Eyeing Xiao Yan, whose presence clearly had greater vitality compared to the past, surprise flashed across Haibo Dong's old face as he asked in a stunned voice. Yes. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head. Ugh, what an abnormal person. Making a complete recovery in less than a month with that kind of serious injury. Seeing Xiao Yan nodding his head, Haibo Dong immediately smiled bitterly and shook his head. At the same time, his heart was shocked by the means Xiao Yan had displayed. Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. He smiled and conversed with Xiao Ding and the others for a while before his gaze suddenly drifted to Luobu by the side. He smiled slightly, but the smile caused the latter to feel somewhat scared. Company leader Xiao Yan. Seeing Xiao Yan slowly walking over, Luobu hurriedly greeted. Mr. Luobu, are you getting used to being in the Desert Metal Mercenary Company? Xiao Yan inquired with a smile. Seeing Xiao Yan smile, Luobu hurriedly nodded his head. Currently, the news of the death of the first elder in the MO clan had almost spread throughout the eastern region of the Jiama Empire. Although other people may not be clear about who the killer was, Luobu knew very clearly in his heart that the person who did it was definitely this young man in front of him who appeared totally harmless. Mr. Luobu. Since you are idling around with nothing to do, can you help me with an experiment? Xiao Yan asked with another smile. He did not wait for Luobu to nod his head. Instead, he immediately lifted his feet and walked out of the shaded place. Although Xiao Yan's current strength had already returned to the Dosher class, Xiao Yan knew clearly that when dealing with a person like Luobu, Luobu would immediately be suspicious if someone was to suddenly become friendly with him. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Luobu was at a loss. Instantly, he smiled bitterly and shook his head before lifting his feet to follow. Standing off to the side, Xiao Ding and Xiao Li saw this strange action, and could not help but exchange glances. After which, they also followed with curiosity. Xiao Yan slowly came to a stop at a corner of the training ground. He faced Luo Bu who was somewhat uneasy and said with a slight smile, You should use all your strength to defend. I want to try to figure just how much strength the thing that I have just modified has. Huh. Hearing this, the corner of Luo Bu's mouth quivered. His expression became somewhat purple. Xiao Yan had actually planned to use him as a target. Xiao Ding and the others were all part of the upper echelon of the Desert Metal Mercenary Company. When the other company members in the training ground saw them gathering, they immediately began surrounding the place as they curiously watched Xiao Yan and Luobu at the middle of it. Be careful. Xiao Yan reminded Luobu, whose expression was both green and purple before he shook his finger. A red-colored Danwen appeared, which he threw into his mouth in front of everyone's gaze. He chewed slightly and a moment later, opened his mouth. A cluster of hot purple-colored flame was spit out and steadily landed on his hand which was isolated by Dochi. Xiao Yan gently tossed this cluster of purple flame and smiled. Then he extended his right hand and a green-colored flame slowly rose. Eyeing the two different colored flame on his two hands, Haibo Dong was at a loss momentarily. His expression immediately changed as he muttered, Damn it. Is this little guy planning to use that trick again? As fear gradually rose in Haibo Dong's eyes, Xiao Yan, who was in the training ground, actually began to slowly place his two palms together. Seeing this action of Xiao Yan, Haibo Dong's expression finally changed completely. His feet suddenly stomped on the ground and shot up into the air in a lightning-like manner in front of everyone's stunned gaze. He stomped and sharply said, Xiao Yan, you lunatic. The last time you almost killed yourself. You still want to try again. Xiao Yan lifted his head and watched Haibo Dong in midair who had flown into a rage. His face was completely stunned. He had not expected that this old fellow would be so terrified of his angry Buddha Lotus Flame. Chapter 271, Imitation of the Angry Buddha Lotus Flame Xiao Yan was stunned as he eyed the utterly discomfort Hai Bo Dong in the sky. A long while later, Xiao Yan was neither able to laugh nor cry as he shook his head. He waved the two kind of flames on his hand and said with a smile, Old Hai, with my current condition, I am unable to unleash the explosion like back then, the one I have now is a angry Buddha Lotus Flame that I have modified. The situation of me losing control will not happen. Hai Bo Dong eyed the cluster of purple flame on Xiao Yan's hand. He had just realized that this cluster of purple colored flame was not a heavenly flame. Although its temperature was quite hot, it was undoubtedly much weaker when compared with the thick white flame that Xiao Yan controlled last time. This fellow. Just how many things is he hiding? One moment a green flame, one moment a white flame, now he has come up with a purple flame. It really is impossible to see through him. 
A sigh swiftly flashed across Hai Bodong's heart. He faced Xiao Yan, shook his head and said with clenched teeth, You lunatic. I can't be bothered about whether you have made improvements. If you want to play, then play by yourself. I don't want to be like the last time when I was almost played to death by you. After saying this, a pair of icy cold wings were extended out of Hai Bodong's back. He flapped them slightly and swiftly flew into the air in front of everyone's stunned gazes. When only a small black dot remained, he finally came to a stop. It appeared that after the explosion from Xiao Yan's angry Buddha Lotus Flame the last time, this person, who was once the Ice Emperor, really had somewhat of a physiological fear that was born. Otherwise, he would not choose to run away in front of so many people. Xiao Yan helplessly eyed Hai Bodong who had hidden himself far away. He lowered his head and glanced at the strange gazes Xiao Ding and the others surrounding him were using to look at him with. He waved his hand and said, an old person is usually more cowardly. Asterisk cough asterisk. Hearing this, Xiao Ding and Xiao Li gave a few dry coughs. Although Hai Bodong was quite old, his strength was so powerful that it was a little terrifying. Seeing the performance of Hai Bodong earlier, the hearts of the two of them began to feel somewhat uneasy. They exchanged a glance and immediately laughed dryly, Xiao Yan Zi, exactly what is this experiment you are planning to do? It is just that I have just researched and found something and I want to try and see if it can succeed. The last time it appeared to have failed and as a result, it nearly blasted old Hai and myself to death. Uh, he seemed to have some sort of mental phobia, which is why he is in this state. You all need not worry. This time around, I have specially reduced its strength. Even if it was to finally fail, it should not have the terrifying destructive power like last time. Xiao Yan rubbed his head and carelessly said. Hearing the somewhat uncertain tone in Xiao Yan's words, cold sweat began to surface on Xiao Ding and Xiao Li's forehead. Although they did not know the exact strength of Hai Bo Dong, seeing his ability to agglomerate Dou Qi wings, he should not be weaker than a Dou Wang class. What kind of abnormal thing had Xiao Yan created that could nearly blast such a strong person to death? After glancing at one another, their two gazes involuntarily drifted toward the small black dot in the sky. Their feet took a few steps back and dryly laughed, I think that we should move back a little in order to give you a more relaxed environment. As they said that, the two of them withdrew to the edge of the open ground at the same time as though they had a tacit agreement. Seeing the actions of the two company leaders, those desert metal company members surrounding Xiao Yan and Luo Bu also became afraid in their hearts. After giving thought between safety and curiosity, the group of people hurriedly pulled back to the edge of the training ground. Immediately, the crowded training ground became totally empty. Eyeing the now open area which had become empty in the blink of an eye, Xiao Yan shook his head helplessly. He turned around and smiled as he eyed the pale-faced Luo Bu. Company. Company leader Xiao Yan, I, I think that we should forget about it. Please find another person. The heel of Luo Bu shivered weakly. He was shocked until his heart started to tremble upon witnessing Hai Bo Dong's action in which the latter had lost himself. What strength did Hai Bo Dong have? He was a Dou Wan class strong person. Even in the whole of the Jiao Ma Empire, he would be ranked among the top few. Despite having such a terrifying strength, he actually ended up losing himself because of the thing that Xiao Yan had created. It was difficult to imagine just how strong the thing actually would be. Luo Bu really suspected whether his actions during this period of time had caused Xiao Yan some displeasure, resulting in Xiao Yan finding an excuse to finish him off. Mr. Luo Bu, please relax. The strength of the angry Buddha Lotus Flame this time around is incomparable to the last time. With your strength, there will definitely not be any problems. Seeing Luo Bu, who was frightened until his face was totally white, caused Xiao Yan to helplessly shake his head and respond reassuringly. Eyeing that seemingly utterly harmless delicate and handsome face, Luo Bu felt neither able to laugh nor cry. Why was it that such a bad thing ended up finding him? After spending a long time sighing loudly in his heart because of his luck, he could only smile bitterly and nod his head. The Dou Qi in his body suddenly flowed and surged out of his body, immediately covering the surface and solidifying into a hard yellow-colored armor. The moment he acted, Luo Bu had summoned the ability of a Dadoshir, Dou Qi armor. It appeared that Luo Bu's heart felt ungrounded. Eyeing Luo Bu who had summoned his Dou Qi armor as though he was about to face a great enemy, Xiao Yan helplessly nodded his head. On his palms, the green-colored and purple-colored flames writhed by themselves. The two palms faced each other and slowly moved closer. As the two flames slowly moved closer, an intense energy fluctuation once again abruptly rippled around Xiao Yan's body like last time. Numerous muffled thunder-like explosions were emitted within Xiao Yan's palm. However, it was fortunate that the strength of the explosions this time around were not as terrifying as the last time. Therefore, the Dochi protecting Xiao Yan's hands was able to withstand the impact. Xiao Yan used all his focus to drive the two clusters of flames to gradually merge. He did his best to recall the mysterious state that he had finally entered at the last moment last time. His dark eyes stared intently at the point where the flames were merging. There, the green-purple colored flame seedlings were like threads of electric flashes, swiftly traversing. In the distant tall sky, Hai Bo Dong frowned, eyeing the intense energy fluctuations around Xiao Yan's body. He said softly, the fluctuations this time around are indeed much smaller than the last time. Looks like this guy has really made some improvements. But this thing will explode if it is not controlled properly. The destructive strength will similarly not be small. After all, that green-colored flame is a real, heavenly flame, dot. Ugh, this insane fellow. 
He keeps thinking of fiddling with these kinds of strange things. Hai Bo Dong smiled bitterly and shook his head. Although in all honesty, he was rather envious of Xiao Yan's courage which allowed him to dare to try anything. Back then, he had once met a strong person who was similarly able to control a heavenly flame in the Chuyun Empire. However, the attitude that strong person had toward the heavenly flame was like how one would treat one's ancestor. He was totally different than Xiao Yan who had actually dared to randomly use it to merge with another flame. In the eyes of many strong people, that was an action almost similar to seeking death. In the training ground, Xiao Yan's eyes stared intently at the green-purple colored flame ball that was already compressed by him. A moment later, his dark eyes suddenly widened. His long ten fingers repeatedly pressed on the flame cluster. Controlling the flame cluster under a conscious condition for the first time, Xiao Yan finally understood that the seemingly random and gentle movement actually required a terrifyingly large amount of Dou Qi from the flame mantra to be instilled. The ten fingers had only pressed and moved for around seven to eight times, but the Dou Qi within Xiao Yan's vortex had already been reduced by around half. Xiao Yan did his best to recall the change the angry Buddha lotus flame underwent before it was formed. The black eyes of Xiao Yan were gradually shrouded by the green-purple, colored flames. After a moment, the pressing and moving fingers suddenly stopped. The spiritual strength suddenly spread out of Xiao Yan's body, finally turning into tiny and delicate lines which were inserted thread by thread into the raging flame. Following the intrusion of the spiritual strength, the violent energy contained with the green-purple flame cluster began to gradually disappear. In only the blink of an eye, the cluster of flame, which was releasing hedgehog-like spikes, actually completely quieted down. Staring intently at the green-purple flame cluster in his palm which had finally calmed down as he had intended, Xiao Yan sighed in relief within his heart. His right hand dragged the flame cluster as he closed his eyes. The spiritual strength that had intruded into the flame cluster began to slowly change the shape of the flame cluster. Following the gradual activation of the spiritual strength, the cluster of flame which was like a rubber ball began to slowly wriggle. Its size, which was originally that of a head, also swiftly shrank. After a long while, a lotus seat shape at its embryonic stage the size of a palm began to faintly appear between the green and purple light glow. After another moment, the green-purple light glow slowly disappeared. An extremely beautiful green-purple lotus seat floated above Xiao Yan's palm. In the sky, Hai Bo Dong's eyes narrowed as he eyed the green-purple lotus seat that was formed in Xiao Yan's palm. He muttered, this guy is really becoming more and more practiced with his control. If he were able to control that angry Buddha lotus flame to such an extent when he first used it, it would be likely that eight-winged black serpent emperor would have been blasted to death on the spot. In the future, if he was to once again merge two different heavenly flames accompanied with this kind of control, I think that other than some extremely abnormal people, there should be no one in the Dou Huang class who would be able to withstand such a terrifying explosion directly. Hai Bo Dong gently exhaled a mouthful of icy breath. His expression was complex as he whispered while staring at the black-clothed young man on the ground. On the training ground, Xiao Yan's hand supported the green-purple lotus seat as he raised his head and eyed Luo Gu who was totally concealed behind the Dou Qi armor. His slightly pale face revealed a smile as he tapped gently on the lotus seat. Immediately, the green-purple lotus seat abruptly turned into a ray of light and in a lightning-like manner, was violently shot in a projectile-like manner toward Luobu. Xiao Yan quietly watched the angry Buddha lotus flame, whose distance from Luobu was becoming increasingly closer. He slowly extended his palm and suddenly clenched it. A soft voice called out, explode. As the cry fell, the green-purple lotus flame flying across the air abruptly stopped. Immediately, the lotus seat swelled slightly and then suddenly exploded. Bang. The deafening explosion suddenly blasted through the training ground. An enormous crack line swiftly spread out from where the explosion was. Perfect control. High in the sky, Hai Bo Dong slowly closed his eyes as he softly muttered. At the same time a genuine palpitation rose in his heart. Chapter 272 Resolving the Hidden Danger Before Leaving The sudden explosion resounded throughout the training ground. The thunderous blast caused everyone to involuntarily cover their ears. A long while later, they finally looked at each other with some palpitations remaining in their hearts before shifting their gazes to the training ground where dust blocked their view. Within the training ground, Xiao Yan slowly calmed his rapid breath. His face was somewhat pale. The imitation of the angry Buddha lotus flame earlier had a Dou Qi and spiritual strength requirement that should not be underestimated even though it required less this time and was not as terrifying as last time. With this amount of Dou Qi being required, it is likely that I can only use it three times before the Dou Qi in my body is completely exhausted. Xiao Yan muttered softly as he sensed the Dou Qi and spiritual strength in his body had sharply dropped. He immediately lifted his head and watched the opposite side which was shrouded by dust. As he waved his sleeves, a gentle breeze appeared and surged out, blowing away the suffused yellow dust. As the dust cloud settled, an eye-piercing enormous and deep pit immediately appeared within everyone's sight. Instantly, the corner of everyone's eyes in the training ground could not help but twitch. The deep pit was around 4 to 5 meters deep. Its area was also quite large. Numerous thick and deep crack lines repeatedly spread out like a spiderweb and nearly covering half of the open area. Where is he? Xiao Yan swept his gaze at the surroundings. However, he did not see Luo Bu's figure. At that moment, he blinked his eyes and said in a stunned manner. Asterisk cough asterisk cough. 
Just as Xiao Yan was feeling stunned, an intense coughing was suddenly emitted from the deep pit. Immediately, a hand began slowly rising from the pit and supported itself on the ground. Finally, a human figure that was charred black climbed out with great difficulty. Seeing his size, it appeared to be Luo Bu from before. Currently, in addition to Luo Bu's body being charred, numerous thumb-sized crack lines also covered the tough Dou Qi armor that he had summoned on his body. His body trembled slightly. The Dou Qi armor on him had already reached its limit, and finally emitted a muffled cracking sound. The seemingly mighty Dou Qi armor immediately began to slowly detach from Luo Bu's body, revealing the pale white and terrified face under it. Eyeing the human figure which appeared to have just rolled over black charcoal, Xiao Yan probed, Mr. Luo Bu. Are you alright? Hearing Xiao Yan's inquiry, Luo Bu slowly lifted his head. He glanced at the delicate and handsome face of the young man and his body could not help but shiver. An extremely ugly smile appeared on his pale white face. Company leader Xiao Yan. If that attack was a little closer, the current me would likely not even be left with a corpse at this very moment. Xiao Yan eyed Luo Bu, whose Dou Qi around him had plunged to its lowest point. He understood clearly in his heart that Luo Bu knew that the defense of his Dou Qi armor was not enough to withstand the blast, however he did not choose to dodge. Instead, he simply stood on the spot like a wooden pillar, allowing the lotus flame to shoot over and finally explode in front of him. This action which appeared somewhat foolish would undoubtedly make him have to endure an extremely great explosive force. Therefore, even though Xiao Yan's strength was merely that of a six-star dosher, Luo Bu, who was a four-star dosher, still ended up with a serious injury that caused him to lose his ability to continue fighting from the explosion. Looking from the corner of his eyes, Xiao Yan saw bright red fresh blood was flowing down from Luo Bu's hand. Xiao Yan's eyes gradually became slightly gentler without him realizing. He slowly stepped forward and patted Luo Bu's shoulders as he said with a smile, I'm sorry. This is the first time I had modified this thing so I was unable to control its strength. Haha, <laughs> never mind. It should be fine after resting for a few days. After being a mercenary company leader for more than 10 years, Luo Bu was extremely sensitive as he felt the gentleness that Xiao Yan had displayed. Immediately, some joy and excitement faintly appeared in his heart. He knew in his heart that ever since the San Mercenary Company had nearly destroyed the Desert Metal Mercenary Company the last time, within the heart of this young man who appeared friendly, there had always been some enmity and even, killing intent toward him. At the same time, Luo Bu's heart also knew that if Xiao Yan wanted to expand the Desert Metal Mercenary Company strength in a short time, it was difficult for the San Mercenary Company to escape the fate of being destroyed. Luo Bu, who had witnessed Xiao Yan turn a living person into an ice sculpture without any expression, did not doubt that this young man whose age was still quite young, possessed a ruthless heart. Although the San Mercenary Company had currently been merged into the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, Luo Bu was able to sense that the doubt and the guard that Xiao Yan held toward him had not reduced. Regarding this, Luo Bu could only laugh bitterly. During this one month that he had been in the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, he had obtained an even clearer understanding of Xiao Yan's ability. Under pressure from Xiao Yan's almost terrifying strength, the somewhat rebellious thoughts that he originally held in his heart had completely been extinguished. It could be said that the current Luo Bu had already began to gradually think of himself as a member of the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, in his heart instead of the company leader of the Sand Mercenary Company. However, even though Luo Bu's heart thought in this manner, Xiao Yan had remained on his guard against him. This caused Luo Bu to feel a helpless bitterness in his heart. Naturally, he also clearly knew that this was human nature and he could not blame anyone. Just as he thought that this kind of prejudice from Xiao Yan would persist on, however, Xiao Yan's gaze, which suddenly became gentle, caused Luo Bu to be surprised. At the same time, he was somewhat excited to realize that his action of being willing to risk his life to be a target had actually accidentally resulted in a great reduction in the guard Xiao Yan held against him. This injury was worth it. Luo Bu muttered in his heart. A somewhat excited redness appeared on his pale white face. Xiao Yan patted Luo Bu's shoulders, took out a high-grade healing medicine from within the storage ring and passed it to him. He said with a smile, treat your injuries first. Once your injuries have been healed, you will be the true core in the upper echelon of the Desert Metal Mercenary Company. With your strength, the responsibilities that you have to take won't be small. The Desert Metal Company is currently at an expansion period. In the future, you may have to toil harder. These words of Xiao Yan undoubtedly meant that he had really started to trust Luo Bu. Therefore, when Luo Bu heard these words, even the hand which he used to receive the healing medicine trembled. He might not have overly cared about the trust of other people but the trust of a strong person, especially the extremely strong people like Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong, was sufficient enough to cause Luo Bu to feel excited and honored. Company leader, you can be rest assured that I will ensure that the brothers from the San Mercenary Company will truly become members of the Desert Metal Company. Dot. Luo Bu held the jade bottle tightly. His body bowed slightly towards Xiao Yan as he said somewhat excitedly. As long as you can place your thoughts on the Desert Metal Mercenary Company, trust me, the benefits that you receive in the future will be something you will find hard to believe. Eyeing Luo Bu who was excitedly expressing his loyalty, Xiao Yan smiled and spoke in a profound manner. Hearing the joking and somewhat mysterious words, Luo Bu was momentarily stunned before he immediately responded politely. Haha, you should quickly heal your injuries. Tomorrow, Old High and I will be leaving the Rock Desert City. 
Your strength is the strongest in the Desert Metal Company, therefore, during this period of time that I am away, I may need you to take more care of the Desert Metal Company. Dot. Xiao Yan said softly. Leave. Hearing this, Luo Bu asked in a somewhat strange voice. I am going to the capital. There are some things over there that are waiting for me to settle. Xiao Yan carelessly smiled and once again patted Luo Bu's shoulders. Immediately, he turned around and slowly walked out of the training ground. Watching the steady back of the black-clothed young man, Luo Bu let out a few coughs. He calmed his excited heart before nodding heavily. At the edge of the open ground, where numerous respectful gazes were watching him, Xiao Yan came to Xiao Ding's and Xiao Li's side. He faced the two of them, both still wore amazement-filled faces and he smiled then asked, Aren't you going to return to yourselves? Little fellow, I had originally thought that you had randomly chose Luo Bu to become your target. It's really unexpected that you would actually use this action to appropriately settle this greatest potential threat within the mercenary company. Xiao Ding swept his gaze at Luo Bu who was in the training ground and spoke softly to Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan smiled slightly, but remained noncommittal about his own intentions. Raising his head to Ai Hai Bo Dong who was slowly descending from the sky, Xiao Yan softly said, I have no choice. Tomorrow, Old Hai and I will have to leave the Rock Desert City. If I don't think of some methods to remove some potential threats, I would not be able to leave with peace of mind. You are going to leave tomorrow? So soon. Hearing this, Xiao Ding and Xiao Li were at a loss as they pressed their eyebrows together and asked. That's right. Originally, I had prepared to leave for the capital a month ago. However, because of my injuries, I ended up dragging my stay for so long. Now, I cannot continue to delay. Xiao Yan smiled and said. Do you really intend to go to the Misty Cloud sect a month later? Seeing Xiao Yan's smiling face, Xiao Ding's voice suddenly became low and soft as he asked. Yes. I must go there. Xiao Yan pursed up his lips and nodded slightly. His voice was slow but firm, without the slightest uncertainty. The Misty Cloud sect is a really big being. It won't be easy to deal with them. Moreover, the first elder of the M.O. clan, M.O. Ching died in your hands. Although you have hidden your identity, it may have been seen through if you were to appear at the Misty Cloud sect again. When that time comes, even if you successfully manage to defeat Nalan Yinran, I'm afraid that those old fools of the Misty Cloud sect would not easily let you leave the mountain without any injuries. Xiao Ding said with worry. If they really intend to act like this when the time comes, then they should prepare to have a life and death struggle. Xiao Yan laughed faintly. He raised his head and eyed Hai Bo Dong who had descended on a huge rock beside them. He shrugged and laughed, Old Hai, do you agree? Your elder brother is right. The Misty Cloud sect isn't so easy to deal with. Seeing Xiao Yan looking over, Hai Bo Dong smiled bitterly, Ha, whatever you want. Who asked me to be held by you? One year of being a bodyguard, ah, from the looks of it now, it appears that you have started scheming against me long ago. Haha, a Do Wang that had been delivered to my doorstep. If I just allowed Old Hai to easily leave, would it not be a huge waste? Eyeing Hai Bo Dong's helpless face, Xiao Yan joked. Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong could only smile bitterly and shook his head. Xiao Yan extended his head into the tree branches at the side to pluck a leaf. He then placed it in his mouth and chewed slightly, allowing the faint bitterness to spread in his mouth as he turned his head to eye the distant north. In that direction sat an enormous being of the Jiama Empire, the Misty Cloud Sect. Let's see the situation when that time comes. If they really give us no way out, then even if I have to push myself until I am seriously injured, I will throw a real, angry Buddha lotus flame at the Misty Cloud Sect. The calm muttering voice of the young man caused a helplessness to surface on Hai Bo Dong's face. He smiled bitterly, shook his head and sighed, what a lunatic, the Misty Cloud sect would have a hard time bearing the consequences by provoking you, even with its strength. Chapter 273, Arriving at the Capital The darkness of night arrived and covered the land. A silver moon hung high in the sky. Its faint moonlight shone down weakly, slowly expelling some of the darkness. In the quiet courtyard, three brothers were lying on comfortable, soft chairs, raising their heads to watch the stars that filled the sky. Occasionally, they would lift the wine cup beside them and pour wine for each other and drink together. Drinking all the wine in his wine cup in one gulp, Xiao Yan turned around and eyed his two elder brothers who were faintly tipsy. He slowly stood up, took out two scrolls whose covers were extremely old, and gently placed them on a small table beside Xiao Ding and Xiao Li. Seeing their questioning gazes, he said with a smile, These are two Xian class high-level qi methods. One is a wood affinity and the other is a lightning affinity. Their affinities exactly match the two of you. Within each qi method, there is also a Xian class high-level dou technique that matches the method. With coordination between the two, their strengths cannot be underestimated. Hearing this, Xiao Ding's and Xiao Li's somewhat tipsy eyes suddenly brightened. Just a Xian class high level qi method alone was viewed as a treasure in the Jiama Empire where one would not find it in the market even if one had the money. Moreover, this qi method still had a dou technique that formed a complete set with it. If one were to count, the value of this qi method was undoubtedly even more valuable than the other qi methods of a similar class. Under the temptation of such a rare item, even Xiao Ding, with his cool headedness, had some desire surface on his face. Xiao Li beside him, grabbed that silver-colored scroll the instant that Xiao Yan spoke. 
after which, he played with it in his hand, loving it too much to willingly put it down. If these two things were to be auctioned, it would be diminishing their status if they did not demand a high price of at least 3 million gold coins. Xiao Ding received the green-colored scroll and gently rubbed it. Its extremely comfortable and flexible feeling allowed Xiao Ding, who had frequently come into contact with magic beasts, to know that the scroll was made with the pelt of a rank 4 magic beast. At that moment, he could not help but speak with amazement. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded. He had taken out two Xian class high-level Qi methods, each forming a set with the corresponding Dou techniques. There was likely no more than ten strengths or people within the Jiama Empire who were able to spend in such a style. Were it not for the extremely large warehouse of Yao Lao, Xiao Yan would not not have the ability to take them out either. I had planned to give these Qi methods to you last time. However, I had forgotten about them because I was leaving in a hurry. Xiao Yan smiled and said. Before he had left for the Snake People race territory, Xiao Yan had taken these two Qi methods from Yao Lao. However, due to their itinerary being stretched until it was very tight, it was only now that Xiao Yan had the time to recall this matter. Although these Qi methods are extremely rare, we will not do any of those hypocritical refusals since it is you who has taken them out. Otherwise, it might offend you and make you unhappy. Xiao Ding, who was clear of Xiao Yan's character, mused for a while. In the end, he did not reject Xiao Yan's somewhat generous gifts. Instead, he smiled and nodded before carefully placing the scroll into his chest area without saying any courteous words. After Xiao Ding and Xiao Li had stored their Qi methods properly, Xiao Yan let out a slight smile. He lifted his head to eye the star-filled sky and softly said, Everything has already been arranged appropriately. Tomorrow, I can leave with a peaceful mind. Xiao Ding nodded his head lightly and said with a smile to Xiao Yan beside him, Little fellow. Big brother and second brother will wait here for the day that your name shakes the entire Jiama Empire in a month's time. Cheers. Eyeing Xiao Ding who had suddenly become bold, a warmth surged up within Xiao Yan's heart. He received the wine cup and emptied it in one go. He clearly understood the meaning in Xiao Ding's words. If he could really defeat Nalin Yanran and successfully leave the Misty Cloud sect, then Xiao Yan's name would become an overnight sensation throughout the Jiama Empire. Of course, Xiao Yan Zi, if you fail to leave the Misty Cloud sect, your big brother and I will not immediately take revenge for you. We will tolerate it secretly, clenching our teeth and forcefully tolerate it. We will wait until the time when we can leave a wound on the Misty Cloud sect that would cause it to feel a pain deep in its core before we violently bite at it. We will bite until we break its bones. Xiao Li patted Xiao Yan's shoulders. However, a ghastliness that would send chills into people's hearts was faintly seeping out of his smiling face. In the desert, the fierce beasts that bare their fangs and brandished their claws were not frightening. The ones that were frightening were those poisonous snakes that quietly conceal themselves under the yellow sand. They would not easily display their fangs. However, once the opportunity arrived, a lethal strike would instantly shoot out of the yellow sand. Among the three brothers of the Xiao clan, Xiao Ding was calm, wise, and farsighted, Xiao Li was sinister and vicious, while Xiao Yan was mysterious and unpredictable. The three of them had different characters but they were able to cause their opponents to feel uneasy and turn their hearts cold. Eyeing the dark and severe Xiao Li, a warmth flowed in Xiao Yan's heart. He nodded slightly and once again drank a full cup of potent wine that burned his throat. The three of them looked at each other and laughed loudly. The morning of the next day, Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong did not alert anyone as they left the Desert Metal Mercenary Company. It was as though every time he would leave silently. In the blue sky, two flowing lights suddenly moved closer from a far distance, carrying a violent wind behind them. A moment later, they appeared at the edge of the sky before finally leaving behind numerous envy-filled faces of passers-by on the ground. Xiao Yan, won't we save a lot of trouble if we were to fly directly to the capital? Why do you still want to go to Tanj City to use the flying beast? Their speed is much slower than our flying speed. Hai Bo Dong flapped his pair of cold icy wings on his back, glancing at the scenery that was swiftly moving past under him before turning around. His Dou Qi was mixed with the thread of his voice, which was somewhat dissatisfied, as it was transmitted into Xiao Yan's ear. Upon hearing these words from Hai Bo Dong, Xiao Yan, who was using all his might to hurry along their journey, could not help but laugh bitterly in his heart and shook his head. He quietly thought, from here to the capital is a journey that is a few thousand kilometers. In the past, if I had the support of Yao Lao's strength, I could endure through it. However, Yao Lao is currently in a slumber. With just my six-star Doshur's strength, how could I endure it without stopping to rest? When that time comes, others might see through my facade should I be careless. Although he thought in such a manner in his heart, Xiao Yan would naturally not reply in this manner. The purple cloud wings on Xiao Yan's back flapped and his speed was slightly reduced. He said with a smile, Kuku, it is just that I want to use the time traveling on the flying beast to study the heavenly flame. Moreover, aren't you planning to search for the medicinal ingredients for the spiritual recovery purple pill? We can stop at some of the big cities. The chances of us finding them there are a little higher. Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong's expression finally became more relaxed. He helplessly nodded. Remembering the rare medicinal ingredients with names that he had not even heard of, he could not continue to oppose the decision of taking the flying beasts. Seeing that Hai Bo Dong did not continue to insist, Xiao Yan quietly sighed in relief within his heart. The purple cloud wings on his back suddenly flapped and his flying speed immediately soared. 
His figure turned into a flowing light and disappeared into the horizon. Since morning, they had been traveling quickly. Only when it was the afternoon did Tager City's outline faintly appear in the sight of the two of them. They landed outside the city before once again leaping toward the city as though they were blown by the wind. The current Xiao Yan had already once again put on the Tier 2 alchemist occupational robe. Although the huge black ruler on his back, which was almost to his height, gave him a somewhat strange appearance, the soldiers guarding the city did not have the courage to stop an alchemist for interrogation. Therefore, the two of them successfully entered the city which seemed quite big without any obstruction. After entering the city, Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong first went to those medicinal shops that appeared fairly large and searched them one at a time. Naturally, Hai Bo Dong's intention was to find those medicinal ingredients needed to refine the spiritual recovery purple pill. Xiao Yan, on the other hand, was secretly observing if there were any medicinal ingredients that possessed the unique properties of swiftly recovering spiritual strength. Despite there being quite a number of medicinal shops in Tager City, the medicinal ingredients that Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong needed belonged to the extremely rare class. Therefore, the two of them would enter with high hopes, but leave with disappointment. After coming out of the last medicinal shop in the city, the two of them who were unwilling to give up took a turn and went to the auction house in the city. Unfortunately, they still found nothing. Standing on the street, the two of them faced each other and helplessly sighed. They could only give up their search and hurry to the flying transportation company at the center of the city. With Xiao Yan's status as an alchemist, the two of them expectedly and successfully boarded a luxurious flying magic beast dedicated to alchemists. After which, they began to spend a good few days traveling through the endless skies. Xiao Yan crossed his legs and began entering his training mode, slowly and quietly waiting reach his destination. During the period of the flight, Xiao Yan did not deal with some of the alchemists traveling along with him. However, when they occasionally saw each other, Xiao Yan would have a strange feeling in his heart. This was because of the fact that, after looking at their appearances, that some of these alchemists who were hurrying to the capital were actually not citizens of the Jiamai Empire. Of course, when Xiao Yan was feeling surprised at these alchemists from other countries, those alchemists also had stunned faces when they saw his appearance and the alchemist tier badge on his chest. Clearly, Xiao Yan's age and his alchemist tier had given them quite a significant blow. With the unhappy experience from the last time he took such a flight, Xiao Yan discriminated against communicating with people on the flying beast. Therefore, even when he saw the rich atmosphere when those alchemists were conversing with one another, he did not go forward and converse with them. However, on one occasion, Xiao Yan heard the words, Grand Meeting. After being at a temporarily loss, Xiao Yan finally and suddenly remembered the invitation from the branch vice chairman of an alchemist association branch, Ao Tua, back in the Black Rock City. It seems that all of these alchemists are hurrying to participate in the alchemist grand meeting. Xiao Yan nodded his head. Only at this moment did he understand why so many alchemists from other countries had appeared on such a scale within the Jiama Empire territory. Since it is the alchemist grand meeting, then I think that there should be many rare natural treasures in the hands of these alchemists. Xiao Yan's heart muttered in this manner. His eyes gradually brightened. If he could find a unique treasure to recover spiritual strength before heading up to the Misty Cloud sect and wake Yao Lao up, Xiao Yan would really rest assured about this journey to the Misty Cloud sect. With this thought, the rest of Xiao Yan's thoughts became a little urgent. As he waited, the flying beast that had flew for nearly seven days finally and gradually arrived at its destination, the capital of the Jiama Empire, Jiama Sacred City. Standing on the back of the flying beast, Xiao Yan lowered his head to eye the magnificent city which had appeared under the clouds. He slowly exhaled a breath. Three years of time, three years of tough training, he finally arrived here. Following the slow descent of the flying beast, Xiao Yan's gaze suddenly turned toward the north of the capital. There, a huge mountain that was definitely very grand, prostrated like a huge dragon, faintly emitted an aura that soared to the sky. Located at the place was the huge power of the Jiama Empire, the Misty Cloud Sect. Misty Cloud Sect. Nalan Yinran, this useless person back then has come according to our agreement. Xiao Yan's eyes stared intently at the majestic mountain peak that was hidden in the faint fog. At this moment, his body trembled intensely. Chapter 274, Primer Auction House, An Old Friend Damn it. In the future, I won't sit on this broken thing. This slow speed really causes people to feel unbearable. After walking out of the crowded flying transportation company, Haibo Dong deeply inhaled a few breaths of fresh air as he cursed softly. Seeing the ugly expression on Haibo Dong's face, Xiao Yan smiled and raised his head. His gaze swept across this magnificent capital and could not help but sigh with praise. With such a large size, this Jiama sacred city was definitely ranked first in terms of size among all the cities that Xiao Yan had seen. It really deserves to be called the capital of the Jiama Empire, being so domineering and peerless. Xiao Yan said with a smile as he clicked his tongue and let out a sound of admiration. Hai Bo Dong was not interested in watching these boring buildings. His gaze swept across his surroundings before he suddenly asked, When are you heading to the Misty Cloud sect? Half a month from now. Xiao Yan mused and calculated the time to the three-year agreement before replying. There's still so much more time. Then where do we go now? Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong frowned and he immediately asked annoyed. Okay. Let's first go to the auction house in the capital to take a look. That is the largest place in the Jiama Empire to conduct business transactions. 
It should have some of the things that we need. After which, we will make a trip to the Alchemist Association headquarters. Xiao Yin fondled with his chin and answered while smiling, this session of the Alchemist Grand Meeting will be conducted there. I am thinking of going to take a look. Moreover, alchemists love to collect all kinds of different precious medicinal ingredients. It may be possible that we will be able to find the medicinal ingredients needed for the spiritual recovery purple pill there. Hee <laughs> hee, it's just as well. This Alchemist Grand Meeting is a rare and great event in the Jiama Empire. It would be a pity to miss it. Hai Bo Dong did not oppose Xiao Yan's plan. He fondled his white beard, smiled and said with some interest, but it is really worthwhile for you to take a look at this Alchemist Grand Meeting. For an alchemist, not only does allow you to interact with those in the same occupation, but it also has a somewhat extraordinary significance at the same time. As long as one is able to, to reveal one's brilliance there, one's future will really be immeasurable. Each alchemist grand meeting attracts the attention of many powerful strengths. Those alchemists who have quite a good refining skill will be like hot buns for these strengths to win over. TSK TSK. The kind of treatment that these alchemists receives really causes people to be so envious that they have the impulse to murder. Hearing Hai Bo Dong's somewhat exaggerated words, Xiao Yin smiled but shook his head slightly. He said, an alchemist is a special occupation that many would pay attention and seek out wherever they are. Although being roped in by these huge strengths may allow one to obtain quite a good treatment, it somewhat limits one's freedom and is not really worthwhile. Not worthwhile. How can it be? You should know who Gu He is right. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Hai Bo Dong rolled his eyes, curled his lips and said. Pil King Gu He. There really isn't anyone in this Jiama Empire who doesn't know him. Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and laughed faintly. Not only did he know of him, they had even fought against each other. He was the largest black horse in the Alchemist Grand Meeting two sessions ago. Before that time, not many people knew Guhi's name. Ever since he revealed his brilliance in the Grand Meeting, he caught the eye of the previous leader of the Misty Cloud Sect. After which, he was invited to become an elder of the Misty Cloud Sect. Back then, Guhi was merely a Tier 4 alchemist. However, during these few years, with the huge wealth of the Misty Cloud Sect behind him, his refining ability has risen by two tiers. In addition, his reputation also changed from not being very well known, into the current Pilking that everyone respects. Hai Bo Dong laughed, therefore, if it were not because of the Misty Cloud sect, he would at least need 20 more years before reaching the recognition he has currently achieved. Xiao Yan's eyebrows twitched in a somewhat surprised manner. He did not expect that Kuhi actually came about in this manner. An alchemist is indeed a rare occupation. However, it is also an occupation that burns a great amount of money. Although one's refining ability relies heavily on talent, if one does not have a never-ending supply of medicinal ingredients to support him, it would be extremely difficult to quickly raise one's refining ability in tier regardless of how great one's talent is. However, if behind him there is a huge strength that is able to support him by providing an endless supply of medicinal ingredients, they would be able to stay relaxed and save the time needed to run all over the place to search for medicinal ingredients. Under such concentration, the achievement that one could obtain would naturally be a little richer than those free alchemists. Therefore, there are also many alchemists who want to find financial backers who would allow them to squander money in this alchemist grand meeting. As the two of them were slowly walking the street where people were coming and going, Hai Bo Dong spoke lazily with his hands inserted into his sleeves. Perhaps that is the case. But I am not at all interested in that kind of thing. Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders. With Yao Lao, this extremely experienced teacher guiding him by the side, there would undoubtedly be extremely few detours that Xiao Yan would make. Therefore, he was able to become a young tier 2 alchemist from a young man who had not been acquainted with medicinal plants in just a short three years ago. It was also due to this reason that he was unclear just how difficult it was for ordinary free alchemists to swiftly raise their ability. After all, not everyone was as lucky as him. Of course, with your refining skills, no one in the entire Jiama Empire, including the Misty Cloud sect has the qualification to hire you. Hai Bo Dong shook his head and laughed. Forget about Jiama Empire, a high-tier alchemist who could refine a tier 6 medicinal pill would also fare very well even in the Dochi continent. Xiao Yan smiled slightly but did not directly reply. Excluding the Yao Lao's factor, his own tier was merely that of a tier 2 alchemist. Of course, after a year of tough training in the desert, the current him which possessed the Green Lotus Core Flame had the confidence that his refining ability would not be worse than a tier 3 alchemist. However, he was also clear that even a true tier 3 alchemist would still have very little attraction to a Dou Huang like Hai Bo Dong. The only reason why Hai Bo Dong would continue to stay around Xiao Yan and willingly lower his status to become a bodyguard was because he assumed that Xiao Yan was able to refine a tier 6 medicinal pill. Therefore, he hardened his heart and agreed to protect Xiao Yan's safety at the Misty Cloud sect. If Hai Bo Dong was to learn about the truth in the future and Yao Lao had yet to wake, it would be a small problem if he were to just storm off angrily. If he takes things too hard, he might forcefully coerce Xiao Yan into returning the mysterious map fragment. After all, their collaboration was usually built upon the prerequisite that both parties had similar strengths. Xiao Yan, as a Dou Shi and a Tier 2 alchemist, obviously did not have the qualification to work together with a Dou Huang. Ah, looks like the matter of getting teacher to wake up needs to be done quickly. Otherwise, once Hai Bo Dong gathers all the medicinal ingredients, how would I refine the Tier 5 medicinal pill? Xiao Yan sighed in his heart. He suddenly realized that without Yao Lao by his side, the him in his current fragile state actually faced restrictions everywhere. 
After all, the strong people that Xiao Yin came into contact all had strengths that far surpassed what someone of his ability was able to come into contact with. Who would imagine that a Dosher would actually be able to muddle along so intrepidly in the plane of Dou Huang's? If it were someone else instead, attempting to get a stranger Dou Huang to follow him as a bodyguard with only the strength of a Dosher was undoubtedly a whimsical thought. However, Xiao Yin who had the help of Yao Lao was able to overcome this disadvantage and take the lead in coming into contact with these extremely strong people. However, it was also because of this reason that Xiao Yan, whose true strength was not very strong, needed to always be very careful when facing these extremely strong people. Moreover, he needed to forcefully act calm as he handled them, not daring to reveal even the slightest thing that would give himself away. Ah, strength. As long as I am able to reach the Dou Wan class, I think I should be able to follow in Yao Lao's footsteps. When that time comes, I don't need to do things that exploit other people's strength. Xiao Yan laughed bitterly and softly muttered in his heart. Hai Bo Dong's laughing voice, however, suddenly broke Xiao Yan's musing. Hey, we have arrived at the auction house. Hearing this, Xiao Yan's footsteps slowly came to a stop. He raised his head and eyed the huge building and the special symbol that appeared at the end of the street. Surprise involuntarily surfaced on his face as he shook his head and sighed, it really deserves to be called the headquarters of the Primer Clan, owner of Primer Auction House. The size of the building is really something that the branch at Wuten City cannot compare with. Hee <laughs> hee, the Primer Clan is one of the three large clans of the Jiamai Empire. It has a long history and a strong foundation. Even the M.O. clan from Yen City is undoubtedly just a suddenly rich but uncouth clan when compared to them. Hai Bo Dong said with a smile. His words held disdain for the M.O. clan who had wanted to dominate the northeastern region of the empire. The strongest person in the clan was merely of the Dou Ling class. With only such a strength, they still wanted to have a vain attempt at dominating. They really overestimated their strength. If it were not for the Misty Cloud sect backing them, the M.O. clan would have long been secretly destroyed by some strong people who disliked them. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head. He eyed the huge building that was like a bottomless pit, swallowing up the unceasing flow of people. His hands gently inserted into his sleeves as he turned his head around and softly said to Hai Bo Dong, let's go in and take a look at this so-called Jiama Empire number one auction house and see just how is it amazing. Hopefully, we will be able to find the things that we need. Once he said those words, Xiao Yan lead the way as they slowly walked to the end of a spacious street paved by bluestone. Behind him, Hai Bo Dong closely followed. As they gradually walked into the huge primer auction house, the surprise on Xiao Yan's face also grew increasingly rich. His body was like a swimming fish that followed the press of the human flow as he shuttled past. Xiao Yan was expressionless as he passed through the crowd. Occasionally, he waved his sleeves. A thin dou chi would immediately cover his soft sleeves and it was ruthlessly tossed at the surprise hand among the human crowd which had strangely reached toward the storage ring on his hand. Each time he waved his sleeve, a blood-red color would suddenly appear on the hands of those people. Xiao Yan indifferently glanced at those people who hugged their hands and painfully inhaled a breath of cold air. A cold smile was lifted at the corner of his mouth. This kind of trick was a common sight for him back when he was managing the marketplace of his clan in Wuten City. Paying little attention to these houseflies, Xiao Yan shook his body slightly and finally passed through the tightly packed door. Under the inspection of the sinister eagle-like gazes of the guards at the main entrance, he calmly walked in. Once he entered the auction house, a gentle light was poured over him. The noisiness outside seemed to have become isolated at this moment. It was only a distance of a few meters, but it was as though they were two worlds apart. Xiao Yan slowly stopped his footsteps. His gaze swept everywhere. Immediately, his mouth widened as he eyed the enormous hall, which was like a crystal city, with a shock-filled face. In the interior of the hall, full-armed expressionless guards could be seen everywhere. On the chest of these guards, they wore the Primer Clan badge. Clearly, they were the force directly under the Primer Clan. The moment when Xiao Yan entered the hall, he could sense at least 20 sharp gazes sweeping across every part of his body before the sharp and sinister gazes were slowly withdrawn. It really lives up to being one of the three large clans of the Jiama Empire. This manner of lavishness is really not cheap. Xiao Yan sighed emotionally. He turned his head back slightly and eyed Hai Bo Dong who had closely followed him like a ghost before slowly walking to the center of the hall. There were countless crystal counters placed in a large hall. On one side of the counter, there was an unceasing flow of people. A countless number of rare items were placed on these counters. Under these items there were tags that stated their prices. However, all the prices of these items were at least 30,000 gold coins. These expensive prices were sufficient to cause many people to be discouraged. These are the outer sales counters. The things that are sold here are not considered too valuable. At the headquarters of the Primer Clan, the auction area is also strictly divided into Tian, Di, Xian, and Huang classes just like the Qi methods. Among them, the Tian class is the highest. However, the Tian class auction area very rarely opens and sometimes only opens once every few years. However, when it opens, it represents that the thing that the Primer Auction House is about to auction is definitely of a very high grade. When that time comes, almost half of the strong people and leaders of the different strengths within the Jiama Empire would swarm over. Ah, I remembered having attended once back then. That time, the thing that the Primer Auction House was auctioning seemed to be an egg of a rank 6, fire-scale crocodile, dot. 
According to rumors, it was said that if that fire scale crocodile was successfully hatched, it would be a natural born Do Wang. Moreover, if one were to raise it properly, it would sooner or later be able to enter the Do Wang class. Hearing this, surprise flashed across Xiao Yan's face. Once the crocodile hatched, it would have the strength of a Do Wang. How terrifying. Wouldn't the person who managed to obtain it be able to acquire a new contender with the 10 strong of the Jiangma Empire in a short time? The D class auction area is also rarely opened. The Xian class one is more common. As for the Huan class, it is opened every day. Seeing Xiao Yan's slightly shocked expression, Haibo Dong smiled and continued introducing. He was clearly a frequent customer of this place in the past. Therefore, he was able to clearly and logically explain the rules here. It is somewhat interesting. This kind of class division caused Xiao Yan to smile and said with some interest. If you want to enter the Tian, D, and Xian class auction area, you would need to have some identification of your worth. Other than some exceptional circumstances, if you want to enter the Xian class auction area, you would at least need to be worth a million gold coins. Ugh, that's right, do you have that much money with you? Appearing to have remembered something, Hai Bo Dong suddenly asked. Hmm, I seem to only have two to three hundred thousand. Xiao Yan rubbed his face and smiled awkwardly. It seems that you only have the qualification to enter the Huang class auction area. Hai Bo Dong rolled his eyes. He had expected an alchemist of Xiao Yan's tier should at least need to bring millions along with him. Regarding Hai Bo Dong's words, Xiao Yan could only helplessly shrug his shoulders. He was about to say something when his gaze suddenly turned toward a corner of the hall. That place was a doorway for the upper echelons of the primer auction house. A moment ago, that place was still quiet. Seeing this sudden commotion, it appeared that there was a big shot who had quite a high status walking out from there. Eyeing the disturbance of the crowd there, Xiao Yan uncertainly blinked his eyes. He tilted his head slightly and his gaze passed through those excited men who seemed like male wolves suddenly becoming passionate. After which, he faintly glanced at a somewhat red-colored and blurry lovely tender figure. Lowering his gaze, Xiao Yan saw a pair of red-colored long boots. The heel of the long boots was slightly sharp as it released waves of clear and sweet-sounding click-clack, click-clack sounds on the clear and shiny bluestone ground surface, like a beautiful musical note. His gaze drifted a little higher. A pair of long snow-white pretty legs that were a little eye-piercing appeared in his sight. The legs are not bad. Xiao Yan evaluated them in his heart. However, with his mental strength, he was naturally a little better than some men surrounding the large hall whose faces were filled with longing. His face still maintained a calm smile, his gaze carried some admiration. Gradually lifting it slightly, his gaze finally seeped through the gap and saw an enchanting and moving face. Immediately, shock slowly climbed onto his face as he softly muttered, Why is she here? As the clear sound of footsteps moved closer, the beautiful lady who was surrounded by the crowd finally slowly walked out of it. The lady was wearing a bright red-colored tight dress. The elegant dress was gorgeously and meticulously made, precisely and perfectly outlining the beautiful curves of the lady. Under the dress were snow-white dazzling long legs, causing people to feel a fiery impulse in their hearts. At the extremely narrow waist that could be hugged with one arm, there was a bundle of silver-colored belts that highlighted the narrow waist more vividly. This lady was emitting a delightful enchantment from all over her body. Under the gaze of those long peach blossom eyes, one would unconsciously take the initiative to pull out all the gold coins in one's pocket to buy some high-priced item that one did not need. For many men, she was a stunning creature. This female cat which was filled with a temptation all over her that hooked many men's hearts. In the human crowd, the lady wearing a red-colored gorgeous dress walked toward the hall with elegant footsteps. Her somewhat shallow smile and pretty face contained an unknown meaning behind it. Her voluminous and matured lovely body was like those overripe honey peaches where the water seeped out, causing the lower part of some of the men in the hall to faintly have the trend of being lifted. Immediately, there were some embarrassed-faced people in the hall to carefully pull back their abdomen. The enchanting beauty appeared to have quite a great popularity. Since she had walked out until now, there had been people repeatedly smiling and greeting her. Perhaps some of these greetings were targeted at her beauty, but most of which were clearly because of their reverence to her status. The gorgeously dressed lady elegantly and calmly handled the surrounding customers. Her superficial shallow smile severed those bored people who wanted to forcefully hit on her. A pair of peach blossom eyes that appeared to have been brewed by the spring water randomly swept across the hall. After anyone came into contact with this pair of eyes that seemingly contained a fascinating enticement, their throats would involuntarily roll slightly. A hot flame would combust and rise in the deep region of their eyes. From the looks of it, after these people returned home, they would imagine their wives or female servants at home to be this enchanting lady that was filled with temptation. The enchanting peach blossom pretty eyes slowly swept across the hall. At the moment when it was about to be withdrawn, the gaze abruptly stiffened. The walking footsteps also suddenly paused. Her gaze was blankly paused at the side of a crystal counter not far away on the body of a black-cloaked young man carrying a huge black ruler on his back. Immediately, some disbelief surfaced in those pretty eyes. Being the focus of attention in the large hall, the action of the gorgeous dressed lady undoubtedly caused everyone to shift their gaze over. However, when they saw the delicate and handsome black-cloaked young man, they similarly felt somewhat in a daze. When they eyed the extremely rare and strange emotion of the gorgeous dressed lady, some envy toward the young man rose in their hearts without them realizing it. Ignoring those sharp knife-like gazes from his surroundings, Xiaoyan smiled at the gorgeous dressed lady who was staring at him blankly. 
His smile was gentle and the dark pupils were as crystal clear as they had been one and a half year ago. Seeing the same clear smile as before, the lady finally believed that this new Xiao Yan, who seemed somewhat mature, was really the same as the kid pretending to be mysterious. Emitting clear footstep sounds, the gorgeous dressed lady slowly walked towards Xiao Yan. A moment later, she stopped in front of him. Being in such close contact, she realized that boy who had only reached her chest level was already able to look at her at an equal level. Xiao Yan DD, after having not seen you for three years, it appears that you have really changed. You have actually reached a point where I nearly could not recognize you. As she smiled and eyed the delicate and handsome young man, the gorgeous lady gently inhaled a breath of air. Her voluminous chest under the cover of her gorgeous dress appeared to protrude because of its roundness and was extremely alluring. She lifted her pretty face and greeted him with another smile. Yafagia is also becoming more enchanting and moving. It is a pity that by leaving Wuten City, you have hurt the hearts of who knows how many young men. Xiao Yan gently smelled the faint alluring body scent transmitting from in front of him. His mind suddenly recalled the sordid matter of him seeing a group of people seated at the last row and secretly staring at her when he first entered the auction house back then. With a soft laughter, he teased. TL, DD means younger brother, Jia means older sister. The beautiful gorgeous dressed lady in front of him was shockingly the top auctioneer of the primer auction house branch in Wuten City, Yafei. I have completed the mission that my clan had me undergo. Naturally, I would need to return to take over some things. However, it is really thanks to you that I am able to return. These years you had never returned, so I did not have a chance to express my thanks. Since we have met today, your elder sister will say thanks here. Yafei eyed the pair of dark black eyes that were as crystal clear as they were three years ago. Having been used to usually seeing eyes that hid desire and possession, she realized that she had a great liking for this pair of clear eyes. She pursed up her red sleek lips, placed her hands behind her and leaned her body slightly forward as she faced Xiao Yan and spoke with a light smile. With the angle between the two of them, this courteous action of gratitude by Yafei, which caused the gorgeous dress to be lowered slightly, immediately resulted in a deep cleavage and glaring snow whiteness, which would cause many to go insane, appeared in Xiao Yan's eyesight. Instantly, someone's face gradually became somewhat rosy. Chapter 275, Vicious When Yafei raised her head, she coincidentally saw Xiao Yan's face appearing somewhat red. At that moment, amusement and shock flashed across her exquisite and pretty face. She then covered her mouth immediately and laughed in a tender voice, Xiao Yan Di Di, after not seeing you for three years, not only have you become mature, you have also become much more shy. I have always been very shy. Xiao Yan nodded his head and said seriously. You weren't like this three years ago. Has Xiao Yan Di Di forgotten? Back then when I recognized your identity you were extremely boorish. A smile flashed across Yafei's beautiful peach blossom eyes as she said. Eyeing Yafei who was emitting an enchanting temptation between her smile and frown, Xiao Yan felt somewhat helpless. After three years of training, this matured woman appeared to have become increasingly enchanting. Perhaps it was because of her different status now, but when she spoke to him, she did not have the cautiousness back then. Instead, having met his old friends, their relationship became somewhat more affectionate. Your intention for coming to the Jiama Sacred City should be due to that agreement, right? The smile on Yafei's smile was slowly withdrawn as she stared at Xiao Yan in front of her and inquired softly. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded slightly. He said, who asked the blood to rush to my brain back then, resulting in me making that agreement. These three years, I have endured quite a lot of hardships because of that agreement. Yafei eyed Xiao Yan's face, which had less sentimentality and innocence. Instead, it held more maturity and seriousness compared to three years ago. She sighed. Although Xiao Yan did not tell her about his experiences during these three years in detail, she clearly knew in her heart that he must have endured hardships that others would have difficulty even imagining. Xiao Yan, DD, after three years of training, I think that you should have a clear picture of the strength that the Misty Cloud sect has in the Jiama Empire. Yafei frowned and said softly. I am clear. It is a really big being which would only require one finger to destroy our Xiao clan. Xiao Yan calmly said with a smile. Ah. Eyeing that calm face which had no ripple, Yafei helplessly shook her head and said, It has been three years, yet you still have such a stubborn character. However, you can rest assured that with the Misty Cloud sex position and status, they would not hurt the Xiao clan even if they had a deep and terrible annoyance with you. The arrogant old fellows of the Misty Cloud sect won't throw their face away. If they dare to touch the Xiao clan, I will dare to go missing for ten years and then come out to kill everyone in the Misty Cloud sect. Xiao Yan smiled slightly. His smile was noticeably thick and cold. Being pierced by the dark and cold killing intent that had suddenly swarmed into Xiao Yan's eyes, Yafei felt her body become somewhat numb. Her hands involuntarily crossed in front of her chest. This sudden action of hers, however, caused the surrounding animals to have an impulse of hugging her into their chest and caress her with care. I'm sorry, I forgot that you don't really like to train. Recovering himself, Xiao Yan eyed the fragile-looking manner of Yafei. He was briefly at a loss before he spoke apologetically. Who said that I don't like to train? I am also a doja, all right? It is just that your killing aura has become heavier after three years of training. It can even be compared to someone in our clan who had climbed out from a pile of corpses on the battlefield. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Yafei immediately threw a look of disdain at Xiao Yan and said with dissatisfaction. 
Ah. These clothes of yours, you have actually become a tier 2 alchemist. Your face shifting gaze suddenly paused at the chest of Xiao Yan's long alchemist robe. When she saw the occupational tier badge, she could not help but let out an involuntary cry of shock. Cuckoo, I was merely lucky. Xiao Yan carelessly laughed. Lucky. Ah, for an ordinary person, advancing from a beginner into a tier 2 alchemist is impossible without at least 5 to 6 years of time. Yet, you have reached this step in 3 years. I'm afraid that is not mere luck. I'm the young man who revealed something shocking at every instance, Yafei face sighed helplessly. Xiao Yan shook his head and smiled. He did not continue to pursue this question. Instead, his gaze swept across the hall, realizing that he and Yafei had already become the center of attention. Immediately, he whispered, are you currently in charge of this auction house? These words of yours really gives me a blow. Hearing this, Yafei sighed, feeling a little depressed. She smiled bitterly and replied, the authority for this auction house headquarters is completely in the hands of those old fellows in the clan. This is their lifeblood. How is it possible that they would let me manage it? Currently, I am only the supervising acting elder here. As she glanced at Xiao Yan, Yafei quickly smiled and said, although I am not in charge of this place, but at the very least, I also have a portion of the rights that come with my position. I don't think that your purpose for coming here was to look for me, right? What do you need? Can we find a quiet place to talk? Xiao Yan scanned the large crowd around him who had their ears lifted vertically and helplessly said. Of course, follow me. Yafei smiled and nodded her head. She had just turned around when her gaze suddenly drifted to Hai Bo Dong, who was behind Xiao Yan and leaning against a crystal counter while watching the items in boredom. After hesitating for a moment, she asked, Is this old sir together with you? Ah. Do you want to converse alone and leave my old self aside? Is it going to be something shady? Although Ya Fei's voice was soft, Hai Bo Dong still managed to catch her words. He turned around and laughed. Being teased by Hai Bo Dong in such a manner, a faint redness swarmed onto Ya Fei's exquisite face. However, it was fortunate that she was extremely good at handling issues with human relations. She gave an immediate sweet smile and said, What is old sir saying, there's no reason for our auction house to leave people aside when doing business. Little girl's mouth is really eloquent. However, I am not those fools who only think about women every day. I'm poor and cannot afford to take out the money to buy the things here. Hai Bo Dong laughed. Hearing this, shock flashed across Ya Fei's eyes. However, the expression on her face continued to maintain a smile. Although her strength was lousy, it did not mean that her eyes were poor. She really could not see through Hai Bo Dong's strength but she was able to vaguely tell that the old man in front of her was not an ordinary old person. That was sufficient. We have spent a long time hurrying on our journey here. He's just bored, you can simply ignore him. Xiao Yan smiled at Yafei. Yafei smiled. She turned around and slowly walked toward a staircase in one corner of the hall. Her heels stepped on the shiny and clean blue stone ground surface, emitting a click-clack sound. Her elegant pace caused people to be unable not fall into a deep longing for her. After his gaze swept over her alluring back, Xiao Yan swiftly followed her under the observation of numerous heated gazes in the hall. Don't tell me that the old man is your mysterious teacher from back then. Facing the front, Yafei softly asked without anyone noticing as she wore a smile on her face and nodded toward those who had greeted her. No. Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. Oh. Hearing this, Yafei slightly nodded her head. She instantly stopped talking and led the two of them slowly toward a staircase with a few guards present. Ying Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong following behind, the few guards eyed each other. According to the rules, people who were not members of the clan were usually not allowed to enter. However, Yafei was currently holding the post of supervising acting elder. Her authority was quite great. At that moment, none of them dared to stop them. Only when the three of them were about to enter did a guard have no choice but to bite the bullet and take a step forward. However, before he spoke, Yafei gave him a faint glance, which caused him to swallow the words in his throat. He smiled bitterly and stepped back. They are my friends. If something happens, I will take responsibility. Yafei said those words in an indifferent voice before leading Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong up the stairs. However, something at the top of the stairs suddenly caused her eyebrows to inadvertently knit slightly together. Following the rumbling of footsteps, a few human figures slowly appeared at the bending corner of the stairs. The man who was leading them was around the same age as Yafei. His somewhat pale white face was clearly a result of overindulgence in carnal pleasures. Although the build of this person did not appear strong, he was actually a strong person who had just entered the dosher class not long ago based on the chi that his body faintly emitted. The pale-faced young man's gaze carried some converting and desire as it drifted over the stairs to see Yafei below. Observing the lower ground from a higher position, the latter's curves were coincidentally perfectly highlighted. Instantly, that young man's breathing became slightly erratic. Sensing the change in the young man above, Yafei's pretty face became slightly ugly. She lifted her head and coldly glanced at the young man. The spring water-like pupils that had originally maintained a smile had a disgust that was difficult to hide at the moment. Hee hee, Yafei, this place is where our clan conducts official business. Other people are not allowed to enter. Don't tell me that you, as the acting supervising elder, you don't even know this. Watching the disgust of Yafei in his eyes, the young man's face immediately became much gloomier. 
his training talent could be considered quite good within the Primer clan. However, this qualification which could cause other ladies to adore him greatly, merely provoked a greater disgust from Yafei. This caused the haughty him to really feel unbearable. I have already said, if something goes wrong, I will take responsibility. Please move aside. Yafei's cold voice did not give the other party any face. She pulled Xiao Yan's hand and started climbing the stairs. Being ignored in such a manner in front of his subordinates, the corner of the mouth of the pale-faced young man twitched. This was especially so when Yafei grabbed Xiao Yan's hand. An unknown jealous flame instantly rose in his eyes. Although Yafei was usually full of smiles, appearing very approachable, he knew that this woman's heart had a certain discrimination against men. It was extremely rare for one to see her taking the initiative to pull a man's hand. Hey, I wondered why she usually treats me so coldly. It seems that you actually like this kind of unripe young man. What good taste. But I wonder if he can satisfy you. Glancing at Xiao Yan's calm face, the young man could not help but ridicule him. Yafei was expressionless as she climbed the stairs as though she had not heard the obscene words of the young man. However, Xiao Yan, whose hand was being tightly held by her, could sense that her nails had already viciously clawed into his palm. Xiao Yan, who had unluckily suffered from the trouble other people's affairs, helplessly shook his head. He glanced at the pale-faced young man with eyes that were so indifferent, they did not have the slightest emotion. Brat, do you want to die? Seeing Xiao Yan's eyes which put him in an extremely bad mood, the young man immediately became furious. His voice was dark and cold as he spoke. Hearing this, Xiao Yan's footsteps paused. His arm, however, was pulled. Yafei in front of him shook her head slightly, indicating for him to ignore the matter. Seeing this, Xiao Yan sighed and shook his head. He then nodded and followed. Chi, soft. Yafei, your standards are really terrible. If you really need a young man, I think you need not find someone like that, no. Yafei's patience ended up causing the young man to become even more vicious. He opened his mouth and viciously laughed. Xiao Yan once again paused his walking footsteps. His hand trembled slightly as he shook his hand that was being pulled by Yafei free. After which, he eyed the moving outline of Yafei's back, shrugged his shoulders and said indifferently, you can even endure this. Yafei's body stiffened. She did not speak. Her fragile back appeared somewhat weary. I'm sorry, I cannot. Xiao Yan waved his hand, suddenly turning around and staring darkly at the laughing young man. Be careful, he's a one-star dosher. Seeming to have sensed Xiao Yan's action, Yafei hurriedly turned around. However, before her shout fell, an explosion suddenly rang at the stairs, causing her pretty face to be completely stunned. You damn bastard. Do you eat dogs sh asterisk t in order to grow? Following the energy explosion, Xiao Yan's similarly dark, cold, and vicious curses rang in the stairway. Chapter 276, Searching for Medicine On the somewhat spacious staircase, Xiao Yan's body had appeared at the side of the young man's body in almost an instant. He abruptly tightened his fist and, with explosive force, violently smashed his fist into the young man's face. Although the body of the pale-faced young man was not very sturdy, his strength was not weak. At the moment when Xiao Yan had suddenly moved, he sent something and a dark coldness immediately swarmed onto his face. His hands were crossed in front of him and the turbulent Dou Qi in his body gushed out. It formed a Dou Qi cloak on the surface of his body in an instant. Despite being at a disadvantage from being caught off guard, the young man was very confident in his strength. Moreover, the Xiao Yan in front of him was really too young. Therefore, he believed that the other party's attack should have extreme difficulty breaking through his defense. Little bastard. Today, even if Yifei wants to protect you, you can forget about smoothly leaving the auction house. A dense thought flashed across the young man's mind at the moment he blocked that attack. However, before the thought in his heart fell, the fist which contained a pressurizing force firmly made contact on his arm. A soft, crack sound was emitted and following which, the expression of the young man changed wildly. A mouthful of fresh blood was involuntarily vomited out from his throat. His body was also thrust by the strong and vicious force, resulting in him being violently shot into the wall. Immediately, he spat out another mouthful of fresh blood. His legs knelt onto the ground while his body was curled up in pain. Only at the moment when the young man threw up blood did Yafei, who was on the stairs, turn around. The cry for Xiao Yan to be careful had only left her mouth when she saw the young man curling up like a dead dog. Her exquisite face was immediately covered by shock and disbelief. At this moment, the subordinates beside the young man finally recovered from this split-second occurrence. When they eyed their master's miserable appearance and shock first appeared on their faces before they immediately surrounded Xiao Yan angrily. I order all of you to withdraw. Seeing the few guards' actions, Yafei, who was on the stairs, finally could bear it no longer and exploded. Her almond eye stared furiously as she cried out loud. Hearing Yafei's cry, those few guards obviously hesitated for a moment. Their master may have the courage to offend Yafei, but it did not mean that they also had such courage. If any of you dare to take a step forward, then be ready to get kicked out of the primer auction house. Although you are not my subordinates, I think that with my status as the acting supervising elder, removing you few pieces of human scum shouldn't be something too difficult to do. When Yafei was icy, she had a different and unique majesty. Ai Yafei, whose pretty face contained an evilness, a dread finally flashed across the faces of the guards. 
They looked at each other's faces and unwillingly pulled back. Bring your master and return from where you came from. Yafei coldly ordered with her delicate hand pointed to the staircase. All right. Yafei, you got guts. You actually helped an outsider. Just wait. The young man's footstep staggered somewhat as he was helped onto his feet by his subordinates. He rubbed off the blood stain from the corner of his mouth and angrily stared at Yafei. Immediately, his pupils contained a dark coldness and gloominess as he turned towards Xiao Yan by her side. His breathing was hurried as he said with a dark voice, Good, good. Little bastard. If you have guts, just wait. After leaving those vicious words, the young man maliciously slapped the face of the guard by his side and angrily said, Fool. Go. Standing by the stairs, Xiao Yan narrowed his eyes as he looked at the young man slowly walking away under the support of the few guards. The fist under his sleeves was slowly opened and a few green-colored flames were writhing at the tips of his fingers. When faced with this kind of person, you actually know how to hold yourself back. Why don't you just kill him directly? Otherwise, he will remember this in the future. Hai Bo Dong laughed faintly as he leaned against the stairs. This is someone else's territory after all. Xiao Yan smiled and eyed Yifei. He shrugged and said, I'm sorry, I was a little impulsive. But that fellow's mouth really stinks. Yifei shook her head and sighed. She said with a bitter smile, I feel that it might be better for us to discuss things another day. Once that fellow returns home, he will definitely cry and complain to his grandfather. When that time comes, the old fellow, who is extremely protective of his child will definitely come here to create trouble. It doesn't matter. Xiao Yan shook his head and replied with a smile, we really need some things. Let's discuss it now. We will take care of those troubles by ourselves. Ah, you stubborn fellow. Forget it, when that time comes I will try my best to protect you. However, that old guy is extremely supercilious. I'm afraid that even I will be reprimanded by him. Hearing this, Yafei could only helplessly nod her head. She turned around and climbed the stairs. As she turned a corner, she left Xiao Yan the sight of her lovely curvy back. Xiao Yan pretended to ignore it and exchanged glances with Hai Bo Dong before following up the stairs. Xiao Yan followed Yafei up a few floors before finally stopping in front of a large door. Seeing that she was extremely familiar with the route, it was clear that this was a place she frequently came to. There were a few guards standing by the large door. Although their gazes were uncertain as they swept across Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong, the tactful guards did not open their mouth to stop them. Instead, they simply stood to the side like wooden pillars. The door was pushed open and a spacious room was revealed. Bookshelves were neatly erected within the room. There were various different kind of thick books placed on these bookshelves. Yafei passed through them and finally came to the front of a work desk. She then turned around and eyed Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong with a smile. Pointing at the chairs at the side, she said, Have a seat. Now, can you tell me, just what do you need? Xiao Yan smiled and nodded. He randomly reached for a chair, pulled it over, and sat down. After musing for a moment, he stared at Yafei and said, Did I create some trouble for you just now? I'm sorry. I know that you have only acted because of me. You don't need to apologize. Yafei waved her hand. She made a detour around the table and sat behind it. Her lips slightly pouted as she said with a smile, that guy's name is Lei Lei. He is also a member of our Mitre clan. His backing is also quite strong. Usually, I wouldn't want to offend him so I can only choose to ignore him. However, that fellow seemed to have some disgusting thoughts toward me. Me ignoring him had instead caused him to become angry because of the shame he feels, and thus he has decided to find trouble with me all the time. His grandfather has some importance within the house of elders in the clan. Therefore, I am very helpless when faced with this extremely thick-faced fellow. Yafei brushed over the black hair of her forehead and said somewhat tiredly. Looks like the young man called Lei Lei had really created big trouble for her. You should have known that for such a person, the more you do that, the more fierce he will become. Xiao Yan shook his head and replied. Kuku, this is of course something that I know. However, you should not overestimate the broadness of my mind. How could a little lady like me achieve such a high saint-like degree? Indeed, I don't wish to provoke him now. However, in the future, once I have the chance to take charge, this guy would be among the first garbage that I would expel. When that time comes, my revenge will cause him to feel terrified. You ought to know that women will forever be the creatures that hold the longest grudges. Otherwise, why would there be the saying that, a woman's heart is a most vicious thing? Yafei laughed faintly. The current her seemed to be unintentionally revealing her ambition and might. Hearing these words of Yafei, astonishment flashed across Xiao Yan's and Hai Bo Dong's faces. They did not expect that this lady, who appeared extremely gentle, would actually possess such tolerance and patience. All right, let's stop talking about him, it ruins my mood. Yafei shook her head and a spring water-like gentle smile surfaced on Yafei's exquisite face. She stared at Xiao Yan and said gently, what things do you need? Tell me. I will help you search for them. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head. He took out a white paper from the storage ring which had the medicinal ingredients need to refine the spiritual recovery purple pill written on it. After which, he handed it over to Yafei in front of Hai Bo Dong and said with a smile, do me a favor and take a look and see if you can gather all the medicinal ingredients on here. Eyeing Xiao Yan's action, the smile on Hai Bo Dong's old face became much denser. 
When the former had taken out the white paper, the latter had swiftly scanned it with his sharp gaze. Written on it were the same medicinal ingredients names that Xiao Yan had told him. It caused him to feel that Xiao Yan had indeed put this matter in his heart. I just knew that you would definitely not come to a place like the auction house if you had nothing to do. Yifei received the white paper and shook her head. Immediately, she lowered her head and roughly glanced at the medicinal ingredient names on it. A shock could not help but flash across her pretty face. She lifted her head, looked at Xiao Yan and said, These medicinal ingredients are all not ordinary things. Among them, there are some whose name I have only heard the name of and have never seen. Yes. Xiao Yan nodded slightly and softly asked, Is it possible to gather all the medicinal ingredients here? Hearing this, Hai Bo Dong by the side also anxiously stared at Yifei, who was deep in thought. This was a very important thing that affects whether or not he would be able to recover his peak strength. Yifei fondled her chin and thought for a moment before shaking her head. She said apologetically, I'm afraid that it would be extremely difficult to gather all of them. After all, these medicinal ingredients are really too rare. If they were put on the market, almost each of them would be able to be sold for a high price of at least 200,000 gold coins. Moreover, that's only if the ingredients are being sold, currently, I don't think anyone is selling them. When Yifei said these words, Hai Bo Dong immediately became gloomy while Xiao Yan by the side sighed disappointedly on the surface. In his heart, he rejoiced. If they were able to gather all the medicinal ingredients here, it would become a tragedy for him. It would be somewhat difficult to gather all of them. However, I think that it should not be a problem gathering half of the medicinal ingredients on it. Yifei voiced her thoughts. Half is also good. It is at least better than having nothing. Xiao Yan nodded and sighed. Hearing this, a saucy smile suddenly surfaced on Yifei's pretty face. She smiled and said, according to our record, our primer auction house should be able to take out four kinds of medicinal ingredients listed on this paper. The price of each of them is at least over 200,000 gold coins. I'm afraid that the total sum required for these four medicinal ingredients would be around a million gold coins. Xiao Yan DD, are you able to hand over the money? Ah. Uh. Xiao Yan blinked his eyes and shook his head. It seems that I cannot. Once these words of Xiao Yan was said, the smile on Yifei's pretty face grew even greater. Her long fingers were interlocked with one another and said in a somewhat regretful voice, Xiao Yan DD, now we are no longer at Wuten City. Here, even if elder sister is willing to help you, I don't possess the authority to do so. Moreover, such a huge sum is already far beyond jurisdiction of what I manage. Xiao Yan rubbed the side of his face and said, then what should I do? Ah, although one million gold coins is not a small sum, elder sister has great confidence in you. Coincidentally, our primer clan is recruiting an alchemist during this period. If Xiao Yan DD is interested, you can use this to settle the bill. A tier 2 medicinal pill could also be sold for quite a good price. I think, with Xiao Yan DD's ability, it should be easy for you to settle these bills. Yifei's lotus blossom pretty eyes were curved into a shallow angle, enchanting people like a fox spirit. TL, fox spirit is used in Chinese folklore to depict a seductress slash a lady who bewitches a man. Chapter 277, Stopped. Ah, selling myself. Hearing this, Xiao Yan was momentarily at a loss. Immediately, he laughed bitterly and shook his head. He turned it around, faced Hai Bo Dong and waved his hand, you settle it yourself. I am only responsible for refining the medicinal pill. The matter of medicinal ingredients ought to be something that you should worry about. Seeing the situation, Hai Bo Dong helplessly shook his head. He stood up and drew out an extremely exquisite purple gold card from his storage ring. After which, he randomly threw it on the table and said, Little girl, go and quickly gather the medicinal ingredients for me. You are actually thinking of keeping him here with this one million of yours. That is really looking down on his value. Yifei was stunned as she stared at the purple gold card that had seven silver colored lines on its surface. Astonishment flashed across Yifei's face. Having frequently come into contact with countless strong people, she was naturally extremely clear that this kind of purple gold card was something that only those who at least had the strength of a Do Wang had the qualification to use. Was it possible that this seemingly humble-looking old man was actually a Do Wang? The smile on her pretty face was slowly withdrawn. Her eyes held an extremely complex look as she turned to Xiao Yan, who was seated on a chair and was picking at his fingernail in boredom. This little fellow had been muddling along quite well during these three years. He was actually able to interact with such a strong person. It should be known that a Do Wang class person was a VIP that no one would dare to slight or neglect even if he came to the strong primer clan. Yifei carefully picked up the purple gold card as her finger slowly rubbed over it. Its special texture caused her to swiftly discern that it was real. Immediately, she gently clapped her hands and a lovely, pretty-looking female servant quickly walked in from outside the door. Go and properly pack these four medicinal ingredients and bring them over as fast as possible once you are done. Hurry. Yifei handed a piece of paper to the female servant as she ordered solemnly. Yes. The female servant respectfully responded before striding out of the room. Old sir, please wait for a moment. The medicinal ingredients will immediately be brought over. After seeing the female servant leave, Yifei respectfully told Hai Bo Dong. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head slightly before returning to sit on his chair. He lifted his teacup, but did not speak as he continued to wait there in silence. 
Having suddenly found out that this humble-looking old man actually possessed such a powerful identity, Yifei no longer dared to tease Xiao Yan, whom the old man had quite a significant relationship with. She sat quietly on the chair. Occasionally, her somewhat strange gaze would drift toward the bored young man. Following the silence of the three of them, the atmosphere in the room gradually became depressing. Xiao Yan finally frowned slightly as the time elapsed. He was just about to open his mouth to speak when a somewhat flustered female servant hurriedly walked in from the door and was first to break the depressing atmosphere. Where are the medicinal ingredients? Hearing the anxious footsteps, Yifei raised her head. When she saw the empty-handed female servant, her eyebrows were knit slightly together as she asked in a deep voice. Yifei Xiaojie, the medicinal ingredients, the medicinal ingredients were forcefully taken away by Elder Leo. He said that these medicinal ingredients had already been reserved by someone and cannot be sold to another person. The face of the female servant had some panic as she timidly said. TL, Xiaojie, means the young lady slash miss. In this case, it is used respectfully as the young lady of a clan. Bang. As her face suddenly became gloomy, Yifei's hand heavily smashed onto the table surface. She clenched her silver teeth and said, This old fellow. These medicinal ingredients had been sitting in the warehouse for at least a few months. Why have I not heard that someone has reserved them? What happened? Seeing the sudden turn of events, Xiao Yin frowned and softly asked. As Yifei slowly inhaled a breath of air, her voluminous round chest slightly rose and fell. Her hands gently rubbed her temple while she said with a bitter smile, That old fellow Lei O is the grandfather of Lei Lei whom you had beat up and made vomited blood earlier. He is also an elder in the Primer clan and has quite some power. Is he using his authority to avenge his personal feud? Xiao Yin narrowed his eyes and said with a faint smile. Beside him, Hai Bo Dong, who was slowly sipping his tea, twitched his white eyebrows. He did not speak but the tea within the teacup held in both his hands had solidified into ice by the shrouded by cold air in the blink of an eye. Ah, that old fellow. This time around he really went overboard. He actually did something like that. Yafei stood up. Her pretty face was slightly dark and gloomy as she said addressed the female servant at the side, lead the way. I will personally go and reason with him. Hearing this, the female servant could only humbly obey and nodded her head. She was just about to turn around when an old cold snort was transmitted into the room, find me to reason with. Hm all right. I also want to see just who in here actually dared to injure my grandson. When Yafei heard this cold snort, the iciness on her pretty face became denser. Her hands were pressed on the table surface as she coldly eyed the few people swarming into the room from the door. Leading the group was an old man dressed in a magnificent robe with a somewhat overcast face. Following behind him was the pale-faced young man and a few guards. At this moment, the young man was using a pernicious gaze to viciously stare at Xiao Yan who was seated on a chair. Elder Leo. What is the meaning of your action? Although you are an elder in the clan, when did you have the right to interfere with the matters of the auction house? Moreover, you actually dare to block the medicinal ingredients that a customer has ordered. Are you trying to cause our primer auction house to lose its reputation? Yifei's pretty face was filled with coldness as she angrily glared at the old man. She violently put a huge hat on him. TL, wearing a huge hat, means pinning a big offense onto a person. Under this heavy big hat that caused people to have difficulty breathing, the face of the old man called Leo could not help but change slightly. Immediately, however, he laughed coldly, Hey, what great official presence. Yafei, don't think that you are now a real elder. When you manage to remove the acting from the acting supervising elder, you can come and talk to me like this. But I think that you may not have such an opportunity. As the acting supervising elder for the Primer Auction House, you actually privately brought outsiders into our clan's important areas without authorization and even injured a fellow clan member. When the next House of Elders meeting begins, I will seriously demand the other elders to remove your position for these offenses. After entering the room, Leo's dark and vicious gaze swept across Xiao Yan and Hai Bo Dong. The young Xiao Yan did not cause him to pay much attention. Only the Tier 2 Alchemist badge on his chest resulted in his heart feeling a momentary surprise. However, it was merely a surprise. With his status, he had interacted with far too many Tier 2 Alchemists. Therefore, most of his line of sight was focused on the expressionless Hai Bo Dong. However, with his discerning ability, he could naturally not see through Hai Bo Dong's foundation. Immediately, the ignorance in his heart let himself become fearless. If the other party was of the Dou Ling or a Dou Wang class, he should have been able to detect some energy fluctuations. Currently, however, Leo sensed that Hai Bo Dong's entire body did not have the slightest trace of energy flow. There were only two possibilities for this. One was that the other party was someone who surpassed a Dou Wang, a Dou Wang. The other was that the other party's strength was so weak that it caused people to have difficulty sensing the Dou Qi present in his body. Although Leo did not have the qualifications to get to know all the Dou Huangs in Jiama Empire, he still got the opportunity to see all of them. Unfortunately, those few Dou Huang were not the Hai Bo Dong in front of him. Then, the only explanation remaining was the second one. Elder Leo, perhaps you have forgotten some of the latent rules of the auction house. Some of the big clients do have the qualification to walk into this place. As for the matter regarding Lei Lei, it was entirely his own fault. One cannot blame others for acting to teach him a lesson. Yafei coldly said. A razor tongue girl. Big client. 
Hey, alright. You come and tell me just what is the identity of these two people and let me judge just how big they actually are. Have they reached the qualification like you have said? Lei O pressed his lips together and replied darkly. His connections were quite good within the Jiama sacred city. He knew some of the somewhat large strengths in the city as well as quite a few of those strengths which were overlords of other dominating cities. However, he had never seen Xiao Yan or Hai Bo Dong before. Hearing Lei O's words, Ye fate was a little sluggish. She knew Xiao Yan's identity, but Xiao clan was far from being able to cause Lei O, who was famous in the clan for being arrogant and domineering, to fear. As for the other Hai Bo Dong, she did not have the slightest clue of his background. Seeing the speechless Yefei, Leo's face appeared very pleased. He said darkly, looks like Nice isn't very clear about the identity of the other party either. You actually dare to bring these strangers into our clan's important grounds. Looks like you are really unsuitable to take this position. Being forced by Leo in this manner, Yefei's face immediately became somewhat livid. She clenched her silver teeth and said, I shall not argue with you about this. Those medicinal ingredients were first bought by them. They have already paid for it but you stopped the goods on their way. Once this matter spreads and hurts the reputation of the primer auction house, I want to see how you will give the first elder an explanation. Once the two words, first elder, entered his ears, Leo's expression clearly changed. This name obviously had a deterrent effect on him. However, when he tilted his head to glance at his precious grandson's pale white face, a fury surged. He coldly smiled and said, those medicinal ingredients had already been reserved by someone. It is just that I don't want the case where we cannot take the thing out to account to him in the future when he comes and collects them. You, you, bullsh asterisk t. Yefei's face was vivid. Faced with his irrational argument, Yefei's hand slammed onto the table's surface. She was actually angered until she directly used vulgarities. If there was someone who had reserved such a big bill, how could I not know? Elder Leo, this method of doing things really isn't fitting of your position as an elder. Yefei angrily said, I will definitely personally report this matter to the first elder. As she spoke, Yefei stood up furiously. Eyeing her action, Xiao Yan, who had been maintaining silence finally let out a slow sigh. He stood up, walked to the table side and pulled Yefei. After which, he pressed her on the chair, patted her head and said with a smile, it is clear that these matter cannot be settled through reasoning. Let me take over. Don't try anything funny. That old fellow is a Dou Ling regardless of how abnormal you are, you definitely cannot beat him. Xiao Yan's intimate actions caused Yifei's pretty face to become slightly red. She struggled slightly for a moment, but she did not get the slightest response. Staring at the smiling delicate and handsome face, she said somewhat hurriedly. Indeed, I will not do anything. Xiao Yan smiled, turned around and looked at Hai Bo Dong in the chair. He said blandly, Old Hai, Yefei is in this state because of your matter. Don't just sit there and watch the show. Do what you think is necessary. Chapter 278, Cheap Bastard Hearing the words of Xiao Yan, Yefei behind him also ceased her struggling. Her gaze stared at the old man who had been playing with his teacup. Recalling the purple gold card from earlier, she slowly calmed down. On the opposite side, Leo also shifted his gaze toward Hai Bo Dong after Xiao Yan spoke. Seeing Hai Bo Dong's indifferent expression, Leo's eyes shrunk. His head felt slightly uneasy as he asked in a soft and low voice, You are. Hai Bo Dong slowly shook his head before looking up. His gaze was as indifferent as a 10,000 year ice glacier as he randomly glanced over Lei Bo immediately, he lowered his head to watch the teacup which had also been frozen over. After a brief silence, he said, Primer Ting Shan. That piece of trash is still alive, right? The calm and indifferent voice was undoubtedly like thunder, violent and abrupt, making its presence known next to the ears of those in the room excluding Xiao Yan and Yefei, shaking them until they became as dull as a wooden pillar. Oh God! He, he actually speaks of the first elder in such a manner. The first elder is one of the ten strong in the Jiama Empire. Xiao Yan Dd, what exactly is the identity of this old sir? Opening her small mouth slightly, Yefei foolishly stared at Hai Bo Dong, who was seated in a chair. The first elder who was viewed like a god in the Primer Clan had actually became a piece of trash by his mouth, if these words were to be spread to the rest of the Primer Clan, it would likely cause a fury. On the opposite side, Lei O and Lei Lei beside him were similarly stunned by these words of Hai Bo Dong. The corner of their mouths twitched slightly. Clearly, the impact these words had on them were far too great. Cluck. After being dull for a long while, Leo finally began to gradually recover. He involuntarily swallowed his saliva. His eyes contained surprise and bewilderment as he stared at Hai Bo Dong. The tone he used to speak was clearly more polite, you. You don't have the right to address me like that. Hai Bo Dong gently blew at the teacup which had turned into ice as he said blandly without even lifting his eyes. These extremely harsh words caused Leo to be at a momentary loss. A lividness immediately surfaced on his old face. In the many years since he had become an elder, he had not had someone speak to him in such a manner. In ten minutes, those medicinal ingredients that the girl had ordered earlier must appear in front of me. Otherwise, I don't mind having the Primer Clan lose an elder. Hai Bo Dong ignored the livid-faced Lei O. His tone was still as indifferent as it was at the beginning. At the same time, he did not leave any face for the other party. You, your tone is far too arrogant. Do you know who my grandfather is? 
Seeing Leo being rebuked in such a manner, a fury swarmed onto the pale white face of Lei Lei beside him, who had never seen anyone dare to speak in such a manner to his grandfather. His anger had also suppressed the shock created by Hai Bo Dong a moment ago, and he could not help but near coldly. Quickly after Lei Lei's words fell, a cold smile appeared on Xiao Yan's face. He softly said, Reckless fellow. The teacup that was swaying slightly in Hai Bo Dong's hand slowly stopped. He lifted his head and shot his icy cold gaze at Lei Lei until the latter's face turned completely white. Being observed by everyone, Lei Lei was intending to stiffen his neck and speak again when he abruptly realized that Hai Bo Dong's body moved slightly. Be careful. The moment that Hai Bo Dong's body moved, Leo's eyes suddenly shrunk. His body moved horizontally and swiftly stopped in front of Lei Lei. After which, the Dou Qi in his body surged wildly before breaking free of his body and covering him. When Leo's Dou Qi was summoned out, a white figure appeared to have teleported and appeared in front of him. That terrifying speed caused the former's eyes to shrink. The human figure stood still in a floating palm that carried an icy cold bone chilling force carelessly patted Leo on the chest where his Dou Qi was amassing. Glug. It may have appeared like a seemingly careless pat, but it caused Leo's expression to instantly become pale. A mouthful of fresh blood was wildly vomited. Immediately, the blood was agglomerated into a blood-red icicle in midair and landed on the ground with a clear sound. The ferocious force caused Leo's body to be shot backward. Instantly, he and Lei Lei heavily smashed into the wall. In seconds, the two of them were emitting waves of painful moans. The guards behind Leo were stunned as they eyed Leo who had been seriously injured with only one strike. Their hands which were holding onto their weapons trembled in fear. They actually forgotten their duty to protect their master. Grandpa. Are you alright? Due to being protected by Leo, Lei Lei did not receive very serious injuries. He climbed up with great difficulty. When he saw that Leo's expression was even paler than his, he hurriedly called out. Do. Do Huang. The cold chi in his body caused Leo's hair to actually be covered in thin frost layers. His mouth trembled as he suddenly stared at Hai Bo Dong and said with shock. A strong person who was able to cause Leo serious injury without him being able to see the former's shadow. Leo's heart clearly knew that only a Do Huang was able to do such a thing. Hearing these few words, Lei Lei's body suddenly trembled intensely. A terror appeared on his face as he watched Hai Bo Dong. He did not expect that this humble-looking old man would actually be a Do Huang. The ten minutes have already begun. I will definitely not take back the words that I have said. Ten minutes later, the medicinal ingredients must appear in front of me. Otherwise, even if Primer Tingshan appeared, you will die today. Hai Bo Dong glanced at the two of them as he indifferently and slowly said. Quick, quickly. Quickly go and bring the medicinal ingredients. Hearing those words, a terror flashed across Leo's face. He hurriedly shouted angrily at Lei Lei by his side. Yes, yes. The equally extremely frightened Lei Lei hurriedly stood up, crawling and stumbling out of the room. Watching Leo who had become extremely obedient in the blink of an eye, Yafei smiled bitterly and shook her head. This old fellow was really a cheap bastard. Ah, Do Huang, God. This Xiao Yan is actually acquainted with such an extremely strong person. No wonder he has the courage to come to the capital. Yafei eyed the well built back in front of her. She increasingly felt that this fellow was more and more difficult to see through. Standing up from her seat, Yafei respectfully watched Hai Bo Dong as she timidly asked, Is old sir acquainted with our first elder? That useless fellow still hasn't died. Hai Bo Dong slowly returned to his seat and once again spoke a bold sentence that caused Leo's body, which was lying on the ground, to twitch. This bold words of Hai Bo Dong similarly caused Yafei to be a little embarrassed. She softly said, All is well with the first elder. May I ask old sir's name? When you see that useless fellow, just tell him that I, Hai Bo Dong, haven't died. He will naturally know. Hai Bo Dong said faintly. Yes. Hearing those words, Yafei could only respectfully respond. Her hands crossed each other, appearing to be at a loss. The corner of her eyes suddenly drifted to the purple gold card on the table and hurriedly picked it up, intending to return it to him. According to the rules, a Do Huang could enjoy such a lavish treatment. You don't need to return it. He won't take it. Seeing Yafei's action, Xiao Yan smiled and turned his gaze toward Hai Bo Dong and asked, Am I right, old Hai? You, this fellow. This little girl isn't even your lover. Do you need to help her save this bit of money? Hai Bo Dong skimmed his lips and helplessly said. When Hai Bo Dong's words left his mouth, Yafei's pretty face became slightly red. She held the purple gold card and hesitated for a moment before calling over a female servant and ordering her to take out some of the money in it. However, before the female servant left, she instructed her to cut the price by half. Hey, little girl really knows how to conduct herself. Although Yafei's voice was very soft, it still reached Hai Bo Dong's ears. At that moment, he smiled and nodded, clearly having a good impression because of this action of hers. Xiao Yan smiled, turned around and stared at Yafei, who had an exquisite, pretty face. He suddenly asked, that's right, can you help me check if there is anything in the auction house which can recover spiritual strength? Recover spiritual strength. Hearing this Yafei was momentarily at a loss. 
Immediately, she frowned and said, those things are definitely unique things. I will search for you. As she said that, she turned around and went to a bookshelf. After she searched for a moment, she finally hugged a thick book and walked out. She carefully searched through it before shaking her head and said apologetically, I'm sorry. The things that can help recover spiritual strength are really far too rare. I have searched the records of the auction house for the past year and it seems we didn't collect any treasures of that kind. Disappointment flashed across his face as Xiao Yan smiled bitterly and nodded. His spirit was somewhat dispirited as he returned to his seat. Seeing Xiao Yan's disappointed manner, Ye Fei helplessly shook her head, but did not have the ability to help even though she wanted to. Time slowly flowed by. Just as the ten minutes were about to pass, Lei Lei's panicked shadow finally rushed in from the door. He stumbled and scrambled before he carefully placed a few jade boxes on the table and said in a trembling voice, Sir, the medicinal ingredients that you need are all placed here. None of them are even slightly damaged. Seeing the jade boxes, a joy appeared on Hai Bo Dong's face. He carefully opened them and smiled as he handed them over to Xiao Yan and said anxiously, Check them and see if they are the right medicinal ingredients. Xiao Yan received the jade box and carefully observed them. After which, he nodded under the anxious and alarmed gazes of Lei O and Lei Lei. Yes, they are fine. The medicinal ingredients are preserved quite well and their ages are sufficient. That's good. Hearing Xiao Yan confirmation, Hai Bo Dong let out a long sigh. He turned around and spoke coldly toward Lei O, Get lost. And, this girl is extremely pleasing to my eye. Go back and tell Primer Ting Shan that the first word of the acting supervising elder can be dropped. Hearing this, the corner of, of Lei O's mouth convulsed. He hurriedly nodded and with the support of Lei Lei, left in a humiliated state. Since we managed to obtain the things, shall we leave? After storing the jade box properly, Hai Bo Dong said with a smile. Xiao Yan nodded slightly. He was about to bid Yifei goodbye when a female servant strode into the room and said respectfully to Yifei, Yifei Xiao Jie, Nailin Xiao Jie wishes to see you regarding something. Nailin. Nailin Yanran. These two words, which were pretty much forbidden words in Xiao Yan's heart, caused him to be briefly at a loss. Quickly following that, his expression became instantly dark. Chapter 279, Seven Magical Green Spirit Saliva Hearing the notification of the female servant, Yifei became slightly blank. She immediately turned her head to see Xiao Yan's expression which had instantly become gloomy. Helplessly shaking her head, she softly inquired, Nailin Yanran. Yes. The female servant respectfully replied. Why is she looking for me? Yifei knit her eyebrows together slightly and mumbled softly. She sighed and eyed Xiao Yan, apologizing, I'm sorry. Go. This is your job. It's not like I will blame you. Xiao Yan smiled. Some of the darkness on his face disappeared as he waved his hand and said. You may not want to meet her now, so wait here for a while. After I ask for the reason for her to come, I will see the both of you out. Yifei pretty eyes swept across Xiao Yan in the quiet, indifferent Hai Bo Dong and said in a probing manner. It's just as well. After musing for a moment, Xiao Yan nodded his head slightly. The current him indeed did not want to meet that woman so early. Therefore, he did not reject Yifei's suggestion at that moment. Seeing that Xiao Yan had agreed, Yifei sighed in relief. Passing by the female servant's side, Yifei told her to look after the both of them properly before quickly striding out of the room. Do you have some grudge with that Nailin Yanran? Eyeing the back that had disappeared behind the door, Hai Bo Dong held the teacup which had turned into ice and asked in a somewhat astonished voice. Yes. Xiao Yan nodded his head and slowly sat on the chair. His expression was slightly ugly. Don't tell me that you going to the Misty Cloud sect has something to do with her. As he glanced at Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong became startled and he immediately asked in a stunned manner. This time around, Xiao Yan did not reply and simply sipped his tea. His narrowed eyes contained a faint cold glint. Eyeing Xiao Yan's manner, Hai Bo Dong knew the answer and did not continue his inquiry. He slowly shook his head. It seemed like he somewhat understood Xiao Yan's intent on heading up to the Misty Cloud sect. However, he was still somewhat confused as to what that Nailin Yanran lady had done to Xiao Yan. She actually managed to cause this person with extraordinary mental strength to even be willing to form an undesirable relationship with a huge being like the Misty Cloud sect. It was clear that being in a bad relationship with the Misty Cloud sect within the Jiama Empire was a very foolish thing. Oh, that's right. Why are you finding things that can recover spiritual strength? Has your spirit been hurt? Hai Bo Dong did not continue to get entangled over the matter. Instead, Hai Bo Dong suddenly recalled the thing that Xiao Yan needed earlier and immediately asked doubtfully. Xiao Yan's eyebrow twitched gently without being noticed. He slowly sipped his tea while his heart was swiftly moving. A moment later, he calmly said, the residual effects caused by that angry Buddha lotus flame, the last time. Oh, that thing is really too terrifying. It is only reasonable that it had resulted in some residual effects. Hai Bo Dong did not have the slightest doubt after hearing Xiao Yan's words. After all, that angry Buddha lotus flame's strength was really somewhat terrifying. His gaze swept over Xiao Yan's body before he frowned and said, is it serious? Doing his best to maintain his usual heartbeat, Xiao Yan glanced at Hai Bo Dong and said, it is not very serious, but it is also not a usual injury. 
Therefore, I need to search for some unique things that can recover spiritual strength which will enable me to quickly recover. Hearing this somewhat vague reply from Xiao Yan, Hai Bo Dong pressed his eyebrows together. He tilted his head and eyed the delicate and handsome face where one could not see any emotion. His lips squirmed a little, but he did not say any words. Instead, he nodded slightly, lowered his head and stared at the teacup, becoming silent. Borrowing the reflection from the water surface of the teacup, Xiao Yan could clearly see Hai Bo Dong's reaction. His hand that was tightly holding the teacup relaxed a little and he slowly sipped the tea. He wet the somewhat dry throat as he let out a long breath in his heart. Following the two of them becoming silent, the atmosphere in the room became quiet. The female servant that was waiting in one corner was jittery and did not dare to make any noise or interrupt them. She was also extremely careful even when changing tea for the two of them, not daring to create the slightest noise. The quiet atmosphere persisted for nearly half an hour when a hurried and clear click-clack noise sounded from the door. Immediately, Yifei's quiet and elegant body appeared within the sight of the two of them. Has she left? Xiao Yan slowly put down the teacup in his hand and carelessly asked. Yes. As she walked into the room, Yifei respectfully nodded at Hai Bo Dong, who was holding his teacup. She immediately turned her gaze to Xiao Yan while her long fingers gently tapped on the table. A moment later, she finally said with a smile to Xiao Yan doubtful gaze, Xiao Yan DD, do you really need those natural treasures? Yes, I quite need it. Xiao Yan's heart jumped slightly as he nodded. His gaze stared intently at Yifei and he softly asked, does the auction house have it? As long as you are able to take it out, I can give you a satisfactory price. The unique things that can recover spiritual strength are extremely rare. Even with the huge flow of goods in our primer auction house, we have hardly collected those kind of items. Yifei shook her head and helplessly said. Then you mean? Xiao Yan frowned slightly and said. Our primer auction house indeed does not have those unique items that can recover spiritual strength. However, according to what I know, a certain clan in the Jiama Sacred City does have a unique plant that is named Seven Magical Green Spirit Saliva. The roots of this kind of plant can be refined into a kind of extremely mysterious liquid substance. This kind of substance is the best ingredient for recovering spiritual strength. Yifei smiled bitterly as she replied. Oh. Really? Hearing this, a joy instantly swarmed onto Xiao Yan's face. He hurriedly asked, which clan? A bitter smile surfaced on Yifei's pretty face. Her muttering manner appeared somewhat hesitating. Xiao Yan doubtfully watched this expression of Yifei. He was at a loss before he immediately recalled something. At that moment, his expression gradually became gloomy as he said, Don't tell me it is the Nalin clan. Yes, it is indeed them. Yifei helplessly nodded. That kind of treasure is something that anyone would properly admire and hide. Even without considering the animosity I have for them, do you think that the Nalin clan would sell that seven magical green spirit saliva to me? Xiao Yan rubbed his forehead and said softly, Do you want me to go and steal it? If I really have no choice. Who wants you to go and steal? The Nalin clan is one of the three big clans that is equally as famous as our primer clan. Moreover, a number of the people of the Nalin clan are important people in the empire's military. If one were to talk about the degree of defensive fortification that they have, it would definitely not be weaker than our primer clan. Although you have the help of old Mr. Hai Bo Dong, attempting to successfully obtain the seven magical green spirit saliva from the heavy defenses of the Nalin clan would not be an easy task. Yifei looked at Xiao Yan with mock disdain as she said in an annoyed voice, if you are not careful, and fight to death with them, you may end up destroying the seven magical green spirit saliva, wouldn't that have wasted your effort? If I can't rob and I can't use normal business transaction, yet I want that seven magical green spirit saliva. What should I do? Xiao Yan frowned slightly and said. The old grandfather of the Nalin clan had once fought with an incomparably poisonous rank 5 magic beast, searing iron poison weed, a few years ago. Although he finally managed to kill it, he was unlucky to have the latter inject a poison that caused people to tremble in fear, the famed, searing poison, into his body. Since you are well versed in refining medicine, I think that you should know just how potent this kind of poison is. There have been records of the searing iron poison weed leaping over its class and poisoning a rank 6 magic beast to death. If it were not for the fact that its numbers are so few that they're almost neglectable, I'm afraid that there would be many strong people in the continent who would change their expression in when talking about such a poison. Yifei smiled and she suddenly began talking about things that had nothing to do with the seven magical green spirit saliva. That thing is indeed very poisonous, but this does not seem to have much relationship with the seven magical green spirit saliva, does it? Hearing the name, searing iron poison weed, Xiao Yan's face changed slightly and he immediately shook his head and said. Can you hear all that I have to say? Throwing Xiao Yan another look of mock disdain, Yifei continued, During these last few years, Grandfather Nalin relied on his strong Dou Qi to suppress the poison. However, as he becomes older, the backlash from the poison also become increasingly strong. Half a month ago, the searing poison that was hidden in his body completely erupted. Under this kind of eruption, Grandfather Nalin, whose strength is at the Dou Wang class, completely collapsed. Now, the entire Nalin clan is in a total mess as they go everywhere to find an alchemist to save him. Finding an alchemist. With Nalin Yanran's relationships, shouldn't she be able to hire Guhi? With his refining ability, what kind of poison can he not cure? Xiao Yan said faintly. 
She hired him but even Guhi does not have the ability to remove the searing poison. Like its name suggests, that kind of poison hides deep within the bones and even the bone marrow. All medicinal pills would have difficulty completely removing it. Yafei shook her head and laughed bitterly. Even Guhi doesn't have a solution. Hearing this, Xiao Yan immediately said with shock. Yes. Yafei nodded her head and voiced her thought, although Guhi did not remove the poison, he had spoken about a method that can work. That is to control a flame, place it into Grandfather Nalan's body and use the high temperature to expel the searing poison in it. Unfortunately, there is a very important precondition for this. The flame must be a heavenly flame. Therefore, the Nalan clan is currently spending a large amount of money to engage those alchemists who possess heavenly flame. Unfortunately, they did not gain anything, they have even named a great price that even our primer clan covets. That's right, within that great price, there is that seven magical green spirit saliva, dot. Yafei waved her hand. Whoever is able to cure Grandfather Nalan will be able to obtain that seven magical green spirit saliva. Recently, there have been many alchemists who have gone to try. Unfortunately, all of them failed without exception. A moment ago, the reason Nalan Yenron came to find me was to ask us, the Primer Auction House, to help them advertise and see if we could find an alchemist who possesses a heavenly flame, dot. Perhaps you can go and try. After all, the thing that happened back then does not have much relation to Grandfather Nalan. After it happened, he even furiously chased Nalan Yenron out of the house a few times. Although, his actions were not permanent. Yafei watched Xiao Yan and said. Hearing this, Xiao Yan frowned intently. His finger gently tapped the table as he remained quiet. Chapter 280, Sun Air Eyeing Xiao Yan, who appeared to be in deep thought as he slowly tapped on the surface of the table, Yafei became somewhat nervous. Grandfather Nalan, as the person in charge of the Nalan clan, had built up quite a good relationship with the Primer clan during these years that he was in power. If he were to fall, then the collaboration arrangements between the Nalan clan and the Primer clan might descend into a period of stagnation. Such losses would be quite significant. Of course, Yafei naturally did not expect that Xiao Yan would be able to expel the poison in Grandfather Nalan's body with his strength. Although after his training, Xiao Yan was currently much stronger than before, Yafei still did not think that Xiao Yan would be able to possess a heavenly flame, which was nearly a legendary thing. The main reason for her to care so much about Xiao Yan's response was because she wanted to engage the mysterious teacher hiding behind Xiao Yan to act. After witnessing a small bit of the terrifying strength that the latter had revealed back at Wuten City, Yafei could sense that he was mysterious and unfathomable. Under such a situation, if he were willing to act, the life of Grandfather Nalan, which was hanging by a thread, may be truly pulled back. Although I have never tried it, just hearing the method that Guhi described, I think that this should be an extremely risky procedure, no. Inserting the heavenly flame into another person's body. As long as the, the person releasing the flame had the slightest killing intent or even negligence, Grandfather Nalan might in an instant, be incinerated into a pile of ashes from within. Even though it is like that, you are still suggesting that I go and try. You should know that I am uncertain if I am able to control my emotions properly in a situation when Nalan Yenran is present. After being silent for a long while, Xiao Yan finally spoke slowly. Yafei smiled bitterly, nodded and said, this is indeed a very dangerous thing. However, the Nalan clan also has no choice. If they don't even dare to take this risk, then Grandfather Nalan might really have no hope. Do you want to go and try? As she watched Xiao Yan, some joy appeared in Yafei's eyes. As long as Xiao Yan agreed, it was likely that the mysterious teacher hiding behind him would at least secretly give some pointers even if he did not personally act to save Grandfather Nalan. If that were the case, the chances of curing Grandfather Nalan would be raised by quite a lot. I need to get a hold of that, seven magical green spirit saliva. This is a must. Xiao Yan pressed his lips together. A moment later, he frowned slightly and said in a soft voice, Do you have those special tools that can help me change my appearance? You should know of my grudge with the Nalan clan. If they recognize my identity, I'm afraid that they would definitely not let me perform such an extremely dangerous poison expelling procedure on Grandfather Nalan. Ah. How troublesome. Seeing the frowning Xiao Yan who appeared somewhat impatient, Yafei swiftly thought for a moment before nodding her head. She said with a smile, the special items required to modify one's expression may be extremely rare but our auction house does have one remaining. As she said that, she waved over a female servant and whispered into her ear. Hearing Yen Fei's order, the female servant respectfully nodded her head and swiftly exited. A few minutes later, she held an exquisite wooden box and entered with hurried footsteps. She then placed it onto the table's surface. Xiao Yan received the exquisite wooden box and slowly opened it. Immediately, it revealed a thin mask that looked like human skin. With some curiosity in his heart, Xiao Yan's finger carefully touched it and placed it gently onto his palm. The spot where it entered his hand was completely cold. It as thin as a cicada's wings, as though it did not exist. This is made using the ice silk that was taken from an ice mountain silkworm. After being carved by a high-grade craftsman, an outline of the shape of a human face has been formed. As long as you cover your face with it, it should be able to hide your facial features. Your face smiled and said, This ice silk mask can be said to be a high-grade item in our primer auction house. If we were to take it out and sell it, it would have a price of at least 300,000 gold coins. This time around, I will give it to you for free. 
You don't need to hurry to reject me. If you can really cure Grandfather Nalan, the benefits that our Primer Auction House would get would far exceed this 300,000 gold coins. Consider this our hidden investment. Hearing this, Xiao Yan mused for a moment before nodding slightly. He did not open his mouth to reject. Raising his head, his hand pulled open the ice silk dough and gently pasted it to his face. Immediately, an icy cold feeling slowly seeped through his skin and entered his body. Xiao Yan could even vaguely sense that even his features began to wiggle at this moment. Standing at one side, Ye Fei eyed the face that was gradually becoming ordinary. She pursed his lips up and smiled gently, taking out a crystal mirror. Putting it front of Xiao Yan, she smiled and said, the effect is quite good, no. Opening his eyes, Xiao Yan eyed his ordinary face which was totally different from what it was in the past. He was momentarily at a loss. Immediately, he nodded his head with satisfaction while carrying some curiosity. Although strong people rely on the other party's chi to identify each other, you have seldom come into contact with the Nalan clan. Back then, Nalan Yenron left in a rush. Three years later, it would not be possible for her to identify your chi. Therefore, with this ice silk mask, as long as you are not scrutinized in extreme detail, it would be difficult to discover your identity. Ye Fei said with a smile. Xiao Yan nodded his head. His palm slowly fondled the face that was covered by the ice silk mask. A long while later, he lazily said, Then, I shall go and try. If I am able to help him expel his poison, I will do my best. Although I have already said, this is something extremely dangerous. If at any time my emotions are not smooth and if my hand were to tremble, I will not take responsibility should I turn the old fellow into ashes. Hearing the last sentence, Yefei helplessly shook her head. She said, I will help write a recommendation letter for you. When you go to the Nalan clan later, having the letter should help reduce some strict checks. Yes, I will trouble you then. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded. Yefei turned around and took out an exquisitely made piece of paper. Her hand supported the ink pen as she bent slightly. Her body was tightly curled into an attractive curve as her pretty face concentrated on seriously and slowly writing on the paper. A moment later, she sighed gently and folded this recommendation letter properly before handing it to Xiao Yan. She smiled and said, Xiao Yan Didi. Don't cause Jie Jie to lose face. This is the first time that I have recommended someone. Hopefully. Xiao Yan was noncommittal as he smiled. He received the recommendation letter and said smiling to Yefei, I've troubled you. Just leave the remaining matters to me. Yes, there are many eyes in the auction house. In order to keep your identity a secret, I will not personally see you off. If you need any help, you are free to come and find me at the Primer Auction House. I will do my best to help you. Yefei smiled and said. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded. He no longer hesitated as he waved his hand at Hai Bo Dong by the side. After which, he led the way and walked to the door. Little girl. If Primer Tingshan, that useless fellow, asks about me, tell him that once I have the time, I will go and visit him. Tell him not to act like a crazy fellow and go all over the place to search for traces of me. Hai Bo Dong lazily stood up, glanced at Yefei at the side and said blandly. Ah, yes, old sir. Hearing these words, Yefei was at a loss. Immediately, he smiled bitterly and nodded. Before she could gain a full understanding of the other party's relationship with the first elder, she could only obediently reply. Eyeing the two backs that disappeared through the door, Yefei mused for a moment. After which, she walked out from another side door. A Do Wang appearing at the primer auction house was a big thing and she had to report to the interior of the clan. Of course, besides reporting, she would naturally complain a lot about Lei O and Lei Lei. At the door of the primer auction house, Xiao Yan stood at the junction of the street. As he eyed the human flow moving up and down, he slowly sighed. He raised his head and eyed the center position of the city. At that spot was where one of the three largest clans in the Jiama Empire, the Nalan clan, was located. Let's go. Xiao Yan inserted both his hands into his sleeves and softly said. Immediately, his expression calmed and he slowly walked toward the huge clan which once would have been his other home. On the edge of the Jiama Empire and the two other large empires, stood a famed old academy. It released an ancient aura that was filled with great experience. Although the academy did not have an exterior that caused people to be shocked and awestruck, its renowned reputation and deep, incomparable strength caused even the three large empires to have no choice but to be courteous to it. They did not dare to show the slightest disrespect or to provoke it in any way. Within the old academy, there were students gathered from everywhere. In their home territory, where their clans were in charge, their people may be the top talents or geniuses in their subjects' mouths. However, geniuses appeared to be packaged in dozens here. Therefore, the people who possessed training talent that they could be proud of in their hometown were merely people who were barely qualified here. During the entrance ceremony for all the new students, the old man who appeared extremely drowsy as though he was about to step into his coffin had only said two short sentences, regardless of the status you have had in the past, you are all merely the students of the Qian and Academy here and share the same status as each other. If you fight in this academy, I will not care as long as there are no deaths. However, if anyone dares to use their clan's strength to exact revenge, the Jian and Academy will take care of everyone regardless of how many people come. The vast and imposing presence that the old man suddenly emitted caused these short few sentences to be firmly imprinted in all the student's heart. In this place, if you are a dragon, you will coil up, if you are a tiger, you will crouch down. 
On a remote mountain peak in this ancient academy, a young lady wearing a pale green dress stood elegantly by the side of a cliff. The gentle breeze that struck her front blew her black long hair that extended to her waist until it danced slowly in the wind. As the corner of her skirt skimmed by, it faintly revealed the perfect outline of the young lady's curves. The young lady's eyes calmly eyed the distant eastern sky. She was quiet and did not speak, much like a secular lotus that was spotlessly clean. After being silent for a long while, the young lady suddenly opened her mouth. Her ethereal sweet voice caused people's spirits to feel a strange feeling of being washed. Come out. As the young lady's voice fell, a green-colored shadow suddenly and strangely separated from a large tree from behind the young lady. The shadow respectfully eyed the young lady whose back was facing him. With a knee kneeling on the ground, he said respectfully, My lady. The young lady slowly turned around and revealed a side of an exquisite and peerless face. It was actually Sun Er who had entered the Jiannan Academy. My lady, young master Xiao Yan has arrived at the Jiama Empire capital. Chapter 281, Secretly Hiding and Protecting On the lush green mountain peak, the young lady slowly turned her body. She watched the green-colored shadow with one knee on the ground. A long while later, a somewhat gentle smile appeared on her exquisite face. She said softly, it has been over a year. Xiao Yan Gege -E -E finally arrived at that place. TL, Gege -E -E, means older brother, more intimate. Eyeing the gentle pretty face of the young lady, the green-colored shadow had wisely remained silent. He waited for a long while before the sight of the former was once again focused on his body. Only then did he slowly and roughly speak about some of the experiences that Xiao Yan had during this period of time. Standing by the side of the cliff, Sun Er quietly heard the many soul-stirring things that had popped out from the shadow's mouth. When she heard that Xiao Yan was seriously injured after fighting with two Dou Wang, some heartache and surprise flashed across her autumn water, gentle eyes. Snake Spirit Rank Louis Man, Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor The members of the Heaven Snake House have really become increasingly domineering during these few years. Sun Er's long delicate hand gently caught a piece of leaf that had fallen from above her head as Sun Er said indifferently. The words which seemed to lack any waves had some coldness hidden in them. Regardless of whatever reason that Louis Man and the Eight-Winged Black Serpent Emperor had acted, they had nearly caused Xiao Yan to suffer a serious injury and die. That was something true. I will hold them accountable for this matter in the future, but have you clearly investigated the identity of the Dou Huang that is by Xiao Yan Gege side? The green-colored tree leaf was suspended half an inch from Sun Er's palm. She slowly rolled it, at times curling it and at times twisting it. She glanced at the shadow kneeling on the ground and said with slightly curled eyebrows. After an investigation, that person's name is Hai Bo Dong. He was once one of the ten strong in the Jiama Empire and was called Ice Emperor. His strength is around that of a Dou Huang class and is well versed in ice-type Dou Qi. Moreover, he appears to have some deep relationship with the leader of the Primer Clan. Ten years ago, he was sealed by Queen Medusa in the Tager Desert. After which, he had been living in isolation in Desert City until some time earlier when young Master Xiao Yan visited and helped him undo the seal. After which, he has been following by young Master Xiao Yan's side. His motive? I'm still not very clear on. The green-colored shadow respectfully said. Unsure of his motive. The young lady's eyebrows were gently pressed together. She appeared to be somewhat dissatisfied with this perfunctory reply. Regardless of whatever happened, as long as it involved that person, she would immediately turn into a wolf that was protecting its pup, becoming extremely sensitive and picky. She would not allow such a huge and unknown danger to lie low by Xiao Yan's side like a ticking time bomb. I'm sorry, my lady. You should also know that within Xiao Yan's body, there is a spirit of a mysterious strong person. Until this moment, we do not have any information about him. However, he appears to be have a great understanding of us. During the period of time that Ling Shi had followed young master Xiao Yan, he may have hit himself perfectly, but according to the information that Ling Shi had sent over, that mysterious strong person appeared to have discovered his presence while he was secretly protecting Xiao Yan. It is only that the other party did not have any other action. I think he should have seen past Ling Shi's intention. The green-colored shadow bitterly smiled and said. Even Ling Shi's presence was discovered by that person. Hearing this, shock flashed across Sun Er's bright eyes. She softly muttered, what exactly is that person's identity? Even Ling Shi was actually... Ah, if it were not for Xiao Yan Gege -E disliking other people investigating him, I would definitely get to the bottom of that mysterious person's identity. Since he is able to possess such strength I think that he should not have been some unknown person in the past. Although that mysterious person discovered Ling Shi's presence, it was fortunate that he did not inform young master Xiao Yan about it. Therefore, young master Xiao Yan does not know that ever since he left Wuten City, young miss has sent people to secretly protect him. However in this way, he would not be able to sense young miss good, the green-colored shadow smiled and said. However, before he managed to say all he wanted to, the somewhat embarrassed Sun Er shot the leaf on her palm to stop him. Seeing Sun Er's somewhat sleek red exquisite face, the green-colored shadow wisely did not continue to speak. Remember, you must not let Xiao Yan Gege -G -E know about this matter. I don't want him to say that I have sent someone to follow and monitor him. He does not like things like this. The lovely embarrassed sleek red on the pretty face was slowly withdrawn and Sun Er immediately reminded sternly. Yes. 
The green-colored shadow was naturally extremely clear of the kind of little girl thoughts that Sonair had. He immediately nodded respectfully and responded with a, yes. At the same time, his heart lamented slightly. Although the young Miss Face had a smile all the time, the green-colored shadow who understand her character knew that this kind of reserved and restrained smile was sometimes even more difficult for others to approach compared to those people who adopted a cold face. With Sun Air's beauty and shockingly outstanding training talent, there had been an unknown number of outstanding and great men who were obsessed with her during the one year since she had arrived at the Jianan Academy. Although these people could be considered the top strong people even in this Jianan Academy which was filled with talent, there was not a single person who could really converse with her. Ah, it seems that I have forgotten someone, that fellow who was called someone whom the Jianan Academy could only find in a hundred years, could barely be considered a man that young miss could put aside her acting and converse with. However, it seemed that he had only reached at this step. What a pitiful fellow. It is likely he does not have any hope in this lifetime. Recalling the young man who was so shockingly outstanding in the academy, the green-colored shadow shook her head quietly in her heart. It was somewhat pitiful that this otherworldly lotus that the genius was obsessed with would only bloom for the man called Xiao Yan. In the heart of the green-colored shadow, he was clear that as long as Xiao Yan's name was mentioned in front of the young miss, Sun Er, whose character was indifferent until it was somewhat cold would remove the defensive smile that rejected people and really become a woman who was in love. That extremely rarely seen shyness and annoyance was something that those outsiders definitely did not have the luck to see. He is really a guy who causes people to be envious and jealous. I really don't know how he obtained young Miss Hart. It is really unbelievable. That haughty character of the young Miss would actually take fancy to a man. The green-colored shadow sighed and shook his head, unable to understand anything. However, if he were to know that the somebody had accidentally run into the room of little girl Sun Air when he was young and had used the reason for keeping the chi pads warm to touch all of the little girl's body without any shame was what resulted in him inexplicably abducting the ignorant little girl, the shadow would be likely get a heart attack on the spot. That woman called Yunji should be, the leader of the Misty Cloud Sek Yun Yun, right? Uncertain about the shadow's thoughts in front of her, Sun Air, whose heart was randomly imagining things, glanced at the shadow kneeling on the ground and suddenly asked softly. Uh. Hearing this question, the green-colored shadow became slightly sluggish. According to the information he received, he was naturally able to know that the relationship between Xiao Yan and the lady called Yunji was somewhat unnatural. At that moment, he smiled bitterly and nodded. He said, she is indeed the Misty Cloud sex leader, Yun Yun. Although her heart already had the answer, Sun Air still could not help but sigh after it was confirmed. The expression of her face was somewhat interesting. A long while later, she shook her head and said with a bitter smile, Xiao Yan Ge Ge seems to be quite foolish. Aren't these things obvious? When you go to the Misty Cloud sect in the future, I want to see how you handle this complicated relationship. Young miss, that lady seemed to, toward Xiao Yan. The green-colored shadow mumbling voice had not completed his sentence when he realized that the pretty face of the young lady in front of him had became slightly still. Immediately, he hurriedly and wisely swallowed the words that had reached his mouth. You have sensed wrongly. That calm and indifferent voice of the young lady had a faint resentment that could be sensed. Yes, yes. The green-colored shadow wiped his cold sweat and hurriedly nodded. He no longer dared to bring this matter up. Although he knew that the status of the young woman in front of him was extraordinary, she was a woman regardless of how extraordinary she was. For a woman, being jealous, seemed to be a talent that could not be wiped away. Pass a message to Ling Shur. Tell him to secretly protect Xiao Yan Ge Ge when he goes to the Misty Cloud sect. He has killed the first elder of the M.O. clan. Those stubborn old fellows of the Misty Cloud sect would definitely not allow him to leave easily so that they can protect the reputation of the Misty Cloud sect. Sun Er knit her eyebrows together and said. And also pay attention to Hai Bo Dong by his side. I keep feeling that the fellow is difficult to understand. If there is any change in the situation, let Ling Shur. After saying till this point, Sun Er's delicate hand gently cut through the empty air in front of her. A somewhat daunting cold and stern look was contained on her pretty face. Yes. Seeing the situation, the green-colored shadow respectfully nodded his head. That's right. According to what you have said, that seven-colored heaven-swallowing python by Xiao Yan Ge Ge side should be Queen Medusa, right? Sun Air said as her delicate hand pulled aside the black hair on her forehead. Yes, but the current Queen Medusa seems to have been suppressed by the spirit of the seven-colored heaven-swallowing python. If she wants to control it again, she would have to perhaps wait for another period of time. However, once Queen Medusa controls the seven-colored heaven-swallowing python's body, then she would leap and become a dojong. When that time comes, it would be a little troublesome if she wants to kill Xiao Yan. The green-colored shadow voiced his thoughts. Ugh, I didn't expect that there are all these terrifying bombs placed all over Xiao Yan Ge Ge's side. What a headache. Sun Er helplessly shook her head as she rubbed her clean forehead. She thought for a while before saying, during this period of time, Queen Medusa will not be able to control the seven-colored heaven-swallowing python's body. Once Xiao Yan Ge Ge arrives at the Jianan Academy in the future, let's then think of ways to settle all these problems. Yes. All right. You should leave the Jianan Academy now. Don't stay here too long. If you are discovered, you would get encircled and caught by the rude and unreasonable old headmaster. After giving orders for everything, Sun Air finally waved her hand and reminded. Kuku, that old fellow's strength is very strong. 
If we were to face each other head on, I would be a little inferior. However, if one were to talk about going into hiding, I am still confident. The green-colored shadow smiled and nodded. He once again bowed respectfully towards Sun Air before turning around and leaping away. He actually melted into the tree beside him. The tree shook slightly and immediately became quiet. Eyeing the shadow that had disappeared, Sun Air slowly turned her body around. She watched the cloud that shrouded the cliff. A moment later, she smiled warmly. Her smile was stunning. Xiao Yan Ge Ge. Your improvement in this one year is shocking even to Sun Air. After going to the Misty Cloud sect, you should come to the Jianan Academy. Sun Air is quite lonely here. Chapter 282, Let Me Try On a street that was next to the Nailin clan, Xiao Yan and Haibo Dong separated. Only then did Xiao Yan slowly walk toward the huge compound not far away. As he walked closer to the house which was filled with a majestic and imposing aura, Xiao Yan was stunned to see that the entrance was actually clustered by quite a number of people. Moreover, these people were all wearing the alchemist robes and the few bright silver-colored ripples on their chests proudly revealed their status and tier. Anyone who walked down this street, where people come and go, would throw envious and respectful glances at the group of alchemists who were whispering amongst themselves. In their hearts, alchemy was an occupation which was so elevated that they were like nobility. When faced with this considerably large powered alchemists, the Nalan clan clearly did not dare to easily slight them. Some servants were explaining something to the alchemists waiting at the entrance in a reverent and respectful manner. Only when they discovered that the other party had the qualification to enter did they let them through. Some of the alchemists whose ability had some problem could only be rejected by the smiling-faced servants. Although such an action caused those alchemists that were blocked to feel dissatisfied, when they thought of Nalan clan's strength in the relationship between Nalan Yenran and the Misty Cloud sect, they could only bottle up their unhappiness, dust their sleeves, and leave. After staring at the entrance for a while, Xiao Yan realized that the alchemists who were allowed to enter appeared to be Tier 3 alchemists. On the other hand, the alchemists who were rejected were Tier 2 along with some Tier 1 alchemists who had come to join the fun. Xiao Yan lowered his head and glanced at the Tier 2 alchemist badge on his chest. He helplessly shook his head, lifted his leg and walked toward the main door which was tightly guarded. Pushing through the human crowd, Xiao Yan took a step forward. An old man, who appeared to have the position of the housekeeper, hurriedly came forward. However, when he saw Xiao Yan's young appearance and the Tier 2 alchemist badge on his chest, a disappointment that was somewhat difficult to sense flashed through his muddled old eyes. Although the other party's age had caused him to feel some shock, this tier of Xiao Yan's did not reach the minimum requirement. Although his heart was somewhat disappointed, the old man who had worked as a housekeeper at the Nalan clan for decades would naturally not be foolish enough to display it on his face. Immediately, he revealed a gentle smile and laughed, this little brother. I am the Nalan clan housekeeper. I think that you should be here to try if you can cure our clan's Nanlan Jia old sir, no. Xiao Yan nodded his head. He did not openly speak. His ordinary face, had a different appearance since it was covered by the ice silk dough, felt somewhat icy. Xiao Yan's nearly cold expression caused the old man to be at a loss. This kind of attitude was somewhat different compared to other the alchemists. A moment later, he helplessly said, I'm sorry, little brother. This time around, our requirement is a tier 3 or higher alchemist. You doesn't appear to have reached the requirement, have you? One's tier cannot represent everything. Xiao Yan's voice was suppressed by himself until it was somewhat hoarse. His calm tone caused the old man's eyebrows to knit slightly. Seeing the old man's helpless face, Xiao Yan shook his head. He took out Yufei's recommendation letter from his storage ring and handed it over to the former. Inserting his hands into his sleeves, he said softly, you should avoid erasing the last little chance your old sir has left. The tear of one cannot represent everything. Didn't Pilking Guhi also fail to cure your old sir? Xiao Yan's words caused the old man's face to change slightly. After receiving the recommendation letter and seeing who had recommended this alchemist, he could not help but be somewhat astonished as he lifted his head to take a glance at Xiao Yan. He mused for a long while before clenching his teeth and stepped aside to make way. Facing the guards at the door, he cried out in a low voice, move aside. Sir, please enter. I hope that you will really be able to cure our old sir. If that is the case you will forever be our Nalan clan's friend. The old man bowed slightly towards Xiao Yan. Due to the display of Xiao Yan from before, the old man's words were actually filled with respect. Xiao Yan nodded his head slightly. His face still had the same expressionless manner. Without saying any other nonsense, he slowly walked into the main entrance and disappeared from everyone's stunned sight. After entering the main entrance, a pretty female servant hurriedly walked out from one corner. After which, she gently said a few words to Xiao Yan before leading the way from in front. Xiao Yan followed behind the female servant at a neither fast nor slow pace. His gaze swept over this luxurious mansion. The towering atmosphere of the buildings caused him to secretly nod his head. Not mentioning anything else, this Nalan clan was indeed one of the three large clans of the Jiama Empire. This large wealth was something that the Xiao clan could never compare to. Walking on a small path that was paved by green-colored stone fragments, Xiao Yan's eyes suddenly narrowed slightly. From his senses, numerous hidden gazes and spiritual strengths had shot out from hidden corners as he entered deeper into the interior of the Nalan clan, capturing every action of Xiao Yan into their eyes. 
Xiao Yan carelessly raised his head and his gaze randomly drifted across the roof of a building. There were some dark black shadows hidden in the darkness of the spot. Many sharp arrowheads that were painted black to cover the reflection from the sun were slowly moving within the mansion. Any little sign of trouble would instantly cause them to send out an attack. The defense is really quite tight. Xiao Yan frowned slightly and helplessly shook his head. He raised his head and watched a luxurious large hall that appeared at the end of the small path. His gaze passed through the unlatched door and was able to faintly see that there were quite a number of people standing within it. As he slowly walked into the hall, there were some soft and private whispers that were emitted from within. He gently pushed open the door, the soft whispers in the hall suddenly ceased. After which, numerous gazes were thrown toward the door. When everyone's gazes drifted towards the tier 2 alchemist badge on his chest, they were momentarily stunned. An astonishment immediately flashed across their eyes. Clearly, they all felt that it was strange that a tier 2 alchemist had the qualifications to enter this place. Xiao Yan's gaze swept across the large hall. In the spacious hall, there were 10 plus alchemists wearing the same robes as he did. On their chests, they wore tier 3 alchemist badges. However, these tier 3 alchemists were mostly middle-aged. Among them, there were even two whose heads were completely white. Ignoring those strange gazes, Xiao Yan slowly moved his gaze, finally stopping at a middle-aged man's body which was seated on the leader's seat in the hall. This person did not wear the long robe of an alchemist but seated in an impressive manner. As his tiger-like eyes opened and closed, he had an imposing manner that was not reduced even without anger. Xiao Yan's gaze moved away from the middle-aged man body and finally frowning paused on a beautiful lady's lovely body by the side. This lady was not unfamiliar to Xiao Yan, causing him to slowly exhale in his heart. By the middle-aged man's side, Nailin Yanran wearing a moon robe sat quietly. Her pretty eyes watched Xiao Yan who had just entered and a surprise similarly flashed across her pretty face. As Xiao Yan's gaze stared at the middle-aged man, the latter also placed his gaze on his body. When the middle-aged man saw the young appearance of the former, he was momentarily stunned. He immediately stood up, cupped his hands together and said with a smile to Xiao Yan, This young brother, I am the Nailin Su of the Nailin clan. Nailin Su. Once this name entered his ears, the two hands of Xiao Yan in his sleeve trembled slightly. The corner of his eyes involuntarily twitched as his gaze stared intently at this seemingly heroic middle-aged man. This person was actually Nailin Yanran's father, who was also the man who had nearly become Xiao Yan's father-in-law. Yan Xiao. Slowly suppressing the inexplicable emotions in his heart, Xiao Yan's voice was slightly hoarse as he said, Ye Fei Xiao Jia of the Primer Clan had recommended for me to come and try to see if I could help expel the poison from Grandfather Nailin. Oh, haha, you are recommended by Nisya Fei. Please sit. Hearing this, Nailin Su suddenly nodded his head and laughed. Xiao Yan nodded lightly. He walked to the last spot in front of the numerous strange gazes and then quietly sat down. He naturally knew the meaning behind those strange gazes. What can a mere tier 2 alchemist do when even Pilking Gu he cannot solve the problem? After sitting on the chair, Xiao Yan descended into silence. However, he was still able to clearly sense that Nailin Yanran's gaze seemed to have paused for quite some time on his body. Immediately, he frowned in his heart and silently said, Have I been recognized? How is that possible? Why does this person give me the feeling that he looks familiar? Nailin Yanran's pretty eyes glanced at the black-robed men seated in the corner. Her eyebrows were knit together as she softly muttered. He. I think that everyone here is clear what kind of problem that our Nailin clan is stuck with. My father had been struck by the searing poison, its reputation is renowned for how potent it is. Now, the poison has erupted and he can finally no longer suppress it. Pil King Gu came once before, but he was still unable to do anything. Although he said that a heavenly flame needs to be used to remove the poison from my father's body, it's just that an alchemist who possesses a heavenly flame is far too rare. Trying to find one is really far too difficult. Therefore, we can only try other methods. Everyone here can be considered among the more established alchemist grandmasters in the Jiama Empire and each of you have your unique ability. Therefore, I would like to invite everyone to try and see if you have any other solution. Nailin Su took a look around as he laughed with a somewhat gloomy voice. I will not say any other nonsense. As long as you can help cure my father. You will definitely not be disappointed with the reward. Nailin Su waved his large hand and pointed to a side door. He said, my father is in there. I would like everyone to take turns and give it a try. Hearing the words, the 10 plus alchemist in the large hall exchanged glances with each other. A moment later, an old man with a flowery white head stood up with a smile and took the lead in entering the side room. However, after 10 minutes, he shook his head and walked out. He returned to his seat and spoke to Nailin Su with an awkward smile, I'm sorry, clan head Nailin, that searing poison is really far too stubborn. I have refined over 10 plus antidote pills, but all of them had no effect. Hearing the old man's words, Nailin Su and Nailin Yanran by the side side in disappointment. They exchanged glances with one another, smiled bitterly and shook their heads. Behind the old man, the 10 plus alchemists took turns to enter the side room. However, after over 10 minutes, all of them walked out with embarrassment. Clearly, they did not have the ability to remove the potent poison that even Guhi could do nothing about. As each of the alchemists walked out with embarrassed faces, the disappointment on Nailin Su's and Nailin Yanran's faces also grew increasingly dense. 
When the last alchemist walked out from within, their emotions finally sank slowly. On one side, Nalan Yinran's pretty eyes became slightly red. In the large hall, the 10 plus tier 3 alchemists were no longer as pleased and prideful as before. Their embarrassed old faces remained silent. Following everyone's silence, the atmosphere in the hall also gradually became depressing. A long while later, Nalan Su sighed and forcefully said with a smile, Thank you everyone. It looks like my father's life is fated to have this calamity. Although you have failed, I will still ask the housekeeper to give all of you a great recompense. Hearing these words which were expelling people in disguise, everyone smiled bitterly and shook their heads. They stood up and left. In this kind of atmosphere, they really did not have the face to stay behind for the recompense. Let me try. Those indifferent words were suddenly emitted from the corner of the room, interrupting the silent atmosphere. The young tier 2 alchemist walked out with a calm face. His calm voice caused everyone in the hall to give him a sidelong glance. Chapter 283, Stubborn Bone, Clenching Teeth, Enduring Humiliation Eyeing the young alchemist who slowly walked out from the corner, everyone's expression in the hall became blank. A ridicule immediately surfaced on the few tier 3 alchemists from before who could do nothing. Even a tier 3 alchemist could do nothing. What ability did a tier 2 alchemist like him have? Nalan Su stared at the young man who had walked forward. He turned around and exchanged glances with Nalan Yinran. Each of them saw shock within the other person's eyes. Clearly, the action of this young tier 2 alchemist had fallen out of their expectations. The reason for them not sending him out before was because they gave Yifei face. Honestly speaking, they did not have any expectation for this young alchemist. Although one should not be judged by their appearance, but the other party was after all only a tier 2 alchemist. This kind of level was only at the initial stage of the alchemist's skill. Could they rely on a beginner to expel the searing poison that even Pilking Gu he could do nothing about? This little brother, you. Nalan Su stood up. Although he did not think that the young man in front of him had any hidden ability but out of habit, he still said cautiously, Do you have the confidence to cure my father? Xiao Yin slowly walked to the center of the room. He glanced at Nalan Su and said indifferently, May I ask, does Pil King Gu he have the confidence to cure him? Ah. Uh. Hearing this, Nalan Su became sluggish for a moment. Immediately he shook his head with embarrassment. If Pil King Gu he was able to cure him, why would we need to spend such great effort to seek medical treatment from all over the place? Since even Pilking Gu he doesn't have absolute confidence, then isn't the words that Nalan clan had said to me a little? Xiao Yin hoarse voice carried a little ridicule as he coldly said. Nalan Su opened his mouth slightly. His original intention was to investigate the foundation of the young man in front of him. He did not expect that the other party would give such a sharp response. Immediately, he was somewhat caught off guard and did not know how he ought to respond. Sir has misunderstood father. He is not to go against you. It is just that my grandfather's condition is becoming increasingly worse. We do not have much extra time to waste. Therefore, it is only natural for us to be a little more careful. Please do not take it to heart. During the exchange where Nalan Su became stunned, Nalan Yinran, who was seated beside him, gently pulled Nalan Su's clothes with her hand before quickly smiling calmly and spoke to Xiao Yan. Do you think that the time you have wasted just now is only a little? As his gaze stopped at the pretty lady's body who caused Xiao Yan's fists in his sleeves to tighten involuntarily, his voice was still as calm as an old well. Not only did he not loosen himself because of the other party's beauty, but he also had an extra iciness that was not difficult to sense. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, the expression of the ten plus alchemists in the large hall could not help but become ugly. These words of Xiao Yan undoubtedly meant that they had just wasted the little time Grandfather Nalan had left to live. Immediately, a white-haired old man's face became flush red and he could not help but reprimand, where has this lightweight brat come from? You actually dare to act so presumptuous. What right do you, as a tier 2 alchemist, have to say such things to us? Once the old man's reprimand left his mouth, the surrounding few alchemists also nodded their heads in indignation. Immediately, their gazes stared at the young man, who had his back facing them, with ill will. Seeing the young man in front of her whose expression was as indifferent as a block of ice, Nalan Yenron's eyebrows were slightly pressed together without being noticed. If he really had the ability, she did not mind that he was a little arrogant. However, if he was the kind of person who did not have any real ability yet liked to go around boasting, she would loathe him from the bottom of her heart. From your tone, it seems that you have some confidence of your ability. Nalan Su recovered. He stared at Xiao Yan and said in a deep voice, but you should also know that regardless of how talented you are, the current you is merely a tier 2 alchemist. Nalan Su did not complete saying everything when his voice suddenly stopped. At the same time, the temperature in the large hall was suddenly raised. The tier 3 alchemists who originally wore mocking faces had all opened their mouths slowly at this moment. They were filled with disbelief as they stared intently at the young man in the middle of the hall, where two clusters of green-colored flame were rising from his palms. Beside the leader's seat, Nalan Yenran eyed the green-colored flame that rose on the young man's hand. Her hand slowly covered her red sleek mouth. Shock and unrestrained joy danced within the pair of autumn watery eyes. Everyone should recognize this right. Ignoring the silent atmosphere around him, Xiao Yan lowered his head and eyed the two green-colored flames that were dancing lively on his palm like little spirits as he faintly asked. Heavenly flame. 
As they deeply inhaled a mouthful of somewhat hot air, the 10 plus tier 3 alchemist who had dealt with flames every day instantly recognized the identity of the cluster of green colored flame. Their faces were slowly covered by shock. Numerous amazed and fanatic gazes stared intently at the rising and shrouding green colored flame. Little brother, this, is this a, heavenly flame? The shock gradually withdrew from Nayland Su's eyes. The unrestrained joy on his face was difficult to hide. Now, can all of you stop this pointless nonsense? The calm-faced young man lowered his head, fiddled with the green-colored flame and said with an indifferent tone. Although Xiao Yan's current words were still as rude as before, none of those tier 3 alchemists dared to display their unhappiness and ridicule on their faces. An alchemist who was able to possess a heavenly flame would have a future that was almost limitless in the alchemist world. Even Pilking Gu he had never possessed a heavenly flame. It could be imagined just how rare and precious this thing actually was. If one wanted to possess a heavenly flame, one not only needed good luck but also a huge strength behind him as support. In other words, behind this young looking tier 2 alchemist, there must definitely be a teacher whose strength and power was extremely great. Sir, I will apologize for my father's earlier slight. Please. Standing up, Nailin Yenran bowed to Xiao Yan. Her etiquette was impeccable. Xiao Yan did not reply her. He glanced at Nailin Su by the side who was smiling awkwardly before walking past Nailin Yenran and headed for the side room. Seeing Xia Yan who was walking to the side room, Nailin Su faced the middle of the hall said something with a smile toward the 10 plus alchemists. After which, he waved his hand and beckoned the housekeeper to serve them before quickly following behind Nailin Yenran. Xiao Yan walked closer to the side room. A faint and gentle lamp light shone out. He slowly pushed open the door and the resulting room was extremely large. In the middle of the room, there was a big bed. An old man with a shriveled face was lying on it. Surrounding the bed were a few female servants who were busy with things here and there. When they heard the door opening, their gazes turned over. Immediately, however, they began to once again take care of the old man who had entered an unconscious state. Xiao Yan slowly walked near the bed. His gaze swept across the bed and realized that a large gray-black colored patch was faintly contained on the old man's face. The quiet face that was deep asleep actually had some aura of death. It is indeed very serious. Glancing at the face of the old man who had his feet half in the grave, Xiao Yan said softly. That's right, I'm afraid that the searing poison is something that even a Douhuan would not dare to easily touch. After being able to survive for so many years, my father is already at his limit. Nailin Su, who had closely followed behind Xiao Yan's side and shook his head. He immediately said carefully, little brother, looking at the situation, is there any prospect of him being healed? Beside him, Nailin Yanran nodded slightly. A pair of bright eyes stared intently at the tall, indifferent face of the young man by her side. I do not have any other methods. Therefore, I can only follow the method that Pilking Gu he had spoke about, inserting the heavenly flame into old sir's body and slowly expelling the poison. Xiao Yan shook his head and calmly said. In that case, won't the danger level be very large? Hearing this, Nailin Yanran was somewhat hesitant as she said softly. I don't have even a 50% chance of succeeding. Xiao Yan lazily spoke. He glanced at Nailin Yanran by the side, whose pretty face had changed a little, and coldly laughed, looking at this state of old sir, I think that he won't be able to last more than two days. Do you want to let him die in the torment of the poison or do you want to take the risk and see if he can be saved? You can decide on whatever option you want. As for jokes on whether I have the confidence, it is better not to say them. Xiao Yan's cold laughter contained a hidden ridicule that caused Nailin Yanran to frown slightly. Her pretty face was somewhat ugly. With her status, there was really no one who dared to speak to her in this manner in all these years. Hurry up. I don't have much excess time to waste. Xiao Yan dusted his sleeves and said blandly while ignoring Nailin Yanran's expression. Ah, since it is like this, then we will rely entirely on little brother. If you are really able to cure my father, you will forever be a good friend of our Nailin clan. Nailin Su clenched his teeth and mused for a while before violently nodding his head as he said in a deep voice. Make way. Don't disturb me. Xiao Yan randomly waved his hand and sat by the side of the bed. His right hand was extended slightly and a green-colored flame shrouded it. Instantly, it caused the temperature in the room to soar. Seeing that Xiao Yan was preparing to act, Nailin Su pulled Nailin Yanran and hurriedly took a few steps back. At the same time, they waved away all the female servants in the room. Xiao Yan used one hand to support and lift Nailin Jia up. He randomly glanced at this person who was rumored to be an extremely good friend of his grandfather back then. Although after being eroded by poison for such a long time had caused the old man's already shriveled face to become somewhat inhuman, one could still faintly see some unruliness that was similar to his name. As Xiao Yan's left hand gently patted on Nailin Jia's shoulders, a hidden force convulsed the clothes of the latter's body into powder, revealing a skinny body that was like a skeleton shelf. Eyeing the skinny body, Xiao Yan involuntarily shook his head despite his character. The eyes of Nailin Yanran at the side became somewhat red and moist. A mist that was usually rarely seen lingered in her eyes, causing this lady, whose status was extremely elevated to appear a little pitiful. Xiao Yan slowly extended his middle finger. A wisp of green-colored flame was shrouding the tip of it. He stared at the green-colored flame and calmly said, I am about to begin. 
I have already said, inserting the heavenly flame into old sir's body is an extremely dangerous thing. Therefore, you should all prepare for the worst case scenario. Hearing this, Nalan Yinran's and Nalan Su's expressions changed slightly. However, they could only smile bitterly and nod. Xiao Yin slowly extended his spiritual strength out of his body and wrapped the wisp of green colored flame within it. He did his best to suppress its extremely high temperature and slowly pressed it on Nalan Jie's back. When Xiao Yan's finger pressed on it, the green colored flame let out a puff sound as it entered Nalan Jie's body. The body of the latter, who originally had no feeling of his surroundings, suddenly shivered at this moment. Xiao Yan's finger pressed on Nalan Jie's back. His eyes narrowed as his spiritual strength controlled that wisp of green flame. It swiftly passed through some of the main chi paths and gradually approached those bones of the latter which were covered by the searing poison. With the help of the extension of the spiritual strength, the condition within Nalan Jie's body appeared in Xiao Yan's mind. Xiao Yan sensed the bones that had nearly become jet black and his eyebrows were gradually knit together. The poison had already spread deep into Nalan Jie's body and had far exceeded his expectations. Looks like it is impossible to expel all the poison in one go. I think it is better to choose a simmering flame to remove the poison. Xiao Yan muttered in his heart. After which, his spiritual strength wrapped around the green colored flame and slowly moved closer to the jet black bones that were covered by the poison. When it was closing in, Xiao Yan's spiritual strength also began to gradually relax. The green colored flame's temperature quietly began to rise. As the temperature of the green colored flames rose, a painful feeling gradually surfaced on the originally numb faced Nalan Jie. His shriveled hand was also tightly clenched and the veins on his arm stirred. The green colored flame that was covered by the spiritual strength stopped rising once it reached a certain temperature. Xiao Yan slowly inhaled the somewhat heated air and hesitated for a moment. He then clenched his teeth and controlled the green colored flame until it covered one of the jet black bones. Ah. On the bed, Nalan Jie, who had both his eyes tightly closed, suddenly opened them. He let out a hoarse and intensely painful roar from his mouth. His ferocious and imposing presence woke up as though it was the brief moment of clear consciousness before death. Grandfather. Eyeing the old man who had suddenly opened his eyes and roared, Nalan Yenran and Nalan Su hurriedly shouted. I am helping you expel the poison. If you are able to withstand this intense pain, it should be possible to remove the searing poison. However, if you can't then there is nothing that I can do. Xiao Yan glanced at the perspiration-filled face of Nalan Jie and faintly said. Hearing the voice behind him, Nalan Jie tilted his head around slightly. He eyed that young and indifferent face and his mind was black. Immediately he clenched his teeth and laughed, Little fellow, are you the one who saved me? I didn't say that I can definitely save you. If I am a little absent-minded, you might end up dying in my hands. Haha, this life of mine is originally retrieved from death. Little fellow, you can do as you please. Even if you kill me, no one would dare blame you. The corner of Nalan Jie's mouth twitched, withstanding the intense pain in his body as he laughed in a heroic manner. Grandfather, what nonsense are you saying? At the side, Nalan Yenran let out a slight sigh and scolded involuntarily as she eyed Nalan Jie who had awoken from his comatose state. You damn girl. You actually have the face to come back. During these three years, had you not gone to the Xiao clan to end the marriage agreement back then, would I have become too angry to train, which resulted in the searing poison reducing me to such a state? Nalan Jie angrily stared at Nalan Yenran. Before his furious roar fell, the corner of his mouth, which was twitching, emitted another dry howl. He turned his head around, at the suddenly frowning unfamiliar young stranger and laughed bitterly, little fellow, why all of a sudden? Be quiet. Xiao Yan's icy voice which contained some imperceptible anger caused the three people in the room to become somewhat stunned. Immediately, they helplessly quieted down. Eyeing the cold expressionless young man which was like a cluster of ice, Nalan Yanran secretly let out her tongue. She once again turned around and eyed Nalan Jie's bitter expression. Her heart had some laughter. In all these years, this fellow was the only one who dared to speak in such a manner to the irritable and grumpy old man. As these few people became quiet, the atmosphere in the room secretly became quiet. Ah, how unexpected. Such a young person is actually able to possess a heavenly flame, something that even Grandmaster Gui covets. After the quiet atmosphere continued for a long while, Nalan Su pulled Nalan Yanran and stepped a little back. He eyed the tall back of the young man by the bedside and could not help but tilt his head and whisper to Nalan Yanran. Ah, he is indeed very amazing. Looking at his age, it should be around the same as mine, yet he actually possessed the legendary, heavenly flame. I have heard how terrifying this thing is from Elder Guhi. The last time that they went to the Tager Desert to search for the heavenly flame, they unfortunately still returned empty-handed despite such a huge lineup. From this, it can be seen just how ferocious this thing actually is. Nalan Yenron nodded slightly. An admiration flashed across her pretty eyes. She was originally the top amongst those of the same age. After training at the Misty Cloud sect for so many years, she had never seen a person of the same age who could surpass her. Yet this young man named Yen Xiao was the first person at the same age as her to cause her to feel an admiring emotion. Perhaps this was a kind of approval between outstanding people. Why? Do you feel that he is very good? Nalan Su glanced at his daughter's expression and teasingly said. What nonsense are you saying? He doesn't know how to respect someone at your age. 
Nalan Yenron threw him a disdain look and shook her head somewhat helplessly. Yes, talking about this, it seems that there is not even a month's time left to the three-year agreement between you and that little fellow from the Xiao clan. Nalan Su smiled before withdrawing it suddenly and sighed. Nalan Yenron was quiet. A moment later, she nodded slightly and softly said, There are thirteen days more. It has been three years. You have also become more mature compared to before. Now, you should be able to know just what kind of great humiliation and trouble your emotional and impulsive action had brought to the Xiao clan and Xiao Yan, no. Nalan Su eyed one side of his daughter's smooth and beautiful face and said. Nalan Yenron was quiet. Her delicate hand pulled aside the black hair on her forehead. A long while later, she said softly, I know that my action back then had brought them a lot of trouble. However, I also know that I am not wrong. The three-year agreement is about to arrive. I will be waiting for him. I heard that ever since a year ago, Xiao Yan had left Wuten City. However, according to what I know, before he left, the young man who was once a useless youth had already recovered the training talent he had in the past. Ah, a year later, I wonder just to what extent he has grown to. Nalan Su smiled bitterly and shook his head. He watched the quiet Nalan Yenron by his side. A long while later, he finally said in a soft and deep voice, this time around, it seems that you have really seen wrongly, back then I said, don't look down on the Xiao clan young master who had become a useless person. Before he was 13, his training speed had caused a countless number of people to be shocked. Nalan Yenron's delicate hand drifted onto her black hair on her forehead and remained quiet. A moment later, she calmly said, I will comply with the three-year agreement. If I win, all the things that happened in the past would be written off. If I lose, I, Nalan Yenron, had also said that I will be his slave and let him handle me as he wants to. Nalan Yenron gently bit her red sleek lips. She slowly lifted her pretty face. Her gaze was somewhat blurry. Three years ago, the young man's cold chatter at the Xiao clan's hall once again surfaced in her mind. The river flows thirty years east and thirty years west, don't you dare bully me because I'm poor now. This contract, isn't a contract to release the marriage but rather, I am divorcing you from the Xiao clan. From now on, you, Nalan Yenron, have no relations with the Xiao clan. Three years ago, the young man who carried the name of being a useless person still had a stubborn bone under the pressure of the Misty Cloud sect, this big being. He clenched his teeth, endured the humiliation and waited in solitude, breaking free of the cocoon and transforming into a butterfly. Chapter 284, Expelling the Poison Inside the quiet room, Nalan and her father were talking in hushed tones, occasionally turning their gazes toward the two men by the bed. After some time, their whispers slowly stopped when they saw the sweat rolling off the old man's face and blue veins popping on his arm. The Nalans looked at each other and saw anxiousness and restlessness in each other's eyes. Xiao Yan's face remained calm despite the growing restlessness in the room, his fingers pointed at Nalan Jia's back trembling slightly. The faint green flame was constantly being controlled by his spiritual strength and its high temperature was being used to slowly expel the searing poison that had already invaded the bones. The green flame wrapped itself around the periphery of the pitch black bone. Although it seemed to cling to the surface, upon looking closely one would observe that they were separated by a very small gap. The heavenly flame's temperature was too high, if it were to directly come in contact with Nalan Jia's bones, even if he were a Douang level powerhouse, he would instantaneously receive a severe wound or even die. The blazing high temperature of the flame slowly permeated the pitch black bones, causing smoke to slowly emanate from them. With the continued roasting of the flame, a black mist quietly seeped out of the bones, but before it could escape, it was swiftly surrounded by the green flame and under its terrifying temperature, this searing poison, which could even threaten a Dou Wang, was roasted into nothingness. However, when Xiao Yan used the heavenly flame to incinerate these black-colored mists, he found that some black-colored unknown thing actually slowly adulterated together with the heavenly flame at the moment that the black-colored mist was about to volatilize. Immediately afterwards, they became still within the fire. As the time was spent quietly, the section of the pitch black bone that was wrapped by Xiao Yan's green flame was, with a speed visible to the naked eye, gradually restored to its normal color. On the outside, at this time, Nalan Jia's body had been drenched with sweat. His old face, while twitching uncontrollably, was emitting a slight sound of sucking in cold air from between his teeth. Little, little brother, is it done? Ha! Huh. Nalan Jia's trembling voice came out hoarsely as blue veins on his arm twitched as if they were small snakes. Xiao Yan's forehead was densely covered with sweat. Handling the heavenly flame with such precision for a long time was highly draining and was a large burden on his spiritual strength. He heard Nalan Jia's question and slowly replied in a soft voice, Since you are at the limit of your endurance, we shall stop here for this expelling poison session. The extent that the poison was embedded in your body had far exceeded my expectations. I wanted to expel it in one go, but it seems like that is not going to be possible so we can only choose to slowly take our time. Can the searing poison truly be fully expelled? When Nalan Jia heard his reply, he could not hide the authentic surprise in his voice. Even after having lived for so many years, if given a choice between life and death, everyone will choose the former. Looking at the current progress, totally curing it does not seem to be a problem. Xiao Yan said with an cold voice. Haha, I did not expect little brother to have such skills despite his young age. I really don't know which hidden expert of this world can raise this kind of great disciple. Nalan Jia hurriedly nodded while laughing hoarsely. 
Then we will do as little brother recommends. Oh, by the way, what is little brother's name? Yen Xiao, stop talking, I am withdrawing the heavenly flame. Xiao Yen frowned. He bent his finger slightly and the green colored flame that was shrouded around the bone began to slowly withdraw. Finally, it returned to Xiao Yan's body one wisp at a time. When the last wisp of green colored flame returned to his body, Xiao Yan sighed in relief. He wiped off the cold sweat on his forehead. Suddenly, his face changed slightly, but it was quickly recovered. Pretending that nothing had happened, Xiao Yan glanced at the tip of his finger which had turned black. He pursed up his lips and inserted his hands back into his sleeves without anyone noticing. Little brother Yan Xiao, how is it? Eyeing Xiao Yan who appeared to have stopped expelling the poison, Nailin Su hurriedly took two steps forward and asked. We'll end today's treatment here. With this progress, I think that we would require at least seven days in order to remove all of the poison. Xiao Yan glanced at Nailin Jie, whose face appeared a little better than before, as he voiced his thoughts. Little brother, thank you very much. As long as you are able to cure my father, the Nailin clan will definitely give remunerations that won't be disappointing. Eyeing the slight luster on Nailin Jie's old face, the weight pressing on Nailin Su's heart finally fell. The importance of Nailin Jie to the Nailin clan was similar to the importance M.O. Cheng had to the M.O. clan. Although the Nailin clan would not be brought to its knees if it lost the supporting beam, the distance it had with the other two large clan would definitely be progressively pulled apart. Tomorrow, I will continue to come here. I will take my leave today. Xiao Yan glanced at the color of the sky outside, turned around and spoke to Nailin Jie. Little brother, in order to save some trouble, why don't you come and stay at the Nailin clan's home? Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Nailin Jie hurriedly smiled and said warmly. There's no need for that. I have my own matters to settle. Xiao Yan shook his head indifferently. He ignored the three of them, lifted his leg and walked toward the exit. Ah, since it's like this, girl, go and see our little brother off. Seeing that Xiao Yan left so decisively, Nailin Jie was momentarily at a loss. He immediately helplessly ordered. Okay. Nailin Yanran nodded slightly, at the thin back in front of her before slowly following. As Xiao Yan slowly walked on the small path that was paved by stone fragments, he stared at the front with an expressionless face. It was as though the Nailin clan princess that was following beside him did not exist. Being shoulder to shoulder with Xiao Yan, Nailin Yanran eyes would occasionally glance at the young man who was ignoring her. Her pretty face might have become, but she was somewhat stunned and a little depressed in her heart. Although she was not really concerned, this was still the first time in so many years that she had been disregarded in such a manner. She had originally thought that her character was quite proud. She did not expect that this person in front of her was even more arrogant. However, Nailin Yanran also clearly knew that although this young man in front of her, who was called Yan Xiao, was arrogant, he did indeed have the capital to be so. At such a young age, he was already able to control the terrifying, heavenly flame that even a Do Huang was extremely afraid of. It was sufficient for him to triumph over the generation of similar age to him. Therefore, even Nailin Yanran could not help but feel an admiration at the same time she felt somewhat stifled. Yan Xiao, although I am uncertain how an alchemist banishes poison, but inserting the terrifying, heavenly flame into a person's body should require extremely precise flame controlling ability, right? This controlling ability of yours appear to be much stronger than many tier 3 alchemists that I have seen. Nailin Yanran was finally unable to bear the depressing atmosphere and took the lead to softly inquire. Perhaps. Xiao Yan looked steadily forward, his voice was extremely cold and indifferent. Then why don't you go and take the test for a tier 3 alchemist? Placing one's strength on one's chest for everyone to clearly see. This kind of action. I'm not as foolish as that. Xiao Yan's lazy soft voice contained a ridicule. He tilted his head slightly and glanced at Nailin's chest area that was tightly wrapped by the moon-colored dress. Immediately, he returned the question, aren't you also not wearing a rank badge? Teacher had said that the so-called rank badge is merely a false appearance. Moreover, even I am unsure just exactly what class my strength belongs to. It drifts up and down far too much. Nailin Yanran smiled and said. Drifts up and down far too much. What do you mean? Hearing this, Xiao Yan's heart moved a little as he softly asked without leaving a trace. I'm sorry, I cannot leak some of the secrets of the Misty Cloud sect. Nailin Yanran shook her head in a slightly apologetic manner and did not reveal the reason. Xiao Yan's eyebrows were pressed lightly together before immediately relaxing. He nodded silently as he walked with nicely paced footsteps. The corner of his eyes drifted to Nailin Yanran beside him whose footsteps were quite elegant as she walked. He hesitated a moment. Then his spiritual strength was suddenly slowly extended out of his body and shrouded around her, wanting to test if he could probe her true strength. Although Yao Lao had said that there was something on Nailin Yanran which prevented the probing using spiritual strength, Xiao Yan still wanted to personally confirm it. Xiao Yan's spiritual strength lingered around Nailin Yanran's body. A long while later, he sighed quietly in his heart. From his senses, the surface of her body appeared to be covered by a layer of energy film which completely isolated the probing spiritual strength. After slowly withdrawing his spiritual strength, Xiao Yan's eyebrow suddenly twitched slightly. He turned his head over and eyed Nailin Yanran who was calmly looking at him. His fist under his sleeves tightened slightly as he said in a faint voice, What happened? Mr. Yan Xiao appears to be very concerned about my strength. 
Nalin Yenron stared at Xiao Yan and smiled and said with a deeper meaning, although I am not an alchemist. I was naturally born to be extremely sensitive to spiritual strength. I have long heard that the eldest miss of the Nalin clan is a strong competitor for the next Misty Cloud sect leader. Therefore, my hand became itchy and could not resist wanting to probe. It's really unexpected that I was discovered despite being so careful. You have my admiration. Xiao Yan helplessly shrugged his shoulders and smiled as he said. Cuckoo, is that so? As Nalin Yenron smiled, her pretty eyes stared intently at that ordinary-looking face. For some unknown reason, her heart seemed to have a strange faint feeling. However, she was unable to grasp what exactly this strange feeling was. For the moment, she knit her eyebrows into a little knot. Equals. We've arrived. Nalin Xiaojian need not see me off further. I will go back by myself. Goodbye. As Xiao Yan walked out of the door, he tilted his head toward Nalin Yenron who had her eyebrows knit. He cupped his hands together and shook it toward her. Without waiting for a reply, he walked out of the main door by himself and into the street where people came and went. This fellow is really a very proud, arrogant, and strange person. Staring at the back which was appearing and disappearing in the human flow, Nalin Yenron shook her head slightly and helplessly whispered. Immediately, she turned her body around and entered the Nalin clan's mansion. Chapter 285, Unexpected Surprise, Black Finger Xiao Yan slowly walked past a few streets before stopping outside and in. After which, he entered and climbed to the second story. He walked toward the area outside the quiet room, knocked gently on the door and directly entered. Hai Bo Dong was seated cross-legged on a chair in the spacious room. He had his eyes closed and a faint white-colored cold mist was hovering over his body. As he inhaled and exhaled, the cold mist moved along the gap on his nose and entered his body. With his body being filled with energy, a faint layer of warm jade-like glow seeped out of his old face. He really deserves to be a Dou Huang. Although his age is much older than Nalin Jie, looking at his vitality, he would likely at least be able to live for another 50 years if no accidents happen. If he is lucky enough to break through and become a Dozone, he would likely enter the old monster-like category. Xiao Yan closely closed the door and gently walked into the room. He glanced at the bright and energetic face of Hai Bo Dong. When he compared it with Nalin Jie, whose entire body was shrouded by a deathly aura he could not help but sigh emotionally in his heart. Although the noise that Xiao Yan made was extremely slight, it was undoubtedly as clear as thunder for a strong person like Hai Bo Dong. Immediately, the icy cold air around his body was swiftly absorbed into his body to be stored. Hai Bo Dong then opened his eyes and swiftly looked around the room while carrying a coldness. Only when his gaze shifted over Xiao Yan's body did the cold air finally began to gradually withdraw. At the same time, the sharp and imposing manner surrounding the exterior of his body also quietly returned into his body. He glanced at Xiao Yan's tired face and opened his mouth to ask, Have you settled it? The poison is deeply embedded in Nalin Jie's body. Although I have temporarily eased up the poison, it would at least require seven days in order for the searing poison to be completely removed. Xiao Yan sat on the soft bed and lazily replied. Oh. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head smiled and said with some surprise, looks like the extent of your control over the heavenly flame is quite good. You are actually able to complete such a high difficulty treatment. This method of inserting the heavenly flame into another person's body is something that even most famous alchemist grandmasters don't dare to easily use. Being a Dou Huang, Hai Bo Dong naturally clearly knew just how large a risk one must take when inserting the heavenly flame or any flame into a one's body to expel a poison. I was merely lucky. Xiao Yan shook his head. He knew that most of the credit for him being able to control the green lotus core flame with such familiarity was because he consumed the fire lotus seed some time ago. Xiao Yan removed his shoes and sat cross-legged on the bed. He wiped his tired face, then he extended his palm out of his sleeves and with a frown, eyed his slightly blackened fingertip. After which, his hand slowly formed the training seal and gradually closed his eyes. As he entered the training mode, Xiao Yan's mind swiftly went to where the vortex was. His mind moved slightly and a wisp of green-colored flame spurred out from within the acceptance spirit. He wrapped it with Dou Qi and slowly spiraled it above the vortex. Xiao Yan's mind continued to observe this cluster of green-colored flame that was repeatedly writhing. A long while later, the green-colored flame violently writhed under Xiao Yan's control. The temperature suddenly rose. Following the rise in the temperature, the faint black-colored fog actually appeared out of nowhere in the middle of the flame. What a potent poison. Not only is it able to withstand the temperature of the heavenly flame, but it is also able to quietly merge with it. If it was not for my very high compatibility with the green lotus core flame, I'm afraid that I may not have even sensed it. It really lives up to its reputation of being a potent poison that even a Dou Huang fear. Xiao Yan muttered in his heart as he watched the black-colored fog. I should purify them. Otherwise, if this thing remains in my body, it is a ticking time bomb that may well suddenly explode any time. The result. Xiao Yan mused for a moment, fretting with his mind. The green-colored flame that was wrapped around the black fog began to fluctuate as though it was bubbling. The hot temperature repeatedly rose. While he was expelling the poison for Nalin Jie, Xiao Yan's heavenly flame temperature had only been turned to a moderate degree as he was afraid that he would accidentally incinerate Nalin Jie into ashes. 
Now that he was purifying the poison fog in his own body, he naturally need not be that careful given the extent of his compatibility with the flame. As the green-colored flame's temperature swiftly rose, the clusters of black-colored fog also began to form ripples. However, this searing poison was not an ordinary thing after all. Even under such high temperature, it was still quite firm and did not immediately disappear. Under the grilling at such high temperature, the black-colored fog's size slowly shrunk. In the end, those threads of black-colored fog actually began to merge together into a deep black-colored bead. Slight glows flashed in the interior of the bead as though it contained a surging energy. The strange change of the searing poison caused Xiao Yan to be stunned. He stared blankly at the black-colored bead rolling in the green-colored flame. From the probing of his mind, he could clearly sense that this black-colored bead actually contained a powerful energy within it. What is happening? It's impossible for the searing poison to possess such energy. Xiao Yan doubtfully muttered in his heart. He stared intently at that dark black bead as the temperature of the green-colored flame abruptly soared once again. The exhaustion as a result of the high temperature was something that Xiao Yan's spiritual strength had some difficulty withstanding. As the green-colored flame grilled once again, the black-colored bead finally began to stir. Its surface trembled slightly and threads of black-colored fog began to seep out of the bead's body. After which, it was incinerated by the flame and purified into nothingness. Threads of black-colored fog were repeatedly emitted from the body of the bead. The color of the bead also gradually turned from a darker black color to a lighter black color. Eyeing the bead's color that was slowly changing, Xiao Yan's heart sighed in relief. At the same time he increased the purification speed. When the last thread of black-colored fog rose from the bead's body, the dark black bead had actually turned into a flickering pale white colored glowing small round ball. Winding around the seemingly transparent film on the surface of the bead, one could see rolling waves of rich liquid energy inside. What pure energy? Xiao Yan was stunned as he stared at the small transparent round ball. A long while later, he frowned slightly and muttered in his heart to himself, logically speaking, a poison like the searing poison would definitely not possess such pure energy. Don't tell me, this energy is someone else's. It is Nalan Jiez. The sudden thought caused Xiao Yan's heart to jump. It was a long while later before he calmed down. He mused for a long time and he gradually felt relief. The searing poison had stayed hidden in Nalan Jiez's body for so long. Since it eroded his body, it was plausible that it would also swallow some Do Qi. After this had continued for a long time, it might have ended up storing quite a terrifying amount of it. This might be something that Nalan Jie may be unhappy about but for Xiao Yan, who had accidentally brought the searing poison into his body, it was a windfall from the heavens. According to the degree of purity of this energy, it was possible for Xiao Yan to completely refine and absorb it. Faced with this unexpected windfall, some secret delight surfaced in Xiao Yan's heart after he was momentarily blank. Given his character, it was naturally impossible for him to return this to Nalan Jie. Therefore, this abundant energy was considered as interest and he kept it. As his mind spun, a wisp of green-colored flame agglomerated into a tiny flame needle head. After which, Xiao Yan gently pressed this needle flame onto the transparent bead's body. Immediately, the bead burst apart with a bang. A huge amount of liquid energy that looked a little blue flowed out from it. Just as it was about to scurry in all directions. It was forcefully controlled by Xiao Yan who was already prepared and began to have the energy circulate along the qi path's roots. When this liquid that was filled with energy completed one cycle, the pale blue color in the liquid had already totally been removed. It turned into a pure energy that anyone could absorb. Although this energy was currently already very pure, Xiao Yan still cautiously used the heavenly flame to refine it once more until the latter actually began to faintly show signs of being a little viscous. Only then was he reassured and poured it into the vortex. After this liquid energy entered the vortex, it was swiftly transformed into the same color as the vortex. Then, it began to separate, trembling, and transforming into droplets which were entirely of the same size. They were then tossed into the vortex. Feeling the sense of the vortex being filled, Xiao Yan could not help but quietly shake his head. This energy that had been poured in this time around had actually added nearly 20 plus drops of pure liquid energy into the vortex. According to this kind of efficiency, if he could absorb the same amount of energy for another three times, he would likely leap to a seven-star dosher in less than half a month. It really is worthy of being the energy that was agglomerated in a Dou Wang's body. Just a mere small portion of it actually had such a density. Xiao Yan quietly praised in his heart. After which, he slowly opened his eyes and gently exhaled. Within the room, Hai Bo Dong's gaze watched Xiao Yan intently. When he saw Xiao Yan opening his eyes, he could not help but say with a smile, it seems that you have suddenly become a lot stronger. Although Xiao Yan's change was not too drastic, it was naturally extremely easy for Hai Bo Dong's sensing ability to detect the former's change. Yes. Xiao Yan nodded his head as he lowered his head to see his finger. His face changed involuntarily. He could see that the tip of his middle finger on his right hand was still shrouded by a black-colored circle. What happened? Didn't I completely remove the searing poison? Xiao Yan's face was somewhat ugly as he stared at the fingertip that was black and said in a deep soft voice. What is it? Seeing Xiao Yan's expression, Hai Bo Dong was at a loss. He walked forward. When he saw the black-colored finger, his expression similarly changed. 
With a frown, he said, this is searing poison. How did you get it into your body? I don't know. I did not expect that this thing could actually endure the grilling of my heavenly flame. Dot. Impossible. An ordinary searing poison would definitely not be able to withstand the heavenly flame. As for this transformation now, perhaps it was because the searing poison had stayed hidden in Nalin Jia's body for too long, which had created some sort of unique mutation. Hai Bo Dong frowned tightly. He mused for a long while before he slowly said to Xiao Yan, Can you try and see if there is anything wrong with your body? Xiao Yan nodded his head. His right hand was extended and opened. A green-colored dochi suddenly rose from it and two people's gazes stared intently at the dochi. Under the observation of the two of them, the rising green-colored dochi rolled for a while before some black-colored marks faintly appeared on its surface. TSK TSK, it actually intruded into your dochi. It really is worthy of being called, searing poison, how terrifying. Eyeing those black-colored marks, Haibo Dong involuntarily shook his head and said, How do you feel? There doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Xiao Yan frowned and his face was filled with incomprehension. He rolled his hand slightly. The Dou Qi that was contaminated with the black-colored mark also followed his hand's motion and did not bring any harm to Xiao Yan. Instead, he felt that the strength of the Dou Qi appeared to have become stronger. Ah. Uh, I also don't know what exactly is happening. But looking at the situation now, it seems that the searing poison does not have any intentions of poisoning you. Perhaps, it has already been refined into something you can use. Hai Bo Dong shook his head and said. Xiao Yan pursed up his lips. His gaze intently watched the green-colored Dou Qi that was mixed with some black-colored markings. Following his intent to move, the green-colored Dou Qi abruptly writhed. However, the black-colored markings were completely forced to swarm toward the middle finger of his right hand. From his manner, it appeared that he was trying to force it out. The black-colored markings swarmed into his middle finger. An instant later, his entire finger had actually turned into an incomparably black color. Its deep appearance faintly emitted a quiet glow and was extremely strange. How poisonous! Seeing that Xiao Yan's finger had turned dark black, Hai Bo Dong's expression changed drastically. He cried out involuntarily, didn't you say that you have refined it? Why does it still possess such a potent poison? Xiao Yan's expression also repeatedly changed. How could he have expected that a simple removal of poison would actually end up putting him into this state? It appears to be within my control and does not have any sign of biting me. A long while later, Xiao Yan, who did not sense anything wrong shook his head slightly. He extended his middle finger and suddenly lifted his head to Ai Hai Bo Dong. What do you plan to do? Seeing Xiao Yan's strange expression, Hai Bo Dong hurriedly took a step back. Help me test what kind of effect this thing has. Xiao Yan parted his mouth and smiled. Immediately, without waiting for Hai Bo Dong's reply, his finger abruptly pierced at the ladder. Brat, don't play around. This is the searing poison. Damn. Hai Bo Dong's footsteps retreated repeatedly. He eyed Xiao Yan who had swiftly and abruptly charged over. All he could do was helplessly curse it and extended his hand. A mysterious ice mirror appeared in front of him. Carrying the charging momentum of his body, Xiao Yan pierced his finger at the ice mirror without dodging or pulling back. At the point where the two came into contact, threads of black vapor seeped out from Xiao Yan's finger. The ice mirror, which was sufficient to block a blow from a dadosher, was swiftly corroded and formed a deep hole. Xiao Yan's finger passed through the ice mirror and abruptly moved sideways. The tough mysterious ice mirror was actually cut open. Seeing that Xiao Yan broke open his ice mirror so easily, Hai Bo Dong's expression changed. His body dodged aside and he leaped up onto the crossbeam. After which, he lowered his head and helplessly cried lowly at Xiao Yan, bastard. Can you not randomly play around with this thing? That is, searing poison. Even with my strength, it would be very troublesome if I were tainted with that thing. Xiao Yan smiled at Hai Bo Dong. He then lowered his head to see the strange finger. The emotion in his eyes was somewhat exciting. The destructive strength of the searing poison had far exceeded his expectation. This strange type of attack that had come in a baffling manner caused Xiao Yan to feel some fear in his heart on top of being secretly pleased. Although this black finger's destructive strength was not weak, its original form was something transformed from the searing poison that even Hai Bo Dong was extremely fearful of. This searing poison may currently seem to obey Xiao Yan's orders, but how would he know if this terrifying thing would suddenly erupt in the future? Recalling how even Nailin Jia, who had the strength of a Dou Wang, was turned into that miserable manner by the searing poison, the corner of Xiao Yan's mouth began to shiver slightly. Seeing Xiao Yan's manner, Hai Bo Dong was also clear of the former's fear. He quickly came down but still maintained quite a bit of distance from Xiao Yan. In a comforting tone, he said, you need not be overly worried. I think that the searing poison in your body should have undergone some kind of mutation. Otherwise, such a situation would not appear, but regardless of how it changes, you have the heavenly flame to protect your body. Basically, you will not end up in the same state as Nailin Jie. Haha, <laughs> perhaps you should rejoice. As you stumble around, you actually ended up possessing a kind of extremely strange ability. In the future, this black finger may well cause many people to fall under your hands. Ah, hopefully. Xiao Yan sighed and could only nod with a bitter smile. 
Following his intentions, the black color on the dark black finger gradually subsided. A moment later, it completely returned to its normal color. Chapter 286, To Scour for Treasure At the place where two streets intersected, stood a very large building, which was perpetually shrouded by a faint medicinal pill-like fragrance. Above the towering main door was a plaque with, The Alchemist Association, three ancient-looking flamboyant large words. It twinkled with a pale silver glow that caused the passers-by to involuntarily throw it a respectful gaze. Being the headquarters of the Jiama Empire Alchemist Association, even the emperor would have to be modest and courteous when he came to this place. After all, the people that lived within this building could create a force that was sufficient enough to shake the entire empire. They belonged to the most respected occupation in the entire Dochi continent. At the large door of the Alchemist Association, numerous alchemists who were usually rarely seen were entering with hurried footsteps. Their bodies had different colored alchemist robes which proudly represented their tier. Standing by the large door, Xiao Yan raised his head to look at the extremely majestic and imposing-looking Alchemist Association headquarters. He could not help but praise and shake his head. Such an imposing presence really lived up to its position as the head of the dragon for the alchemists in the Jiama Empire. Are you planning on participating in the Alchemist Grand Meeting? Hai Bo Dong, who stood beside Xiao Yan raised his head and also looked at the Alchemist Association which was even more crowded and lively than usual before tilting his head as he inquired. We'll see. If there is a reward that can move me, I may participate. If there isn't. When Xiao Yan said to this point, he waved his hand. Clearly, if there was no reward that moved him, he would naturally not want to be involved in this troublesome matter. It's up to you. This kind of grand meeting is an event that is indispensable for you alchemists. There are many alchemists from other countries that have also hurried over. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head. He then patted Xiao Yan's shoulders and said, Since it's like this, you should enter by yourself. I wish to go settle some things and meet some old acquaintances. You are going to the Primer Clan, right? Xiao Yan glanced at Hai Bo Dong and laughed. Hai Bo Dong smiled but did not directly reply. He waved his hand at Xiao Yan before turning around and slowly walked along the street on the left side. Eyeing the old back which was slowly absorbed into the human flow, Xiao Yan softly muttered, looks like he has quite a deep relationship with the Primer Clan. After deliberating for a moment, Xiao Yan shook his head slightly. He threw out all these questions within his mind. Regardless of whether Hai Bo Dong had an old relationship with the Primer Clan, it did not have much to do with him. Xiao Yan once again eyed the horizontal signboard that carried an ancient aura before lifting his feet and shoving into the Alchemist Association. The current Xiao Yan still had the ice silk mask covering his face and he wore a tier 2 Alchemist occupational robe. His ordinary manner was very inconspicuous. Stepping into the main entrance of the Alchemist Association, a rich pill fragrance pounced onto his front. The fragrance caused people to involuntarily inhale a breath and with a refreshed feeling they would lift their eyes to check their surroundings. The interior of the Alchemist Association was extremely spacious. It was roughly divided into three areas, the east, south, and west. On the eastern side of the large hall, there were many square counters that were neatly constructed using large amounts of green granite. Some alchemists wearing long robes were seated behind these counters while many different kinds of medicinal ingredients, jade bottles, scrolls, etc., were placed on top of these counters. Looking at the appearance, it seemed to belong to the region for trading and the place to scour for treasure. The southern part of the large hall, on the other hand, had quite a number of cauldrons which were burning. Some alchemists were behind the cauldrons, controlling the flame with serious expressions. Completely surrounding them were some low-tier alchemists. As they pointed out different things to one another, they were softly exchanging their refining experience. The western side of the hall was undoubtedly quieter compared to the other two sides. At the aisle, there were even some guards standing. It appeared that only alchemists who had reached a certain tier had the qualifications to enter. When some low-tier alchemist occasionally passed by, they would throw over a respectful and envious gaze. Standing at the entrance, Xiao Yan watched the large hall which was filled with lively energy. He could not help but watch somewhat stupidly. A long while later, he gradually recovered and shook his head with a bitter smile. Xiao Yan slowly walked into the hall. His gaze wandered all around. After hesitating for a moment, he lifted his leg and headed to the trading and scouring treasure region. With the experience of accidentally scoring the vacuum palm, though skill back at Wuten City, he was extremely interested in scouring for hidden treasure in such a vast dump. After walking into the eastern area, Xiao Yan slowly walked in front of the square counters placed all around. His gaze contained curiosity as he weighed these many rare medicinal ingredients and other things that he had never seen before. Although this place was named as a trading and treasure scouring area, the people who were selling here did not shout out loudly like the shop owners at the marketplaces. All of them sat on their chairs in a laid-back manner. Occasionally, their gaze would glance over at the people standing in front of their counter. If they felt that the other party may have some economic foundation, some of the alchemists who were selling would stand up and converse with them. However, most of them still lazily shrunk back onto their chairs. This kind of laid-back and lazy manner totally did not look like a merchant selling something. Of course, they were not merchants. What they needed was not the gold coins or other treasures that the merchants coveted. Instead, they wanted to exchange their things for other items. If one wanted to obtain the necessary medicinal ingredients or medicinal pill from their hands, one must take out a rare and unique treasures that they were interested in. 
During Xiao Yan's slow walk, Xiao Yan was able to feast his eyes on the many different kind of rare and unique medicinal ingredients and medicinal pills. Among the medicinal ingredients, he even saw a few of the medicinal ingredients needed to refine the spiritual recovery purple pill. Being driven by curiosity, he went forward and inquired. It was unexpected that the old man selling merely glanced at him and indifferently mentioned a tier 4 medicinal pill. Therefore, Xiao Yan could only helplessly withdraw. Although those medicinal ingredients were indeed very rare, it was obviously impossible for Xiao Yan to take out a tier 4 medicinal pill to exchange for them. In any case, he would not need to be overly concerned about the issue of the medicinal ingredients. After he went back, he would tell Hai Bo Dong and let him think of a solution. As Xiao Yan slowly walked around this area of boundless treasures, he looked left and right and had made quite good gains in knowledge. The most popular spot in the scouring treasure area was undoubtedly where a somewhat old man took out a kind of pink-colored flame seed. The fire seed was contained in a large transparent jade bottle. It writhed slightly and emitted some peach scent. This kind of flame was named Peach Blossom Flame. It only existed within a rank 5 with affinity magic beast, Kuei Wood Beast's body, which was quite rare. It was of similar grade when compared to the Amethyst Winged Lion's purple flame but it was much more docile and thus, also easier to tame it. Of course the flame's temperature and its destructive power was naturally weaker than the purple flame. Even if this was the case, the Peach Blossom Flame, Flame Seed also caused many alchemists in the scouring treasure area to covet it. Some of those who had some economic foundation would step forward one after another to inquire. However, the price that the old men wanted seemed to be very high. Therefore, until now, no one had successfully managed to obtain the bottle of Peach Blossom Flame. Standing in the crowd, Xiao Yan stroked his chin. He eyed the Peach Blossom Flame Seed on the counter. He frowned and mused for a moment before deciding to give up the thing. Currently, this kind of flame did not have much use for Xiao Yan, who possessed both the Heavenly Flame and the Purple Flame. Therefore, he didn't need to pay such a high price to obtain something he didn't need. After musing in this manner, Xiao Yan dispelled the thought of exchanging for it. He stood outside and merely watched the fun. After many people had successively failed to trade, many people knew their limits and chose to give up. However, they did not immediately leave. Instead, they still stood on the spot and eyed that enchanting and blooming pink-colored flame. Seeing those people's comical expressions, Xiao Yan was a little dumbfounded as he smiled involuntarily and shook his head. He was about to turn around to leave when a silver-colored shadow suddenly shoved out of the crowd. Under the full view of everyone, she hurried to the side of the rock counter. Her pretty eyes shone brightly as she stared at the pink-colored flame. It's her. Eyeing the lady who wore the silver-colored dress, Xiao Yan was momentarily blank as he said softly, is she also here to participate in the alchemist grand meeting? The silver-robed lady that had shoved her way out of the crowd was shockingly the lady called Shue Mei whom Xiao Yan had met back at Black Rock City. She was also the personal disciple of Frank, the branch chairman of the Black Rock City's Alchemist Association branch. This woman who was usually a little icy appeared to have a great liking for this pink-colored flame. She held the transparent jade bottle with both hands. Her manner, which suggested she liked it too much to put it down, caused Xiao Yan to helplessly shake his head. This foolish woman. By revealing such a manner now, was she not obviously asking the other party to open his mouth and ask for an exorbitant price? Indeed, when he saw Shui Mei's manner, a smile was pulled onto the old man's face. His voice was indifferent as he said, Miss, do you want to exchange for this peach blossom flame, flame seed? Yes, what do you want? Shui Mei nodded her head and randomly asked. A medicinal formula for a tier 4 medicinal pill that has clear spiritual traces. The old man said with a smile. Black. Hearing the old man's words, Xiao Yan could not help but shake his head and curse quietly in his heart. Just a medicinal formula for a tier 4 medicinal pill was even rarer than this peach blossom flame, much less the request for the spiritual trace on the medicinal formula to be clear. It should be known that every medicinal formula for any medicinal pill was written using one's spiritual strength. Each time it was read once, the spiritual trace within it would fade. Basically, a scroll of medicinal formula could only be read about up to five times before it would gradually become blurry. When one read it at such an instance, one would have to use his own ability to try and figure out some vague portions. In this way, it would undoubtedly waste a lot of time and effort. TL, the black, is the incomplete word, meaning an unscrupulous merchant. The making of a medicinal formula scroll required at least a tier 4 alchemist strength. Moreover, the chances of failure were extremely high. Therefore medicinal formulas for medicinal pills were not simply randomly recorded by just holding a paper and pen as one would imagine. Some of the things that related to the flame temperature, the richness that the ingredients must be refined to, the response from the mixing of different ingredients etc. were extremely complicated like chemistry formula. If they were to be written on a paper, it would cause anyone to have blurry sight and a giddy head. Therefore, these medicinal formulas all use spiritual strength to be composed. As long as someone obtained the medicinal formula, one would only need to use his spiritual strength to scan over it in order to deeply imprint all the necessary things from this medicinal formula into his mind, just like a brand. Hearing the request of the old man, Shue Mei's face obviously changed. Clearly, the other party's request placed her in a difficult situation. However, she appeared to be poor at something like bargaining. Adding this to the overly great liking for the pink-colored flame, she actually nodded her head in front of Xiao Yan's stunned eyes after musing for a moment. This foolish woman. 
She is actually willing to take out a tear for medicinal formula. Ah, that Frank would likely be so distressed that he would die. Xiao Yan smiled bitterly and shook his head. He suckled his tongue at the degree of this lady's generosity. Seeing that Xue Mei nodded her head so easily, the old man was also at a loss. He immediately asked half-believingly, you agreed. Xue Mei did not say any more nonsense. She drew out a scroll from her storage ring and threw it at the old man. After which, she held the transparent jade bottle with both hands as though this had already become hers. The old man scrambled to receive the scroll. He swiftly inspected it and then used his spiritual strength to quickly probe into it. A joy immediately surfaced on the old man's face. Seeing the expression of the two of them, Xiao Yin sighed and shook his head. He glanced at Xue Mei who was hugging the peach blossom flame seed, loving it too much to put it down. Xiao Yin skimmed his lips. He did not have any intention of going over to greet her. Instead, he turned around and headed to the outside of the scouring treasure area. Before he was about to leave the scouring treasure area, Xiao Yan's footsteps suddenly stopped at a corner that was close to the door. He tilted his head and eyed a somewhat tattered rock counter by the corner. He frowned slightly, hesitated for a moment and slowly walked over. Behind the rock counter was a skinny man whose appearance was a little wretched. Due to the medicinal ingredients that were displayed being not too rare, there were very few people who had come over to examine them. Therefore, his face had some bitterness. When he saw Xiao Yan slowly walking over, he was a little blank. His eyes became much brighter when his eyes drifted over to the Tier 2 Alchemist badge on Xiao Yan's chest. He hurriedly stood up and eyed Xiao Yan fawningly. Sir, what do you need? Seeing Xiao Yan stopping in front of the rock counter, the man hurriedly asked. Xiao Yan glanced at the man in front of him and asked with a smile, Are you still a trainee alchemist? Having his ins and outs being seen through, the man nodded his head with embarrassment. He was somewhat envious as he eyed Xiao Yan's young face. With a bitter smile, he said, Yes. My talent for refining medicine isn't very good. After training for so many years, I am still at the alchemist trainee stage. Xiao Yan carelessly smiled. As he eyed this man whose age appeared to be considered middle-aged, Xiao Yan felt somewhat touched in his heart. With the support of Yao Lao, he had an extremely smooth time on the alchemist path. He had almost never met any major setbacks. With the experience from his predecessor, he had taken a lot less detours. Now that he had seen this person in front of him, Xiao Yan finally understood that advancing as an alchemist was not as easy as he had imagined. Clearly sensing the man's envious gaze, Xiao Yan's heart rejoiced and sighed. He lowered his head and swept across the rock counter. Some of the medicinal ingredients that were stored in the jade bottles were even a little wilted. They naturally could not satisfy Xiao Yan's discerning eyes. Therefore, he automatically omitted them. His hand slowly moved along the things on the rock counter one at a time. Finally, under the somewhat disappointed gaze of the skinny man, it paused above a piece of black-colored broken jade that looked extremely unattractive. Chapter 287 The Benefits of the Champion Xiao Yan's gaze stared lazily at this black-colored broken jade piece. He randomly held it in his hand. The jade piece that entered his hand was not smooth. Instead, it was covered with tiny granules and appeared as if the material was not very good. Moreover, there were some faint crack lines on the jade piece. Between the gaps there were even some soil stains. As he played with the jade piece, Xiao Yan's eyebrows were knit together. From his senses, he appeared to feel that this thing was somewhat strange. However, he was unable to say where it was strange. His spiritual strength explored around it, but found no activity nor did he receive any information. Don't tell me that I have sensed wrongly. Xiao Yan uncertainly muttered in his heart. His finger slowly cut across the jade piece. He wanted to put it down, yet his palm could not throw it aside. A long while later, he helplessly shook his head and eyed the man who was staring at him anxiously. His hand randomly chose a few medicinal ingredients that looked barely acceptable. After which, he waved at the young man, smiled and asked, Do you want to exchange for items or sell them? Grandmaster, I want to exchange them for a tier 3 medicinal pill. Hearing this, the young man's spirit rose. Immediately, he smiled awkwardly as he spoke. He knew in his heart that these medicinal ingredients did not appear to be worth a tier 3 medicinal pill. Xiao Yan indifferently glanced at him. He placed the things in his hands into the storage ring. After which, he easily took out a bottle which only had three energy recovery pills. He tossed it to the man and said, These are tier 3 medicinal pills, energy recovery pill. It can swiftly recover dou chi that has been depleted. As it belonged to the more common consumption type medicinal pill, I will give you three of them. The man scrambled to receive the bottle. A joy that was difficult to hide appeared on his face. Three energy recovery pills. If one were to discuss about its price, it would not be lower than 40,000 gold coins. Counting in this manner, he had profited by a lot. Immediately, he hurriedly bent his body towards Xiao Yan who was already walking off and bowed. Xiao Yan left the counter in this area and headed out of the eastern area. His finger rubbed on the storage ring and the piece of black-colored broken jade piece once again appeared in his palm. He frowned and played with it in his hand. A moment later, he still had no clue and could only sigh disappointedly as he held it. Standing in the middle of the hall, Xiao Yan was at a loss as he looked around him. 
He mused for a moment before pulling over a delicate and pretty lady who appeared to be a female servant and softly inquired about the position of the head of the Alchemist Association branch at Black Rock City. Although this female servant, who appeared to be busy with something, was somewhat angry at being suddenly stopped, her pretty face immediately revealed some respect when she saw the Tier 2 Alchemist badge on Xiao Yan's chest. Her delicate finger pointed at the western area where the human flow was extremely low. With a gentle voice, she said, that place is the area where the heads of the various Alchemist Association branches in the Jiama Empire is at. However, only Alchemist Tier 3 and above have the qualification to enter. Haha, thank you very much. Xiao Yan said his thanks, lifted his feet and walked toward the quiet western area. When he was about to enter, he was unsurprisingly blocked by the two guards at the entrance. May I trouble you to help me inform Grandmasters Frank or Ao Tuo from Black Rock City that Xiao Yan has come to see them. Eyeing the two icy expressions of the guards, Xiao Yan said with a smile. The two guards' eyes glanced at the Tier 2 Alchemist badge on Xiao Yan's chest and then swept across the young face. Their eyes revealed quite a bit of shock. Becoming a Tier 2 Alchemist at such a young age was something that was really rarely seen. Immediately, the coldness on their faces melted a little. They nodded slightly and after asking him to wait, one of them stepped back and swiftly climbed up some stairs. Xiao Yan inserted his hands into his sleeves as he stood at the entrance. His eyes were closed as he quietly waited. Not long after the guard climbed up the stairs, a wave of hurried footsteps swiftly sounded. A moment later, an old figure was first to appear in Xiao Yan's sight. A joy covered his face. The old man quickly came to the entrance. His gaze swept around but did not see the person that he wanted to meet. The smile on his face stiffened as he frowned. He faced the guard beside him and softly reproved, where is he? Don't tell me that he was ousted by you people. Grandmaster AO2. Hearing the old man reprove, Xiao Yan smiled and cried out. You. Hearing the somewhat familiar voice, AO2 was at a loss. His gaze doubtfully eyed this young stranger in front of him. A long while later, he finally said in a stunned voice, Xiao Yan. Why have you turned yourself into this manner? Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. He softly said to Ao Tua, I will tell you later. There are many eyes looking around here. Ah, follow me in. Hearing this, Ao Tua took the hint and nodded. He turned his head and fiercely said to the two guards, the both of you heard nothing. Do you understand? Seeing Ao Tuo's fierce and vicious manner, the two cold-faced guards bitterly smiled. Immediately, they wisely nodded their heads. After being a guard for so many years, they naturally knew what was taboo. This action of Ao Tuo caused Xiao Yan to nod his head slightly. Ao Tuo was indeed someone who could become the deputy chairman of the Alchemist Association branch at Black Rock City. When he did something, he ensured that it was watertight. Following behind Ao Do, Xiao Yan slowly walked up the stairs. Only when the human flow around them became scarce did Ao Tuo softly ask, Xiao Yan, why did you turn yourself into this manner? Don't tell me that you have offended someone. Tell me about it. In this Jiama Empire sacred city, the words from me, Ao Tuo, do have some weight. Hee hee, thank you Grandmaster Ao Tuo. It's just some private matter. I don't want someone to recognize my identity. Xiao Yan shook his head and rejected Ao Tuo's good intention. So it's like this. Then it's up to you. Hearing Xiao Yan's intention to reject, Ao Tuo did not insist. His old and sharp gaze slowly swept across Xiao Yan. A while later, his voice had a shock that could not be covered, what a great little fellow. After not seeing you for a year, your strength has actually soared, the current you should at least have the strength of a five-star dosher, right? I was merely lucky. Xiao Yan shook his head and smiled. TSK TSK, what a great little boy. This kind of talent really stuns everyone. I wonder which old fellow had the luck to find such a good student. Ao Tua said as he praised unceasingly. His face was filled with envy. Xiao Yan smiled, but did not chip in on this topic. His footsteps moved at a comfortable pace as he moved in parallel to Ao Tua. TL, huge thing in China to move parallel to someone. We've arrived. Their footsteps walked past a few luxurious large rooms and finally stopped outside of a spacious room. When Ao Tua heard the scolding voice emitted from inside, he smiled and said to Xiao Yan, this is that old fellow Frank reprimanding that girl Shui Mei. That girl actually used his tier 4 medicinal formula to exchange for a peach blossom flame seed. It pained him to death. Hearing this, Xiao Yan was dumbfounded as he involuntarily laughed. He had already knew that once Shui Mei returned, she would definitely receive a huge scolding. A tier 4 medicinal formula was not an ordinary thing. Xiao Yan stepped into this spacious room. His gaze swept across it and finally stopped at the middle of the room. There, Frank, who was wearing an alchemist's long robe, was sending his saliva flying everywhere. His old face was green as he furiously slammed the table. In front of him, Shui Mei's hands were still holding the Lotus Blossom Flame Seed, while she remained silent and allowed Frank to scold angrily. At the other corner of the table, a lady wearing a red-colored clothes was gloatingly watching Shui Mei who was being scolded. When she heard the door opening, she swiftly shifted her gaze over. Her sight swept across Xiao Yan's body behind Ao Tuo. Immediately, she murmured with the corner of her mouth and said, Teacher, is this the person who requested for you to personally go down to receive him? What a large face he has. 
Hearing her voice, Frank, who was giving a big reprimand immediately paused. His gaze turned to Xiao Yan and said with surprise, Old Ao, who is this? Seeing his manner, they were apparently ignorant of who was coming up when the guard had informed them. Seeing the numerous surprised gazes, Xiao Yan touched at the area around his neck and moved. A moment later, he pulled down the mask, revealing his delicate and handsome face which had a fair complexion. Grandmaster Frank. After not seeing you for a year, you are becoming stronger in your old age. Xiao Yan returned the eye silk dough into his storage ring and said with a smile to Frank. Xiao Yan. It is actually you, little fellow. I thought you wouldn't be coming. Eyeing the face that had a diminished tenderness compared to a year ago, Frank was stunned before he immediately said with great joy. Xiao Yan smiled and slowly walked forward. He eyed Xue Mei, who appeared glamorous and moving in her silver-colored dress. She had also turned her curious gaze over to him. As their eyes met, they courteously smiled at each other. Grandmaster Frank, this kind of peach blossom flame may not be considered a strong flame, but it is undoubtedly much stronger than an ordinary flame that was catalyzed from Dou Qi. Moreover, this kind of flame is less frantic compared to other flames, being finer and smoother instead. It is quite suitable to be used to refine medicinal pills. Although a tier 4 medicinal formula is extremely valuable, Grandmaster must have already read it. With your ability, you should be able to prepare another copy if you spend some time. Xiao Yan smiled and said to Frank as he eyed the pink-colored flame seed in Xue Mei's hand. Ah, this is the only thing that I can do. But without at least half a year, it is impossible to prepare another tier 4 medicinal formula again. It is too troublesome to create that thing. Frank helplessly shook his head and finally ceased his scolding. Seeing that her teacher had stopped reprimanding her, Xue Mei also sighed in relief. She faced Xiao Yan and gratefully smiled. Her icy pretty face appeared even more moving. You actually interceded on Xue Mei's behalf. Have you taken a fancy to her? Being the enemy of Xue Mei, Lin Fei naturally was not happy to see her escape like this. She hurriedly leaped forward. Her hands held her waist as she stared at Xiao Yan's delicate and handsome face. Her heart inexplicable muttered quietly to herself, why does this guy look even better than before? Xiao Yan was not overly concerned about Lin Fei who was like a female cat. His gaze stared at her delicate and pretty face until her face could not help but be flooded with some scarlet color. Only then did he laugh loudly and turn his gaze aside, leaving Lin Fei to stand on the same spot with her crimson face as she angrily stomped her little feet. Cuckoo, Xiao Yan. The reason for your coming to the Jiama scared city should be because of the alchemist grand meeting, right? Pulling Lin Fei aside, Ao Tua sat on a chair and laughed. Hearing these words of Ao Tua, the eyes of Frank at the side also brightened. He hurriedly turned his gaze towards Xiao Yan. He naturally knew what kind of outstanding refining talent that this little fellow possessed. If he wanted to participate in the alchemist grand meeting, he would be a popular choice of becoming the champion. Xiao Yan smiled and gently tapped his finger on the table. He smiled and said, what benefits do I have for participating in this grand meeting? Don't tell me that it is only to compete for fame. I am not really interested in that. Ah. Uh. Hearing this, Ao Tua and Frank were blank. They said in a stunned voice, if you are able to stand out in the alchemist grand meeting, your future will be really smooth. When that time comes, an unknown number of strong strengths would invite you to join them, and your reputation and status in the Jiama Empire would swiftly be raised. You should know that Pilking Guhi came to fame in such a manner back then. I'm sorry. I don't like to join and rely on any strength. Xiao Yan shook his head and stretched his lazy waist. He said with a smile, therefore, please tell me what kind of substantial benefits there are. Hey, aren't you a little too realistic? In the corner, Lin Fei knit her eyebrows and said annoyingly when she heard Xiao Yan being so forthright. Xiao Yan waved his hand and ignored her. Ah, you little fellow, really won't act until you have identified your target. Ao Tua smiled bitterly and exchanged glances with Frank. He helplessly shook his head and slowly said, according to the rules, each season's alchemist grand meeting champion will become an honorary elder of the alchemist association and enjoy the same welfare and authority as other elders of similar grade. At that time, you would be able to obtain the help within your authority at any alchemist association branch in the Jiama Empire. Additionally, you will be able to have priority in exchanging for the rare medicinal ingredients in the association's warehouse. Oh right, in the entire of the Jiama Empire, the number of people who have the qualification to enjoy such a treatment would not exceed 15. As long as you become the Alchemist Association Honorary Elder, any strength would think carefully before touching you. Remember, this is any strength, including the royalty and the Misty Cloud sect. Our Alchemist Association has the qualification to say this. Xiao Yan's finger that was tapping the table's surface suddenly paused. He pursed up his lips and the glow in his eyes flickered. After Ao Tua had set up to this point, Xiao Yan's heart had gradually felt a little moved. He knew that he would sooner or later stand opposing to the Misty Cloud sect. At such a time, if he had the support of this strength, which could cause the Misty Cloud sect to think twice, it would naturally help him save a lot of trouble. Seeing that Xiao Yan was obviously somewhat interested, Ao Tua sighed slightly in his heart. He smiled and threw the last temptation, additionally, the reward for the champion this season would be a medicinal formula for a tier 6 medicinal pill. A medicinal formula for a tier 6 medicinal pill. Xiao Yan's eyes shrunk slightly. He slowly inhaled a breath of cold air. 
The price of a medicinal formula of this tier would not lose to that of a D-class dough technique. What kind of medicinal formula? What use does it have? Xiao Yan cautiously inquired. Although a tier 6 medicinal formula was rare, it was also necessary to consider the effect of the medicinal pill. Take the breaking adversity pill of Hai Bo Dong the last time. It belonged to a slightly unorthodox medicinal formula and its value is at most similar to a tier 5 medicinal formula. Thawing spirit pill, a kind of medicinal pill that can let the spirit and the physical body merge together. Its medicinal effect is a little unorthodox, but for a spiritual body, it is a perfect, saint-like medicine. Not only would it cause the spirit to swiftly recover, but it is also able to completely repair all the damage that the spirit has received. Spiritual body. Recovering spiritual strength. Xiao Yan was extremely sensitive as he grasped these two key phrases. His heart gradually jumped intensely. Brat, get your hands on the medicinal formula for this, thawing spirit pill, and I will not kill you in the future. Just as Xiao Yan was moved by these two ample condition, his hands, which were in the sleeves, suddenly became cold. A weak spiritual message that carried some enchanting taste was transmitted into his mind. The sudden appearance of the enchanting voice caused Xiao Yan to abruptly tighten his fists in his sleeves. A cool air swiftly shrouded his chest, causing his entire body to become icy cold. He recognized the owner of the voice. It was shockingly from Queen Medusa who was hidden within the body of the heaven-swallowing python. Chapter 288, Participate The weak, enchanting voice resounded within Xiao Yan's mind, causing his body to feel an icy chill. The hand in his sleeves trembled slightly without being noticed. Xiao Yan slowly let out a breath and did his best to prevent the startled expression from surfacing on his face. He lowered his head slightly. A long while later, he gradually calmed down and calmly asked in his heart, You want the medicinal formula? After the words were thought, however, all remained quiet. Queen Medusa did not give any response. Xiao Yan slowly frowned. He once again shouted a couple of times in his heart. However, it was like a rock sinking into the ocean. After trying like this for a few times, he could only choose to give up. His fingers curled and flicked on the table surface as a thought began to rotate in his heart. The effect of the thawing spirit pill was to let the spirit and the physical body merge together. The reason for Queen Medusa to be so concerned was naturally because of her and the heaven-swallowing python. This was something Xiao Yan was clear of. However, if Queen Medusa was really allowed to obtain the thawing spirit pill, wouldn't she be able to control the heaven-swallowing python's body? When that time comes, perhaps only with Yao Lao protecting him could Xiao Yan have some chance of escaping from a Dozone class legendary strong person. Although she said that she would not kill him, Xiao Yan still did not quite believe her. However, if Xiao Yan did not comply with Queen Medusa's request, his relationship with her may well grow even worse. During the initial period of time, the heaven-swallowing python may be able to suppress Queen Medusa but Xiao Yan did not think that it could suppress her forever. Once Queen Medusa appears again in the future, Xiao Yan's situation would really be extremely terrible. Should he agree or disagree? Xiao Yan pursed up his lips as his finger rubbed his forehead in distress. He mused for a long while before his finger abruptly tapped on the table surface. He raised his head and eyed Ao Tua in front of him. With a sigh, he said, All right. I'll participate. Regardless of what happened, he could only get his hands on the medicinal formula first. Once he had the medicinal formula, the next step was naturally to refine the medicinal pill. This refining route had to completely rely on Xiao Yan. Therefore, Xiao Yan would have the capital to converse with Queen Medusa when the time comes. Xiao Yan might be able to gain some conditions from Queen Medusa that would be beneficial to him by using this point of him refining the pill. Honestly speaking, Xiao Yan did not want to offend this person who will become a strong person of the legendary Do Zone class the moment she wakes up. If he had the chance to reconcile their relationship, he would naturally be extremely willing to take it. Hearing Xiao Yan's agreement, Ao Tua and Frank sighed in relief. Xiao Yan had registered at their branch. If they were to get him to represent the Black Rock City branch when joining the Alchemist Grand Meeting, it would naturally add glory to their branch. In that case, they would gain a huge advancement in performance ranking for the branches next year. But I have a condition. Xiao Yan suddenly said as he faced the two people who were full of smiles. Ah? Uh, why don't you tell us? Hearing this, Ao Tua and Frank were surprised as they immediately said with more smiles. Due to some reason, I will be using the appearance that you have seen earlier to participate in the grand meeting. I would also like to trouble the both of you to change my participant name from the old Xiao Yan to Yan Xiao. Is that possible? Xiao Yan rubbed his face and said with a smile. Hey, if you are participating, just participate. Why are you doing all these shady things? On one side, Ling Fei held her cheeks, rolled her eyes at Xiao Yan and spoke with curled up lips. Xiao Yan smiled, but did not reply to her. He simply stared at Ao Tua and Frank with his eyes, awaiting their answer. Changing your name is a small problem. Ao Tua nodded his head. He eyed Xiao Yan and said, Looks like you appear to have gotten into some trouble. If you have anything that needs our help, you can tell us. If we can help you, we will do our best to. Xiao Yan smiled and shook his head. He did not want to continue to be entangled by this topic. Instead, he said, But you should all not place too much hope on me. The Jiama Empire is so large with an unknown number of people hiding their great skills. 
As someone of the junior generation, I would say that I am lucky if I could barely break into the finals. Back then, when Gugi participated in the grand meeting, he was a tier 4 alchemist. I am merely a tier 2 alchemist. I may be a little shabby if I were to stand up there. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Ao Tua shook his head and said, Back then, when Gugi participated in the alchemist grand meeting, he was nearly 30. How old you are now? Moreover, it is not like we are asking you to fight for first. That spot is really far too difficult. According to what I know, the heaviest few groups this time around are coveting that spot. When that time comes, as long as you enter the top 10, it would naturally cause many people to be shocked. The grand meeting does not have an age limit. Xiao Yan asked in surprise. If there was no age limit, who among the younger generation could compete against some of those old fellows who participated? Kuku, there is naturally a limit. This grand meeting is only open to alchemists below 30 years old. Back then, Guhi barely met the requirement, as he was almost 30. Therefore, he gained quite a bit of advantage in terms of experience. However, that fellow's training talent was indeed rarely seen in alchemists. His flame-controlling ability stunned the whole audience. He was really the most dazzling star during that season's alchemist grand meeting. Frank clicked his tongue and praised. He recalled how Guhi, who was still a young man back then, energetically demonstrated a controlling flame feast that could be called perfect. The Guhi then had become the object of admiration for countless of young ladies' hearts in the Jiama sacred city. Xiao Yan nodded slightly and he asked with a smile, when will the grand meeting begin? Three days later. Three days later, I will come here to find you. I will trouble you two grandmasters to settle the formalities needed to participate in the grand meeting. Yes. During this period of time, we will remain here. If you have any problems, remember to come and find us. Frank nodded and smiled as he reminded. Xiao Yan smiled and stood up. He bowed to the four people in the room. After which, he covered his face with the icy silk mask and directly walked out of the spacious room. Eyeing the back that was gradually disappearing behind the door, Frank sighed, I wonder if that little fellow can force his way into the top 10. In previous seasons, the top 10 participants were all tier 3 alchemist. He seemed to be only a tier 2, right? It looks like it will be difficult, but given his age, he might well be in the limelight in the next alchemist grand meeting. As for this season, it appears to be quite difficult. Those abnormal fellows were all unleashed by their teachers. This season is going to be a fierce competition. Ling Fei played with the wine cup on the table and said, it is indeed a little difficult, but it is not impossible, don't look down on Xiao Yan. Becoming a tier 2 alchemist when he is not even 20. This kind of training talent is something that even Gu He could not compare with back then. I don't think it would be impossible for a miracle to happen with him. Ao Tua said with a faint smile. Hopefully that's so. If some miracle was to happen, then the reputation of our Black Rock City's Alchemist Association branch would naturally also shake the empire. Hee <laughs> hee, we can also ask for an exorbitant sum for our funds next year from the headquarters. Frank laughed. And those rare medicinal ingredients. Ao Do smiled sinisterly. These two old fellows only know to care about the things in their own association. Seeing the sinister smiling manner of the two of them, Lin Fei and Xue Mei helplessly shook their heads and secretly muttered. Xiao Yan walked directly out of the Alchemist Association. He stood on the street and looked in all directions. After musing for a moment, he lifted his feet and headed to the Nalin clan in the middle of the city. Today's poison expelling session had yet to be conducted. After discovering that the searing poison had actually remained in his body yesterday, Xiao Yan wanted to once again confirm just how this thing had actually come to him today. If each time he expelled the poison would result in an increase of the searing poison in his body, then this thing seemed to be a little. Xiao Yan sighed and shook his head. His footsteps walked into the human crowd and gradually disappeared in the human flow. In the waiting room at the Primer Clan's headquarters, many old people whom were usually seldom seen were jittery while seated on their chairs. They ignored the stunned eyes of the younger generation next to them as they threw a respectful gaze at a white-haired old man seated at the leader's seat in the waiting room. Old High, I did not expect to still be able to see you today. Back then, when you left and never returned, I had almost mobilized all our strength but we still failed to find the slightest trace of you. Below the leader's seat, an old man wearing a gorgeous robe said with a somewhat agitated expression. Back then, something happened, so I have lived in isolation for so many years. But it is fortunate that everything is alright now. The old man on the leader's seat was shockingly high Bo Dong who had split up with Xiao Yan a while ago. Currently, he held a warm teacup as he glanced at the agitated old man. The indifferent expression on his face also melted significantly as he explained. Teng Shan, after having not seen you for so many years, you have also become a Do Wang. You have carried this heavy burden of the Primer Clan quite well. In the future, you will continue to be in charge of the Primer Clan. Currently, I also don't wish to intervene too much. I think that the news of my return will soon be known by the old demon in the palace. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head and softly said. Haha, old Hai being able to return is naturally the Primer Clan's greatest joyous event. The old man who was addressed as Ting Shan was naturally the one in charge of the Primer Clan. At the same time, he was also one of the ten strong in the Jiama Empire, Primer Ting Shan. There were quite a number of outstanding people from the younger generation seated within the hall. They were the new blood of the Primer Clan. 
As they eyed the first elder, who usually had a severe face and treated people strictly, reveal such a respectful expression, their faces were completely dull. Their hearts repeatedly guessed the identity of this white-haired old man. Hai Bo Dong had not gone to the Primer Clan for a few decades and this was sufficient to let the younger generation forget his existence. Leo, get your A asterisk guess over here. Primer Ting Shan suddenly turned his body around and sternly cried at the human crowd. Immediately, a panicked-looking human figure hurriedly squeezed his way out. His entire body trembled as he knelt on the ground and said with a quavering voice, First Elder. For offending Old High, I ought to directly chase you out of the clan. However, in consideration of your merits to the clan, I will remove your elder position and assign you to a border city to manage our branch there. For the next three years, you are not allowed to return to the headquarters. Primer Tingshan said with an indifferent tone. Hearing this, Leo's face immediately became the color of dirt. Under the stern voice of Primer Tingshan, silence reigned in the hall. No one dared to interrupt. Only Hai Bo Dong on the leader's seat calmly sipped his tea. Yafei. Turning his gaze toward Yafei. Who was sitting uneasily on a chair in a corner, Primer Tingshan's tone gradually became gentler. He said with a smile, you have done very well this time around. In the future, you will begin to formally manage the auction house at the Primer headquarters. Ah. Thank you very much First Elder. Ignoring the surrounding gazes which had suddenly become heated, Yafei forcefully acted calm as she nodded her head slightly. Her hands under her sleeves, however, were tightly clenched. Old High, haha, I think you should come back to the clan to stay. Your room has always been cleaned. After handing out the punishment and rewards in front of Hai Bo Dong, Primer Ting Shan turned his body around and eyed him fervently. Hai Bo Dong shook his head slightly and said with a smile, I am unable to do so for this short period of time. According to an agreement, I have to follow behind a little fellow and be a bodyguard for a period of time. Bodyguard. Hearing this, the expression on Primer Ting Shan's face changed. In his heart, he muttered somewhat doubtfully, that young man called Xiao Yan is actually able to get old Hai to lower himself and become a bodyguard. How is it possible for him to have such a great capability of power? With the Primer's clan ability to gather intelligence, it was natural that Primer Tingshan knew quite a bit about Xiao Yan's details. However, this was merely restricted to when Xiao Yan resided within Wuten City. Don't underestimate him. This fellow is not someone simple. Even the me back then suffered a loss quite a few times at his hands. This kind of person hides his ability far too deeply. If you can't become friends with him, then you should definitely not make him your enemy. Otherwise, I'm afraid that even I would have difficulty protecting the Primer clan. Hai Bo Dong's expression was extremely serious as he said. Every time the current him recalled the angry Buddha Lotus Flame that Xiao Yan had created back then, he would feel fear rise up in his heart. That strength was really too terrifying. Watching the rarely seen grave expression of Hai Bo Dong, a dismay involuntarily surfaced in the hearts of the elders and Primer Ting Shan in the hall. Knowing the former's character, they naturally knew that there would not be more than five people in the entire of the Jia Ma Empire who had the qualification to be treated in this manner by Hai Bo Dong. However, those people are some old fellows who just would not die despite being so old. However, that young man called Xiao Yan was not even twenty years old. Old Hai, you can be reassured that I will severely instruct the members of our clan not to form grudges with him. Primer Ting Shan nodded his head heavily as he solemnly said. In the face of such a big matter, he did not dare to randomly do as he pleased. Yes. Hai Bo Dong nodded his head and stood up. He said, if it is possible, try your best to give him the help that he needs. In the future, you will rejoice at the decision you have made today. I need to return. If you have any problems, you can get someone to find me. You should already know where I am staying. After saying these words, Hai Bo Dong did not linger any longer. He directly walked out of the hall and slowly disappeared from everyone's sight. Who? Eyeing Hai Bo Dong who had disappeared, Primer Ting Shan sighed in relief. His stern gaze swept around the hall before saying deeply, All of you have clearly heard Old Hai earlier. You better not go and provoke that young man called Xiao Yan. Otherwise, Lei O is the precedence. Everyone in the hall hurriedly nodded. Watching Primer Ting Shan's grave face, Yafei pursed up her red lips. Her heart shook as she smiled bitterly and muttered, who would have expected that the young man who was called a cripple three years ago is currently being feared to such an extent by one of the three large clans in the empire, the Primer clan. Nalan Yinran, you really have made a grave mistake. Chapter 289, Lu Ling In the spacious room, Xiao Yan was frowning slightly as he eyed the spot where his finger touched Nalan Jie's back. With his previous experience, he could clearly sense the flame was doped with some unknown things which were in turn absorbed into his body the instant the green-colored flame was withdrawn. A mutation of the searing poison is indeed scary. Even with my current flame controlling ability, I am unable to completely incinerate it. Ugh, it is likely that only Yao Lao's bone chilling flame can completely remove it. Xiao Yan slowly removed his finger, shook his head, and sighed softly in his heart. We will stop here for this poison removing session. After a couple more times, I think that the poison in your body will be completely removed. Xiao Yan retracted his finger into his sleeves, then eyed Nailin Jie, whose expression was much improved since the last time, and said, Thank you very much, little brother Yan Xiao. I am able to sense that the searing poison in my body is gradually decreasing. 
Nalin Jia wiped off the perspiration on his forehead. The intense pain each time the poison was expelled was very exhausting, similar to him having gone through a battle with a strong person of the same class. He turned his head around and thanked Xiao Yan, whose face showed slight exhaustion. It is just that each of us are holding what the other requires. Xiao Yan indifferently shook his head. His mind scanned the interior of his body a couple of times. He knit his eyebrows even deeper as he realized that the searing poison appeared to have become even more dense in his body after this poison removing session. Ah, this thing. I wonder if it is a blessing or trouble. It would be good if teacher was here. With the experience of his elderly self, I would not need to blindly worry about such matters. Xiao Yan softly sighed and could only speak with a bitter smile in his heart. Haha, <laughs> little brother Yan Xiao. It must have been hard on you for these past two days. If you need any medicinal ingredients or other things, you can tell us. These are all small matters. Just let our Nalin clan go and settle it. You just need to rest. Seeing Nalin Jia's increasingly ruddy complexion, the smile on Nalin Su's face also increased. He took two steps forward and said with the smile still on his face to Xiao Yan. Hearing this, Xiao Yan hesitated for a moment. He conveniently took out a paper and pen from the storage ring. After which, he swiftly wrote some rare and precious medicinal ingredients that were rarely seen in the market. After which, he handed it over to Nalin Su. Since the other party was a big fat sheep, it would be a waste not to slaughter. In any case, with the financial strength of the Nalin clan, this little bit was an insufficient amount that wouldn't even make their hearts ache. TL, fat sheep equals lot of resources, slaughter equals take a generous cut. Nalin Su received the paper and took a glance at it. His expression did not have the slightest change because of the valuable medicinal ingredients on it. He called out and got a female servant to follow what was written on it and take them out from the clan's warehouse. During the whole process, Nalin Su's response did not have the slightest hesitation, acting in an ostentatious manner. Haha, <laughs> little brother Yan Xiao, why don't we go to the living room to take a seat first? The things that you need will immediately be brought over. Seeing that the female servant had exited from the room, Nalin Jie, who had finished wearing his clothes, smiled and said to Xiao Yan. Okay. Xiao Yan nodded slightly and lifted his leg to follow Nalin Jie and Nalin Su in front of him. After exiting the door, they passed through a quiet corridor before the three of them walked into the luxurious living room. They had just taken their seats when the female servant at the side hurriedly served them fragrant tea. After which, she bowed her body and stepped back. Little brother Yan Xiao, I assume that the purpose of you coming to the capital this time around would be to participate in the alchemist grand meeting, right? Nalin Jia lifted his teacup, took a slow sip and asked with a smile. Yes. Kuko, all the mighty people have gathered for this grand meeting. It seems that there will be a good show to watch. Nalin Su seated by his side smiled and said. I am only here to join the fun and don't have much ability to compete with the others. Xiao Yan smiled and replied. You are really modest. Possessing something as unique as a heavenly flame, it would be impossible for you not to display your splendor. Nalin Jie shook his head and immediately laughed, before the grand meeting, there is definitely a need for some practice. If little brother Yan Xiao needs any medicinal ingredients, you can just mention them to me. As long as our Nalin clan has it, we will definitely not be stingy. So you want to win me over early? Xiao Yan sipped his tea, slightly shook his head and whispered in his heart. The kind of prospects that an alchemist who possessed a heavenly flame was something that a strong person like Nalin Jie was extremely clear of. Therefore, Xiao Yan might only be a tier 2 alchemist now but Nalin Jie still had put in all his effort to win the former over. As the saying goes, one's mouth will be shorter after eating other people's things. If Xiao Yan really did as he had said and randomly took the medicinal ingredients from the Nalin clan, it would not be easy for Xiao Yan to reject Nalin Jie when he invited Xiao Yan to be an alchemist for the Nalin clan in the future. I will come and find the two of you when I require them. Xiao Yan did not immediately reject him. However, his vague words did not agree either. As a person who had become wise with age, Nalin Jia naturally could hear Xiao Yan's vague meaning. He smiled and his face did not have any disappointed emotion. With a smile, he diverted their topic of conversation and began to randomly inquire about some other information about Xiao Yan. Ha ha. May I ask who is little brother Yan Zhao's teacher? I am able to recognize over half of the Jiama Empire's well-known alchemists. However, I have never heard of any one of their students possessing a heavenly flame at such a young age. Teacher doesn't like to reveal himself. He has been living in isolation. Before I left, his elderly self had instructed me not to reveal any information about him. Xiao Yan shook his head and said. Since it's like this, I will not make things difficult for you. Hearing the words, Nalin Jie smiled and nodded. His heart, however, muttered, a strong person hidden from the world. With Yan Zhao's age, it is naturally impossible for him to reign in a heavenly flame by himself, I think that his teacher should have given quite a lot of help on this. A strong person who could reign in a heavenly flame should at least be a Dou Huang. Looks like the strength behind this little fellow cannot be underestimated. If I can win him over, there would be many benefits. Following Xiao Yan's casual reply, time slowly passed by. The female servant that had gone to obtain the medicinal ingredients carried a silver plate and walked into the living room with a curled posture. She then respectfully placed the plate on the table beside Xiao Yan. 
Glancing at those perfectly preserved medicinal ingredients on the silver plate, Xiao Yin nodded his head slightly. It looked like the Nalin clan had quite a number of skilled people who knew how to take care of their medicinal ingredients. Xiao Yin cautiously stored the medicinal ingredients into his storage ring. Not intending to wait, Xiao Yin didn't continue to stay any longer. Immediately, he stood up and bid the other two goodbye. He he, let us see little brother Yen Xiao off. Seeing Xiao Yin stand up, Nalin Jie also hurriedly did the same. After which, he and Nalin Su walked shoulder to shoulder out of the living room. Once they were out of the room, they walked along a small path. The Nalin clan members who were coming and going hurriedly greeted them. They waited until the three of them walked away before facing each other in shock. Immediately afterwards, they threw their curious and surprised gazes at Xiao Yan. In the whole of the Jiama Empire, there were no more than five people who had the qualification for both, the old grandfather of the Nalin clan and the clan head to respectfully send someone off together. Yet this young person who appeared only around twenty years old actually possessed the qualification to enjoy such a respectful treatment. Under the surprised and strange gazes throughout the journey, the three of them finally came to the main door. Xiao Yan bowed slightly toward Nalin Jie and Nalin Su. He was just about to leave when the corner of his eye suddenly stiffened at the sight of two human figures who were slowly walking over to the Nalin clan. Of the two human figures, one was a male and the other was a female. The lady was wearing a moon-white colored robe with trailing spacious sleeves. Her elegant footsteps caused people to have an extremely pleasing beautiful feeling. Her pretty face, which carried a little smile, hooked the gazes of the surrounding men as she passed by. The man was wearing an alchemist long robe. His age was also quite young and his figure was tall and straight, appearing only slightly over twenty years old. His handsome face had lines that seemed to be carved by a knife, emitting a somewhat feminine feeling. The gentle smile on his face also had an easy time moving some ladies' hearts. When comparing the appearance of this person to Xiao Yan's disguised appearance, it was like two polar regions that were extremely far apart. Of course, the thing that attracted the most attention was still the alchemist badge on the young man's chest. On it, three silver-colored ripples reflected an eye-piercing glow under the sunlight. Those passers-by, whose heart originally had contained a sour feeling because of the other party having the company of such a beautiful woman, felt dull initially upon seeing the three silver-colored ripples that represented his status. Immediately, the unhappiness in their eyes automatically turned into one of respect that one used when faced with a strong person. The man and the lady slowly walked over. A talented man and a beautiful woman, a perfect couple. They attracted the attention of quite a number of eyes on the street. Immediately, numerous amazed and envious gazes were thrown over as two of them suddenly became the focus of attention on the street. At the moment when Xiao Yan's gaze paused on the two of them, Nalin Jie and Nalin Su beside him also noticed the two people walking over. When their gazes swept onto the man by Nalin Yanran's side, each of their expressions were somewhat different. Staring at the two of them who were slowly walking over, Xiao Yan lowered his head slightly. For some unknown reason, his heart faintly had a hint of anger. A long while later, he inhaled a breath of icy cool air. He understood that although he no longer had those feelings for the lady in front of him, she was still someone who had nearly become his wife regardless of all that had happened. Now that he saw her conversing and laughing with another man as they walked together, he would naturally feel a knot in his heart. Xiao Yan raised his head. The emotions in his eyes were completely withdrawn by him as he calmly watched the two people who had arrived in front of him. Mr. Yan Xiao, we have troubled you again today. As the two people reached the main door, Nalin Yanran greeted Nalin Jie and Nalin Su before she smiled and spoke to Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan did not open his mouth to speak. He merely shook his head. His face, which was covered by the icy silk mask, appeared slightly cold. Having known Xiao Yan for a day, Nalin Yanran also knew about his indifferent character and was unconcerned with it. She pointed to the man by her side and said with a smile, Mr. Yan Xiao, this is my friend, Lu Ling. He is also an alchemist. Nice to meet you, Mr. Yan Xiao. That handsome man extended his hand as he smiled and greeted Xiao Yan. His smile was extremely gentle, appearing quite sincere. Nice to meet you. Xiao Yan extended his hand and held the other party's hand as he spoke calmly. His eyes watched Lu Ling ever since he had left Wuten City, the young man in front of him was the first young person who caused Xiao Yan to actually pay close attention to. Being able to become a tier 3 alchemist at such a young age, his talent was definitely not weaker than Xiao Yan. Hey, Lu Ling boy, why have you run over here instead of learning refining skills from your teacher? Nalin Jie glanced at this man who was extremely outstanding. He sighed slightly in his heart. Lu Ling was the most outstanding young man that he had seen during these last few years. If one were to discuss about talent and ability, he was a man who was a good match to Nalin Yanran. He also knew that his extremely haughty granddaughter may also have a favorable impression of this very outstanding young man who was at her age. Although this small favorable impression was far from having any feelings, Lu Ling was one of the few males of her age who had given her a favorable impression in many years. While Lu Ling was indeed very outstanding, the agreement with his old friend back then had always been in Nalin Jie's heart. Just thinking about the little fellow from the Xiao clan whose engagement was broken off, his heart was filled with regret and helplessness. Therefore, he had some resistance to Lu Ling and Nalin Yanran becoming too close. He was still trying to think up ways to rescue the already shattered prearranged marriage. The grand meeting is about to begin soon. The grand meeting has gathered countless strong people in the empire's alchemist scene. There is always someone better than one. 
Therefore, teacher has asked me to descend from the mountains and experience it for myself. Additionally, teacher also asked me to send his regards to old sir. Lu Ling bowed slightly and replied with a smile. Mr. Yen Xiao, I didn't expect that you were able to help old sir remove the searing poison at such a young age. It really surprises people. Back then, teacher had also come and taken a look, but did not have the slightest solution. Haha, I think that Mr. Yen Xiao should be in possession of the legendary, heavenly flame, right? Lu Ling turned his gaze to Xiao Yan by the side and laughed. Xiao Yan's eyes narrowed as he probed Lu Ling and asked, Who is your teacher? My teacher is Gu He. Lu Ling gently smiled and said. Although he hid the pride in his smile very deeply, some of it still seeped out. So it is Pilking Gu He. Xiao Yan muttered softly in his heart. He nodded, but the indifferentness on his face did not move because of this name that had once shaken the entire Jiamai Empire. Xiao Yan's calm manner caused Lu Ling to be startled, being able to become Pilking Guhi's personal disciple had always been something that he was very proud of. However, in the eyes of the young man in front of him, it seemed to be nothing at all. Immediately, his eyebrows were pressed together slightly without being noticed before they immediately quickly relaxed. He smiled and asked Xiao Yan, may I know the name of Mr. Yan Zhao's teacher? Teacher is just an idler in the mountain and does not have a great reputation like the Pilking Guhi has. He is not worth mentioning. Xiao Yan smiled and answered faintly. His very calm manner caused Nalin Jie, Nalin Yenran, and the others to give him a sidelong glance. Mr. Yen Xiao is really humble. Even if we don't mention the heavenly flame, you have become a tier 2 alchemist at such an age. Your teacher's ability is naturally not weak in order to be able to teach a student like you. Nalin Yenran at the side covered her mouth and laughed. I have no choice. This was all forced by someone. Xiao Yen stared at Nalin Yenran's pretty face and suddenly mocked himself as he spoke softly. Nalin Yenran was at a momentary loss. For some unknown reason, the eyes of the other party caused her heart to quiver without realizing it. She gently shook her head and was just about to say something when Xiao Yan cupped his hands together and shook them at everyone. He smiled faintly and said, I'm sorry. I still have something to do and won't be able to accompany everyone to chat. Goodbye. Once he said those words, Xiao Yan walked toward the street. After which, he gradually disappeared into the sea of people in front of the eyes of Nalin Yenran's group. Yenran, does he really possess a heavenly flame? Seeing that Xiao Yan had disappeared, Lu Ling could not help but inquire again. Yes. Mr. Yan Zhao's ability is quite good. His flame controlling ability would not be lousier than yours. In terms of refining pills, he is the only one of similar age whom I have met in so many years that I think may actually exceed you. Nalin Yenran nodded her head. Her pretty eyes watched the end of the street and she felt a little absent-minded. For some unknown reason, this cold young man kept giving her an extremely strange feeling. This kind of feeling was something that she had never felt from Lu Ling. Lu Ling frowned as he eyed Nalin Yenran who was staring at the end of the street in a somewhat absent-minded manner. His fist tensed slightly without him noticing while a faint sourness appeared in his heart. Chapter 290, Hidden Opponent Within the quiet room, Xiao Yan, who was seated cross-legged on the bed, slowly opened his eyes. A glint flashed across his dark eyes. Turbid air moved along his throat as he exhaled. Xiao Yan's face faintly emitted a weak glow. Clearly, the Dou Qi in his body had greatly increased after this training session. The energy contained within this searing poison is indeed very large. Even though I have refined it a number of times, it still possesses such substantial energy. As he sensed his Dou Qi that was becoming more thicker and more powerful, Xiao Yan could not help but mutter softly. The energy may be substantial, but it also has a price. Xiao Yan laughed bitterly. He shook his right hand and a cluster of green-colored flame rose. On the outer surface of the flame, vague black-colored marks were writhing slightly. Finally, it was completely suppressed to Xiao Yan's middle finger. Immediately, his long finger turned as black as ink, appearing extremely strange. Ah, the searing poison is increasingly dense. Eyeing the color of his finger, which had turned darker, Xiao Yan shook his head. He pressed his finger on the bed pillar by the side. The tough wooden pillar was instantly corroded and an empty hole was formed. Forget it. As long as I get hold of the seven magical green spirit saliva, I will be able to wake teacher. When that time comes, there should be a solution that solves these problems. Xiao Yan stared at his finger for a long while as he muttered, although this thing is very dangerous, I have absorbed quite a lot of energy from this searing poison during the last two days. According to the energy level, it will likely be sufficient for me to advance from a 6-star dosher to a 7-star dosher by the time I completely absorb all the searing poison in Nalin Jie's body. Xiao Yan shook his head and curled his finger slightly. The dark black color on it was withdrawn and a moment later, returned to its normal color. Creak. As Xiao Yan was withdrawing his hand, the tightly shut door was gently pushed open. Hai Bo Dong walked in lazily. He glanced at Xiao Yan in the room saw his slightly ugly expression and could not help but ask with a smile. What? Have you suffered some wrong at the Nalin clan? Do you want me to accompany you next time? Xiao Yan helplessly shook his head. He leaped down from the bed and said, it is still the matter of the searing poison. My heavenly flame seems to be unable to do anything to it. 
Each time I help Nalin Jia remove the poison, the searing poison in my body becomes increasingly dense. Increasingly dense. Hai Bo Dong was startled upon hearing this. He immediately frowned and said, Since it is like this, then why are you still helping him remove the poison? I don't believe you are one of those good people who try to help everyone. Moreover, you seem to have some grudges with Nalin Yinran of the Nalin clan. I want that, seven magical green spirit saliva. Don't tell me we should go and steal it. Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and replied faintly. That won't do. Due to Nalin Yinran, the Nalin clan and the Misty Cloud sect have an extremely good relationship. Moreover, the clan also possesses some weight in the Empire's government. I think that old demon from the royalty would also act. Do you think that our ability would be able to contend with these two large strengths? Hai Bo Dong smiled awkwardly as he replied to Xiao Yan. Then what is there to say? For now, if I want to obtain the seven magical green spirit saliva, I can only help cure Nalin Jia. Although this searing poison is extremely dangerous, at the very least it currently does not appear to hurt me in any way. Xiao Yan helplessly shook his head. After this analysis by Hai Bo Dong, his heart became a little more serious. This Nalin clan indeed lived up to its reputation as one of the three large clans of the empire. There were far too many strengths behind them that would be dragged into the matter. Do what you want as long as you don't end up causing yourself to sink into it. I am still waiting for you to help me refine the spiritual recovery purple pill. Hai Bo Dong waved his hand and said. Relax. As soon as you can gather all the medicinal ingredients, I will help you refine it. Although my spiritual strength was slightly damaged because of the angry Buddha Lotus Flame, refining the spiritual recovery purple pill should not be something too difficult. Xiao Yan slowly walked toward the side of the table. He removed all the clutter of things on it, took out a medicinal cauldron from within the storage ring and randomly said superficially. Kuku, I naturally have confidence in you. Hai Bo Dong smiled and nodded. He eyed Xiao Yan's action and inquired in a stunned manner, what are you doing? I think that you should continue to wander around outside. I am about to train my refining skills. Xiao Yan removed numerous medicinal ingredients from the storage ring and said with a smile to Hai Bo Dong. Uh. I haven't been back that long. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Hai Bo Dong smiled bitterly and shook his head. A moment later, he noticed Xiao Yan staring at him with a tilted head and could only helplessly smack his lips. He said, forget it. You can train. I will go out for a stroll. As he spoke, Hai Bo Dong turned around and opened the door unsteadily before reluctantly walking out. He knew that an alchemist did not like their surroundings to be disturbed by anyone while they were refining medicinal pills. Xiao Yan eyed the door which slowly closed before turning his gaze to the medicinal cauldron in front of him. His palm slowly caressed some of the medicinal ingredients on the table as he knit his eyebrows together and thought deeply. After around a year of tough training in the desert and especially after having consumed the fire lotus seed recently which resulted in his compatibility with the green lotus core flame to soar, Xiao Yan was extremely confident that it would not be something overly difficult to pass the test for a tier 3 alchemist. This was because the most important thing for a tier 3 alchemist was the flame controlling ability. On this aspect, Xiao Yan even had the confidence to compare with a tier 4 alchemist. Ugh but even if it is like this, it would not be an easy thing for me to successfully obtain the champion spot in the alchemist brand meeting. Those opponents aren't ordinary people. Xiao Yan sighed and shook his head. He recalled Guhi's disciple, Lu Ling, whom he had met today. Although he had not personally seen the other party refining, it was only natural that with Pil King Guhi's ability, the disciple that he taught would not be someone useless. Moreover when they were facing each other, Xiao Yan had also sensed the confidence contained within the other person's action and voice. This confidence was not a forceful act. This was something that a person was only able to have when he really possessed some ability. Xiao Yan's palm rubbed the icy cold medicinal cauldron. He suddenly shrugged his shoulders and laughed softly, of course, I am not an ordinary person either. If I were to lose to Lu Ling in the alchemist grand meeting, won't it mean that teacher cannot be compared to Gu Yi? That won't do. Xiao Yan slowly exhaled a breath of air. He pursed up his lips slightly. A long while later, he faintly smiled. His finger gently flicked at the flame outlet of the medicinal cauldron and a wisp of green-colored flame was swiftly inserted in. Following a soft muffled sound, a green-colored flame immediately rose and burned within the medicinal cauldron. I will first try to refine a tier 3 medicinal pill. Xiao Yan's palm slowly moved over the medicinal ingredients on the table, after which, it stopped at a few medicinal plants. His palm curled slightly and a subtle absorption force pulled them into his palm and randomly threw them into the medicinal cauldron. Watching those medicinal ingredients that were separated and wrapped by the green-colored flame, Xiao Yan nodded slightly. A medicinal formula for a tier 3 medicinal pill automatically surfaced in his mind. During his training, Yao Lao would occasionally use his spiritual strength to pour all these medicinal formulas into Xiao Yan. It was naturally extremely easy for him to be able to use them now. Refreshing pill, tier 3 medicinal pill. It is able to let the senses of person who consumes it to be even more sensitive to the exterior natural energy in the outside world while in one's training mode, increasing the speed at which one absorbs energy. The quantity of it would also increase significantly. The ingredients needed to refine it are, a 30-year-old, pure heart 3 leaves grass, a ripe, Buddha heart fruit, a 10-year-old, spirit absorption tree, a rank 3 monster core. Xiao Yan's mind slowly recalled the medicinal ingredients recorded in the medicinal formula. 
A long while later, his ten long fingers gently flicked. Immediately, the flame in the medicinal cauldron burned turbulently. As Xiao Yan began to refine the medicine, the temperature in the room also gradually increased. A faint smoke seeped out from the cauldron. After which, it lingered within the room, causing the place to be shrouded by fog. Due to this being his first time refining such a medicinal pill, Xiao Yan expectedly incinerated the medicinal ingredients during his first two tries. However, this did not cause him to feel any disappointment. After all, failures when refining medicinal pills were difficult to avoid even if it was Yao Lao who personally performing the refining. Therefore, after ceasing the flame and summarizing the failure experiences, Xiao Yan swiftly grasped the necessary flame temperature, etc. During his third refinement, a round, shiny, refreshing pill was finally freshly created after two hours of refining. Eyeing that refreshing pill that was quietly lying in the jade bottle, Xiao Yan wiped the perspiration on his forehead. He smiled with satisfaction. After which, he once again raised the flame and continued to refine. By consuming the entire afternoon, the success rate for Xiao Yan refining the refreshing pill had increased at a joyfully swift pace. When the medicinal ingredients on the table were about to be exhausted, three refreshing pills had already appeared in the jade bottle. Xiao Yan stored the jade bottle containing the three refreshing pills carefully into his storage ring. The tired expression on his face was difficult to hide. Once he cleaned up the table, he took a few weak footsteps and planted his head onto the bed. By the time Xiao Yan woke up from his deep sleep, he realized that it was already the morning of the next day. He shook his somewhat drowsy head as he climbed out of his bed. He watched the empty room and shook his head with a bitter smile. Refining medicinal pills was indeed very tiring work. The loss experienced by his spirit strength was really too large. Xiao Yan climbed out of his bed and cleaned himself up in a simple fashion. Once he was wide awake, he walked out of the room and headed toward the Nalin clan to begin today's poison removing session for Nalin Jie. Although he had not seen Haibo Dong for a day, Xiao Yan was not very concerned. With the old man's strength, other than those old fellows and the leader of the Misty Cloud sect, it was likely that no one in this Jiama Empire could pose any big trouble to him. The poison removing session today was about the same as the last time. During the session, there was nothing special that happened. Once Xiao Yan had helped Nalin Jie remove the poison, he was also invited to sit in the Nalin clan for a while. For some unknown reason, Nalin Yan Ran had come forward with great interest during the time that they were seated and inquired about some things related to Xiao Yan. However, these questions were all vaguely withstood and dealt with using Xiao Yan's indifferent expression and tone. Although the current her appeared to have changed a lot compared to back then, it was really difficult for Xiao Yan to form any good opinions of this woman. Anywhere that Nalin Yan Ran was present, that Lu Ling would naturally also follow closely behind. Xiao Yan could sense the peripheral vision of that fellow repeatedly drifting over during the times when he was conversing with Nalin Yan Ran. Although Lu Ling's face still maintained a smile without speaking, Xiao Yan was able to sense that the former was in some sort of a bad mood and had also formed a faint enmity against him. However, Xiao Yan merely shrugged his shoulders in response to this. It is not my concern if you are unhappy. I even dared to snatch the heavenly flame that Kuhi had his eyes on. In what way can you, as a disciple that has not graduated, frighten me? Under Lu Ling's slightly cold gaze, Xiao Yan sat in the living room for nearly half an hour. Only then did he stand up and bid them goodbye. After which, he was sent off by Nalin Jie and the others as he walked out of the Nalin clan and slowly disappeared from their sight. Looking at Xiao Yan, who had disappeared, with narrow eyes, Lu Ling turned his head around and suddenly laughed, Grandfather, do you know the background of this alchemist called Yan Xiao? Why? Hearing the question, Nalin Jie was distracted and he immediately said with a frown, Mr. Yan Xiao is a distinguished guest of our Nalin clan. I only care about whether he can help me expel the searing poison. I am not concerned about his exact identity. Young people should have wider hearts. Don't feel enmity over some little things. You may be Guhi's disciple, but I dare to say that the teacher behind Yan Xiao would likely not be any weaker than Guhi. Becoming an enemy with such a person is not going to be a good thing. Nalin Jie glanced at the smiling Lu Ling and spoke meaningfully with a soft voice. With his old and sharp gaze, he could naturally sense the thoughts Lu Ling had about Xiao Yan. Haha, grandfather must be joking. Mr. Yan Xiao and I have never met. Why would I have any enmity toward him? Lu Ling's expression changed slightly. However, he was not an ordinary person. He swiftly withdrew his expression, drifted his gaze toward the slightly frowning Nalin Yan Ran and laughed. It would naturally be best if it is like this. That Yan Xiao may not be able to compare with you now, but his potential is extremely great. If I have the chance, I really want to pull him into our Nalin clan. Nalin Jie faintly smiled. Without looking at the stiffened expression of Lu Ling, he turned around and walked through the main door. Nalin Yan Ran glanced at Lu Ling who was helplessly shrugging his shoulders and said softly, You better not try anything stupid. My grandfather has already said that he is a distinguished guest of the Nalin clan. Once she said those words, her hand pulled aside the black hair in front of her forehead and slowly followed Nalin Jie in front of her. Yan Ran, after so many years, you should know how I. Watching the enchantingly graceful back, Lu Ling could not help but say those words. However, before he managed to say all that he wanted to, Nalin Yanran, who had her back facing him, randomly waved her delicate, white jade-like smooth hand under the sunlight. She sighed, you should know that I don't wish to discuss about these matters now. 
You are one of the few men who was able to become my friend during all these years. Perhaps you might be able to move me in the future, but at least for now, I merely treat you as an ordinary friend. I do not deny that you are outstanding. However, you have not met my requirements. My man will definitely not be a mediocre person. Once she said these words, she did not linger any longer. She moved with successive footsteps and walked through the main door. I know that you have high expectations. This time around I will take the throne at the grand meeting to prove that I, Lu Ling, am a good match for you. As he watched that enchanting back, a fanatical emotion flashed across Lu Ling's eyes. Being the future leader of the Misty Cloud sect, Nalan Yinran's status in the Jiama Empire was nearly even more distinguished than the Empire's princess. With the haughtiness in Lu Ling's heart, he would naturally need to subdue such a woman in order to prove how outstanding he was. Wait until you become the champion before discussing it. A faint moving voice moved through the door and slowly transmitted over. Just wait. Lu Ling shrugged his shoulders, turned around and stared at the spot where Xiao Yan had been seated earlier. He gave a shady soft laughter as he softly muttered, I will let him be ashamed of his foul appearance in the grand meeting. The disciple of Pilking Gu he is without a doubt, the most outstanding person in the Jiama Empire. Chapter 291, Advance to 7 Star, The Final Test Xiao Yan was seated cross-legged on the bed. At this moment, the natural energy within the room was fluctuating somewhat intensely. Numerous energy ripples that were visible to the naked eye were surging and rolling out from within Xiao Yan's body. His clothes had swollen until they were bulging. On his gray face, a faint green glow was partially visible. As the surrounding natural energy was poured into Xiao Yan's body, wave after wave, the green glow on his face also grew increasingly dense. In the end, the green-colored glow almost covered his entire face. The force within his body was also gradually being raised. When the rising force reached a certain level, the surrounding fluctuating energy suddenly came to an abrupt stop. The swollen clothes on Xiao Yan's body appeared to have stiffened and did not move anymore. This strange, quiet pause continued for nearly 10 seconds. Xiao Yan, who had his eyes tightly closed, suddenly opened them. The green-colored flame instantly rolled and surged up before immediately and swiftly disappearing. A fierce glow suddenly shot out from within his dark eyes. With his body maintaining its training mode, Xiao Yan opened his mouth. A somewhat black-colored turbid air was spat out. The black air wreathed upward. Anything that touched it was completely corroded. It continued to rise until it corroded a small hole in the roof before it finally gradually turned into nothingness under the sunlight. After exhaling the turbid breath, the fierce glow in Xiao Yan's eyes also quietly withdrew. The stiffened clothes once again became soft as they nestled close to Xiao Yan's skin. The imposing force that was lingering within the room was also withdrawn into his body. Seven Star Doshur As he gently tightened his fist, the feeling of his body being filled with strength caused Xiao Yan to be a little intoxicated. Although he knew that according to the pace at which he was advancing from before, he would sooner or later advance into the Seven Star level. However, he did not expect that by merely absorbing the searing poison in Nalan Jia three times would be sufficient enough for him to raise a level. The energy within a Do Wang's body is really vast and surging. I have only absorbed it three times, but the energy was sufficient enough to let me raise a level. Xiao Yan muttered softly. His body twisted strangely. Hearing the waves of clear bone cracking sound from within his body, he could not help but smile with satisfaction. This transaction seems to be quite a good bargain. Xiao Yan placed both his palms on the bed and used a little energy. His body shot upward in a supple manner. After which, he somersaulted in the air and landed gently on the ground. He clapped his hand, looked around and mumbled with a frown, why is he still not back? Xiao Yan mused for a moment and could only helplessly shake his head at the futile effort. He then opened the door and walked out. Tomorrow was when the grand meeting would begin. He needed to go to the association to inquire about the different kinds of competitions in the grand meeting and the method in which the tests were conducted now or else he'd start on the wrong foot. After exiting the inn, Xiao Yan stood on the street and took a look all around him. He then lifted his footsteps and walked toward the towering building of the Alchemist Association where one would at least be able to see a corner of it from afar. During the walk there, Xiao Yan was stunned to realize that some of the main roads in the city already had completely armed night units patrolling. Clearly, this was due to the Alchemist Grand Meeting which was about to begin. After all, if a commotion were to occur at such a large Grand Meeting, it would have many different large impacts to the Empire. Therefore, the Imperial family needed to prevent any such possibilities. TL, yes, knights. People with horses plus armor plus armed cavalry, army. Correct me if wrong but pretty sure the only word for them is knights. After slowly walking past a few wide streets, the large alchemist association finally appeared in Xiao Yan's sight. Eyeing the entrance which was even more packed compared to two days ago, he could not help but shake his head. It appeared that there were many alchemists who wished to reveal their brilliance at this grand meeting. With both his hands behind his back, Xiao Yan slowly crossed his footsteps and entered the association. He turned his footsteps and squeezed through the human crowd. He had just followed the human flow and entered the association when a disturbance occurred not far behind him. The surrounding gazes were thrown over. The human flow at the front had stopped entering and Xiao Yan was plugged up at the middle. He helplessly sighed, frowned slightly and turned his head around to watch the source of the commotion. The source of the commotion was a horse carriage that had a great noble aura. 
In front of the horse carriage, there were two horses which had snow-white hair without the slightest impurities quietly pulling it. A strange beast which had a blue-colored flame rising from its body was drawn on the golden-yellow brocade surrounding the horse carriage. The strange beast was of a large size and it had a ferocious appearance, emitting a feeling that would faintly frighten the hearts of those who looked at it. The Imperial Crest Staring at the strange beast crest whose name eluded him, Xiao Yan softly muttered. As a citizen of the Jiama Empire, he was able to identify the Jiama Empire's Imperial Crest. Surrounding the horse carriage, there were over ten people wrapped entirely in black robe accompanying it. Xiao Yan's gaze swept across these black-robed people and his eyes shrunk. From his senses, these ten-plus black-robed people actually gave him a feeling of danger. It is really indeed worthy of being the Jiama Empire's imperial family. Its strength really cannot be underestimated. Xiao Yan exclaimed slightly in his heart as his gaze was thrown to where the carriage curtain was. A black-robed person stepped forward and respectfully lifted the carriage curtain. When the black-robed person did this, Xiao Yan could clearly sense the other black-robed people had already swiftly formed a steady circle during the slight movement, guarding the horse carriage in the middle of them. At the same time, numerous gazes that were as sharp as an eagle shot out from the black-robed people as they swept back and forth in front of the surrounding packed human crowd. Under the watch of the surrounding people, a snow-white jade-like delicate hand was extended out from the carriage. It gracefully held the handle of the carriage door. After which, a beautiful figure slowly walked out and appeared in everyone's sight. The person who appeared was wearing a purple-colored dress that had silver-colored lines embedded in it. Her exquisite appearance, under the influence of the imperial family, faintly seeped out a noble imposing presence that was her birthright. A purple-colored belt was worn on her narrow and delicate waist, displaying the small waist vividly and incisively. Her age did not appear to be very old, appearing similar to Xiao Yan's before he had changed his appearance. Her pretty face contained a smile, appearing elegant and serene. However, each time her gaze swept across the surroundings, Xiao Yan was able to discover that this young lady who looked very late-alike had some quirky and strange smile flashing across her watery eyes. Clearly, this was different from the surface she showed which seemed to like quietness. A woman really cannot be judged by her appearance. Xiao Yan bitterly smiled and shook his head. He withdrew his gaze and no longer looked at this very extraordinary young lady. TSK TSK, what a beautiful girl. Watching the young lady which had appeared, a wave of cheers was immediately erupted from the surrounding human crowd. A number of heated gazes were swiftly thrown over. Although the lady's status was extremely noble, it did not appear to be inappropriate to take advantage of the large crowd and allow their eyes to be a little impudent. Hee hee, this is the little princess within the Jiama Empire Imperial family. I heard that her teacher is the deputy chairman Grandmaster Chiamier. Since she has appeared here this time around, I think that she must have come because of the alchemist grand meeting. There were quite a number of well-informed individuals within the human crowd who managed to identify the young lady upon seeing her appearance. She doesn't seem to be that old, yet she is actually here to compete in the grand meeting. Che, the little princess refining talent is something that even the chairman had praised non-stop. Don't just look at her young age. I have heard that half a year ago, she had already stepped into a tier 3 alchemist. Uh. Hearing this, there was an immediate uproar in the surrounding crowd. Some of the older middle-aged alchemists lifted their hands with somewhat red faces and covered the tier badge on their chests in embarrassment. Being squeezed in the human crowd, Xiao Yan heard the conversations of these people and a shock flashed across his face. He once again turned his gaze to the purple-dressed young lady who was walking to the association with the support of the black-robed person. He said quietly in his heart, Indeed, there is always someone who is better. It is really unexpected that this young lady who appears so weak is actually a tier 3 alchemist. Although Xiao Yan was shocked in his heart, Xiao Yan did not feel that this was very unexpected. With the rich foundation of the Jiama Empire's royalty, as long as this little princess possessed the basic talent needed to become an alchemist, they could use those ingredients that could be piled into mountains to easily build her into a high-tier alchemist. Moreover, from the looks of things, this little princess' talent for refining medicine was quite good. Therefore, having such an achievement was within expectations. Under the protection of the group of black-robed people whose bodies were shrouded by a dark and cold aura, that purple dress young lady passed through the packed human crowd without meeting any obstruction. After which, she swaggered into the alchemist association. As the back of the young lady which appeared elegant disappeared from his sight, Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and twisted his body slightly. Like a loach, he squeezed past the surrounding human crowd without leaving a trace as he swiftly leaped into the interior of the association. After pushing aside the last layer of the human flow, the surrounding area finally became spacious. He eyed the vast hall and exhaled a long breath of air. Wiping off the perspiration on his forehead, Xiao Yan walked toward the western area of the hall as though he had walked there countless times. The two guards from the last time were still present at the entrance to the western area. When they saw Xiao Yan arrive, they did not stop him like they did before. After bowing and greeting him, they did not bother him when he entered. Looking at this situation, it appeared that Ao Tuo had already gave them specific instructions for Xiao Yan. Seeing that the guards did not stop him, Xiao Yan was happy to save some trouble. He walked into the corridor and slowly climbed up the stairs. Finally, he stopped outside Ao Tuo's room from the last time. He knocked softly on the door, waited for Ao Tuo's voice from inside before pushing it open and entering. Only Ao Tuo was seated in the room. At that moment, he was watching Xiao Yan who had entered with a smile. Little fellow, you are quite punctual. 
Xiao Yin smiled and sat on the chair beside Ao Tua. He lifted a teacup and took a sip as he laughed, Haha, I shall not say anything unnecessary. My purpose for coming here this time around is to inquire about the format of the competition. Is it done by drawing lots or by other means? TL, drawing lots equals having one random person go up at a time. There are so many competitors who participate in the competition. If the competition were to rely on drawing lots one at a time, just how long would it take? Ao Tua shook his head with a smile. His finger drew a very large rectangle on the table surface as he continued with a smile on his face, all of the alchemists in the competition will be participating at the same time on a huge platform. There, you will have quite a few rounds and the requirements for the competition will gradually become harder. When that time comes, it would be like a sieve sieving away the sand particles, swiftly removing those that do not qualify. Those who are able to stay the longest are all the best among the participants. Whoever is able to stand out among the cream of the crop, will be the final victor. Oh. Xiao Yin nodded his head slightly. The scene of hundreds or thousands of alchemists raising their flames and refining medicine on the same platform must be extremely spectacular. Hee hee, you really want to see that kind of scene, don't you? Don't be frightened when that time comes. Back then, when I first participated, I was also shocked. Grandmaster Ao Tua laughed, appearing to know what Xiao Yin was thinking. That's right. There is a name list here. Why don't you take a look? These are all the competitors with great ability who will be participating in this grand meeting. Ao Tua picked up a paper scroll from the table and handed it to Xiao Yan. He immediately added, this is an internal document. According to the rules, I cannot leak it to others. Xiao Yan was somewhat curious as he received the paper scroll. He smiled and nodded as he slowly pulled it open. The long name list had at least 20 to 30 people with abilities that were not bad. Xiao Yan swept his gaze over it and his eyebrows were suddenly raised. He realized that Lu Ling was actually on the name list and it was very close to the top. Clearly, the name of the Pilking successor was not simply something that was obtained from bragging about. This little princess should be the one from the imperial family, right? Xiao Yan pointed at the little princess who was ranked fifth and asked. Yes, have you seen her? I have seen her for a moment at the entrance just now. I didn't expect that her name is so close to the front. Xiao Yan smiled, feeling a little surprised at the ranking. Don't look down on that girl. Under the support of the imperial family strength, she has so many hidden cards that would dazzle people. Ao Tua smiled and reminded. Xiao Yan nodded slightly. He looked through the information on the name list carefully before returning it to Ao Tua. The competitors are indeed very strong. Just counting the tier 3 alchemists, there are already 13 of them. It is indeed a little troublesome and you can only rely on yourself for this. I can only help you this much. Ao Tua nodded his head and helplessly said. Xiao Yan smiled and nodded his head. He asked, is the grand meeting starting tomorrow? Do I still need to do something now? Haha, <laughs> indeed, you still need to do something. Consider this the last test before the competition. Outsiders do not have this round of test but the competitors who are recommended by us, the branch heads, must pass this round. This can be considered a kind of test in advance where the association judges our ability to pick people. If one cannot pass this test, then our recommendation would lose effect. Ao Tua stood up, smiled and said, follow me. At this place, you will be able to see some of the strong opponents on the name list. Yes. Xiao Yin nodded his head, stood up and followed Ao Tua. The two of them walked out of the room and walked along a quiet corridor for a short while. Once they were at the end, they pushed open the door by the side and slowly entered. A strong light suddenly shot over as they walked through the door, causing Xiao Yin to involuntarily narrow his eyes. He finally opened them once he adapted to the light. Appearing in front of them was a spacious inner hall which was decorated in quite a classical manner. At the moment, the inner hall had some people standing in twos and threes. Xiao Yan's gaze swept across these people and was somewhat stunned to discover that many of these people, who appeared quite young, were actually at the level of a third-tier alchemist. The Empire's little princess whom he had saw at the main entrance some time ago was also among them. His gaze rotated once again and with raised eyebrows, finally stopped on a handsome-looking young man who was conversing with a few tier 3 alchemists. Lu Ling Hearing the sound of the door opening, everyone in the hall who was whispering privately ceased their conversations. Their gaze turned toward the door. When they saw Xiao Yan entered, they were all momentarily stunned. Their gazes then drifted toward the tier 2 alchemist badge on his chest and their expressions carried some ridicule. The little princess, who was leaning on the wall, was surrounded by a few alchemists in a manner similar to stars arching around the moon, also glanced at Xiao Yan. However, after she saw the tier badge on his chest, she completely lost interest. She lazily stretched and her curves hooked the gazes of the surrounding men. Lu Ling's gaze lazily stared at Xiao Yan. The latter's entrance had also caused Lu Ling to be a little surprised. Quickly following this, however, a dark mild smile surfaced on his face, appearing to harbor malicious intentions. Xiao Yan lowered his eyebrows slightly. The different gazes in the large hall did not affect him. His hands drooped in front of his sleeves. The indifferent face of his was like an old monk. However, a faint cold laughter quietly surfaced within his heart. Chapter 292, Refining Hey, old Ao, have you also brought someone over? During the time that the atmosphere in the hall was very quiet, an old laugh rang out. 
Xiao Yan followed the voice and shifted his gaze. He realized that there were some old people wearing alchemist robes standing with smiles on a high platform positioned on the left side of the hall. The voice from before came from one of the snow-white-haired old men. That is the deputy chairman of the association, Chia Mi Er. He is also the little princess's teacher. Ao Tua smiled and waved to the old man before tilting his head and speaking to Xiao Yan. Ah. Xiao Yan nodded slightly. Just ignore these arrogant people's eyes. Being able to become a tier 3 alchemist at such an age, their talents are naturally all very outstanding. It is expected that they would all be a little proud. They would not pay attention to those who have not reached their level. Most of the young people these days who have some ability are like this. Ao Tua glanced at those young people in the hall, patted Xiao Yan's back and comforted him. Xiao Yan smiled, but did not speak. Follow me to meet those old fellows. They are people who possess great capability within the Jiama Empire. As Ao Tua spoke, he led the way toward the towering platform at the side. Xiao Yan hesitated for a moment but could only follow. Ao Tua swiftly walked up the tall platform. He smiled and conversed with those old people around his age for some time. Xiao Yan quietly stood behind him and did not take any initiative to step forward and greet them. Old Ao. Is this the competitor representing your Black Rock City this time around? After conversing with a smile for a while, the old man with snow-white colored hair smiled as he looked at Xiao Yan standing to the side and asked. Xiao Yan lifted his gaze slightly. He looked at this old man who clearly had quite a high position in the Alchemist Association. He wore an exquisitely made alchemist robe while his wrinkle-filled face contained a smile and his slightly squinting turbid eyes were calm and gentle. At one glance, he appeared like an ordinary old man without any overly special aura, with the exception of the long robe that represented his status and the four silver-colored ripples that were flashing a strange glow on his chest. However, this ordinary old man was in control of nearly half of the Alchemist Association's strength. As Xiao Yan was sizing up Chimmy Air, the latter was also doing the same to him. Xiao Yan's ordinary appearance also did not have any outstanding points. The only thing that caused Chimmy Air to feel a little strange was the calm expression of the other party. Being able to maintain this unmoved manner when being watched by a Tier 4 alchemist needed a mental strength that was quite rarely seen among young people. Ah. Uh, he is called Yan Xiao. His potential is quite great. Ao Tua smiled and nodded his head. After which, he turned to Xiao Yan and once again made the introduction. This is the deputy chairman of the association, Grandmaster Chia Mi Er. It's nice to meet you, Deputy Chairman Chia Mi Er. Xiao Yan smiled and bowed courteously at Chia Mi Er. Kuku, little fellow, I hope that you won't cause Ao Tuo's recommendation to become invalid. Otherwise, it would really cause him to lose all of his old face. Seeing the tier 2 badge on Xiao Yan's chest, Chia Mi Er helplessly shook his head at Ao Tuo by the side. In a competition at this level, a tier 2 alchemist would have difficulty even entering the top 20. I believe that I will at least be able to pass this test. Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and said. It is good that you have confidence. However, as all of the people recommended by the head of each branch have slightly stronger abilities, therefore, this internal test will also have some difficulty. Chia Mi Er nodded his head and said with a smile. I will do my best. Cuckoo. It is about time to start. We should not say any more nonsense. You should go down first. The test is beginning soon. Chia Mi Er smiled and said. Xiao Yan nodded his head, turned around and walked down the platform. After which, in front of all the gazes of the young people in the hall, he walked toward a corner and stood with his hands dangled down. Ah, old Ao. Your Black Rock City is also considered a large city, right? There's no way that you cannot find a young tier 3 alchemist. Eyeing Xiao Yan's back, Chia Mi Er spoke helplessly toward Ao Tua by the side. I believe in him. With both his hands inserted into his spacious sleeves, Ao Tua said with a mysterious smile. Ah, you old fellow, if no one from your side has an outstanding performance at the grand meeting, do not blame us for having a reduction in your funds next year. These things must be done according to the books. Having good relationships does not help. Chia Mi Er shook his head and said. Ao Tua smiled and nodded. He did not continue to worry about this topic and said, it is time. Let's start the test. Hearing this, Chia Mi Er did not say anything more. He turned his gaze toward everyone below. His finger pointed at the front of the hall. There were many black colored curtains hanging on the wall there. Behind each of the curtains, there is a small personal room. That is your examination room. As everyone knows, refining the medicinal ingredients is an extremely important step in refining a medicinal pill. Our test this time around is to test your refinement of the medicinal ingredients. On a platform in each of the small rooms, the medicinal ingredients needed for the test have already been prepared. What all of you need to do is to use the shortest time to refine the medicinal ingredients into the highest purity that you can achieve. When the sand in the hourglass has completely fallen, those who have not completed the refinement will be considered to have failed this test. Moreover, even if you successfully refine the ingredients, we, these old fellows, will be the judges. If the medicinal ingredients that you have refined do not meet our standards you will also be considered to have failed this test. The result of failing is to lose the qualification to participate in the main competition. Chia Mi Air pointed to an hourglass on the table. He glanced at the young people below and smiled faintly. 
Hearing such a severe penalty for failing, the young people below faced each other. Other than a small number of people, their expressions each had a slight change. Sweeping his gaze slowly below him, Chiemi Air suddenly paused at Xiaoyan who was standing in a corner with his hands dangling. He looked at the calm face and could not help but be stunned as he quietly muttered in his heart, does this fellow actually have some real ability? All right, begin. Pay attention to the hourglass time. After moving his gaze away from Xiaoyan Chiemi Air clapped his hands as he smiled and said. Hearing this, everyone in the hall began to move in small groups as they headed toward their left side. After which, each of them pulled aside a black curtain and walked in. Xiao Yan also chose a remote black curtain and was about to walk in when laughter was transmitted from behind him. It caused him to stop his footsteps and turned his calm face over. Kuku, I did not expect that Brother Yan Xiao would also be able to participate in this kind of internal test. We seem to have some fate tying us together. Lu Ling walked closer to Xiao Yan as he smiled and said. However, his feminine smile caused Xiao Yan to frown slightly. Xiao Yan faintly glanced at him and said, I was simply pulled over by someone to make up the numbers. Brother Yan Xiao really knows how to joke. Although your tear cannot make it, you have a strange object like the heavenly flame. I think that your results would not be too low. Lu Ling roamed his gaze over Xiao Yan's face. Honestly speaking, he still maintained a great doubt as to whether Xiao Yan possessed a heavenly flame. After all, this was only his guess. Although he had privately asked Nailin Yanran, she did not give him a precise reply on such a secret matter. Xiao Yan was noncommittal as he shrugged his shoulders before pulling aside the black curtain and walking in. This left Lu Ling standing on the same spot with his eyebrows slightly knit together. Big brother Lu, aren't you going in? A clear voice sounded behind Lu Ling. The pretty little princess walked over, eyed Xiao Yan who had disappeared behind the curtain and smiled sweetly. I just met someone I know. If little princess has an interest, I can introduce him to you. Lu Ling said softly as he gave a warm smile to the little princess. Forget it, a tier 2 alchemist. I don't have a mood as good as yours. The little princess lazily shook her head. Clearly, her interest toward Xiao Yan was not as rich as Lu Ling's. After all, regardless of identity, strength, appearance etc., Lu Ling far exceeded him. Haha, ha, it's up to you. Lu Ling smiled. The little princess manner of ignoring Xiao Yan caused him to have some joy in his heart. In the Nalin clan, grandfather Nalin valued Xiao Yan greatly, causing Lu Ling, who had always been given great respect as a genius, to feel displeased in his heart. I will go in first. Big brother Lu Ling better not lose to me. Little Princess saucily blinked at Lu Ling before entering a black curtained room in a light and agile manner. Lu Ling smiled and nodded his head. He eyed the hall that had become empty and did not delay any longer. With a comfortable pace, he entered behind a black curtain. His leisurely manner caused Jimmy Air and the others on the high platform to nod their heads. The test question this time around is quite good. Refining medicinal ingredients is not only an essential step in refining medicine but it also tests one's ability to control the flame. This very small thing should be able to roughly test out some of the abilities of these little fellows. Eyeing the empty large hall, Ao Tua turned around and said with a smile toward Chiemi Air. Chiemi Air smiled and nodded. He sat down on a chair by the side, lifted his teacup and took a sip. With a smile, he said, next, let us see just who will be able to bring out the refined medicinal ingredients with the highest purity. Passing through the black curtain, a small room appeared in Xiao Yan's sight. The room was not spacious, but it was quite elegant and tidy. Near the wall of the small room, there was a square green stone platform. An hourglass was placed on the rock platform along with a couple of neatly placed medicinal ingredients. Walking to the side of the stone platform, Xiao Yan's gaze drifted across a few pieces of black charcoal-like medicinal ingredients. Surprise clearly flashed across his eyes. He muttered softly, it is actually the black iron spiritual leaf, which is one of the most resistant ingredients to heat. This thing really exhausts one's energy during the refinement. These old fellows really don't allow others to have peace of mind. Xiao Yan shook his head and his finger rubbed gently over his storage ring. A dark red-colored medicinal cauldron appeared on the table. Xiao Yan picked up a black iron spiritual leaf, placed it on his hand and kneaded it. After which, his eyebrows were pressed tightly together. He was troubled as to whether he should use the green lotus core flame. After musing for a moment, Xiao Yan shook his head. He did not want to use his hidden card during a test at such an early stage. If he used the green lotus core flame at such an easy test, it was undoubtedly like using a sledgehammer to slaughter a chicken. With a gentle flick of his finger, a purple-colored pill appeared between his fingers. Xiao Yan threw it into his mouth and chewed slightly. After which, he blew out. A cluster of purple-colored flame immediately surged out and was held in Xiao Yan's palm. Holding this cluster of purple flame, Xiao Yan smiled gently. Since he had swallowed the purple flame back then, he was still able to control the flame with greater familiarity now. Although it could not be compared with the high degree of control he had for the green flame, it should not be too big of a problem to refine the black iron spiritual leaf. Xiao Yan's spiritual strength was slowly extended out of his body and controlled this cluster of purple-colored flame as it was slowly poured into the cauldron. Immediately, the icy cold cauldron's temperature began to rise. The purple-colored flame soared and writhed within it. Xiao Yan eyed the bright purple-colored flame indifferently. 
He waved his hand and the black iron spiritual leaf left his hand and was thrown into the medicinal cauldron. The purple flame leaped onto it turbulently, wrapping it and began an intense calcining. Xiao Yan's ten fingers flexibly danced in front of him. A moment later, Xiao Yan, who had become even more smooth in his control, actually gradually closed his eyes. He completely relied on his feeling to control the burning of the flame. During the time of refinement, the sand in the hourglass on the table was slowly descending. Chapter 293, Put to the Test In the quiet hall, Jimmy Air, who was seated on the high platform, had his eyes closed as he rested. On the table in front of him stood an hourglass with sand falling in it. After the quiet atmosphere persisted for an unknown amount of time, Jimmy Air was the first to open his eyes. He glanced at the hourglass where half of its contents had fallen. He moved slightly as he coughed gently. As Jimmy Air's soft cough sounded, Ao Tua and the others also opened their eyes. They lifted their eyes and inspected the room before saying with a laugh, looks like the test this time around is fairly difficult. Until now, no one has actually come out. People with a ability want to raise the degree of purity as much as possible while people with poor ability are distressed with how to refine the ingredients during the time allocated, therefore, it is natural that no one has come out within this short period of time. Jimmy Air smiled and faintly replied. Who do you think will be able to obtain the best result? Ao Tua nodded his head, lifted the teacup in front of him and sipped before asking with a smile. It's difficult to say. Jimmy Air's shriveled hand gently tapped on the armrest of the chair. He mused a little before saying, from how I see it, Lu Ling's chances should be the highest. He has quite good talent. During these many years, he has also learned nearly 30 to 40 percent of Gui's knowledge. It is sufficient for him to be among the best of his generation. Ha ha. Little princess isn't bad either. The foundation of the imperial family is extremely solid. If someone were to say that they did not prepare some hidden cards for her this time around, none of us would believe that person. Ao Tua said with a grin. Although that girl's talent is quite good, she is much weaker in terms of experience when compared to Lu Ling. If she does not use those hidden cards, she should be a little inferior to Lu Ling. This is only the first test, therefore, it is unlikely for her to use her hidden card. Therefore, Lu Ling has the highest chances of obtaining the best result. When talking about his beloved disciple, Jimmy Air had another smile on his face as he spoke. Ao Tua smiled. The corner of his eyes glanced at the small room covered by a black curtain where Xiao Yan was at. He sighed and said in his heart, I wonder what kind of results Xiao Yan will be able to obtain. I hope it won't be too low. His talent is definitely not inferior to Lu Ling or the little princess. Why? Old Ao, are you still clinging on to hope? Although Ao Tuo's action was subtle, it still did not fail to escape Jimmy Air's notice. Immediately, the latter shook his head somewhat helplessly. Regardless of how great Yan Zhao's talent was, a tier 2 alchemist would have difficulty fighting for victory against these tier 3 alchemists. Cuckoo. Ao Tua laughed, but did not argue with Jimmy Air. He slotted both his hands together and placed them on his knee before shaking the tilted chair as he quietly waited for the results of the test. Seeing Ao Tuo's silence, Jimmy Air also did not say anything else. He sighed softly before turning his gaze once again to the empty hall. His heart slowly counted the drops of sand marking the time. When the sand in the hourglass fell until only a quarter remained, a black curtain moved abruptly. Immediately, the few gazes on the high platform were instantly shot over and stared intently at that black curtain. A hand was extended out of the black curtain and pulled it aside. With a feminine smile, a handsome young man slowly walked out. It is indeed him. Eyeing the young man with a tall and straight figure, Ao Tua and the others were momentarily blank. They exchanged glances with Chiemi Air before sighing and shaking their heads immediately. The disciple taught by Gu he did indeed have some skills. Lu Ling strode out from behind the black curtain. After which, he stopped at the middle of the hall and smiled at Chiemi Air and the others on the high platform. He then bowed elegantly in an extremely gentlemanly fashion. Not long after Lu Ling came out, an ethereal figure swiftly leaped out from behind a black curtain. When she saw Lu Ling who was already standing in the middle of the hall, a disappointment immediately appeared on her exquisite face. She slowly walked to the middle of the hall and tooted as she said, Big Brother Lu, I didn't expect that you would be so fast. Hee hee, little princess, you aren't slow either. Lu Ling smiled and said. Hmm. Although you are faster than me, your medicinal ingredients may not be as pure as mine. Little princess softly snorted and said as she waved her snow white fist. Lu Ling nodded his head and smiled without speaking. A short two to three minutes after Little Princess came out, the quiet black curtain were immediately opened one after another, as though a chain reaction had occurred. Numerous human figures came out from within them and finally stood in the hall. The first thirteen people who had came out from the black curtain all had a tier three alchemist badge on their chest. Clearly, in terms of refining, they far surpassed those tier two alchemists. After these thirteen people appeared, the black curtain ceased moving. Only ten minutes later were there people who came out one after another from behind the black curtain. All of these people, without exception, were Tier 2 Alchemists. When these Tier 2 Alchemists who came out saw those 13 Tier 3 Alchemists who stood with their chests puffed out and their heads held high in the middle of the hall, they smiled bitterly and shook their heads. Immediately, they appeared somewhat dejected as they stood at the rear. 
Clearly, after this initial test, they roughly knew their distance from these seated competitors. As the black curtains repeatedly moved, the sand in the hourglass was pouring to the point where it was about to become empty. However, Ao Tuo's eyebrows were tightly pressed together. This was because until now, Xiao Yan had yet to appear. What is this little fellow doing? Don't tell me that he has not completed the refinement. Impossible. With his ability, even if he cannot catch up with the top competitors like Lu Ling, he shouldn't be left behind to such an extent. Ao Tuo's hand held the armrest as he muttered somewhat anxiously in his heart. Ah. By one side, Chiemi Air saw his anxious old friend and could not help but sigh. He patted his friend's back in consolation. Standing at the first spot in the crowd, Lu Ling's face carried a faint smile as he looked around the hall. When he did not spot Xiao Yan's figure, a cold laughter and ridicule immediately surged from the deep regions of his eyes. As time flowed by, the empty large hall once again became filled. However, everyone remained quiet. Numerous gazes spontaneously paused at the black curtain where Xiao Yan had entered. At this moment, of all the competitors, only Xiao Yan had yet to come out. The sand in the hourglass came splashing downward. Ao Tuo's eyebrows were pressed together until it almost formed a line. Hey, big brother Lu, is that your friend? His appearance is quite poor. Eyeing the strange expression Ao Tuo on the high platform, little princess turned her head and laughed softly to Lu Ling. Haha, little princess is joking. He and I have only met a few times. We are far from what is considered as friends. Lu Ling laughed gently. That's true. With your ability and pride, it appears that you have never befriended those who don't have any potential. Little princess smiled. Her words were extremely sharp. Having come from the imperial family where people schemed and fought each other, she thought that only those who had ability that she could treat seriously were qualified to be viewed as a friend. An ordinary tier 2 alchemist did not have the ability for her to lower herself. Lu Ling smiled and nodded his head. His gaze once again glanced at the black curtain which still did not have any moment. With a mocking laughter, he finally ceased continuing to pay attention and turned his gaze away. On the high platform, the sand within the hourglass had already completely fallen. Therefore, Chiemi Air helplessly shook his head. He did not expect that the competitor recommended by Ao Tuo was so incompetent that he would actually fail to pass the initial test. He sighed, stood up, wanting to announce that the refinement was over. Ao Tuo by the side had also sensed Chiemi Air's action. His expression became slightly bitter but he did not have any method to stop him. Shaking his head dispiritedly, he leaned back on the chair and let out a long breath. All right everyone. I'll announce that the time. I'm sorry that I'm late. Just as Chiemi Air was about to announce the end of the refinement, a calm voice was suddenly emitted from behind the black curtain. Immediately, a black figure pulled aside the black curtain and slowly walked out with a calm face. He looked at the stunned face Chiemi Air wore and bowed slightly. Who? Hearing this calm voice, Ao Tuo abruptly lowered his head. He stared intently at Xiao Yan who seemed somewhat hurried as he walked out from behind the black curtain. However, the large stone hanging in his heart finally fell. TSK TSK, I did not expect that he could rush it out during this last bit of time. How lucky. But a medicinal ingredient that was hastily rushed would likely not be very good. Little princess watched Xiao Yan who had just came out with interest and softly said. He will be eliminated if he isn't good. That's something very common. The grand meeting is short of almost everything but it is not short of competitors. Lu Ling narrowed his eyes as he glanced at Xiao Yan and laughed faintly. Standing on the high platform, Chiemi air eyed Xiao Yan who had finally appeared. He then tilted his head and watched Ao Tuo who had sighed in relief. In his heart, he quietly said, ah, uh, although he managed to rush it out, but seeing that he barely made it, it is likely the result will not be too ideal. What a pity. Poor old Ao. Turning his head around, Chiemi air clapped his heads and pulled back all the strange gazes that were staring at Xiao Yan. He softly coughed before saying in a deep voice, since everyone has punctually come out, then we shall begin preparing for the next section of the test. As he said, Chiemi Air took a few steps forward and lifted a black cloth that was located on the platform. Instantly, he revealed a precision machinery that had a flickering glow. This is a purity measuring instrument which was built by some famous blacksmith who our alchemist association had hired. It is able to accurately test the purity of the ingredients that you have refined. Chiemi Air rubbed the dark black machine, pointed at a groove and said, this is the place for you to put the ingredients to be measured. After saying this, he pointed to a screen. Some character were repeatedly flashing on it. This spot will reveal the degree of purity. It is out of 10 points. 10 points is the highest, while 1 point is the lowest. You need 4 points to pass. Alright. Now, all of you will put that black iron spiritual leaf that you have refined into it. Remember, before you put it in, it would be best if you tell us how many times you refined it. Each time that a medicinal ingredient was refined, the difficulty of doing it would be a few times harder than the last time. For example, even with Chiemi Air's strength, he would at most be able to refine this black iron spiritual leaf repeatedly for ten times. If he did any more than that he would be wasting his effort without gaining any benefits. Let's begin. Chiemi Air clapped his hand softly. The group of tier 4 alchemists stood up from their chairs and came to the front of the examination instrument. They appeared somewhat curious as they waited for the unveiling of the results. 
As Chami Air's words fell, everyone in the hall glanced at each other. Finally, a tier 3 alchemist who was near the front of the queue walked forward and took out a jade bottle that stored the black iron spiritual leaf from his storage ring. After which, he placed it into the groove. He faced Chiemi Air and the others on top and said respectfully, Deputy Chairman Sir, with my ability, I can only refine the black iron spiritual leaf three times. Chiemi Air nodded slightly. Being able to perform three effective refinements on the black iron spiritual leaf could be considered a result that was not bad. According to his estimation, the purity that this young man's refinement had reached should be around five points or so. As Chiemi Air had expected, after the machine flickered a couple of times, the monitor immediately revealed a large five. Five points. You pass the test. Congratulations. Seeing the blood red word, Chiemi Air nodded and laughed. Next. Four points, pass. A tier two alchemist was pushed forward and swiftly prepared everything. A moment later, the word four that was flashed on the monitor caused him to rejoice as he exhaled. After which, he patted his chest and moved to one side. Next. Five points, pass. Next. Three points, fail. After a few people who had passed, there was finally an unlucky tier 2 alchemist who stepped back with a defeated expression. As the time for the examination flowed by, Lu Ling finally moved leisurely to the side of the examination machine under the focus of everyone. After which, he took out a jade bottle from his storage ring and carefully placed it into the groove. He lifted his head and said and smiled to Chemi Air. I have limited ability. I can only refine it six times. Once Lu Ling's words left his mouth, everyone in the room was immediately stunned. At that moment they were in an uproar. Not only the people below, but also Chemi Air and the others could not help but exchange astonished gazes. Being able to refine the Black Iron Spiritual Leaf five times would at least require the ability of a peak level tier 3 alchemist. TL, peak level tier 3 alchemist, the highest level within tier 3. If one advanced further, one would reach tier 4. Chemi Air softly sighed. His gaze shifted to the monitor. There, the glow flickered for some time before a large 7 slowly appeared. 7 points. Congratulations, you have passed. Chiemi Air exhaled gently as he smiled and said. Lu Ling smiled and moved his lofty body to one side. Off and on, his gaze would drift toward the furthest person in back where Xiaoyan rested with his eyes closed. With the climax created by Lu Ling, the rest that followed behind undoubtedly appeared extremely ordinary. The people who were only able to refine it two or three times came one after another. They were unable to hook onto the heart of Chiemi Air and the others. The dullness carried on until it was Little Princess's turn where it was finally broken. This young lady who was quite young was actually able to refine the Black Iron Spiritual Leaf five times. However, due to some issues as a result of her inexperience, the grade she obtained was worse than Lu Ling by 0.5 points. After Little Princess, there were a few seated competitors with abilities that were quite good and managed to achieve six points each. However, when these people were compared to Lu Ling, they undoubtedly fared a little poorer. Looking at this situation, the person with the best result would definitely be Lu Ling. As the candidates went over one after another, the middle of the large hall once again began to gradually become empty. A moment later, only Xiao Yan was left standing alone in the middle. Yan Xiao, it's your turn. Seeing Xiao Yan, who had his eyes closed as though he was sleeping, Chiemi Air helplessly opened his mouth and hastened him. Hearing the urging voice, Xiao Yan slowly opened his eyes. He lazily scanned around him before finally stopping on Lu Ling who was smiling as he looked at him. Xiao Yan smiled faintly. After which, he threw a comforting gaze toward the anxious-faced Ao Tua. Xiao Yan climbed up a few stairs with wide steps before stopping at the side of the examination machine. He took out the jade bottle that contained the powder refined from the black iron spiritual leaf. After which, he randomly threw it into the groove under Chemi Air and the other speechless gaze. Little fellow. How many times did you refine this ingredient? Seeing that Xiao Yan, who had his head lowered, did not have any intention of opening his mouth to speak, Chemi Air could only take the initiative to inquire. How many times? Xiao Yan frowned slightly and hesitated for a moment. He then said uncertainly, it seems like, eight times. Silence. The large hall became as silent as death at this moment. Humph, foolish fellow. Does he think that such words can be randomly reported? Being similarly violently choked by these words of Xiao Yan, little princess finally could not help but coldly mock. She did not believe that a tier 2 alchemist would actually have the ability to refine the black iron spiritual leaf eight times. However, before the cold smile on little princess's pretty face could completely disappear, it abruptly stiffened at the next moment. This was because, a bright red large, nine, had slowly surfaced on the monitor of the examination machine. 9 points. As they saw the bright red large number, Chiemi Air suddenly felt that his heart had instantly shrunk tightly. Chapter 294, The Finish Silence. A silence like that of death. The originally lively hall had in an instant become totally quiet. The flickering bright red glow on the examination machine flashed on the faces of everyone, imprinting a comical dullness. Ao Tuo watched the flickering monitor with a stunned expression. 
His heart, which felt a little helpless at Xiao Yan's earlier performance appeared to have undergone a drastic change. Having the ability to refine the Black Iron Spiritual Leaf four eight times was something that could be comparable to some alchemists who had just entered Tier 4. It should be known that with AO2O's flame controlling ability, he could only refine the ingredient nine times. TL, peak of tier 3 dash, start of tier 4 equals large jump like dosher to the dosher. However, Xiao Yan was actually able to achieve this stage at such an age. He was afraid that this training talent could only use one word to be described, monstrous. AO Tua had never underestimated Xiao Yan's talent for refining pills. However, Xiao Yan's performance had still let him understand that his high regard for Xiao Yan was still low. It appears that this fellow already possesses the ability to take the test for a tier 3 alchemist. Ah, he hides it really deep, causing my old self to be so alarmed. Ao Tua muttered in his heart. He eyed the calm face of the young man in front of him and shook his head with a bitter smile. Within the large hall, the silent atmosphere persisted for a long time before it finally and gradually eased up. Numerous different gazes that contained respect, curiosity, envy, etc., were repeatedly shot at the skinny back. Currently, there was not a single person who dared to display the kind of eyes they used when Xiao Yan had entered some time ago. The little princess bit her red lips while the shock in her eyes was slowly withdrawn. Her gaze swept over Xiao Yan. When she recalled her attitude from before, some helplessness and anger flashed across her eyes. This fellow purposefully hid his strength to let people look down on him. Is he a masochist? Of course, with the ability that Xiao Yan had currently displayed, little princess could naturally only say these words in her heart. She clearly understood that with her earlier attitude, she had definitely caused Xiao Yan to feel some dislike for her in his heart. Therefore, she did not choose to immediately step forward to apologize and curry favor. Although Xiao Yan may be an outstanding seated competitor who had strength, it was not sufficient for her, as the little princess of the imperial family, to humbly try to befriend him. However, honestly speaking, losing the chance to cross arms with such an outstanding person caused little princess to feel a little bitter in her heart. While little princess was quietly thinking to herself, the handsome face of Lu Ling by her side alternated between being dark and clear. His eyes stared at the flickering red-colored score. Seeing his manner, it appeared that he was highly doubtful of the authenticity of the examination machine. Nine points. Heavens. That was higher than him by a full two points. This was something that the proud boned Lu Ling had some difficulty accepting. Everyone in the hall had different expressions under this shocking results and they were all extremely interested now. Chiemi Air coughed gently and woke up everyone from their dull state. His eyes gave a complicated look as he eyed the young man with an ordinary appearance. A long while later, he sighed and said, Ah, it looks like I am really old. I nearly, but young friend Yan Xiao hides his ability really deeply. With this ability of yours, the tier 2 badge on your chest is somewhat incomparable with your status. After this somewhat terrifying grade of Xiao Yan, the manner in which Chiemi Air used to address him also began to have some changes. Regardless of Xiao Yan's actual strength, just this display of ingredient refinement was something that an ordinary alchemist could not do. Moreover, Xiao Yan's current age and potential was the true reason for Chiemi Air to really view him seriously. At around the age of 20, he was able to refine the Black Iron Spiritual Leaf eight times. It was likely that even Guhi back then could not do such a thing. And, most importantly, just what kind of strength did the teacher behind Xiao Yan had if he was able to teach such an outstanding student? Clearly sensing some faint attitude change in the other party's tone, Xiao Yan calmly smiled. Deputy Chairman must be joking. I am only a little good at controlling flame. The others are not worth mentioning. After this test which had shocked the entire place, Chiemi Air would naturally no longer believe such words from Xiao Yan. He smiled with assent, merely thinking that Xiao Yan was just trying to continue hiding his ability. Old Ao, you have very good vision. Chiemi Air turned his head around and patted the shoulders of Ao Tua who had recovered from his shock as he said with a smile. This has also far exceeded my expectation. I did not expect that in nearly a year, this little fellow had improved to such a stage. Back then, when he was taking the test for a tier 2 alchemist in my association, he was very far from what he is now. This improvement speed really leaves one speechless. Although Ao Tua felt very good because of those old envious gazes around him, he still smiled bitterly and shook his head before sighing. Forget it. Let's not bother about this now. We should first announce the results of the test. Ao Tua rubbed his white beard. He saw Xiao Yan's calm face and did not continue to be entangled by this issue. Instead, he voiced a reminder. Do we still need to announce it? Yan Zhao's grade is the best. Lu Ling is second, followed by Yu Er. Other than those people who did not met the requirement, the rest can be considered to have passed. Chiemi Er smiled, immediately turned around and faced Xiao Yan and his competitors. He said seriously, I would first like to congratulate those who have passed the association's internal test. Tomorrow will be the time when the test starts, all of you should be clear that in such a grand meeting, there will be some outstanding alchemists from other countries beside the alchemists from our country participating. Similarly, their ability cannot be underestimated. All of you should do your utmost best to suppress them. Otherwise, if the alchemists from another country were to take the champion of our empire's grand competition, it would really be embarrassing. Yes. Being placed with this large hat of bringing honor to the country, some of the young men who had not yet seen the world immediately felt their blood boil. An excited orderly response echoed throughout the entire hall. 
With both hands lazily inserted in his sleeves, Xiao Yan indifferently watched some of the young people around him whose emotions had soared. Other than Lu Ling and few others, most of the alchemists had varying degrees of excited redness on their faces. The corner of Xiao Yan's eyes glanced at Lu Ling's somewhat gloomy face. The corner of his mouth was lifted. Clearly, this guy was still bearing a grudge over having lost to him in the test. Xiao Yan's finger randomly flicked in his sleeves. This passionate speech of Chiemi Air did not have the slightest effect on Xiao Yan. Although his current age ought to be when young people were extremely frivolous, it appeared to be very difficult to find such a thing on Xiao Yan. Were it not for him having some interest in the reward for the champion spot, it was likely that Xiao Yan would not participate in such a grand meeting. Rudely speaking, it was none of his concern whether it was a competitor from other countries or this empire became the champion. Standing on the high platform, Chiemi Air slowly swept over the competitors below whose enthusiasm had soared. When his gaze was shifted to Xiao Yan, he was momentarily stunned. Immediately, his eyes narrowed. The value he attached to Xiao Yan in his heart had also become much greater. This little fellow is really not simple. If it was someone much older who possessed such a calm manner, Chiemi Air would not feel anything inappropriate. However, a person around 20 years old ought to be at the stage where one was a wildly arrogant and an uncontrolled young man. However, Xiao Yan had a mental strength like an old man who had experienced worldly affairs for a long time. This could not help but cause people to treat him with great attention. From how Chiemi Air saw it, Xiao Yan already possessed some ability and his character had far exceeded the basic requirement. He had already met the two most important conditions to become a strong person. Him growing stronger was only a matter of time. Once I return, I must definitely let Ao Tua tell us more about Yan Zhao's background. If things are done appropriately, this little fellow may well be another Pil King Gu Yi. He might even have the possibility to exceed him. Chiemi Air muttered softly in his heart. If he really does possess this potential, we must definitely not let such a talent fall into the Misty Cloud sect or those other strengths hands this time around. As he thought in this manner within his heart, Chiemi Air no longer procrastinated. He waved his hand and smiled as he said to everyone, Haha, all right. The test is over. Everyone please take your leave. Remember the starting time of the grand meeting tomorrow. Do not be late because of anything. Hearing this, everyone in the hall faced the group of association elders on the high platform. They bowed before scattering. Kuku, Mr. Yen Xiao. I did not expect that you would have your skills hidden so well. Lu Ling really admires you. Just as Xiao Yan wanted to follow the large human crowd to leave the hall, a laughter caused him to knit his eyebrow together slightly and pause his footsteps. He tilted his head to see that smiling Lu Ling and said faintly, I was just lucky. There isn't any hiding of skills. Mr. Yen Xiao still keeps such a low profile. Kuko, I think that you should have used the heavenly flame during the test, right? Lu Ling laughed. Although the truth was in front of him, he still did not quite believe that Xiao Yan completely used his own strength to obtain such a result. Recalling the matter about the heavenly flame back then, he became much more relieved. From how he saw it, Xiao Yan should have used the heavenly flame during this test in order to obtain such an outstanding result. If it was like this, he should be about the same as Xiao Yan if he used his hidden card. When a person who had always been called a genius all the time suddenly met a person of similar age who actually far surpassed him, he would find many different excuses in order to put up a facade that this new person was really just like anyone else. This was all in order to show that he was not weaker than the other person. Xiao Yan glanced at this handsome young man who was naturally blessed with good looks. He naturally knew the meaning contained in the other person's words. Immediately, he smiled in a somewhat ridiculing manner as he said softly, Mr. Lu Ling. Just treat whatever you say as correct. I don't have any opinions. Xiao Yan did not have any intention to argue with Lu Ling. This was because he thought this was extremely silly. Since the other party was willing to believe his own wild imagination, he would just leave him be. The final truth would give him a few violent tight slaps. Saying anything to him now would only cause him to think that Xiao Yan was acting. Since it was so, what else could Xiao Yan say? After saying the sentence, the corner of Xiao Yan's mouth contained a mocking smile as he directly walked out of the door under the presence of Lu Ling's cold gaze. After which, he disappeared from Lu Ling's sight. With a gaze that contained a coldness, Lu Ling stared at Xiao Yan's disappearing back. He pursed up his lips into a thin line. Clenching his fist, he softly and coldly laughed, what is there to be proud of? The competition in the grand meeting does not merely test how to refine the ingredients. Wait until the grand meeting. I will let you know that other than the heavenly flame, everything else about you is basically worthless. Chapter 295, Black Horse As Xiao Yan walked out of the test ground, Ao Tua caught up with him from behind and walked side by side with Xiao Yan. Occasionally, Ao Tua would tilt his head and glance at the calm-faced young man who was smiling. His gaze was somewhat strange. Why do you keep staring at me? After walking for some distance, Xiao Yan could not endure Ao Tuo's gaze. Finally, he helplessly shook his head and asked. Kuko, I am just trying to figure out how many things you, little fellow, are hiding. You are actually able to cause everyone to be so shocked. Ao Tuo said with a smile. Hearing this, Xiao Yan could only helplessly shrug his shoulders. 
with your performance being so eye-catching this time around, I think that old fellow, Chi Mi Air, will definitely come to me to inquire about your background pretty soon. Although he does not know your actual ability, just being able to refine the black iron spiritual leaf eight times when you are only around 20 years old is something that could be counted with one hand since the association was founded. Ao Tua said. I know. As Xiao Yan slowly walked, he nodded his head. During the refining of the black iron spiritual leaf, he had also considered all of this. However, the grand meeting was about to begin. Revealing his ability was something that had to be done sooner or later. Therefore, there was no necessity to purposefully perform poorly here. Although keeping a low profile was good, if it was overdone, the disdain and the mocking gazes really caused Xiao Yan to feel entangled and helpless. I will have to trouble Grandmaster Ao Tua to help me keep anything related to my identity a secret. Xiao Yan pursed up his lips and softly said, due to some issues, if my identity is exposed, it is very likely that I would be unable to participate in this grand meeting. Therefore, I would like Grandmaster to try your best to help me. Hearing the serious consequence that Xiao Yan had mentioned, Ao Tua was at a loss. He immediately knit his eyebrows tightly together. If Xiao Yan were to withdraw from the competition, it would result in the Black Rock City's Alchemist Association losing a chance to obtain a good result. This threat had a very significant weight toward Ao Tua who had not had any great contributions ever since he came into his position. Ao Tua frowned tightly and mused for a long while before nodding his head. He smiled bitterly and said, All right. I will try my best to help you keep it a secret. It is good that the member information has yet to be submitted. I can still change it. Kuku, then thank you very much, Grandmaster Ao Tua. Hearing his words, Xiao Yan sighed in relief and replied along with a smile. There's no choice. I don't want the competitor that I had a difficult time finding to just run away. Ao Tua helplessly said. Xiao Yan smiled. He was about to say something when Frank's clear laughter suddenly sounded in front of them. Hey, old Ao. How was it? Has the test ended? How did the little fellow do? Currently, Xiao Yan and Ao Tua had already walked out of the corridor. Since this was an intersection, the human flow here was quite significant. When they heard Frank's laughter, there were quite a number of curious people who immediately slowed their footsteps and threw their gazes at Xiao Yan, who was walking together with Ao Tua. As the test before was an internal one, these alchemists did not know the exact results of the competition. However, they were able to know that the people who were able to participate in that internal test were mostly seated competitors in this grand meeting and their abilities were extraordinary. Hearing the laughter, Xiao Yan raised his head and eyed Frank who was striding over with a smile. Following beside him was the icy-looking Xue Mei, who was wearing a silver-colored dress and Ling Fei. At the moment, their gazes were a little curious as they too, shot them towards Xiao Yan. Clearly, they were very curious as to what kind of results Xiao Yan was able to obtain at a test of this level. It's alright. I have barely managed to pass. Seeing the three people who had arrived in front of him, Xiao Yan smiled and said. Hearing this, Ao Tua at the side rolled his eyes. If this kind of result was considered just passable, then wouldn't the rest of the people fail? Haha, <laughs> you passed. That's good. I was originally still a little worried. After all, those fellows who participate in the internal test aren't ordinary people. Frank said with another smile. Hey, you. This time around, you are representing our Black Rock City. Although I don't expect you to surpass the geniuses around Lu Ling's level, you need to at least get into the top 10 for this kind of internal test in order for you to gain the possibility of attaining a good result at the grand meeting. Just simply passable is inadequate. Ling Fei muttered. Clearly, she thought the passable that Xiao Yan had mentioned would be the kind that barely met the grade needed to pass. Lu Ling may be a genius, but he is after all the disciple of the Pill King. Moreover, he is a little older than Xiao. Yan Xiao. Having received such a result is already quite good. At the very least, we don't even have the qualification to obtain this kind of result. It appeared that because Xiao Yan helped put in some good words on her behalf on the matter of the Peach Blossom Flame, the last time around, Xue Mei glanced at Ling Fei and said faintly, I know that you hero worship that Lu Ling, but Yan Xiao is someone from our side. If he loses, our Black Rock City's reputation will suffer. I have only said this because he is the representative from our Black Rock City, and did not say much about him, what does this have to do with Lu Ling? Ling Fei said resentfully. Oh, alright. The both of you should quiet down. Seeing this pair of enemies, Ao Tua helplessly shook his head. He faced Frank and said with a grin, when you hear what happened, you will likely be shocked until your jaws drop. Oh. What happened? Frank was stunned as he uncertainly asked. Ao Tua silently smiled. He was about to open his mouth when a commotion occurred in the corridor behind him. They turned around to take a look. It appeared that the commotion was caused by the competitors that were participating in the test who had successively come out. The two people right at the front were coincidentally the little princess and the somewhat gloomy-faced Lu Ling. Is that Lu Ling? Pill King Grandmaster Guhi's disciple. His presence is indeed extraordinary. He's a tier 3 alchemist at such a young age. Ah, he really causes people. I think that the one with the best result for the test would undoubtedly be him. He does have such a good teacher. There's no point being envious over it. Eyeing the group of people that had walked out from the corridor, the surrounding people immediately began to engage in their private conversations. Xiao Yan tilted his head and eyed Lu Ling, who was walking over. He smiled. 
Walking out of the corridor with a gloomy face, Lu Ling spotted the familiar back with one glance. The corner of his mouth twitched a little. He then inhaled a deep breath of air. Instantly, the emotions on his face swiftly disappeared. Replacing it was that feminine smile. Mr. Yen Xiao congratulations. Lu Ling walked forward. He first bowed and greeted Ao Tua and Frank before turning his head to speak to Xiao Yen, with a smile plastered on his face. Xiao Yen shook his head. I was lucky. I still have something to do and it is not convenient for me to converse any longer, Mr. Yen Xiao, let us meet at the grand meeting tomorrow. Lu Ling clearly was not in the mood to chat now. After he greeted them, he lifted his feet and quickly moved past Xiao Yan's group. After which, he passed through the crowd and disappeared from everyone's sight. Mr. Yan Xiao. After following Lu Ling and taking a few steps forward, Little Princess suddenly paused. She hesitated a moment before turning around and said with a smile to Xiao Yan, There is a gathering tonight where many alchemists will be attending, you. He he, I'm sorry. I still have something to do tonight and I'm afraid I won't have the time. Xiao Yan was a little stunned at this olive branch that the Little Princess suddenly extended toward him. He immediately understood the true reasoning, shook his head and smiled as he replied. Xiao Yan's rejection was not beyond Little Princess's expectations. Her lips moved a little. After staring at Xiao Yan for a moment, she finally said with another smile, Since it's like this, then I will not force you. In the future, if Mr. Yan Xiao needs any help, you can come and look for me. Goodbye. Xiao Yan pursed up his lips as he eyed the Little Princess who slowly disappeared from the edge of his sight. He recalled her attitude toward him before the test and took a look at the situation again. He could not help but smile bitterly as he said in his heart, she is indeed a person from the imperial family. In her eyes, the difference between someone useful and someone who is not actually makes such a big difference in treatment. After watching Lu Ling disappear, Ling Fei, who still had stars in her pupils, finally turned around. She eyed Xiao Yan and asked doubtfully, that's right. Why did he congratulate you just now? It's nothing. Xiao Yan smiled. He did not think that winning over Lu Ling was something very great. Although he was Guhi's disciple, but to Xiao Yan, who had once dared to treat Guhi and Queen Medusa as fish and pearl while he acted as a fisherman, this little fame did not cause him to feel the slightest awe. TL, take advantage of Guhi and Queen Medusa's fight to benefit. Everyone, I also have some things to do. I will take my leave first. Let's meet again at tomorrow's grand meeting. Without giving Ling Fei a chance to continue to inquire further, Xiao Yan smiled at Ao Tua and the others. He cupped his hands together before swiftly walking out of the association. The internal test just now was to refine the black iron spiritual leaf. Dot. Watching Xiao Yan's hurrying back, Ao Tua touched his white beard and suddenly said a moment later. Refining the black iron spiritual leaf. That seems quite difficult. That thing is almost the hardest ingredient among the middle grade ingredients to refine. With my current ability, I would at most be able to refine it eight or nine times. Hearing his words, Frank was surprised as he turned his head and replied. Haha, that's right. Ao Tua smiled and nodded his head. He faced the spot where Lu Ling disappeared and fondled his chin. That little fellow refined it six times. Six times. Hearing Ao Tuo's words, Frank's face was immediately filled with shock. He clicked his tongue and praised, how incredible. At such an age, he was actually able to achieve that many refinements. He really is worthy of being Guhi's disciple. That thing. I seem to be only able to refine two times. Ling Fei is around the same as me. That Lu Ling's talent is really extraordinary. Shui Mei at the side sighed gently as she said. He he. That is only natural. The most outstanding person among the Jiama Empire's younger generation alchemists is undoubtedly no one but him. Ling Fei smiled and said. Seeing her manner, it appeared that she was really worshipped Lu Ling. Kuku, that may not necessarily be true. Ao Tua smiled and shook his head. Seeing Ling Fei's angry eyes staring at him, he said with a grin, although Lu Ling is extremely outstanding, Yen Xiao is not any worse compared to him. In the test just now, Lu Ling refined six times while Yen Xiao did it eight times. These words of Ao Tua were undoubtedly like a thunderbolt, causing Frank's expression to instantly stiffen. Eight times. That was an extent that required a tier 4 alchemist in order to achieve. Yet Xiao Yan, as a tier 2 alchemist, was actually able to achieve this. How was this possible? Tiak. Teacher, you, you are joking right? Ling Fei recovered from her shock as she awkwardly said. She had great difficulty believing that Xiao Yan was actually, ridiculously stronger than Lu Ling. On one side, Xue Mei also widened her red lips. Her icy expression was at the moment, somewhat shocked. Although she had never underestimated Xiao Yan, she had never thought that he would be able to attain such an eye-catching result. Old Ao. Is what you said true? Fu Lanka stared at Ao Tua intently. His face revealed an unrestrained joy. The more outstanding Xiao Yan's performance was, the greater the benefit to the Black Rock City's branch. This little fellow hides his ability absurdly deep. Suddenly, I have began to anticipate the grand meeting this time around. Ao Tua smiled as he eyed the spot where Xiao Yan had disappeared from. He said, during this grand meeting, Yan Xiao may well be the largest black horse. Chapter 296, Gathering 
After walking out from the Alchemist Association, Xiao Yan returned directly to the inn where he was staying at. He rested a couple of hours in the inn until he had recovered to his peak before he left the inn. He then walked to the Nalan clan to begin today's poison removing session. Although he knew that the searing poison within his body would become denser each time he helped Nalan Jia remove the poison, Xiao Yan could only continue in this manner in order to get the powerful energy contained in the searing poison and the seven magical green spirit saliva. However, regardless of how abnormal the searing poison was, he was not extremely concerned. After all, with the green lotus core flame protecting his body, Xiao Yan believed that he could contend with the searing poison even if it erupted inside him. After these few days where Nalan Jie and Nalan Su personally saw him off, the entire Nalan clan had all come to know Xiao Yan as a young man with a cold expression. Therefore, when they saw his figure, not only did they not step forward to block him, they also respectfully bowed and greeted him when he passed by. Currently, the sky had already turned dark. However, the Nalan clan remained brightly lit. The members of the clan came and went on the paths, much like a marketplace. Xiao Yan walked past a couple of small paths with great familiarity and the spacious large hall of the Nalan clan once again appeared in his sight. He slowly walked closer. Waves of noisy laughter that were mixed with some melodies were emitted from the hall. This caused Xiao Yan, who liked serenity to frown slightly. Slowly walking into the hall, Xiao Yan lifted his eyes and glanced around. He saw that there were quite a number of people sitting with him. They were smiling and conversing with each other, as if it was a fun gathering. Standing by the door, Xiao Yan's gaze swept through the interior of the hall and was somewhat surprised to find that not only Lu Ling and Little Princess were present, but even Yifei was among them. The current her was wearing a red-colored tight dress. A snow-white fur coat covered her shoulders, adding a little grace and luxury to her appearance. Her beautiful and enchanting curves caused quite a number of men's gazes to secretly shoot over to her. Looks like I came at an inappropriate time. Eyeing this lively hall, Xiao Yan helplessly shook his head. He was just about to turn around and return when a female's gentle voice suddenly sounded from his side, Mr. Yan Xiao, since you are here, why don't you come in and rest for a while? Hearing the voice, Xiao Yan tilted his head and eyed the delicate beauty standing beside a pillar. His indifferent face involuntarily became a little warmer. However, following closely after that, his face once again recovered its indifferentness as he said, there's no need. Nalin Xiao Jia, I like silence and really don't enjoy these kinds of scenes. The beauty that appeared beside the pillar was naturally the most precious person of the Nalin clan, Nalin Yanran. She was currently standing prettily by the pillar. Her exquisite and peerless face contained a gentle smile. The wide sleeves, moon-colored clothes that only a member of the Misty Cloud sect could wear, occasionally revealed the graceful curves underneath. When comparing her figure, she did not appear to be any worse than Yifei. However, their auras were completely different. Seeing the current Nalin Yanran, Xiao Yan could not help but admit that during these three years, she had indeed changed from that spoiled youth back then to the current matured lady who had a refined presence. For such a lady, it would not be strange if one said that she was courted by all the men within thousands of kilometers. However, regardless of how Nalin Yanran changed, the one that was imprinted in Xiao Yan's mind like a brand was always that spoiled girl who had forcefully broke the engagement in the Xiao clan, making things difficult for his father back then. Therefore, it had been difficult for Xiao Yan to display any nice expressions toward her. Mr. Yan Xiao, I heard that during the Alchemist Association's internal test this time around your results were quite good. Nalin Yanran had been seeing Xiao Yan's icy face whenever they met during these couple of days. Therefore, Nalin Yanran did not withdraw because of his current expression. She slowly walked forward and said with a smile, Congratulations. As he sniffed the fragrance that shrouded around him, Xiao Yan's footsteps moved toward the other side without anyone noticing. Xiao Yan did not feel that it was strange for her to know about the result of the Alchemist Association's internal test. With the Nalin clan's strength in the Jiama Empire, it was not difficult to know about this little bit of information. Moreover, in order to please her, what would that Lu Ling not say? Luck Xiao Yan said, shaking his head faintly. He spoke as if he cherished each word like precious gold, only spending a little at a time. His gaze did not even turn to Nalin Yanran as he spoke, he remained in silence. This indifferentness of Xiao Yan that isolated people far away from him caused Nalin Yanran to feel a little headache. In so many years, the young man in front of her was the first male to treat her so coldly. She smiled bitterly and shook her head, intending to cease speaking. However, she was about to step away when a numb gentle laughter that could cause men to feel their legs grow weak suddenly sounded behind them. Hee hee, Nalin Xiao Jia, there are many people waiting for you inside. Yet you are leisurely chatting with someone here. Hearing this familiar laughter, Xiao Yan turned his head. He eyed the bewitching woman who was carrying a cup of red wine and lazily leaning against the door. His cold and indifferent face melted slightly. Hello Mr. Yan Xiao. We meet again. Yifei smiled and walked forward as she waved her transparent wine cup at Xiao Yan. Her long pretty eyelashes emitted a fox demon-like cunningness. Why? Is Mr. Yan Xiao and Yifei close? Hearing Yifei's greeting, Nalin Yanran's eyebrows twitched without leaving a trace as she asked with a smile. Yan Xiao and I have known each other for a few years and our relationship is quite good. Yifei said and gave yet another smile. Her eyes rotated and swept towards Xiao Yan as she said with a smile still on her face, Am I right, Mr. Yan Xiao? Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders and took the wine cup from Yifei's hand in an offhand manner. 
After which, he emptied it into his mouth in front of the latter's slightly red pretty face. He said with a smile, why are you here? Yifei grabbed the wine cup from Xiao Yan hand and angrily said with a slightly red face, you really are too rude. Xiao Yan smiled as he stared at Yifei's red and sleek face. The latter's enchanting loveliness really moved people's hearts. No wonder back at Wuten City, there were countless of men who shoved until their heads were injured as they rushed to the auction house in order to see Yifei's appearance. Back then, father also appeared to have such symptoms. An old bull eating the tender glass is not a good act. Xiao Yan's hand slowly fondled his chin as he suddenly thought mischievously in his heart. TL, an old bull eating the tender glass equals an old man having a woman much younger than him. Nalin Yenron stood on one side and eyed these two people who had some signs of flirting. Her exquisite face became a little unnatural. She had originally thought that Xiao Yan's coldness was caused by his character. However, when she saw the warmth in his smile between him and Yifei, she saw that it was completely void of the coldness that he had when treating her. Mr. Yan Xiao, Yifei Xiao Jie, you can continue to chat. I will go first. Sorry. Nalin Yenron bowed slightly to the two of them, turned around and walked into the large hall, leaving the moving figure of her back for them to see. As he watched Nalin Yenron's back, which had left, Xiao Yan did not have any intention of staying any longer. He pursed up his lips and tasted the remaining taste of the red wine in his mouth. Little fellow. You got some guts to actually take advantage of elder sister. After Nalin Yenron left, Yifei's eyebrows became vertical as she spoke to Xiao Yan with annoyance. Xiao Yan's gaze swept past Yifei's face and finally stopped on those seductive red lips. He recalled the fascinating thought of the two of them drinking from the same wine cup a moment ago. A smile surfaced on the corner of his mouth. As her mouth was being stared at by Xiao Yan, Yifei naturally knew what he was thinking. Immediately, an embarrassed redness flew onto her pretty face as she stomped her feet and scolded, If you continue to act strangely, don't blame elder sister for shouting your real name. Seeing her embarrassed expression, Xiao Yan smiled and appropriately withdrew his gaze. Why are you here? The matter of grandfather Nalan gradually recovering is a big thing in the Nalan clan. As a business partner of the Nalan clan, us, the primer clan was naturally among those invited. Yifei faced the interior of the hall and fondled her snow-white chin. She smiled and said, naturally, other than us the primer clan, the people inside are mostly strengths which are quite well known in the Jiama sacred city. Che, they have begun celebrating when the searing poison has not even been completely removed. Isn't this a little too early? Hearing the information, Xiao Yan could not help but shake his head and said with his lips curled. Ha ha. This is also because grandfather Nalan trusts your ability. Although, even I did not expect that you would really be able to remove the searing poison from Grandfather Nalan's body. You should know that it is the searing poison which even Pilking Gugi had a headache over. Now, news about you is being spread between many different strengths in the Empire. Yifei's pretty eyes stared at Xiao Yan as she said with some astonishment. Back then, when she recommended that he come to the Nalan clan, she had only adopted the thought of simply giving it a try. She had never thought that Xiao Yan would actually be able to cure Grandfather Nalan. If it were not for that seven magical green spirit saliva, I would not be here. Xiao Yan gaze swept over the large hall as he faintly replied. You have also seen Nalan Yenron, but you are much more calm than I had expected. Yifei said and gave a mischievous smile. The one who saw her is Yan Xiao and not Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan crossed his ten fingers. His gaze stared at the delicate woman who had become the center of attention the moment she walked into the hall. His dark black eyes contained an iciness. Yifei sighed and shook her head. She did not continue to inquire about this issue. Instead, she said with yet another smile, let's go. Go in and take a look. Our clan head really wants to meet you, the outstanding young man who could cause old Hai to show fear. Not interested. Please. Little fellow, elder sister has helped you so much. You cannot cause elder sister to lose face. Seeing that Xiao Yan intended to leave, Yifei's delicate hands were put together and she continued to shake them. Ah, you are making people make stupid decisions. Yifei was born with an enchanting aura. Adding this little girl-like manner to it, Xiao Yan could only smile bitterly and shake his head at this visual assault. He waved his hand and helplessly said, All right. Let's go and see. Seeing that Xiao Yan had agreed, a joy immediately surfaced on Yifei's pretty face. The little girl manner of her face instantly disappeared. She then turned around and elegantly led the way in front. Watching this swift change of hers, Xiao Yan bitterly smiled and sighed. He could only follow her. They walked through the main door. The noisiness inside once again caused Xiao Yan to frown slightly. Yifei knew he liked quietness and hurriedly extended her delicate hand to pull him swiftly through the crowd. With Yifei's appearance, it was natural that she would easily catch people's eyes. Immediately, numerous gazes were shot over. When these gazes saw that Yifei's and Xiao Yan's hands which were being held together, they became momentarily blank. They immediately stared at the ordinary-looking Xiao Yan with strange gazes. The current Yifei could also be considered a famous person in the Jiama sacred city. At such an age, she already controlled the huge Primer Auction House headquarters. This was the first time this had happened in the Primer clan. Moreover, she managed the Auction House until it was in perfect order. This caused many people who had called her a flower vase to become quite shocked. TL, flower vase, used to describe a beautiful woman who has no brains. 
Although Yafei was warm on the surface and appeared extremely easy to converse with, people who were familiar with her knew that this enchanting, stunning creature had some sort of resistance to men. It was easy to be an ordinary friend, but if one wanted to progress to the next stage, it was fraught with difficulty. Therefore, when they saw that Yafei was actually holding hands with a man whose appearance was not great, their gazes were naturally a little strange. Of course, with Yafei's appearance and aura, there was no shortage of admirers in the hall. The gazes that these people used to watch Xiao Yan were filled with sourness and fury. The various different kinds of gazes around him did not cause any changes on Xiao Yan's face. He allowed Yifei to pull him as she pleased as his expression calmly endured those heated gazes. As they passed through the crowd, Yifei's footsteps suddenly came to a stop. Xiao Yan's gaze leaped over her and eyed the quiet seats in a corner. At that spot, a white-haired old man was smiling as he conversed with those around him. His slightly strict old face faintly seeped out some dignity. He is the head of our primer clan, Primer Tingshan. Yifei softly introduced. After which, she appeared to have sent something and quickly released Xiao Yan's hand. Her delicate fingers pulled aside the black hair on her forehead. Standing behind her, Xiao Yan could notice that the tender tip of her ears had become much redder. Oh. Xiao Yan randomly nodded his head. He followed Yifei and slowly walked onto the platform. After which, her footsteps came to a stop. Yifei then swiftly stepped forward, bent her body and softly said something to the old man's ear. A long while later, the old man smiled and nodded. He raised his head, eyed Xiao Yan and stood up. He smiled and said, Young friend Yan Xiao. I have heard about you for a long time and am pleased to finally meet you. I am the head of the Primer Clan, Primer Tingshan. I am just a nameless person. How could I be worth anything for Clan Head Tingshan to care about? Xiao Yan smiled and said, There aren't many people in the Jiama Empire who are able to receive such treatment from Old High. How could your young friend be considered nameless? Primer Tingshan said with another smile. Xiao Yan smiled without speaking. He quietly muttered in his heart, Looks like Hai Bodong's relationship with the Primer Clan is not an ordinary one. Don't tell me that old fellow is also a member of the Primer Clan. Kuku, young friend Yan Xiao, please take a seat. Primer Tingshan smiled and gave the seat beside him to Xiao Yan. He stepped back a little, smiled and said after he saw Xiao Yan take his offer, Young friend Xiao Yan, your result at the Alchemist Association test this time around was quite good. Congratulations. Ah, I wonder if this Alchemist Association is purposefully letting leak the information or is their secret preservation skills extremely terrible? Why is it that everyone knows? Hearing Primer Tingshan's words, Xiao Yan helplessly shook his head. He could only adopt a pretense and be courteous. During this period of time that young friend Yan Xiao is in the Jiama Sacred City, you can directly go and look for Yifei if there is anything you need help with, especially since you and her are old friends. Primer Tingshan said with a smile. Between his words, he described Xiao Yan and Yifei's relationship in a very ambiguous way. Hearing this, Xiao Yan tilted his head and watched Yifei who had lifted the red wine and tasting it elegantly. Perhaps she had understood the meaning between Primer Tingshan words. Under the reflection of the red wine, her enchanting pretty face became an increasingly attractive sleek red. Xiao Yan helplessly shook his head. He could only give a vague response. After Hai Bo Dong's reminder, Primer Tingshan was currently thinking of all the different methods to become closer to Xiao Yan. The usual strict expression had already been withdrawn. Replacing it was a smile that was extremely warm. That gentle manner caused those nearby who were on familiar terms with Primer Tingshan to be astonished. They began to quietly guess Xiao Yan's identity in their hearts. Being the clan head, Primer Tingshan was naturally quite talkative. Moreover, there was still Yifei who would occasionally smile and gently interrupt the conversation. The atmosphere here appeared extremely harmonious. Chapter 297, Mu Zhang. In another corner of the large hall, Nalan Jia and the guests who were here to celebrate the joyous occasion were conversing with smiles. By chance, his gaze which was drifting around suddenly stopped in the direction where Xiao Yan's group of three people sat. When he saw the warm, harmoniously laughing manner, his eyebrows frowned slightly. He smiled and dismissed the guests in front of him before taking a few steps back and arriving at Nalan Su's and Nalan Yenran's side. Yenran, his young friend Yan Xiao and Primer Tingshan very close. Nalan Jia softly inquired. Nalan Yenran rotated her bright eyes. She glanced at the corner where Xiao Yan was at. After gently sipping the red wine in her hand, she shook her head and said, I don't think that he is close to Primer Tingshan. Instead he should be close to Yifei. Have you forgotten? Back then Yan Xiao came because of Yifei's recommendation letter. Ah. Uh. Nalan Jia knit his eyebrows together and softly scolded, that old fellow Tingshan actually wants to use a beauty to attract him. How shameless. Ah, with Yan Zhao's potential, there would be no limit to his future. If such a person is pulled away by the Primer Clan, it would really cause people to feel a heartache. Haha, <laughs> they may use a beauty to attract him, but isn't there also a beauty on our side? Nalan Su joked. Father, what nonsense are you spouting? Nalan Yenran said angrily as she violently cut at Nalan Su with her eyes. Che, this girl. Forget it. When they met during these last few days, that Yen Xiao never showed her any any warm expressions. Ask her to go. Won't the chase him off at a faster rate? Nalan Jia pursed his lips together and snorted. 
You, you old fellow acts disrespectful and unbefitting of your age. If you dare to say any more nonsense, don't blame me for being rude. Nalan Jie's words immediately caused Nalan Yinran, who had been maintaining a smile to lift her eyebrows vertically in anger that was caused by her humiliation. She waved her hand, appearing to really want to pluck his long beard. Asterisk cough asterisk. By the side, Nalan Su coughed a couple of times, reminding this pair of grandfather and granddaughter to pay attention to the occasion. He waited for the two of them to quiet down before suddenly speaking, although, that girl Yafei has become increasingly pretty these few years. Her methods for social interactions are something that some of us in the older generation cannot compare with. On this point, Nalan Yinran is inferior to her. Their clan is built upon commerce. It is natural that they are good at social interactions. How do you expect me to compare with her? Moreover, even if you are willing, teacher would never agree. Nalan Yinran swept her eyes toward that corner. When she saw Xiao Yan's and Yifei's smiling and chatting manner, she felt somewhat helpless. She believed that her appearance and presence would not be any worse than Yifei, but Yan Xiao, from the beginning, never showed her a kind expression. Although with her status, she did not need to purposefully try to please Yan Xiao, Nalan Yinran, whose heart was extremely haughty, was unwilling to see that man who was uninterested in her beauty to smile and chat in front of her with another woman. Perhaps this was a sort of emotion in every woman's hearts, one that compared themselves with others. Ah, try your best to think of some way. Don't allow Yan Xiao to really run to the Primer Clan. Just think of all the many benefits that Pilking Guhi has brought to the Misty Cloud sect all these years. I believe that with Yan Zhao's potential, his future achievements would not be any lower than Guhi. Nalin Jia sighed. Okay. Nalin Su nodded his head. Another thing, Yan Ran, pay a little attention to Lu Ling. He appears to harbor some enmity toward Yan Xiao because of you. This fellow's talent may be quite good, but his heart is a little too narrow. If he were to use the strength behind him to become enemies with Yan Xiao, I will look down on him. Nalin Jia glanced at a small circle of people grouped together in the hall. In the middle of the circle was Lu Ling and Little Princess. Okay, I will try my best. Nalin Yanran frowned slightly and nodded. She and Lu Ling had gotten along for quite a few years. She naturally knew his character. This person's desire to possess was far too strong. That's right. Why have the members of the Mu clan not come? I remember having invited them. Nalin Jia's gaze swept once around the hall and asked with a frown. The Mu clan. One of the three large clans in the Jiama Empire. Most of the members in the clan were people crazy over battles and they had quite a lot of power within the Jiama Empire's military. Today, I heard that Mu Zhan from the Mu clan had returned from the northwestern border. Nalin Yinran suddenly said. Mu Zhan. That person who beats people up and kills people whenever he wants. The one who had also beat up those children of influential clans within the capital until they were docile. The one who has appeared to have become the leader of the crown prince's clique. Hearing the news, Nalin Jia was at a loss as he spoke. Ah, it's that unreasonable fellow that causes many people headache. Ah. I remember, that fellow appeared to have a very great interest in the primer clan's Yifei. Back then when he left the Jiama sacred city, he had yelled some bold and derogatory words, telling everyone that he would kill whoever dared to touch Yifei. Recalling the great uproar the issue caused back then, Nalin Su felt neither able to laugh nor cry. Ah, I wonder how much the unreasonable fellow has changed after experiencing two years at the Empire's border. He should have ceased being as unreasonable and barbaric as he was two years ago, right? Nalin Yinran said with a smile. Ah. I sense that something will happen tonight. Nalin Jia touched his white beard as his gaze looked at the spot where Yifei's three people group was at. He shook his head and said. Nalin Yinran narrowed her pretty eyes and softly laughed, evidently, it would be like this. I hope that if any trouble arises, it will not escalate into a big mess. Yan Xiao isn't like the aristocratic young master that Mu Zhan had crippled in the past. Although I haven't been in contact with him for very long, I think that when the little fellow becomes crazy, he should be very terrifying. Nalin Jia voiced his thoughts, and to be able to teach such a disciple, Yan Zhao's teacher should not be someone ordinary person. In front of a high-tier alchemist that may be comparable to Guhi, the Mu clan would not dare to be too arrogant. Yes. Nalin Yanran nodded her head while sharing the same thought. After being in the Misty Cloud sect for so many years, she was extremely clear just what kind of ability an alchemist similar to Guhi's tier had. Kuko, I will get someone to pay attention to that. Nalin Su smiled. After which, he clinked his wine cup with a guest that had come forward before drowning its contents as he began to chat with a smile. Big Brother Lu Ling, is that the fellow who defeated you? He appears very ordinary. In a circle within the hall, a young man wearing magnificent clothes glanced at the spot where Xiao Yan was at and said as he smacked his lips with disdain. Haha, there's no choice since I am not as skilled as him. Lu Ling lifted his wine cup and said with a smile. Hey, it may be that fellow used some methods that we don't know to cheat. Big Brother Lu Ling is Grandmaster Guhi's disciple. How can he lose to this nameless fellow? Another young man sided with Lu Ling and laughed. Lu Ling smiled, but did not speak. He did not open his mouth to absolve Xiao Yan. It seems that fellow has quite good luck with women. He is actually able to be so close with the primer clans Yan Fei Xiao Jie. A man who had once wanted to become close to Yifei could not help but say with an acidic mouth when he saw the smiling and chatting manner of the two of them. 
The little princess took shallow sips of the red wine. Her delicate finger gently tapped on the surface of the glass cup, emitting a clear sound. She lazily glanced at Xiao Yan and laughed softly, Tonight, there may be something interesting happening. What do you mean? Hearing this, Lu Ling was at a loss. Just wait and see. Little princess smiled mysteriously. She gulped down the red wine in her cup in one go. As time in the gathering slowly flew by, a large blood red horse suddenly rushed past from the other end of the brightly lit street outside the Nayland clan's main entrance in a rude and arrogant manner. The passers-by on the two sides along the way hurriedly dodged in panic. The charging blood red, large horse suddenly came to a stop as it was about to reach the Nayland clan's main entrance. A green-colored human figure leapt down from the back of the horse. He lifted his head and eyed the main door. Under the illumination from the light, a young face was revealed. Dancing between his eyes was a fierceness and brutalness like that of a tiger. This young man that was around 25 or 26 years old did not look at the guards by the side of the main entrance. He randomly threw out a plate and strided into the Nayland clan. In the extremely lively large hall, the green-clothed young man walked in from the open front door. His arms held his neck as he smacked his lips and eyed the people inside. His mouth muttered something. Those who were near him were able to hear him say, a group of idiots. At the moment when the young man walked into the hall, there were a few gazes which secretly brightened. The young man's gaze swept across the hall, seemingly searching for something. A moment later, his sight solidified and the corner of his mouth cracked. Killing intent was instantly abundant on his face. On the quiet seats, Xiao Yan and Yifei were smiling and chatting. A moment later, Xiao Yan lifted a wine cup from the table and sipped it. As he did so, his smiling face suddenly stiffened and his quiet eyes suddenly narrowed. Without any warning, a green-colored dochi suddenly surged out from within Xiao Yan's body. The wine cup in his hand cracked and burst apart with a bang. His body was forcefully twisted and his palm rotated slightly. It was then tightly clenched into a fist that carried a sharp explosive sound as it violently smashed at the force that had appeared behind him. Bang. With a muffled sound, the powerful energy force from Xiao Yan's fist violently shot out in all directions. The surrounding tables and chairs cracked apart with a terrifying sound under this destructive wind. The ferocious force that was emitted from his fist caused Xiao Yan to take quite a few steps forward in order to completely be rid of it. His smiling face gradually became dark. Xiao Yan lifted his head and eyed the young man who was shaking his hand and viciously staring at him with a face that was filled with fierceness and brutality. A dark and cold killing intent swarmed out of Xiao Yan's dark, black eyes. Chapter 298, A Brief Fight The ferocious force that had suddenly burst forth in a large hall swiftly drew the gazes of those around. When these gazes saw the fierce and brutal-faced young man, they were all momentarily stunned. Immediately, they turned their gloating faces toward Xiao Yan, whom the young man was facing. Clearly, they had all recognized this young man who possessed a very well-known name in the capital. Have they finally started fighting? In the large hall, little princess smiled and shook the red wine in her transparent cup as she laughed softly. Ah, that is. Mujan. Most of the people surrounding the little princess were children of aristocrats. Therefore, they could identify the young man with a face filled with fierceness and brutality. Immediately, their expressions changed as they let out an involuntary cry. Many of them had suffered under this fellow back then. No wonder you said that something interesting would happen tonight. I see that you are talking about this fellow. Eyeing the green-clothed Mujan, Lu Ling was momentarily stunned before he immediately laughed softly with understanding. Many people in the capital know that Mujan is extremely infatuated with Yifei from the Primer clan. Back then, before he left, he had even arrogantly expressed that he would kill whoever dared to touch Yifei. A shallow smile surfaced on Little Princess's face. Her gaze glanced at Xiao Yan who had become gloomy-faced because he was caught off guard by the sneak attack. She said, he is fairly unlucky to have met the returned Mujan while he was being so intimate with Yifei. Based on Mujan's character, Yan Xiao will most likely suffer tonight. Back then when Mujan had left the capital, he was already a three-star dosher. After training for two years at the Empire's border military barracks, he has likely reached the peak of a dosher. If he is to suffer then let him suffer. He will naturally need to pay a certain price for getting involved with someone else's woman. Otherwise, he would continue acting like a country bumpkin entering the city and look down on everyone. Lu Ling smiled and said. He eagerly wished for someone to dampen Xiao Yan's vigor. But this is the Nalin clan. Grandfather Nalin will definitely not allow Mujan to be overly presumptuous. Therefore, if Mujan wants to teach Yan Xiao a lesson, he needs to do it with the quickest speed possible. Otherwise, when Grandfather Nalin and Primer Tingshan, who have just left, return, he will no longer have a chance. Little Princess said with a smile. By rejecting her invitation this afternoon, it was clear that Xiao Yan had caused this young lady of extraordinary status to be displeased. Therefore, she did not have any intention of stepping forward to mediate the matter. Lu Ling laughed coldly and softly said, but Mu Zhan is coincidentally the type of person who would not say anything unnecessary when he starts fighting. Just watch, they will soon begin fighting. As he said these words, his gaze was already thrown to the spot in the hall where the disturbance had occurred. Xiao Yan relaxed his fist and immediately clenched it tightly again. Only after he repeated this a couple of times did the numb feeling gradually disappear. 
He glanced at the fierce and brutal young man who was like a vicious tiger deep in the mountains, inhaled a deep breath of air and coldly said, Is there something wrong with your head? From the strike a moment ago, Xiao Yin clearly knew that the fellow in front of him definitely had no intention of holding anything back. If it was a person with slow reaction instead of him, that person would likely have been seriously wounded without even having the time to react. Therefore, Xiao Yan's heart was filled with fury against this person who had inexplicably launched a killing blow. The green-cloaked young man faced Xiao Yan and opened his mouth. His row of white-colored teeth were quite savage-looking. He did not reply. Instead, his heated gaze paused on Yafei by the side, whose pretty face contained great fury. With a gentle voice, he laughed, Yafei, it has been a long time since we met. You have become even prettier and definitely worthy of being the wife I have reserved. You, you lunatic. Yafei's face became a little flushed because of her anger. Her voluminous chest rose and fell slightly. Despite not having met for two years, this fellow was still as barbaric and unreasonable as before. Without saying a word, he directly gave someone a ruthless blow. Yen Xiao, are you alright? Yafei swiftly walked over to Xiao Yan's side. She looked up and down, sizing him up as she hurriedly asked. Xiao Yan shook his head. His gaze remained on the green-cloaked young man's body as he softly asked, Who is he? Mu Zhang. He is a member of the Mu clan from the three large clans, a lunatic that really gives one a headache. Back then, part of the reason I went out to gain experience was because I wanted to hide from him. Yafei smiled bitterly and said. His attack is really vicious, really vicious. Xiao Yan softly laughed. His smile contained a dark and cold killing intent but this caused the pretty face of Yafei beside him to change. Don't be reckless. Mu Zhan is the most outstanding person among the young generation of the Mu clan. Back then, when he left the capital, he was already a dosher. After gaining experience from being in the border barracks for two years, his strength is fast catching up to the older generation. You. Yafei, who was extremely familiar with Xiao Yan's character knew that he had really become furious at this moment. However, Mu Zhan was also no ordinary person. If they were to really fight, it was difficult to tell just who would win. Thus, she immediately hurriedly dissuaded him. Brat, are you new to the capital? No wonder you dare to be so close to Yafei. The concern Yafei showed to Xiao Yan caused the fierceness and brutality on Mu Zhan's face to be even more abundant than before. He twisted his neck and a bone-cracking noise clearly sounded. Xiao Yan lifted his eyes and glanced at this young man who did not even bother to cover the killing intent in his heart. He pursed up his lips and the corner of his eyes swiftly swept around the hall. A few members of the Nalin clan had already began to step back. From the looks of it, they wanted to go and inform Nalin Jia and the others about what happened here. Perhaps Yafei was correct. The young man in front of him did indeed give Xiao Yan a feeling of danger. Even if this was so, however, he did not intend to hide behind Yafei until Nalin Jia and the others arrived. A moment ago, Mu Zhan's dangerous sneak attack, which nearly caused him to be seriously injured, had caused the desire for battle in Xiao Yan's heart to soar. It had been suppressed for a month with Xiao Yan not getting in a single fight during the time and was now accompanied by anger as it completely erupted. Therefore, this time around, he did not intend to continue to endure it. Xiao Yan's dark black eyes stared at Mu Zhan as he brushed aside Yafei's dissuasion. He spread out his right hand and immediately curled it. A ferocious suction force immediately sucked a broken leg of a chair, around the thickness of one's thigh, into his hand from a short distance away. He held it tightly and his body descended into silence. An instant later, his green-colored Dou Qi once again surged out. His body swiftly moved away from Yafei. With a step of his feet, an energy explosion sounded and Xiao Yan's figure turned into a black line as he shot at Mu Zhan in a lightning-like manner. Brat. You got guts. As he gave a grim grin to Xiao Yan who had actually took the initiative to launch an attack, an emerald green Dou Qi swarmed out of Mu Zhan's body. His pair of fists actually turned faintly into the color of dead wood. At this moment, the place where Xiao Yan and Mu Zhan were at, had undoubtedly become the focus of attention of the entire hall. When everyone saw Xiao Yan, who did not chose to withdraw in the face of Mu Zhan but instead took the initiative to attack, those who clearly knew Mu Zhan's strength quietly shook their heads. Within their hearts, this action of Xiao Yan appeared to be an attempt to appear in the limelight in front of Yafei. This fellow is really asking for it. Isn't it better to quietly stand in the same spot and wait for Grandfather Nalan and the others to arrive? Yet he wants to overestimate his ability and is going to get humiliated in front of others. Seeing Xiao Yan's action, Lu Ling shook his head as he smiled and said. He had known Mu Zhan since a long time ago. Therefore, he had a very clear idea of just how much of a headache one would have when fighting with this battle-crazy person. Looks like even outstanding people cannot avoid having their heated blood flow upward in front of a beauty. The little princess shook her transparent cup. Her smile was like a little demon. This group of theirs, who had lived in the capital for many years, was not optimistic of Xiao Yan's chances in the fight between him and Mu Zhan. During the time that the few people were conversing, Xiao Yan and Mu Zhan came into contact in a lightning-like manner under everyone's sight. With a face as deep as water, Xiao Yan icily watched the fierce and brutal-faced Mu Zhan in front of him. Just as he was about to reach the front of Mu Zhan, his heel rotated and his body strangely appeared beside Mu Zhan's left hand. His fist tightened and a huge chair's leg that was covered by a green-colored Dou Qi carried a ferocious wind as it ruthlessly smashed at Mu Zhan's head. Sensing the force above his head, Mu Zhan coldly smiled. 
His fist was abruptly thrown upward and came into a hard collision with the tough chair's leg. Bang. Following a muffled sound, the chair's leg, which had the thickness of one's thigh, was blast apart in all directions by Mujan. After breaking apart the chair's leg, Mujan tightened his fist, which once again contained a strong force, and shot it through the wooden chips that were flying in all directions. It then violently smashed towards Xiao Yan behind. Xiao Yan tilted his head slightly. That fist which had shot violently out from the wooden chips that had covered Xiao Yan's sight, moved along the side of Xiao Yan's shoulders and passed by it. The ferocious wind from the fist caused a burning sensation to appear on Xiao Yan's skin. However, this little pain did not slow Xiao Yan's attack by even the slightest bit. At the moment Mu Zhan's fist passed by his body, Xiao Yan's body strangely slid down and he simultaneously turned his body partially as he descended. His right palm supported him on the ground as he twisted his body, rotating it in half a circle. His feet whirled half around in midair. It then carried a sharp force as they crossed one another and sheared at Mu Zhan's neck. The appearance of the attack was like a sharp scissors. Hey, not bad. The somewhat strange scissors crossing killer legs caused a fanatic emotion to rise in Mu Zhan's eyes. His hands protected his neck. His skin, which was the color of flesh swiftly turned into a brown color. When one looked at it, it appeared like a tough dead wood. Xiao Yan's legs violently smashed at Mu Zhan's hands but they emitted two strange sounds. The large force contained on the feet caused Mu Zhan to take a step back but Mu Zhan's combat experience had far exceeded Xiao Yan's expectations. Even while he was stepping back, he had already skillfully stabilized his body. His feet violently kicked towards Xiao Yan's head, which was near to the ground. The other party's reaction caused an astonishment to swiftly flash across Xiao Yan's eyes. The left hand that he had used to stabilize his body suddenly rotated. Without anyone else being aware, a wisp of green-colored flame surfaced on the exterior of the fist. After which, it was thrown forward and violently smashed together with Mujan's feet. Bang! The ferocious forces collided together. Both the fists and legs of the two parties were thrown backward. At the place where Xiao Yan used his right hand to support himself on the ground, a few tiny crack lines swiftly began to spread. Oomph! The exchange this time around caused both of them to emit a muffled groan. Xiao Yan's right hand gently tapped on the ground and the hard floor was cracked apart with a bang. His body, on the other hand, borrowed this pushing force and shot up before dexterously landing on the ground. He took a few small steps back. Once he had resolved his balance, his expression contained a seriousness as he eyed Mu Zhan, who had smashed a table into pieces while he was moving backward. In just a short minute, the two of them had experienced a soul-stirring close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat. Regardless of who it was, if either one of them had become slightly absent-minded in the clash a moment ago, that person would have ended up in a dire condition by the other party's merciless attacks. Chapter 299, Nalin Yenron Intervenes Within the large all, everyone was eyeing Xiao Yan with astonished faces. They had never thought that this young man who appeared to specialize in refining medicine would not be any worse than Mu Zhan in terms of combat. The lightning-like exchange from before may have lasted for only a short moment, but everyone knew the danger involved. Among the younger generation within the capital, Mu Zhan's combat talent could be described as being among the top. There was hardly anyone of the same age group within the Jiama Sacred Empire who could fight neck to neck with him. This was especially so after he had trained for two years at the military barracks. The current Mu Zhan had undoubtedly become much stronger and fiercer compared to before. However, in that fight earlier, he did not appear to have much of an advantage. Although, it could be said that Mu Zhan had yet to use all his strength in this exchange. Not even a Dou technique had been displayed but no one forgot that the young man who had an ordinary appearance had similarly relied entirely on his body's ability to fight. It is really unexpected that Yan Zhao's combat ability is actually this good. The little princess watched Xiao Yan with a stunned expression as she said with surprise. She had very clear knowledge of Mu Zhan's talent in terms of combat. However, in the fight just now, Mu Zhan did not end up beating Yan Xiao until the latter turned into a miserable state. Instead, the two of them ended up in a draw. The corner of Lu Ling's mouth twitched slightly. Having not seen the scene in his imagination where Xiao Yan was trounced by Mu Zhan, his heart currently did not feel very well. When he heard the surprise in Little Princess's words, his heart became a little unhappy. He said faintly, if Mu Zhan unleashed all his strength in the fight, I dare to say that Yan Xiao would definitely be no match for him. Cuckoo, perhaps. Little Princess was noncommittal as she smiled. As a female, her observation ability was naturally much more meticulous when compared to Lu Ling who was harboring a grudge. During the time that Mu Zhan was forced back, she had clearly seen that Mu Zhan's leg was a little unnatural when he was stepping back. It appeared that Mu Zhan had received a little hidden injury in the collision from before. Yen Xiao, are you alright? After seeing Xiao Yen stepping back, Yifei hurriedly came forward and asked anxiously. As she said those words, her delicate hand grabbed the sleeve in front of her. Evidently, she did not want him to continue the fight. I'm fine. Xiao Yen smiled. Under the sleeve, his fist, which had been inserted into it, trembled slightly as he tried to slowly remove the pain that radiated through it. This fellow's strength is indeed very great. From the looks of it, he should be around an 8-star or even 9-star dosher. Sensing the pain that was transmitted from his fist, Xiao Yen quietly guessed in his heart. But. I think that the current him should also be having a hard time, fire subdues wood. 
The burning of the green lotus core flame from my fist would definitely have caused this fellow to suffer a hidden injury. Xiao Yin glanced at Mu Zhan's foot and the corner of his mouth was lifted into a cold smile. Mu Zhan stared intently at Xiao Yan with a fierce face. The intense pain transmitted from his leg caused the corner of his mouth to twitch repeatedly. The Dou Qi in his body flowed swiftly and wrapped around his foot, turning it into a pale green color. Mu Zhan's Dou Qi belonged to the Wood Affinity. This kind of Dou Qi had some sort of healing properties. Therefore, as the Dou Qi shrouded his leg, which was not overly seriously injured, once again began to recover. Brat, not bad. I didn't expect that a pampered alchemist like you would actually know such an aggressive manner of combat. Mu Zhan parted his lips and smiled at Xiao Yan, much like a ferocious tiger which had opened its mouth and bared its fangs, possessing an abundance of a fierce aura. If this fellow was placed on the battlefield, he would definitely be a rarely seen ferocious general. Xiao Yan smiled, but did not speak. The green-colored Dou Qi still shrouded on the surface of his body without the slightest sign of relaxing. But, regardless of who you are, do not touch the woman I like. The smile on his face suddenly disappeared. Mu Zhan let out a stern roar. A powerful Dou Qi swarmed out from within his body. As the Dou Qi churned, a somewhat vague Dou Qi armor had actually, gradually appeared on his body. Seeing the Dou Qi armor on Mu Zhan's body, Xiao Yan's eyes narrowed. He did not expect that this fellow was able to summon the Dou Qi armor that only a Dou Shi was able to possess. Although his armor now was merely an initial prototype, its defensive strength far exceeded the Dou Shi's Dou Qi cloak. This fellow is about to become serious. Xiao Yan muttered in his heart. His face gradually became grave. As his mind was racing, a wisp of green lotus core flame was pulled out from the acceptance spirit within the vortex. After which, it swiftly passed through the chi paths as Xiao Yan prepared to unleash the terrifying force that belonged to it at any time. Mu Zhan, you lunatic. Stop. Seeing Mu Zhan, who refused to give up, Yafei was so angry that her pretty face had turned pale. Mu Zhan ignored Yafei's angry cry. The Dou Qi on the surface of his body became increasingly dense. A strong force rose from within his body, suppressing those people with weaker strengths in the hall until their expressions changed slightly. I have said before. I will kill whoever dares to touch you. Mu Zhan's feet stomped on the floor with a bang. Numerous crack lines began to swiftly spread out from the spot where his feet pushed off just like a spider web. His body leaned forward slightly. With a cry, his body turned into a green-colored shadow that shot towards Xiao Yan. Wherever he passed by, a gully that was one foot deep was being extended. The entire hall had at this moment turned into a complete mess. Sensing the ferocious force that was shrouding around Mu Zhan's body, Xiao Yan's expression was serious as he pulled Yufei from in front of him to behind back. At the tip of his finger within his sleeves, a green-colored flame began to dance around strangely. Mu Zhan's speed was extremely swift and violent. In the blink of an eye, he appeared at a spot a short distance in front of Xiao Yan. He raised his fist high into the air. The fist was completely covered by sharp green-colored thorns, appearing to possess a strong offensive strength. Green Wooden Thorn with an oppressive low roar, that fist of Mu Zhan, which was covered in green-colored thorns, was accompanied by a sharp force as it violently smashed down towards Xiao Yan. A pair of dark, black eyes coldly watched the fist that was moving increasingly closer. The oppressive wind flattened the clothes on Xiao Yan's body until they were tightly pasted on Xiao Yan's skin. Within Xiao Yan's sleeves, the green-colored flame had also withered with increasing joy under this suppression. The hot energy was swiftly agglomerating. Just as Xiao Yan was about to use the green lotus core flame to counterattack, his eyebrows abruptly knit slightly together as he sensed something. He immediately stopped his body that was leaning forward. At the same time a clear cold tender shout sounded within the hall. Mu Zhan. Stop now. As the tender shout fell, a moon white shadow shot over from another corner of the hall in a lightning-like manner. The body strangely floated in midair and appeared in front of Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan glanced at Nalan Yanran's strange ability to move through midair from the corner of his eyes. His eyebrows twitched without being noticed. This woman had improved greatly in three years. Thousand Wind After she swiftly appeared in front of Xiao Yan, Nalan Yanran coldly watched Mu Zhan, who did not cease his attack, with her pretty face. Her snow-white delicate hand extended out of her spacious sleeve and she prepared to flick her long, narrow finger. Five pale green-colored, tornadoes surfaced from the tip of her finger, much like five incomparably sharp green-colored fingernails. The five sharp spiraling winds actually appeared to have tore the space as they wildly rotated. She flicked her finger and the spiraling wind shot out. Immediately, they violently shot at Mu Zhan's fist which was covered with green-colored thorns. Bang. Following the sound of an explosion, waves of wood fragments were shot out from Mu Zhan's fist. The ferocious force contained within the tornadoes directly caused Mu Zhan to take a few steps back. Each time his feet landed, he would leave a deep footprint on the ground. When the last footstep landed, Mu Zhan's arm quivered fiercely. A shapeless force seeped out of his body and left a deep imprint on the pillar behind his body. Nalan Yinran. Hey, I didn't expect that you would actually have become so much stronger after having not met for only two years. Looks like sect leader Union really put in a lot of effort to teach you. Mu Zhan licked the fresh blood on his fist. He ignored this little bit of pain as he said with surprise. 
Mu Zhang, this is the Nalin clan, not your Mu clan. Mr. Yen Xiao is a guest of our Nalin clan and should not be subjected to your unbridled behavior. Nalin Yen Ran softly cried. Mu Zhang's eyes narrowed. He tightened his fist as his gaze swept through the hall. After which, he paused on Nalin Jia and Nalin Su who were quickly striding over. Knowing that he had lost the opportunity to attack Xiao Yan today, he could only helplessly spread out his hand. He lifted his chin slightly and stared at Xiao Yan, on account of Nalin Yan Ran, I will not cripple you today. But I would advise you to stay away from your fei in the future. Otherwise, I will take you on any time. Xiao Yan coldly smiled and said. After the exchange from before, he knew that Mu Zhan's level was slightly higher than his own. However, if he were to use his hidden cards, it was difficult to tell who would win or lose. You got some backbone. I didn't expect that the moment I returned to the capital, I would meet a person whom I can step on. I'm really excited. Mu Zhan parted his mouth and grinned at Xiao Yan. The white teeth of his appeared to be quite dense. It requires strength in order to step on someone. Don't end up having your feet pierced before you can even step on the person. Xiao Yan did not show the slightest weakness or cowering action against this young man who did not bother to hide his arrogance and domineering temperament. His giving a tit-for-tat manner caused everyone to be extremely surprised. All right, the both of you should speak less. Today is the Nalin clan's gathering. Don't disturb everyone's mood. These two people who were fighting with each other caused Nalin Yanran to frown slightly as she helplessly scolded. Xiao Yan shrugged his shoulders. His gaze turned from Mu Zhan's body onto the beauty who had her back facing him. His eyes narrowed as his finger gently flicked within his sleeves. Nalin Yanran's attack a moment ago was the first attack that Xiao Yan had seen her use ever since he had met her. It was like a piece of a jigsaw. For her to be able to force back Mu Zhan who was fighting equally with himself, this woman's strength had improved extremely quickly during the last three years. Although the Dou technique that she had displayed just now was not of a low class, the high class Dou techniques would not have much use if she did not have the support of a powerful Dou Qi in this kind of battle where both parties' levels were very close. The Misty Cloud sect has spared no effort in grooming her. This three-year agreement will be fun. Xiao Yan's gaze paused on the beautiful curves of Nalin Yanran's tender body as he muttered in his heart. Chapter 300, The End Stop, I say. Nalin Jia shouted with an ugly expression as he squeezed through the confused crowd and quickly arrived by Nalin Yanran's side. His footsteps stopped beside Nalin Yanran. He first turned to Xiao Yan and asked, Little friend Yan Xiao, are you alright? Xiao Yan shook his head, indicating that nothing was serious. Nalin Jia sighed in relief once he saw that Xiao Yan was safe. If he had been injured, it might have been a disaster for himself. As his eyes glanced over at the young tranquil face, Nalin Jia could not help but think even more highly of him. Although the battle lasted for a short time, with Nalin Jia's strength, he was naturally aware of it the instant the fight broke out. He had deliberately arrived late, obviously trying to observe Xiao Yan's fighting strength. After all, a lot of alchemists, though extremely proficient at refining, were a complete mess when it came to fighting. Nalin Jia had seen such people before. This little guy, I did not expect that besides having an extraordinary talent in alchemy, his fighting strength is not weak either. Looking at his aggressive attacks, he seems to be a person who has already killed before. Secretly admiring in his heart, Nalin Jia turned his eyes to Mu Zhan, his old face sank as he shouted, Mu Zhan, I did not think that after two years of experience, not only did it not smother your unreasonable arrogance, but instead caused you to become increasingly arrogant. This is the Nalin clan, not your Mu clan. Even that old guy Mu Chen would not dare to not give me, Nalin Jia, any face if he came. He he, Grandfather Nalin, stop rebuking me. I just wanted to check out this friend's skill. I had not meant to cause trouble in the Nalin clan. As for all the damaged property, I will call people at once to have it all completely replaced. Although Mu Zhan's nature was extremely arrogant, in front of Nalin Jie, whose seniority was comparable to his grandfather, he did not dare to quibble or be presumptuous. He immediately laughed while nodding his head. Humph. These words of yours can go and deceive a ghost. TL, these words of yours can go and deceive a ghost, meaning no human would believe you. Nalin Jie snorted coldly as he stared directly at Mu Zhan and said in a deep voice, Mu Zhan, I'm going to tell this clearly to you now, Yan Xiao is a distinguished guest of my Nalin family. I do not want him to be injured. Although, your Mu clan has many madmen, my Nalin clan is not to be trifled with. Nalin Jia knew Mu Zhan's character only too well. After failing to attack Xiao Yan today, he might get his clan members to attack in the future. In order to ensure Xiao Yan's safety and to gain favorable impression toward the Nalin clan, Nalin Jia said these words, which caused many people to secretly change their expressions, in front of everyone. Hearing Nalin Jia's words which did not sound like a joke, Mu Zhan's expression changed slightly. He did not expect that Nalin Jia would actually leave such hard words for only a tier 2 alchemist. Mu Zhan's gaze was bizarre as he glanced up and down and weighed Xiao Yan who was behind Nalin Yanran. He secretly wondered in his heart, what exactly is the identity of this brat? When I return home, I must get someone to investigate him properly. Why? What happened? As Mu Zhan quietly mouthed to himself, another old voice sounded from outside the crowd. A thin figure flashed and shifted through the crowd and immediately appeared beside Xiao Yan just like a ghost. Everyone's gazes drifted over. It was Primer Tengshan who was called out by someone earlier. 
Mu Zhan. Primer Tingshan's eye swept onto the mess all over the place. When his gaze moved toward Mu Zhan, he was initially surprised. When he turned around and saw Yafei and Xiao Yan standing together, he instantly appeared to have understood the entire situation. Immediately, his old face, just like Nailin Jia, swiftly sank. His old eyes viciously stared at Mu Zhan and furiously said, You start creating trouble the moment that you return. Do you believe that I won't get Mu Chen, that old guy who won't die, to once again expel you to the border to gain experience? Uh. Clan Head Tingshan, you are also here. Seeing the person who had arrived, Mu Zhan, who was fearless, immediately shivered. Back then, the greatest reason which resulted in him leaving the capital and going to the border was because the arrogant Mu Zhan had angered Primer Tingshan. It resulted in the Mu clan having no choice but to throw the scourge to the empire's borders. Therefore, when he saw Primer Tingshan at this moment, Mu Zhan showed some fear as he smiled awkwardly and humbled his speech. Primer Tingshan snorted softly. He glanced at Nailin Jie by his side as he slowly said, I shall also give you a reminder. Once you leave this place, don't go and find trouble with young friend Yan Xiao. He is also a friend of the Primer clan. If you really cause any trouble, then don't blame these old bones of mine when I become angry. When that time comes, even Mu Chen will not be able to protect you. Although Primer Tingshan was unclear about Xiao Yan's actual strength and his background, he did not have the slightest hesitation when he said these words. A Duo Wan class strong person who had a haughty character was actually willing to follow by Xiao Yan's side as a bodyguard. This was sufficient to see just how much ability this ordinary looking young man actually possessed. In a two short minutes, Mu Zhan received serious warnings from two out of three of the large clans. This kind of situation had caused not only Mu Zhan himself to be somewhat stunned, but also the surrounding observers to feel shocked. Since Xiao Yan was able to help Nei Jie expel the poison, everyone was not overly surprised when the latter did his best to protect Xiao Yan. After all, his own life was in the hands of the other person. However, everyone felt that it was strange and inexplicable that Primer Tingshan was able to say such serious words without any hesitation despite only having known Xiao Yan for a short while. It should be known that behind Mu Zhan was the entire Mu clan. This strength was not the slightest bit weaker than the Primer clan. By just comparing numbers, the Mu clan even exceeded the Primer clan greatly. After all, the Primer clan was a merchant clan and not a warrior clan like the Mu clan. Of course, these strong people referred to those of the middle strength and not the peak strength like Primer Tingshan. After all, his kind of class was not something that could easily appear by simply relying on the clan having a combat atmosphere. The most important factor was one's training talent. On this point, both clans were on even ground. Che, lucky brat. Within the crowd, Lu Ling saw the two people of extremely great weight protecting Xiao Yan. He frowned slightly, pursed his lips together and coldly laughed. Beside him, little princess had her eyebrows knit slightly. Her eyes passed through the crowd as she looked at Xiao Yan. She softly muttered, looks like he should have something that both clans value greatly. Otherwise, Primer Tingshan and Grandfather Nailin would definitely not take the risk of offending the Mu clan and speak out for him without any hesitation. What a mysterious fellow, it's a pity. Little Princess regretfully shook her head. She recalled her attitude toward Yan Xiao and could only laugh bitterly. She did not expect that a failure on her part to identify a talented person would actually result in her losing a chance to befriend such an outstanding person. If her emperor father or elder sister were to know about this, she would likely be viciously reprimanded. The corner of Mu Zhan's mouth twitched. The smile on his face was extremely ugly. A long while later, he helplessly spread out his hand in front of Nailin Jie and Primer Tingshan's gaze and said, Two old sirs, I have already said that today's matter was only a misunderstanding. All right, as long as this friend does not provoke me in the future, I will not go and make things difficult for him. Let's take this as giving both of you face. Nailin Jie nodded faintly. He turned around, at the hall and clapped his hand. With a smile, he said, Everyone, please continue. This is but mischief caused by the younger generation. Everyone can just treat it as having watched an interesting performance. Ha ha. Hearing Nailin Jie's words, the surrounding observers knew what was good for them as they followed him and laughed. After which, they consciously scattered and began to search for people that were pleasing to their eyes as they continued to drink wine and chat. Hee hee, old fellow, you really won't give up any chance to make a good impression. Primer Tingshan smiled, leaned close to Nailin Jie and said softly. Humph. Old fellow, looks like you really intend to snatch this person from us. Nailin Jie glanced at Primer Tingshan and said with a cold smile. If such a talented person was to run to someone else's home, that would be a matter that would give one a terrible headache. Primer Tingshan laughed softly, I seem to feel that Yifei and young friend Yen Xiao are able to converse very well. Don't you agree? But little niece Yen Ran does not appear to be able to lower herself and get closer to young friend Yen Xiao. Hee hee, after all their statuses are different. If it is like this, won't your side greatly lose out? Nailin Jie's shriveled face swept across Yifei from the corner of his eyes who was pulling Xiao Yan and checking all over him body to see if he was wounded in the fight. He then glanced at his granddaughter who was standing on one side with her cool pretty face that did not have the slightest activity. He could only shake his sleeves as he bitterly replied, you are really willing to put in the capital. Just so-so. Primer Tingshan smiled in a very pleased manner. He drowned the red wine in his hand all in one go. All right, I am really all right. Although that fellow is troublesome to fight with, this little bit of warm-up won't cause me any harm. 
Xiao Yan helplessly eyed Ye Fei who was repeatedly sizing him up. He shook his head and bitterly said. Hearing that there was nothing different in Xiao Yan's voice, Ye Fei finally sighed in relief. Her long eyes were filled with shock as she sized Xiao Yan up. She softly said, Little fellow, I remember that when you left Wuten City back then, it had not been long since you had broke through to Tuadoja. Just how long has it only been, you are actually able to fight equally with Mu Xiao Xiao Yan smiled. After experiencing that kind of tough training, this kind of a return was something that he felt to be only normal. Nalin Xiao Jie, thank you for taking action. Ye Fei took two steps forward, came to Nalin Yanran's side and smiled as she helped Xiao Yan thank her. Mr. Yan Xiao is our Nalin clan's guest. It is only natural for me to step forward. Actually, with Mr. Yan Zhao's strength, it appeared that my action may have been unnecessary. Nalin Yanran glanced at Xiao Yan. When this fellow saw her, his expression began to gradually become indifferent. This kind of treatment, which appeared to be on the two ends of a pole when compared with the one he used with Ye Fei, really caused Nalin Yanran to be somewhat speechless. Ye Fei, we have not seen each other for two years. You don't need to ignore me in this manner, do you? Standing by the side, Mu Zhan, who saw that Ye Fei did not even spare him a glance, could not help but bitterly smile as he asked. Young Master Mu, I wouldn't dare to. It is just that temper of yours is something that Ye Fei is not blessed enough to endure. I hope that in the future, you will not say those things that damage Ye Fei's reputation. I have never made promises of any engagement, so when have I become your woman? Ye Fei glanced at this fellow and said with a cold smile. Once she said those words, she once again walked back to Xiao Yan's side. She pulled at his sleeve and gently said, let's go somewhere else. Xiao Yan glanced at the gentle-faced Ye Fei and then watched Mu Zhan, whose expression had become somewhat green in his fury. He nodded slightly and allowed Ye Fei to pull him toward the other side of the hall. That damn brat. Mu Zhan's eyes angrily stared at Xiao Yan's back. He violently waved his hand and then shifted his gaze toward Nalin Yanran. He said, Yanran, what exactly is this fellow's background? Don't just keep quiet. No matter how you put it, we have played and fought as children. Don't tell me that you are not even willing to reveal this little bit of information. Seeing the fierce and brutal-faced Mu Zhan, Yanran helplessly shook her head. She said, to be honest, I am really unsure about the exact background of Yan Xiao. But his medicine refining skills are extraordinary. My grandfather's searing poison was something even Elder Gu he could do nothing about. However, he is able to expel it. That is all that I know. In any case, you better not go to him and find trouble. Otherwise, you might find yourself faced with quite some trouble. Nalin Yanran reminded him. She then turned around and slowly walked into the hall, leaving Mu Zhan standing alone on the same spot and clenching his teeth, unable to resign to the situation. I don't care what your identity is, don't give me the chance. Mu Zhan clenched his teeth and ruthlessly said in a soft voice, 